So chances are you're looking to start a SMMA, but you're worried about wasting your time. I've made $4,328,284 from my SMMA, and the truth is, it doesn't need to be so complicated. It's all about understanding what steps to exactly take. So I've put in 126 hours analyzing every step that I took along the way. Now, after spending 2,190 days within my SMMA, I'm going to share this exact step-by-step -step blueprint with you. Now sit back, grab yourself a notepad and some food because you're about to watch the most important video of your life because i'm not just gonna give you some theory i'm going to precisely show you every click that you need to make on your screen so let's dive in to prove to you that whatever i'm going to share with you actually works i've provided you with some undeniable proof these are screenshots that have been taken directly from my stripe account from the year 2019 to the year 2021 keep in mind that the numbers that you see on the screen these are numbers that we did directly from my marketing agency from a real estate SMMA. Now, these are numbers that I did not do through online coaching, online courses, or any business of that nature. Now, keep in mind, at this time, I was around, uh, I was 19 to the age of 21. One thing to note is whatever I'm going to cover in this training is not outdated information. I'm just showing you these screenshots to show to you, to showcase that that the person that is teaching you or giving you quote unquote advice is coming from someone that actually ran the business before ever teaching other people. Now, what is this training going to look like? This is going to be the most in-depth comprehensive guide that you are going to find online on how to grow an SMMA from zero to a million dollars per year in revenue. And they're learning this from someone that actually built a real SMMA before ever teaching or giving advice to anyone else. Most of the people that you're going to find online make their money teaching rather than doing. And I've been where you've been at. I follow these experts. And although I did learn a few things from some people, there's also been a lot of people that I've learned from where it just got me nowhere. And I've wasted time, money, energy, but more importantly, I've lost hope along the way. And hope is something that you need that's going to keep you going every single day it's what gets you to wake up in the morning it's what gets you to you know jump out of bed just ready to push through the day and i lost that many times so for this reason i'm bringing you this in-depth guide as someone who's actually been in the trenches and done this for years now just before i get into the video i do want to give you a quick backstory of how i came up with this training now, just six years back at the age of 17, I started looking for ways to make money online. And around this time, I somehow found myself in a rabbit hole of studying Amazon FBA. And this likely happened because this was one of the very first business models that I actually came across. And when I thought about it, it just clicked in my head. It just made sense. Why did it make sense? You know, you have a platform like Amazon. You have like physical products and you just sell these physical products on Amazon. It was super straightforward there it wasn't like a complex hard to understand business don't worry this training is not about amazon fba more than that i'm also not here to bash amazon fba i have seen amazon fba work for other people but i'm simply here to share with you what worked for me now back then you know as i started studying amazon fba i i started researching on youtube like a lot of you are doing right now I watch a lot of YouTubers, but one YouTuber stood out more than others. His name is Don Bus, and you can still find him on YouTube today. He was the only YouTuber at the time. Keep in mind, this was back in 2017. He was the only YouTuber at the time that was providing in-depth, step-by-step, practical trainings where he essentially showed you know, every link that he was clicking on, every button that he was clicking on the screen. And he was the only YouTuber at the time that I truly got value from. I just deeply resonated with the type of content that he was creating. And shout out to him, by the way. And he doesn't know me, nor do I ha nor have I ever been in contact with him, but I'm forever going to be grateful for him. His videos were actually what got me started in this make money online world. Now, I didn't make any money with Amazon FBA. I failed at Amazon FBA. But it sort of got me started in this, you know, make money online world. 
So just taking inspiration from him, I now want to give everything that I know about SMMA away. In the same format that Don Vos did in the Amazon FBA space. I'm going to show you every click, every button that I'm clicking on. And you can take this information and do whatever you want to do with it. But here's the thing. Most people do not, most people tend to not value free information. And that's because you didn't put a penny into, you know, getting access to this free information. It's free, right? You don't have any skin in the game. You didn't put anything on the line to get access to this information. So there is no urgency to take action on whatever is being taught. So what this means is only 1% of the folks that are going to be watching this video will actually implement what's being taught. Only 1%. Now, if you truly want to win and you want to be in this elite 1%, I'm telling you right now, take action on what's being taught. This is something that most online business gurus will charge you thousands of dollars for. Now, a quick disclaimer, I'm not sure how long I'm going to keep this video up for. This is not a scarcity tactic, but instead, uh, the truth, because this is pretty much my life's work on one Google Doc. This is my life's work in one video. And if you want to win, you will take action today. And I'm rooting for you. You're going to dissect each detail that is being provided here. And regardless of whether you're running an SMMB in the real estate space or in another niche, you will try to find a way to make whatever is being taught here work for your niche. The truth is, I've been told by many people to not give everything away. But I've always thought to myself, you can never give too much away. You can never provide too much value. You can never give enough free information away. The more you, you know, give out, the more you're going to get back. And that, that's sort of been uh, one mantra, if you like to call it, for, for my life. Just give as much as you can away and, you know, God will give you two X back. So this is, uh, in, an, in other words, a thank you gift for those that like, you know, subscribe, you know, share, comment on my videos. And uh, this is sort of my, uh, you know, gift to you. Now, let me talk to you about what this video is not, because I know you guys will have a lot of questions, a lot of suspicions, and a lot of doubts in your mind. This video is not a sales pitch. There is absolutely nothing that I'm going to pitch to you at the end. So you don't have to worry about there being a uh, interest in my mind for giving free information like this away to you. This is also not a VSL. A VSL stands for Video Sales Letter. Now, some of you may or may not be familiar with a VSL. But a VSL is essentially a, a video that is disguised as a free training, but it's really a sales pitch. It's sort of like this long sales pitch that you make to either brainwash or convince someone to buy into a product or service. Like I said, once again, this is, um, I'm not going to be pitching you a course. I'm not going to be pitching you a program. Anything that I'm going to be giving to you is in your best interest. So there is nothing that I have to gain here other than getting exposure from my YouTube channel. That, that's really what I want. Uh, I've even gone as far as removing affiliate links out of this Google Doc just to show to you that Anything that I recommend, any tool, any software, it's one that I actually use in my real business. Now, why did I remove these affiliate links? Now, the reason why I move, remove these affiliate links is because whenever I watch another YouTuber and they recommend you to buy something, I always have this one doubt and this one question in the back of my mind that does this person really want the best out of me? Is this person really thinking in the best interest for me? Or is this person just, tr just trying to make a quick commission? Are they just trying to make a few quick bucks? So just to show to you that I use everything that I'm providing to you, I've removed affiliate links. Quick disclaimer, there are some that I just couldn't even remove because uh, there's no other way I can share whatever I'm trying to use. But I've tried to remove as many as I can. This video is not going to have crazy animations or crazy editing to uh, maintain viewer retention. YouTube is sort of uh, in the state where you have to, the, like the video, the video itself, the content, the content within the video itself is not enough. 
you need to have a good team behind you. you need to have good thumbnails you need to have good editing there are certain tactics that youtube is used to maintain viewer retention i've gone as far as removing all of that just so this video is all about just providing value this video is also not a bunch of course videos that i've just stapled together for you this is a training that i've recorded specifically for youtube and I've built this doc, I've built this training from the ground up just for you guys. Now, what, what actually is this? So this is a step-by-step -step practical training on starting an SMMA from scratch and taking it to a million dollars per year. The examples that I'm going to provide to you in this training and in this video are going to be uh, real estate niche specific. Now, this doesn't mean that this is not going to work for another niche like chiropractors, dentists, lawyers, accountants. But instead, since I run a real estate marketing agency, the examples that I'm going to be providing are going to come directly from that. And you can take these frameworks and you can apply it in your niche. Now, I've done multiple seven figures per year in revenue in my own SMME as a 21 year old. And I've actually done a lot more than $2.2 .2 million in cash, but I downplay the numbers because that's what shows up on Stripe. And of course, we collect payments uh, via wire. Uh, we fund, we work with third party funding companies. Um, we take e transfer since we're based out of Canada. And uh, there's a lot of other payment methods that we use. But so we've done a lot more than 2.2 .2 million, but I just like to downplay the numbers. You're learning from someone that's a practitioner. Once again, you're learning from someone that is a practitioner and not someone that just gives away. Theories. I haven't just read books and said, oh, uh, let me just give away whatever was said on page 53 of this one book. It's strategies, methods, tactics that I've used in the real world that I'm providing to you. The language that I'm going to use in this video is super simple. It's sort of like 10th grade level language. You know, I've bought a lot of courses, masterminds, programs. And one of the things that I've learned is most of the time majority of the times the, the the course creator or the coach or the mentor or the advisor is using this complicated language which just makes the learning even harder it just makes it even more difficult because they're trying to explain something and then on top of that they're using this complicated language so what i've done is i've cut out all of the complicated language you know that's going to possibly hurt your brain and the language that i use in this uh, google doc is like 10th degree level language one of the things that I learned is being a good mentor, coach, advisor is the ability for the information that's being taught to be understood and then from being understood to being implemented. And that's the goal of this training. So I've broken this down for you. Now, once again, uh, this is for you if uh, you know you're working nine to five, but you're burnt out. This is for you if you're currently in school and you're looking for ways to make money online. If you've been wanting to start an online business to have steady income, but you don't know where to start. This video is for you. And if you're tired of being bombarded by ads on social media from gurus, I want to copy paste a real business with real clients and get real business uh, results. This is for you. Lastly, this is my entire life's work on one Google Doc in one video. Now, how should you use this guide? So this is going to be a long video, a very long Google Doc. So how should you use this to get the most out of it? So this document. That you see on the screen i'm going to give you access to this document and just a quick disclaimer that it may or may not be different than the one that you get access to the reason being is because as i'm going through this doc i pre-wrote this and i'm going to be going through each step step by step and it may be that as i'm recording this video i might come come across a few things that maybe need to be changed maybe i need to add a few things in or maybe i need to remove some stuff so the final doc that you're going to get access to is going to be the final version. And it's recommended, it's recommended that you open up this document on a desktop. And if you're using mobile, download the Google Docs app for the best viewing experience. And also use the outline on the left side here to navigate through this doc. There's a lot of information, so do uh, so use it to your advantage to not get lost. Also, uh, my personal my, my personality, my nature is I tend to talk a bit slower. I don't like to talk too fast. 
So if you just want to bang through the video and you just want to get everything implemented straight away, you can put this video on 1.25 or do 1.5, 1.75x speed and just bang through it and get everything implemented. Uh, education is not about just learning, viewing, reading, but it's more so about implementing. You can uh, also have this doc open in another tab and go through it as you're watching this video. Now, I only have two requests from you. Share this video with at least one friend. And number two, uh, subscribe to my channel. And if you don't do that, I'm going to blacklist your ass. Okay. And I will make sure that you don't get access to this. And um, I'm going to come beat your ass. Last disclaimer, if you copy my shit, I'll find your ass. Okay. So do not copy my stuff. All right. So let's start off with the business fundamentals. First and foremost, we need a company name. Now, if you already have whatever you see on the screen, you can sort of skip ahead. But let's start off with a company name. You know what we found? Just keep it short and super sweet. It's all about making it clear about what you do. So for example, my company, we went with generate agent leads. What do we do? We help real estate agents generate leads. We help realtors generate more clients, more business. And that became our name. And I know, of course, you know, we see the big agencies like the Gary V's and usually these big agencies have X, Y, and Z media, or they have ABC digital, get rid of that. Keep your name super short. Now, I don't know if you remember back in school, you know, we were taught how some words have like two syllables, three syllables, or one, keep it as short as possible. One syllable, ideally. Now, one of the mistakes that we made is we actually made our name a bit too long. So it's like generateagentleads.com. So the problem that we had is uh, when our sales team calls people now, we have to first say, hey, uh, is this John? I'm calling from, you know, generate agent leads. And you know, that takes like a good second or two just to just get the name across. So don't make the mistake that we made. Keep your name a super short. So when you or your salespeople in the future, when you do get salespeople start calling, uh, you know, they can get your name across in one word in less than a second. Uh, once again, I uh, don't stress about your name a bit, uh, too much. We landed on our name in just a few hours and it wasn't even our first pick. So it's more about just getting uh, to the point rather than finding the perfect uh, name. Let's talk about business registration. So depending on where you're at, the steps may or may not be uh, different. For example, we're based out of Canada. So what this means is we need to get our company incorporated. Incorporated is setting up a LLC within the US. So it's like you're just setting up a corporation. Now within Canada, we also have to get a GST number, but I'm not gonna talk too much about that. Now, it's vital that you get a business registered because you don't want the liability to be on yourself. For example, if you register yourself as a sole proprietor, if anything goes wrong in the future, you have a conflict with a business, uh, with another business owner. Uh, maybe your client doesn't get success with the program and maybe they're gonna sue you, they're gonna come after you, they're gonna uh, you know, go get themselves a lawyer that they can represent and come after you. Whatever the case is, you want to protect yourself. Treat the game of business uh, as a professional. And part of being a professional is covering all of your tracks, keeping yourself safe. And you always want to think ahead. You, ne you always want to, you never want to be where you're just reacting. You want to be proactive, right? You never want to be in a reactive state where things are just coming to you and then you're responding to them. You always want to be prepared. And one of the ways to be prepared is get your business registered. Uh, now my advice to you, uh, here is always talk to an accountant An accountant will be able to guide you towards the right direction. Now let's talk about, uh, picking a domain. Now either use GoDaddy or use Cloudflare to purchase a domain. We use Cloudflare now, but initially we used to use GoDaddy, but we had, uh, an instance where someone actually hacked into our domain and they were sending traffic over to their domain. So we were spending money on paid advertising, but they were taking that traffic, sending it to their domain. So make sure that doesn't happen to you. We lost a lot of money just because that happened. So use Cloudflare. I just found that it's a bit more uh, safe than GoDaddy. Now let's talk about accounting. 
I know this is not the sexy stuff of businesses, but this is uh, important that I talk about it. Having an accountant is a big help. They keep track of your money, like what you earn, you know, what you spend. They also handle tax stuff. I pay my accountant $500 per month. Now that may sound like a lot, but he's really good, especially with taxes. So if you're not making a lot of money yet, don't worry too much about all the fancy tax stuff. Just, fo just focus on making your uh, business grow. Accounting, the, 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 the main thing is when you're first starting out, your end of your taxes are just going to be a bit harder if you don't do your tax taxes uh, accounting proper properly. So uh, it's always good to be ahead and just getting your, keeping your books up to date. Now let's talk about G Suite. Uh, having a professional email for your business is super important. It's better to have an email like your name at yourbusiness.com instead of a regular Gmail or Yahoo one. Now the reason why I added this into the doc is because as a business owner, I get a lot of people reaching out to me where other people are pitching their services to me. And whenever someone just is using a regular Gmail account, automatically I lose trust in that person. Once again, like I said, you need to be, become a professional. You need to invest into stuff like this. This is probably going to cost you like $10, $20 per month. But make sure you get yourself a business email. And uh, no one wants to do uh, business with someone that can't even afford or take the time out to buy a professional uh, you know, email. <coughs> Of course, uh, you know, before you set this up, you do need to have your business name and a website domain uh, ready. Let's talk about, uh, you know, workplace setup. Now, as someone that is running a business online, having a good place to work is really important. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a good computer, a good laptop. I personally use a iMac. It's fast, has a good camera, although I'm using a 4K super expensive camera. And uh, make sure you get yourself a good mic as well. And the reason why I say that, because part of customer acquisition is your status. You need to have status amongst your uh, customers. Now, whenever I talk about status, most people may think, oh, you need to get yourself a nice watch or you need to get yourself a nice car. That is not the case. You can build status by having a good setup. You can build status by having a good mic, a good camera. So invest into stuff like that. Uh, Get yourself a, a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro. And I know these are a little bit cheaper than the iMacs. It's worth it. Like I mentioned, get yourself a decent uh, camera for Zoom calls because you will have meetings. You're going to have uh, calls with customers, with prospects, and you want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're not looking at a screen where it's a bit blurry. Okay, so you don't have to invest into a super expensive camera. Get yourself a 1080p camera that's, you know, less than 100 bucks. Get yourself a good microphone. When we first started, we just had Yeti mics and the Yeti mics were good. I think they're like 50 to to $100. I forget, but I know they're much cheaper than this one. This one was like a thousand bucks. Just the arm itself was, I think, 300. Insane. But... Uh, more than all of the stuff that I mentioned above, having fast internet is key. The, the last thing I want to do is like sit on my desk, get ready to work, and, and the fucking screen's not loading, right? So uh, you also don't want to be lagging over Zoom. So get, get yourself some fast internet. You also want to have a productive workspace. When I uh, initially got started, myself and my business partner, we got ourselves a WeWork membership. Now, for those of you that don't know WeWork, it's sort of a co-working space. There's other offices and, and you can go in and you can work. I would compare this to a library. And, you know, you just get this membership and I believe it was $250 a month, but it was worth it for the quiet, fast internet, and they also had free coffee. So I recommend that you go get yourself a WeWork if you have a WeWork near you. We used to drive like 30 minutes to that we work every single morning and another 30 minutes back going home without traffic when we used to work at we work just because it was worth it i've tried working from home it's never worked you know you have a bed in your room and you know when you're in doubt or you're tired or maybe you just had a long call 
or maybe you did something super stressful you feel like you need to reward yourself and you might take a quick nap and that quick nap turns into four to five hours of a long nap and uh and then sooner or later you realize that i didn't get anything done for that day so keep your uh keep yourself a nice workplace where you could be productive and you're gonna get shit done okay let's get so let's start off with the most important part of your business so which is going to be coming up with an offer do you want to hit three million dollars per year all you need is just a front end and then you need a back end now i'm not just telling you because we were able to do that but i'm instead telling you because i know what tons of companies that are doing multiple eight figures per year in revenue and all what they have is just a front end and then they have a back end now let's talk about it the front end is just your initial offer the way you want to think about this is this is what initially brings in clients this is what initially attracts clients it can be a small less expensive offer that's going to be a low ticket or it can be a big pricey one which people refer to as high ticket essentially it's what gets people to open their wallets and become your first time customers and the second part of a business is the back end the back end is pretty much like in the most simple terms possible it's sort of like the special stuff that you offer to people who are already your customers so whenever you know you know whenever you see like these business gurus and all these people talk about back end offers what they pretty much means is they're talking about ascension increasing ltv lifetime value that's what they're referring to what they pretty much are saying is that they want their current customers to stick around for a bit longer and to pay them more money and the way you can do that and i'm going to be getting into that shortly but you can offer them the same service again or you can offer a different service that solves another one of their problems or they can get access to an upgraded version of whatever they already currently have here's a key point big businesses the ones that are making eight figures they all have a great back end offer i'm not just talking about you know a decent good back end offer they instead have a great back end offer and there's a big difference between being good and being great and i'll get into that shortly the reason why a back end offer is so important is because selling to someone who's already your customer is usually much cheaper than trying to find yourself a new customer let me repeat that selling to your current existing customer is much easier and cheaper than trying to bring yourself new customers think about it if a customer could bring you twenty thousand dollars over time instead of just three thousand how much would you be willing to pay money to get that customer for a twenty for a twenty thousand dollar customer you can pay like ten thousand and you're still at fifty percent you know gross margins so uh, I'm sure you guys have heard the saying that uh, I'm, I'm sure you know you guys have heard this a lot. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. But the comp but the business that can spend the most amount of money to acquire a customer usually ends up winning the game. Once again, the customer the the company that can spend the most amount of money to acquire a customer will win the game. Now, what I mean by that is, um, if I can spend 20k to get a customer and I can still be profitable, I'm going to win the game. If your business, you can only spend 2k. You're sort of limited so we'll, we'll dive deeper into that sort of stuff but let's move on to uh you know dfy versus dwy versus diy now there are only three different type three different types of services that you can offer the first one is a done for you service what this pretty much means is if you ever see like a business guru or anyone out there on youtube or uh you know on facebook instagram talk about dfy what they pretty much mean is that this is where you do all the work for your client it's pretty much where every, the entire service is pretty much hands off for the client you pretty much do everything you handle everything the client doesn't even lift a finger that's what that means dwy uh, stands for done with you services this is the way you want to look at this is it's sort of like a team effort you and the client share the workload uh, together you do your part the client does uh, their part and it's sort of like you come together as a team and then you work together the third part is diy this is pretty much where the client does everything and uh, like a prime example of diy is an online course that you sell where the client pretty much learns everything and they work on their own pace 
for example, if I came to you and I said, oh, guys, here, buy my thousand dollar course, uh, you would work on your own pace and you would uh, also do all of the work that's required. So that would be do it yourself. Now, here's the thing. If you're if you're starting out, you have to start off with the DFY business model. You have to start off with the done for you business model. And the reason why I say that is because when you're starting out, you're at a disadvantage and the dis disadvantage is you don't know anything about the industry. You don't have any client testimonials. You don't have any social proof. You don't have any case studies. You, you essentially don't have any assets that you can leverage when you don't have leverage. You got to do whatever it's required for you to get the job done. That pretty much means done for you. So A, you need to learn about the industry. You need to actually know what you're talking about before ever moving on to a more leveraged model, which I'll be talking to, to you about shortly. You need to learn how to actually get the end result that you're going to be promising. So this can only be done if you actually do it yourself. You need to establish confidence before ever moving on to a more leveraged model like done with you. I'll be talking about done with you shortly. Now, clients always want done for you services. The sale is much easier compared to, you know, pitching done with you or do it yourself. So whenever you reach out to prospect to clients, done for you is always going to be much easier to sell than, you know, do it yourself or done with you. That's because you're pretty much doing everything for the client. You can validate that whatever you're selling, there is actually demand for it. So before you start moving on to done with you and do it yourself, you need to realize that you need to understand that whatever you're selling, there is actually demand for it. Think of it as doing a university degree before going into graduate school. It's sort of like a prerequisite. It's sort of like you can't go to high school if you didn't go to elementary school. So the elementary school is essentially done for you. You want to think about it like that. Now, what are some of the pros of doing done for you work? Uh, it's a very fast way to get testimonials. A lot of the majority of the testimonials that we got in my agency, it came through done for you services because we pretty much controlled the end outcome that our client got. And you could generate compelling case studies. It's a much easier sale. And there's also much higher demand for done for you services. Done for you is a much better offer, and you can scale to multiple six figures per month using uh, done for you work. We got to three hundred thousand dollars per month just doing done for you. Let's talk about the cons of done for you services. Uh, you have to perform the service, which will lead to uh, in a lower gross margin. You are at service at your client. So, in other words, you're sort of seen as. You know, it may sound a bit harsh, but just for you to understand, they're going to look at you as their bitch and uh, you're also seen as their servant. So, they're so they can sort of instruct to you, oh, do this, do that, you got to do this. When you're doing done free services, you need to worry about the client not paying for the next month. That's what I've noticed. When you're doing done free services, there is also this fear that the client is not getting results whenever you hop on this like check-in call or like a monthly follow-up call you get this sense of anxiety distress and you get a bit anxious like like is this client really getting results or no so you will have to deal with that and you're always feeling like that you haven't done enough clients also hold you accountable and they have authority over you keep in mind before you completely uh you know, go to bed crying that this is, this is what you're going to have to do. Everyone that I know in the industry, anyone that is doing well and making a lot of money online, they all started off with done for you services. I don't have to name people. If you are, I'm sure you guys follow a lot of other people. I can guarantee you look at their past. How did they start off done for you services? Everyone starts here. This is the only place to start. So. You know, you can't build, uh, you know, you cannot build an empire without a solid foundation. This is the foundation. You have to do it. So uh, keep that in mind. And, you know, that should uh, motivate you. Okay, so let's start off with the front end offer. The front end offer, we recommend that you want to have an offer that is at the minimum 
$3,000 on the front end. And I'll get into why. Now, most businesses, they only have big, two big challenges. The first one is a lead generation problem. They don't have enough clients. They don't have enough business. They want more new customers to come through the door. This is usually the first hurdle. Without a steady flow of new leads, it's sort of hard to grow. Now, once businesses solve the first problem, they come across the second problem, which is managing the leads. It's sort of like once you have the leads coming in, how do you convert them? How do you start building systems? How do you build yourself a team? How do we remove the business owner away from the day-to-day -day operations? How do we improve the processes? How do we make the entire business more efficient? That is sort of the second hurdle that most businesses come across once they solve the first problem, which is lead generation. Now, in my case, I focus on solving the lead generation problem for real estate agents. Every real estate agent out there, I can guarantee you, they want more buyers and sellers to work with. Every real estate agent wants, wants more business to come through the door. Me being a business owner, or even like the Starbucks downstairs, or uh, you know, the Tim Hortons downstairs, the Save on Foods downstairs, every business, doesn't matter regardless of which industry that they're in, they want more clients, they want more customers, they want more business. Now, of course, you know, more business, depending on the business that you're working with, more business, uh, more new leads pretty much means more appointments, more clients, and more, you, you sort of get that process, right? Now, when you're solving a lead generation problem, I've found that you're looking at shorter sales cycles. It's much easier to set appointments regardless of the niche that you're in. I did it in the real estate space. You can quickly scale up with paid advertising when you're solving like the lead generation problem. The operational side is less complex. Now, the big con is you usually need uh, successful case studies from previous clients to sell a service like this. It can also be a much tougher sell compared to offering free trials. We'll talk about it. Now, when I'm coming up with an offer, I look at a table like this. Now, this might, this might be a lot of information but I've sort of color coded it to help you sort of understand and go through each component of the offer. So the first and foremost is we need to pick yourself a uh, niche. A niche is pretty much just the one person that you're going after. Let me repeat that. It's the one person that you're going after. When you're thinking about a niche, you can picture that one person in front of you, right? Now, before we get into picking a niche, I want to uh, give a few quotes that are very important. Who you sell to is far more important than what you sell. Who you sell to is far more important than what you sell. The reason why I'm saying this is because you want to go after a market where there is a very high demand. You want to go after a market where uh, you know people are motivated for success. You want to go after, for example, we, we, we were working with the real estate agents. Real estate agents are sort of entrepreneurs. They're working on their own time. They're working on their own schedule. And they only get paid based on success, based on providing an ed end outcome. They all work on a commission-only basis. So when working with real estate agents, they were super motivated to see success. So real estate agents were willing to invest a lot of money uh, into marketing. You know what to not say based on your competitors and what to say based on marketplace sophistication. So I'm going to be getting into the marketplace sophistication a bit later on because it's a bit more advanced. But if your competitors are saying something, you want to say the exact opposite. If your competitors are uh, saying something, you want to be completely different. Peter Thiel, co-founder, I believe one of the founders at PayPal, early investor in Facebook, He's, it was part of the PayPal Mafia. And the PayPal Mafia, if you guys don't know, do some research on them. But there were just a bunch of guys. They all started uh, PayPal. And when they ended up splitting up, Elon Musk was part of that group. They all, all the guys, they built these billion dollar companies. You know, they started Realtor. Uh, Zillow, they started Yelp. They started, uh, you know, Elon Musk went to start up Tesla and all these uh, big companies. But Peter Thiel essentially says, competition is for losers. Let me repeat that. Competition is for losers. So you never want to compete with someone else. 
Now, when you're thinking about, um, you know, the one person that you're going to go after, you, the, the way I like to sort of think about it is I like to ask myself a few questions. Am I going after the highest value customer? Am I selling to someone that thinks about price last instead of first? You always want to sell to a person that has the money. You don't want to sell someone, uh, you don't want to sell a product to a market where they're thinking about price first. Now, I'm sure you guys have experienced this, but selling to a person that has a lot more money, they're not penny pinching you. They're always thinking about the end outcome. They're just much better clients and they're much better customers as well. They're more respective of your, of your time. Whereas you can be selling, you know, a much cheaper product to someone that has less money and it can, the product or the service could be much cheaper. But this one person just keeps bothering you and keep penny pitching and keeps trying to negotiate with you to get the price down. And that's because they're operating out of a scarcity mindset. You want to always work with the top 1% of the group. It's sort of like the saying, uh, you know, solve rich people problems, right? So I'm actually going to write that down. Uh, let's go to... It just came to my head right now. So I'm going to write this down. But essentially, the point here is you want to solve, right? So the way you want to think about this is solve rich people uh, problems. Solve rich people problems. Number two, ensure that your niche is growing and it's not shrinking. We were working with real estate agents and there is a stat that there are 50,000 new people that are becoming uh, licensed real estate agents each year. We knew that the market is getting replenished, replenished each year by 50,000 new people. So we know that the market was growing by 50,000. These are 50,000 new people that we can sell to each year. It's a good thing. Ask yourself the question, are there new people entering this market? Another question you need to ask yourself, are these people easy to reach online? We worked with real estate agents. And if you just do a quick Google search, real estate agents near me, or real estate agents in Vancouver or wherever, you can find a whole list of real estate agents that you can get their name, email, phone number. Very easy to reach out to. This gives me the option to cold call, cold email, uh, DM. And uh, they're much easier to reach. Whereas someone like a, a dentist, they don't have their personal phone numbers online. You got to first talk to a receptionist and then you can maybe get a chance to talk to the dentist. Another thing that I sort of added in here, observe the competition. Long-standing, mediocre competition could be a good sign. But if there's a lot of strong competition, ask yourself, is there something new that could bring to the table? If there's mediocre competition, that's fine. But if there's a lot of good competition, the only way that you're going to be able to beat them is by bringing in something new. All right? So you need to think about that when you're picking the uh, market and the niche that you're going after. Reoccurring uh, income. Does this niche offer potential for reoccurring revenue? With the real estate agents, we were downselling a CRM software, a white label solution. We just gave them a CRM and we charged you know, 97 to 297 per month. That brought in reoccurring revenue. If you have reoccurring revenue, you're sort of running a very similar model to Netflix. Think of Netflix. With reoccurring revenue, it's predictable income. Investors like it your company's valuation is going to go up. Everything is good. And it takes care of a lot of your expenses. And it, it sort of offsets the uh, fixed expenses of your business, right? There's some expenses that you have to pay for each month, like your office. Um, it's not like a variable expense. It's a fixed expense. Pretty much no matter what, you still got to pay for it. It, can, it, can, it takes care of your employee expenses, team member expenses. So recurring revenue is a big part of having a good business. One of my mentors said, if you don't have reoccurring revenue, you don't have a business. Let me repeat that. If you don't have reoccurring revenue, you don't have a business. And then, so once you've uh, picked your market, we need to then think about the claim that we're making. What's the promise that we're making? The promise is pretty much just the transformation that we're promising our client. So what major change or benefit am I promising to my client? So this is where my, uh, my client is currently at. This is where my client wants to get to. And there's like a set of steps that the client needs to take to get to the end outcome. Now, what's the transformation that I'm uh, you know, making? Am I, am I helping them make more money? 
right? If that is the case, how much more money and what time frame? So I'll get into that. Once again, I put a quote here that I want you to think about. It's better to be first than to be better. It's better to be first than to be better. That pretty much means that if you can bring something new, that's why I always keep talking about new, new, new. Escape the competition. Don't be in competition. Be different. You want to have your own lane. You don't want to be in someone else's lane. Because if you're in someone else's lane, you're only ever going to be uh, behind them. So think about it. So we'll talk about the evidence shot as well. So of course, if you're promising something, do you have evidence you know, to back it up? And then, uh, you know, step one. So like I, like, I, like I was saying, you know, this is a before, this is the after of the client. There is a set of steps that you got to take the client through. And this is, this is going to become part of your offer, which I'll be talking about shortly. So, for example, if you're going to offer Facebook, Instagram ads, that's part of your offer. Or you're offering text-based follow-up, AI-based follow-up. That's part of your uh, steps. So, there's uh, usually three steps, but uh, we're not going to spend too much time here because I'm going to give you an example of this. Like I said, this entire video, uh, entire training, I'm going to provide you with examples that you can look at. So, of course, uh, you know, we need to think about what are we, what exactly are we offering to our client? Are we offering done for your ad management? Are we providing a course with training videos? Are we providing a community, a school community, a Facebook community? How long are we going to work with a client for? Are we working with a client for, uh, you know, four months, three months? How long are we working with a client for? That's all part of the offer. Now, the features like, you know, you see feature one, you see feature two, you see feature three. These are like the tangible things. These are things that you can touch, see that you're offering to the client. So, for example, they're getting access to your training videos, uh, you know, customer Facebook ad campaigns, software. I'm going to give you guys more examples as we go through this. Are they getting access to an AI chatbot? Or are they getting access to a real human follow-up? Or a VA-based follow-up? Or are they getting ISAs, whatever the case is? Feature three, are they getting one-on-one -on -one calls? Do they get direct chat support? So, we'll talk about that as we go through an example. Part of an offer is, you need to ask yourself, why should my prospect take action today? Why should my prospect buy my offer today? Why not tomorrow? Why not the day before? Why, why should they buy my stuff today? This is where scarcity comes in, right? So is there limited spots available or is there exclusivity that you're offering? So we'll once again, talk about that. Now, uh, to top it off, we're going to also throw in a bonus. The bonus is sort of like something so irresistible. The way you want to think about a bonus is the bonus actually need, needs to be more important than the actual core offer. Let me repeat that. When you're thinking about coming up with a bonus, you want to think to yourself, how can this bonus be even better than the core offer? Is, is this bonus better than the core offer? Is it sort of like a cherry on the top? Is it, is it making my offer a no-brainer? So you want, to, you want to think to yourself, what else can I offer that's even better than the entire offer in general? And then you sort of add the icing on the cake by throwing in a guarantee. The reason why you want to throw in a guarantee is because you want to eliminate any risk from the prospect's end. There should be a clear case why the prospect should want to work with you, right? So how can you eliminate and reduce risk for your client? So you can think about stuff like, you know, money back guarantee, or you can think about a conditional guarantee. A conditional guarantee is where a client, if a client doesn't meet an X end result, and they sort of met the requirements of whatever it is, then they could sort of you know get their money back or they, you continue to work with them. So once again, I'll be offering you some more examples of as we go through this. Now let's actually go through a real life uh, example. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the example. The first claim that I'm making is, of course, you know, this is for real estate agents. And I'm going to give you a very basic example, a very simple, straightforward example, just to help you understand the framework. Once again, I'm not here to provide you with here. Here's an offer. Go take it and copy and do it. I'm not here for that. There's going to be a lot of people watching this video. So I'm giving you the framework so you can take the framework and come up with something that's yours. Come up with something that's new, something that's your stuff. Right. Once again, we want to go with the rule. Competition is for losers. So we don't want to copy anyone. Okay. So the claim, let's start off with the claim. How to add an additional $300,000 in gross commission income within 12 months or less using Facebook ads. 
So the market that I'm going after is real estate agents. So what am I promising? I'm promising that, hey, you, you know, a realtor, you're going to make an extra 300K per year. And I said that you're going to uh, get this desired outcome in less than uh, one year. So I'm going to be going, uh, going deeper into how to come up with your claim. But this is just to show you a basic example of an offer. So what are the steps required to go from uh, you know, zero to an extra $300,000 per year in income? I got to think about that. Step one, okay, you know, run this local lead magnet Facebook ad. And then number two, uh, you know, set up a CRM that's going to automatically follow up with all the leads and start the sales process. Step three, we're going to set up, uh, you know, Facebook remarketing campaigns to help convert these leads into appointments. So we're going to build omnipresence. Those are the steps that are required. Therefore, my offer is going to become that, hey, if you want to get access to my three-step plug-and-play system that allowed me to, let's just say I'm a realtor or you're, you've worked with a realtor, to hit an extra $300,000 in gross commission income, join your double my income, join 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 my double your income 16-week program. It's a 16-week program. It's gonna the, the program name or the service name is double your income. So you can sort of get the out end outcome out there just through your name. And the desired outcome that you're uh, promising is 300K in GCI. So of course, since I worked in the real estate space, I'm gonna use like terminology and words that only the real estate people know and they use GCI. So that's why I use GCI, which is 300K. That's what I'm promising. Now what's gonna be included? What are like the tangible physical things that someone can touch, feel, see that they're gonna get access to, right? That's what, uh, that is what it's referred to as features. Feature number one, you're going to get access to an online course. You're going to get access to in-depth video uh, walkthroughs, right? You're going to learn how to set up your Facebook advertising account, how to set up your Facebook proven ad advertising campaign. So once again, guys, this is an example. And this example that I'm providing to you here is for the done with you offer. Keep that in mind. It's for done with you. So this will need to be changed for done for you. So in this feature, oh, you're going to get access to an online course. You're also going to get access to proven templates, scripts, all that sort of stuff. You're going to get access to a lead follow-up script, how to confirm appointments, generating referrals, that, what to do before an appointment. You're going to get the exact buyer presentation template. What else are you going to get access to? You're going to get access to two live group coaching calls per month. Now, why should I take action today? We need to think about scarcity. Why should my prospect buy today rather than tomorrow? Why should they buy today? What's, what's, gonna give, what's the reason that they should buy today? The reason is that you only take on five more clients each month. Since you have limited bandwidth and you want to provide an exceptional service, you only take on a limited amount of clients to provide the best possible service that you can offer. For this reason, you've added in scarcity. Now, what's the bonus that you can add in that's even better than the core offer? You need to think about that. And the bonus here is your client is going to receive live recordings of you making dials to leads that are coming in and those leads turning into appointments. So that is a very enticing offer that, that you can give them access to. You always want to think about them. Now, what is the guarantee? Now, how can you make this a no brainer? How can you make this into an irresistible offer? There is a big thing that is going out in the marketplace right now. What can you, what offer can you make where the, the prospects find it stupid to say no, where they feel stupid to even say no? How can you make the offer so good? How can you make it so irresistible? Now, this is where you can offer, uh, you know, for us, you know, we did, uh, uh, our guarantee was we will continue to work with you until you make your investment back. It's a risk-free guarantee, right? That's, that's the uh, guarantee that we made. Of course, that's just an example, but this is to sort of give you a framework when you're looking to come up with an offer. You need to think about the tangible things you're going to be providing. You're going to, you need to think about that promise that you're making. Of course, you know, the market that you're going after. And uh, you want to make sure that you're able to, through your offer, you're able to answer this question. You're also able to answer this question in your offer. And you cannot forget about making a irresistible guarantee. You need to make it where it's just stupid. It's just dumb on the prospect side to even say no to your offer. The guarantee is that good. You will have 
there's a lot of customers that at times they just they just, they just want to know that they're going to get an ROI. If your service is that good, you should be able to make a guarantee. Think about that. If your service really works, you can make a good guarantee. Okay. Let's talk about let's talk about the back end. So once you've sort of solved the lead flow problem for the business owner, which is the client acquisition, the initial problem for the business owner, your front end offer. Now you can start thinking about the back end offer. How do I increase the lifetime value of each customer? How can I make my customers stick around for longer? And how can I make them worth more to me? I don't just want my customers to be worth $3,000 to me. I want my customers to pay me $20,000 for, for, the, for the time that they work with me. I don't want my customers to stick around for three months. I want my customers to stick around for three years. How do I do that? Let's talk about it. There are only three different types of backend offers that you can offer. Now, the first one that I'm going to cover is a renewal, the continuation of their current service. What is it? This is basically offering to continue the service you've already been providing. It's sort of like asking the prospect, hey, you know, our term together has ended, but would you like to keep going? You're not offering anything new, right? So you're saying like, hey, you know, you had the service that you bought on like three months ago. Would you like to continue with the existing offer, right? I mean, I, it might sound crazy, but there are a lot of people that I know, a lot of agency owners that I know, that don't even make the simple request. Would you like to continue? Because that's why I'm putting it out there. What are some pros of this? Of just uh, offering this continuation and the renewal of the same service. Number one, it's easy to keep providing the service, right? There's no extra work that is required from your end. Why? Because you already did majority of the work when you initially onboarded the customer. A lot of the, most of the time and the energy is usually spent when you onboard the customer and a lot of the services usually get offered day one. So it's like, you know, you already had the service that we were, uh, you know, providing you and we're going to continue to provide you the service. There's not really much required from your end. You've already done the heavy lifting at the start. It's straightforward. No need for new ideas or changes. Cons. What are some of the cons? If you made a promise before the customer came on and you didn't end up delivering on that service, trying to get them to buy that same service is going to be super hard. It's going to be a tough sell. That's like saying, hey, you know, I promised you that I'm going to make you $10,000 before you bought the service and you only made, you know, $2,000. But I want you to buy my service again. It sounds pretty stupid, right? So if you did not end up getting the end result that you had initially promised, Trying to resell the same service is going to be super hard for you. Clients might be tempted to buy, you know, newer, shinier offers that are elsewhere, even if you're doing a good job. One of the things that we noticed is people always want to, want to buy the new thing. New, 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 new. People always get the shiny object. People always think that the grass is greener on the other side. So if a client has been working, uh, working with you for three months, they may have come across other companies, other methods, other way to get the same end outcome. And although you may have got them in ROI, just as you know, humans, you're sort of you sort of want to try new things. You want to see if you can get even a better ROI using someone else's service. So that's why offering the exact same thing isn't as enticing. It's not, it's not gonna get them excited. It's gonna, it's not gonna get them to jump out of bed, right? What we did is if someone didn't uh, want to continue to work with us, we just said, hey, you know, uh, in a real stage and keep the CRM, just pay us 97 a month. You get, access, you get to keep all of your contacts. Uh, your, uh, your website still stays the same. Your funnel, all of that sort of stuff. And you just got to pay us 97 a month. What we noticed with software, with a white label solution like that, is the hard part is getting someone to migrate over it from one CRM to another. That's the hard part. The second hard part is getting them to uh, adjust to the, to the new CRM. But someone, but once someone has adjusted, then keeping them and getting them to continue to pay you for a long time is not that hard. So if you can offer a, that's why I was saying when uh, when we were uh, talking about picking a niche and the market, 
if there's possibility for you to have reoccurring revenue, make use of that. We're making four to five figures a month just from reoccurring revenue that is just coming in with us not having to do anything. You know who doesn't like that extra uh, income? Pays for your cards, right? Uh, let's talk about backend offer number two. Now, backend offer two is like, okay, now instead of just you being like, hey, you know, I sold you this one thing for 10K, you know, three months ago, come buy my 10K thing again. You're saying, you know what? I'm going to give you something else. This is an upsell. You offer an enhanced version of whatever they're already getting. It's sort of like, you know, you, you help them with lead generation. And now you're saying, I'm going to help you with lead follow-up. Right? So you can offer a service that takes this task off of their hands. So what are some options here? You can do call-based follow-up, even though I'm not a huge fan of that. You can do text-based con text concierge follow-up. Now you can use AI, but you know the, the way we did it was we uh, had VAs that did real human-based live follow-up with their leads. One VA we found could manage about 30 clients. So think about it. You're paying a VA about like $500 to $700. And the one VA can manage 30 clients and do follow-up for them. That's what we did. Now, you don't have to do AI. You don't have to do VAs because now there's AI. This must is much more leveraged. So you want to go with the, you want to go with the more leveraged model. Now, what are some pros of selling and service upgrading? You know, it's usually an easy sell. There's higher demand, especially from clients with a lot of uh, leads. And you're solving a clear common problem. Now, what are some of the cons? You know, uh, you know, if you're offering a service upgrade, you will need more team members. You're going to add in more responsibility. You will slightly lower your profit margins. We didn't notice that. When you're offering additional services, you know, you need more team people. Uh, there's more complexity. And then sometimes it takes your time off the thing that you should be focusing on. Just because now you brought in this additional service that you're going to offer. And uh, personally, if I were you, I would just lean towards an AI-based solution. And this is, this is an example of the AI-based solution that you can uh, offer and how to price it. way you want to think about this is you want to unlock income in your business where you don't have to sell new customers. And as a customer grows, your income from that one customer should grow. Let me explain. If a client is only spending a thousand bucks a month in ads, they're using they're using the chatbot for like a limited time. That means you can charge two ninety seven a month. But let's just say you know your client starts making money. Right now they went from uh, spending a thousand a month to now spending five k a month. Right now automatically, just because the client is now using the chatbot more, they they're using it abusing the chatbot. You should be able to charge a lot more for the chatbot. This is how you unlock more growth as your customers get more success, right? So you can see that now we can start charging four ninety seven a month, just because the client is now spending more money on advertising, right? So if you look at uh, you know media buyers or people that run ads for other companies, they usually have a pricing model like this: like, hey, you know, if you're gonna spend ten k per month on ads, I'm gonna charge you this much. If you're gonna spend fifty k per month on ads, uh, you know, this is how much more time is required from my end, which is why I'm going to charge you a lot more money for spending 50K per month. You know, it's going to require more testing. It's going to require more time that I need to sit in front of a computer and do stuff. So I'm going to charge you a lot more. So this is uh, one example of, uh, you know, pricing structure that you can, uh, you know, try. Now, the third one is where you sell a, a completely different product. So another way to increase how much a client is worth to us, but just by offering them another high value service. Now, this is something that we did very well with real estate agents. And I'll give you an example. This is known as a cross sell. Here's the idea. You find another problem that your customer has and you offer a solution. When we were thinking about how, you know, we should make our clients worth more, we realized that we need to offer something that is a lot more expensive, you know, something like over 10,000. So that's pretty much meant that we had to focus on the higher end of the market. We had, to raw, we had to solve a rich person problem. We had to go after the top 1% of the market. We had to go towards the, the people that are sitting at the top of the food chain, people that can afford such an amount. 
And that's when we came up with a program that was called the Real Estate Millionaire, the, the Renegade Real Estate Millionaire Program. Essentially, what we did is we just went to top performing real estate agents and we said, hey, instead of selling properties to make money, why don't you just coach other agents? Why don't you start a coaching program? Why don't you sell an online course? Bro, you know, you're making 250K a year. You're making 300K a year. You're working on your own schedule. You're working on your own time. You've been in the business for so long. You're one of the top real estate agents in, you know, Vancouver, Toronto. Bro, why don't you start yourself a coaching program? And, you know, that's what we did. And we started, you know, going after the top earners. And guess what? We started selling deals for 12K, for 14,000. You know, we were selling deals for that. I mean, we went all the way up to 15.8, $15,800 that we were charging for this. Now, what were some of the pros? Think about it. It was a completely different offer, right? It was a replacement. Think about it. People always want new. People want a replacement, right? So people don't want, if people were given the chance to get something new or versus better of what they already have, they're going to go after the new, a replacement. We offer that. We just taught them a new way to make money. So what was the pros of this approach? You know, it was a very high ticket offer. You know, we're charging like, fuck, it's like 15K. You can afford to spend more money on marketing. So if my, if my client's going to pay 15K on the back end, you know, I can spend 7,000. There was little to no competition. You know, once again, Peter Thiel, competition is for losers. We had no competition. There was no one in the industry that was selling to real estate agents saying, hey, Realtor, why don't you start a coaching program? Here's a new way to make money in real estate. New way to make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year extra just by selling your knowledge, just in a different format. You have all this knowledge in your brain. And although you're making money with real estate, why don't you just take this knowledge and you just sell it online? You're making money from home. How does that sound? That's what we did. Clients can't easily compare your service to others. When we did this, they had no one to uh, compare our service to. They would come on the sales call and it was either us or versus whatever they're already doing. That, that's all what the argument was. Uh, you know, you work with uh, wealthy individuals. You know, we were working with people that had, uh, you know, huge real estate teams. We were working with, um, you know, people that had these big brokerages. You know, they had money. They drove nice cars. Very patient people. Very respectful of your time. Just nice individuals, just good people to talk to. And, uh, you know, we enjoyed working with them more because, you know, they had an abundance mindset. Now, what are some of the cons? There's a higher barrier uh, to get started. So, for example, you know, you, not everyone can sell in an offer like that. Why? Because if you're going to teach someone how to you know, start a coaching program, you need to have your own coaching program that you sold well. And we had that. And we, you know, we, we just said like, Hey, you know, we've made this much money with our coaching program. You can do it too. And we're kids in our early twenties and we've never been realtors. If we can do it, you can do it too. That's what we said. And, uh, you know, there's, it's, it's going to take longer to close these sales. We found that, uh, you know, it's a little bit longer, but keep in mind the energy to sell something for 3000 is going to be the exact same for 10 K. We just found with this, like it was a little bit longer. Okay. Uh, your market is uh, much smaller. So you're going to have you know fewer potential customers. We found that the bigger the market is usually better. Although people say, oh, you know, you need to niche down. You need to niche down or whatever. That is true. But uh, one of the biggest agency owners, which is Neil Patel, had said that he doesn't believe in niching down. So, uh, you know, mixed opinions. But the way I like to think about it is... Um, of course, you know, it is more niche down, so you can charge more money, but you can eventually, you know, transition out. But uh, that's, these are, the, you know, different types of offers that you can sell in the back and you can, so just to, uh, you know, rewind. They can continue with whatever they currently have and, and you can al also provide a license that they can have access to, right? You can also say stuff like, hey, uh, you know, if you leave, you can never come work with us ever again. Or if you leave, we're going to bring in another competitor and we're going to sell our stuff to that competitor. Right, that can, and then you can bring in licensing. That's that's backend offer number one. Backend offer number two is where you upsell something and upgrade something better that they can get access to. It's gonna make their current service even better. The third backend offer is where you solve a completely different problem for them, a cross sell. 
we did this with the renegade real stream linear program we just went to the top people and the reason why we uh the reason why we actually came up with this is because you know we were saying like you know how do we charge a realtor like 10k how do we charge a real realtor like fifteen thousand? right that, that was a question that we started asking ourselves how can you charge a realtor 15k and then you know as we were coming up with different options we sort of boiled it down that hey you know why don't we like sell something that's completely brand new the market has never heard of anything like this and there were already people that were coaching but and they were making a lot of money but no one was teaching real estate agents on how to become coaches and this is where we unlock this level of growth that we had never seen before and we generated a lot of <laughs> a lot of profit through this uh, offer let's talk about free trials now when you're just kicking off your business one of the smartest moves that you can make regardless of what anyone tells you is free trials it's an incredible powerful way to draw in clients think about it who doesn't love getting something valuable for free i want you to uh think about this now you know when you go to a grocery store like for example costco and they have these people that are giving away free food samples it's always very hard to say no to you know getting that free food sample it's like you'll see it and then you walk past it and in the back of your mind you're thinking like should i, should I go turn back and go get the free food sample and you start regretting it and then and then now you're on the fence and now you're second guessing everything and, and then you end up at the end going back and grabbing that free food sample that's how it feels with free trials this approach works wonders in your prospecting efforts too now the most effective ads often give away something for free like a free training a free pdf or even a free course now i want you to think about when you're uh clicking on an ad most of the time it's promising a free course a free training a free pdf and in other fancy terms is referred to as a lead magnet these offers are great for grabbing attention and opening doors they set the stage for a conversation with potential clients by offering them something of real value something your competitors might charge money for what we did is when we were targeting real estate agents one of the ways that we heavily increased our profit margins and how we did outbound prospecting organic prospecting is we just came up with the best possible offer that we can think of there's nothing better than giving away something for free so we just said why not just offer free trials so that's what we did and it worked like a charm for us so i'm going to give you the exact offer that we ran with our real stage and said you could take this make iterations make a few changes apply it in your niche or if you're already in the real estate niche you can just copy this keep in mind one of the rules that we learned in business is you want to apply frameworks methods systems from other business models and other niches what do i mean by this so for example the best ideas usually come from stuff that is not like brand new that you just come up with but stuff that you take from another industry so for example if i'm a youtuber and i'm making videos in the make money online space the finance space i don't want to look at all these other youtubers that are making money on how to make uh, that are making videos on how to make money online I'm not going to look at other finance YouTubers. I'm not going to look at other, uh, you know, money, make money YouTubers. Instead, I'm going to take a look at YouTubers that are doing well in other niches, in other industries, and I'm going to take winning frameworks from them and bring it to my niche. This is going to make me different. It's going to make me stand out. And the same concept applies for business. Now, what do we have in the free trial? So pre-trial is what we had during the free trial and post-trial is what we had after a successful trial. So during the free trial, we offered a done for you Facebook and Instagram ads. So what did the agent get as a result? They got leads, they got conversation, they got potential appointments booked. They also uh, got organic lead gen, which it, uh, pretty much was like just a bunch of videos that we made on how the agent can do organic lead gen and start getting leads coming in without spending a dollar without spending a penny we had this one campaign that uh you know it's like a simple campaign that the agent can set up on facebook marketplace and they can start getting like 30 leads coming in within a few hours and during our free trial we've had many clients 
that have closed deals and have picked up clients because of the free organic lead gen. So we offered that in the free trial and our uh, close rate and our conversion rate on the free trials just shot up just because our clients were getting results in the, in the, free, uh, in the free trial. Also part of the free trial, we offered a text concierge. Now, back then we had real, like I said before, we had one VA that would manage 30 clients and we had this one VA and we had some VAs that were just uh, designated just for free trials. They just sat there eight hours a day, just following up for each realtor and doing live human follow-up and they would manage like 30 trials all by themselves. And But now in today's world, you know, you can replace this with AI-based follow-up. And that's something that we do today, which, uh, which then, I mean, it sort of replaced VA's job. Now, let's just say someone has success with our free trial. What's the next step? How can this client now become our client? How can now this prospect buy into our paid program? What's the difference between a free trial and a paid program? Let's get into that. So once someone became our client, we would offer them, you know, done for you, Facebook and Instagram ads. And, and what we would promise is that, hey, you know, you're going to start getting 60 to 80 new leads per month. We never gave them the exact number. Instead, we gave them a range. What the range did is saying 60 to 80. At the worst case scenario, we always knew that we're going to get at the minimum 60. And this was always sort of like the worst case scenario. Now, there's another rule that uh, you want to keep in the back of your mind. Under promise, over deliver. Once again, under promise, over deliver. So you want to think about that when you're, uh, you know, giving access to your full program. We also promise that, hey, you know, within 24 hours of working with us, you're going to start getting leads coming in. Within the first seven days, they're going to have appointments coming in. Within the first three months, you're going to have a transaction or you're going to get very close to that point within 90 days. So if you uh, pay attention closely, you can see that we gave it time frames. And if there was like a big outcome that we were promising, we sort of said like, hey, you're going to get a closing or you're going to get very close to that within three months. And we also offered retargeting ads. Like I said, uh, we then provided all of the organic lead generation campaigns that we had. And in return, these organic lead generation campaigns, they would generate anywhere from 20 to 30 free leads per month per each client. This was set up by the agent and they would take less than two minutes to set up. So we just provided a video training. The realtor would open up the free training, play the video, open up another tab and just copy whatever was being done in the free video. We also offer done for you uh, LSA ads. Now, for those of you that don't know what LSA is, it's pretty much like not Google ads, but they are ads that show up above Google ads. So they show up above the Google My Business listings and above the Google ads and they show up right at the top. Now, this was something brand new at the time. And that was something that we included. So this was something that was brand new to our uh, service for the realtor. We also offered done for you Google My Business Management. So part of this service was that we need to we had to keep the Google My Business optimized. We had to keep it active. What that meant was we had to help the realtor get more Google reviews. More the Google reviews, the better these ads were going to perform. We also posted weekly on their Google My Business listing because it showed Google that this business is active. If we can show Google that this business is active, Google is going to promote that business because they're paying attention to their social media. We also offered concierge and then eventually we transitioned into AI text-based follow-up. But initially, we offered follow-up that was being done by a real human but of course a va that would manage like 30 clients what we promised as a result of using this you know text-based concierge and this ai-based follow-up is the client would get 5 to 15 phone or zoom appointments per month 
Of course, this is dependent on the market. Once again, we gave them a range. We always underpromised and overdelivered. Eighty. Uh, we would also set the expectation that eighty percent of the appointments that we do book for you will turn into an attendance. So eighty percent of the appointments that we do book for you, that person is going to show up. Eighty percent of the time, they're going to show up. So these aren't just you know any random appointment. We're making sure that these people also book up. One thing is just like booking like a hundred calls, but no one's showing up. Another thing is making sure that people are qualified. You book less appointments, but people are qualified. And the people are actually showing up to their appointment. Another thing that we included that was part of this offer is database reactivation. So we took all of the leads that our realtor had before working with us, and we put these leads into our CRM and we reactivated the entire database. What this meant was without spending more money on advertising, we, re we, we brought these uh, leads that were dead back to life via text, email, and voicemail drops. And then the text concierge or the AI-based follow-up would then follow up with these people. So just, so just without spending more money on advertising, we just brought in additional appointments for our client. And uh, in terms of pricing, uh, I, I missed uh, training and coaching. We also provided you know, assets, videos, templates, strips, workflows, processes. We provided sales training, scripts, recorded calls. We also provided one-on-one -on -one call support on demand. Very valuable. We offered email and text support, and we also offered coaching calls three times a week. So if the client had any questions, they can meet with a real person over Zoom and have a live coaching call. Now for a service like this, we charge 6K. And if you guys are wondering who paid for the text messages, you know, who paid for the additional costs like the Facebook ads, the client would pay separately for that. Now the payment terms we would charge, uh, uh, we would make sure that the payment comes in within the first 90 days of working with us. So we did offer payment plans. Payment can be due in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. But we wanted to make sure that the payment was fully collected within 90 days of working with us. And we only offered payment plans uh, to real estate agents that didn't have the money right on top of them. But I'm going to make one note here. And the note that I'm going to make is aim to collect 30% of the cash up front. If you can collect 30% of the cash up front, you're running a fairly healthy business. This means that the, the remainder 70% of the cash you can collect in installments. And I'm going to get further into how to pitch this as uh, a sales pitch a little bit later on in the sales training but for now just keep in mind that you want to collect about 30 percent of the cash up front now what was a contract term that we worked with we would offer to work with uh, anywhere from six to one year with the client now what's up with the range initially we would only work with the, the, the real stage for one year and we would charge 6k for one year Eventually, we started getting so many testimonials, so many case studies, and we had a lot more social proof that now we had more leverage and we had more authority, which means we could sort of demand higher prices for less time. And then we brought our time frame down to six months. Of course, you know, we had a guarantee and the guarantee that we had, you know, we put this in the agreement and the contract, but we, like, but we just said that, hey, you know, if you cannot close the deal within one year of working with us, that we will continue to work with you. And we did have, you know, a few other clauses, but it was sort of like a conditional guarantee. They need to do X, Y, and Z if you want to qualify for the guarantee. Now, let's talk about the, the math behind the free trials. I know a lot of gurus and a lot of YouTubers especially mention how you should not be doing free trials. I am a, I stand by doing free trials. And the reason being is, like I mentioned earlier, that there's no better offer that you can make than giving something away for free. Yes, you do need to prove that your service works. And yes, you got to do a lot more work, but it's also very profitable. So it makes all of it worth it. Now, I'm going to break down how you know, free trials can turn into some serious money for your business. Let's talk about it. 
Now, let's just say, you know, you set up 10 trials per month and you're closing at about a 50% rate. Keep in mind, at our peak, we were closing free trials at 60 to 70%, which was insane. Keep in mind, this is somewhat that this is a lead that we didn't pay money for. We just did organic prospecting, free outbound prospecting. We would do a free trial and then we converted 50, we were converting 60 to 70% into a paying customer. Let's just say worst a worst case scenario, you only convert half of them into a paying customer. We were charging six grand, you know, you would make 30,000. Let's just say you did 20 free trials instead of 10. At the same closing rate, at a 6K ticket price, you would make 60 grand. Now let's up this number from 20 to 50. At the same closing rate, at the same ticket price of 6K, you would make 150 grand. Now, if you think about it, your income is simply just dependent on how much, how many free trials you can set per month. The more free trials you start, the higher the probability of you making more money, right? So there, there's no downside of doing free trials other than of course, time is going to take away your time. But in the beginning, when you know, but when you don't have any money, what, what ad set do you have? You have time, you have time on your side. So when bigger companies, they can't do stuff like this, you know, you can do it since you have the time. So your income is dependent on your close rate and how many trials you can set. The more the trials, the better. The better your service, the more money you're going to make. And this is how, you know, we were bringing in so much more profit just by doing outbound. While everyone else was, you know, trying to pitch their main service for outbound prospecting, we instead came in and we said, hey, we're going to just give you everything for free. If you like our service, great. We got to work together. If not, worst case scenario, we part ways, no harm, no foul, and we go our separate ways. And that's the end of it. And it worked like a charm. Now let's get into the uh, the referral program. Now, when we're thinking about a referral program, have you ever thought to yourself, like, how easy is it to close a deal with someone who's already been referred to you? Honestly, there's nothing that's easier than that. It's like, uh, it's like if I if if my best friend comes to me, my best friend says, "Hey, you know, you drink a lot of Starbucks coffee, but let me tell you." There is this new coffee shop that is downstairs and it just opened up and I'm telling you, you need to try their coffee. They're, they're, it beats Starbucks coffee. I'm going to take my best friend's word and I'm going to go try out this new coffee because it's a referral. It's trust. With the referral program, if your service is good and you play your cards right, you can create what is called quadratic growth in your business. And I'm going to dive deeper into what's quadratic growth. But there's nothing more powerful than having quadratic growth in your business. It's sort of like a chain reaction. One happy client refers two other people. Now those two people refer four other people. And it creates and, and, and this number just keeps multiplying. This is how you unlock quadratic growth in your business. This is where uh, an irresistible offer once again comes into play. Now what I mean by irresistible offer is you know we like initially make us such a good offer so they end up becoming our customer, like a random person becomes our customer. Now you're going to make an offer so good, but for your referral program that the client just cannot say no. So let me give you an example. As soon as we would bring on a client, us or our salespeople, they would ask the now client that, Hey, do you want to get a few months worth of ad spend for free? We have a killer referral program. Would you like to, would you want me to tell you more about it? And everyone would be like, yes, you know, tell me more. I want to, I want to learn more about your referral program. We would say, refer one customer. You get one month's worth of ad spend for free valued at 350. You refer two people. You get three months worth of ad spend for free at 1050. You refer three people. You get six months worth of ad spend for free valued at 2100. So just, just like that, you know, we, each salesperson, every time they close a deal, they would get two to three additional realtors contact information that, that we can now contact. So it didn't cost you anything to get phone numbers of these new people. And now your sales <coughs> and, and now your salespeople or you have more people to reach out to. 
And on top of that, there's sort of referrals. So you can call this now, now person, this new prospect, and you can mention that, hey, you know, your best friend, John, I referred me to you. So this is how we sort of unlocked quadratic growth. And we did this not just after bringing on a customer. We did this on the back end, on our onboarding call. Anytime our client got a big win, anytime our client made money, anytime our client got success with the program, we would bring up the referral program. And this is what unlocked quadratic growth in your business. This is stuff that people don't see. This is stuff that you cannot copy. So you can never go wrong if you uh, search yourself a referral, a good referral program, not a shitty referral program. Like I was mentioning earlier, this good, this great. Make sure you have a great referral program. Let's dive deep into organic prospecting. So organic prospecting is essential. It doesn't matter whether you're looking to run paid advertising because organic prospecting is what is profitable. With advertising, it's always going to become more expensive. I, I, I can go on a, ramp, on a rant about this, but just to keep things super simple and to keep things super short, over time, any advertising channel that has existed since the beginning of time, such as TV, newspapers, Google ads back in the 2000s, Facebook ads, the cost to advertise is always going to increase because more advertisers are going to start to understand, eventually realize that, you know, this platform is good. We're getting a good cheap cost per acquisition. Let's advertise on it. And over time, more and more education gets out, the word gets out, and more and more advertisers flood the, flood the platforms to start advertising. So that's a rule that you need to always have in the back of your mind. It's like a law that the, the, the cost to advertise is always going to rise. So you always need to combat that. You need to have something, you need to have a force that works against it. And one of the forces is organic prospecting. So I'm going to first dive deeper into cold SMS outbound. Now, I want to give a few disclaimers. But before that, let's talk about cold SMS, which is you know just text messaging. Text messaging is a powerful way to reach out to potential clients. Why? Almost every person reads their text messages. I can guarantee you, you know, if you get a text message right now, you're going to open the text message or you're going to read it. You may not respond to it, but you will read it. I believe studies say that, you know, there's a 98% open rate, which, you know, I can agree because I pretty much see every text message that I get. And which is way higher than any other form of cold outbound outreach. But here's a catch. If something is that good, there's going to be some legal legality issues. Let's get into it. So legally, you cannot send uh, promotional text messages to people unless you have their permission. So you need to have someone's like written consent, which is like someone saying yes to receiving text messages. B, you need to get verbal consent that needs to be recorded. C, someone needs to take a box on a website. Confirm, you know, whenever you opt into an ad, they may tell you to click this tick box and it usually has a disclaimer. So you need to have something like that if you're looking to send someone a promotional text message. Or D, a person is texting a keyword to a number that you've set up. But here's the thing. In the real estate world, there's a bit of a gray area. Now I'm getting a little bit more specific into the real estate niche. However, this may or may not apply for your niche. So stick around. Real estate agents usually have their contact information online for business for business purposes. What does this mean? That means they're sort of, in a way, allowing and accepting messages to come in. Now, it's not totally clear that this is sort of like a bit of an you know gray area, but unsolicited unsolicited text messages aren't uh, you know good. So be careful. So sending a lot of text messages like a drip campaign is very risky. Do not do not take the risk of putting people onto a drip campaign where you're just sending a text message, where you just get a bunch of real estate agents and you put, put them on a Google spreadsheet, send them, put them in a CRM, and then you start sending them a text message once a day. You will, first off, your phone number could get blocked by the carriers. B, your, your account can get shut down. C, the real estate agents can come after you and they can find out who the owner is and you could possibly get a lawsuit, which I want to be talking about next. Uh, so just don't do that. If someone tells you to stop or unsubscribe, take them off your list immediately. Now, there are some rules I need to check out. TCPA is one. CTIA is uh, number two. So TCPA is pretty much uh, the federal laws. And you must obtain express written consent from people before sending them a promotional text message. 
failure to do so can trigger large class action lawsuits and penalties up to 500 per text. Basically, you need clear consent before sending promotional text messages. Not following this can lead to big lawsuits and fines. In summary, the rules are very strict. The rules are actually getting stricter day by day just because there is so much spam. And especially nowadays with AI coming out, people don't, people, uh, the government doesn't want business owners or people to get spammed with, you know, machines or robots or AI where, you know, their daily livelihood is getting affected. So part of that is, uh, you know, TCPA. So I would highly recommend that everyone reads into the TCPA rules. Now, CTIA rules, these are rules that are to protect you from unwanted text messages. This is usually by the carriers, I believe. So if you have a phone, you're likely working with a service provider, you know, whether that's TELUS, you know, we're I'm based out of Canada. So the big one is TELUS, Rogers, Fido. These are some of the big ones. So, so these are rules that are set by them. From our experience, sending a single text message works okay in real estate, but you need to decide whether it is the right fit for your business. And always do your own research. I'm just sharing what's worked for us. Now, I want to set a quick disclaimer that uh, if you know if you come across if you do this and you come across any issues, I am not held liable. I'm just telling you that this is one of the organic outbound prospecting methods. It may or may not work for your niche. However, you need to read into the rules, and you are responsible for doing this. But I'm including it in here because it's very powerful. Now, once again, you know when we're talking about the offer that we're going to be promoting via cold sms is once again i want to be promoting a free trial offer like i said doesn't matter which prospecting channel we're going to be prospecting on i always want to put the best possible offer up front and you know if you're not spending money prospecting you can afford to do free trials maybe not with paid advertising which i'm going to be getting into a little bit later on but with organic prospecting, you know, it's not really costing you anything. So you do have time on your side. You can do free trials. Now, let's talk about the tools for sending out the cold text messages. Now, there's there's two tools that I use, Close.io, and I use, also use Go High Level. I found that Go High Level is a bit more effective when we're sending a cold SMS. It has some good automations that Close.io doesn't have. And they can make a big difference in your outreach efforts. So... I'm not saying put all these prospects onto an email on, on a text drip campaign. Instead, I'm saying you can use other automations, which are more, which, uh, what was it? which are more, uh, they're more, they're, they're inside of go high level. The, the automations are much better in go high level than close to IO. That's, that's just what I've found. Now let's talk about, uh, some of the templates that that we've personally used and that we provide that that we have seen success with. So these are some that that we've worked with in our in my in a real estate marketing agency and it's worked wonders wonders for us. So so template one, hey first name, you know this is your name from your company. We're looking for a few agents in your area to that are open to getting free appointments booked for them. You just covered the ad spend. Are you open to them? Please let me know by sending me a quick text back. There is little to no effort required on your end. And at worst case, you walk away with a few appointments. Keep in mind, it doesn't matter the channel, like whether you're sending cold DMs, cold calls, you're making cold emails or cold text messages. You're essentially sending out the exact same offer. These are just different channels. Template two. Hey, first name. You know, this is my name from your company. I want, you, I want to book you some appointments on your calendar for free by offering a free trial. I'll put my money where my mouth is. No catch here. If you like the free trial, you can purchase my actual service. Please let me know by sending me a quick text back. Thank you. Hi, first name. This is your name from your company. We're looking for three agents in your area that can take on some free appointments. I'm willing to do this at no cost for you besides the advertising cost. Make sure you don't mislead people here. No harm, no foul. I want to lead with proof that I can help you out. Please let me know by sending me a quick text back with the word interested. Keep in mind, we don't want to mislead people. It is not necessarily a free trial. The real estate agent in this case is covering for the ad spend since we're going to be running a free trial. So make sure that 
you know, you're not just pissing people off where they're responding to you and then maybe you jump on a call with them and then they respond back and you just piss them off because they thought it was completely free. It's not completely free. Okay. Template four, apologies for coming in cold day. We're offering a 10 day free trial where we will book you meetings in your calendar. Yes, you read that correctly. No fees here other than ad spend. Are you open to chatting more? And then you insert your name. So in conclusion, SMS, great way to prospect. You're going to get the highest open rate. However, a lot of legality issues. It is something that sounds too good to be true. So you do need to be very careful. If you don't have much to lose, you know, you know, of course, you know, you can go out there and try it, but do it at your own risk. That's my, that's my disclaimer to you. And for this, always, once again, push for the free trial. Now, this may or may, may, or may not work for your uh, niche. So see if, you know, you can get phone numbers. But for us, you know, for real estate agents, you know, they, technically they have their information online. So they're sort of accepting the fact that they may, you know, get outreached by other companies. All right, let's talk about cold emails. The goal with cold emails is not to make an instant sale. Like any organic prospecting, the goal is to not make initial sales. The goal is to instead start a conversation. Let the conversation turn into an appointment and let that appointment then turn into a paying customer. That's when the sales process starts. So think of, think, think of cold email as like the first step in building a relationship. This is sort of like the first initial DM. This is sort of like the first impression that you're making with the client. It's like when you first meet someone. That's, that's how you want to treat the cold email. Your main aim is to just get replies and just to start conversations. Now, I've included some cold email templates that you can use. So let's go through these cold email templates. Now, in terms of subject lines, these are pretty much all the subject lines that I've found that have been the top performing after hundreds and hundreds of split tests. So I'm sure you may or may have not seen some of these, but let's just uh, go through them. Quick question. Referral, uh, free trial, invite, quick, cue, first name, referrals for you, wanting to send this to you, first name, forward, appointments for you, RE, you know, semicolon, appointments for you, forward, et cetera, et cetera. Apart from these, we haven't really seen any other, you know, any other subject lines beat these. And uh, you can always get creative with subject lines. So the subject line is pretty much going to determine your open rate. So this is sort of like the first part in the process. So just make sure you're running, writing some banger subject lines. Now let's talk about the templates. So once again, guys, keep in mind, I am going to be promoting the, the free trial. Hey, first name, we help real estate agents turn one marketing dollar into 20 within 90 days or less. I actually like that claim a lot. You can probably copy that claim if you want <laughs> for your niche or if you're in real estate, it's for you. The reason why I'm reaching out is because we want to offer you a 10 day free trial of our system where we provide you appointments for free. You just cover the ad spend. Once again, I'm trying to make sure that I'm not misleading here. There's zero downside, unlimited upside. We're putting our money where our mouth is. Reply back with a yes if you want to learn more. Here is our track record. So we're just throwing in some social proof here. And this is because I'm sure real estate agents get a lot of cold emails. And I'm, I'm going to assume that their inbox is full. So for this reason, I'm trying to include as much social proof as possible. I've, I've eliminated all downside, our removed risk. And I have a pretty nice claim here as well that you can copy. Template two. The reason why I'm reaching out is because I want to offer you a 10 day free trial of our guaranteed closing system. A little background on us. We help real estate just turn one marketing dollar into 20 with the 90 days or less. There's zero downside and there is unlimited upside. We're putting our money where our mouth is. You get free meetings and I get to show you that my stuff works. Deal? Here is our track record. And then you can cover your track record. And you don't need to have like 10 or 15 like I do. Just include your best ones. And the call to action here is please reply back with a yes. Now template three. Is hey, first name, we're looking to bring on 18 agents for our 10 day free trial where we will literally give you appointments booked onto your calendar for free. Yes, you read that correct. 
discovered the ad spend, that is all. A little background about us. We help real estate agents turn one marketing dollar into 20 within 90 days or less. Once again, here is our track record. So I'm backing up our big claim. So of course, you know, we're making a big claim here with our track record. Once again, call to action is please reply back with a yes. Template four. Hey, first name, we're looking to bring on 18 agents for a 10 day free trial where we will generally lead and book appointments for you. Best of all, we guarantee a closing sum, eliminating our risk once again. A little background on us. You know, this is what we do. This is a big claim. Here's our social proof. Please reply back with a yes. Let's go to template five. Once again, we help real estate agents turn one marketing dollar into 20 within 90 days or less. The reason why I'm reaching out is because I want to offer you a 10 day free trial. Is there a downside limited upside? Reply back with yes if you want to learn more and the same track record. Now, let me ask you a question. What did you notice about these emo templates? You would have realized that really, most of the time, we're just really just changing the first few sentences. And the reason being is because that's the first thing someone is going to read when they open up an email. Whenever you open up your mail app on your phone, you really just read the first sentence. And if the first sentence is not something that you resonate with, or it doesn't pique your interest, or it doesn't really grab your attention, you're going to move on with your life. That's why a lot of the split testing is usually done in the first few sentences. The rest can sort of stay the same, right? But that's the first thing that we're really changing. So once again, you have access to these templates. Keep in, keep in mind that here, personalization is key. You want to aim to send about 80 to 100 personalized emails every single day. If your emails aren't ending up in spam and people are opening them, you'll likely see good response rates. Remember, most people just blast out generic emails. By taking the time to personalize, you show respect for your prospects and they will notice that you put an effort. You'll stand out and sometimes that effort alone can get you a response. The number one mistake that people make with cold emails is they send out these mass generic emails. Problem with that is, of course, you know, you can do the quantity, but the quality of emails is just not there. And in today's world, you know, where there's so many different social media apps, just so much noise online, so many different ways to get distracted. People want something that is personalized to them. Like you made that one thing that made that one email for them. You don't make it for anyone else. That's what they want to see. Make it a morning morning routine, say, let's just say between 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. Where, you know, you just sit down and you just bang out 80 to 100 personalized cold emails. It's going to be a bit of a grind, but once again, you're not here to be average. Okay. The game is to eventually start putting all this stuff on steroids with paid advertising. Until then, you need to sort of exchange time for money and you need to put in the work, you need to sweat, you need to put, put some labor hours in. Now, let's talk about the big no-nos. Um, keep in mind, majority of your emails are going to be read on mobile. So you need to optimize your emails for a phone. So if you open up an email on your phone app, you'll notice that you, can, you can't even read the entire email. You can only really read the first few sentences. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're running these emails. Do not use caps lock like free or these big wins, uh, like words like this in your emails. So no clickbait. Avoid attachments. They're fast track to spam folder. Stay away from the fancy HTML and email signatures. Don't keep anything too fancy. All caps in your subject line is a big no, no. Don't make your emails look like newsletters. I don't know why people still do this <laughs> in today's day and age. You gotta make your emails look nice, easy, simple, easy to read. That's key. Simplicity is key. And making our emails look pretty is not going to bring you any ROI. It's sort of like you having a website and a funnel. How the website looks or how the funnel looks is not going to have any impact on the conversion rates. What's going to have the impact on the conversion rates are the words on the website, on the funnel, and the copywriting. And the offer, of course, that has been made on that. But it's more about the words than, you know, about the colors and the way the funnels websites look. And uh, you can also read this article uh, this, that was written by Active Campaign of examples of words that you do not want to have in your email. Now, you'll notice that uh, I'm not giving you the 
the exact you know process of sending cold emails that's good the reason why i'm not doing that is because there's so many tutorials on youtube there's so many softwares that are being run that the process is always changing the process may work today but tomorrow it might be a different process like tomorrow it might be a different software there might be a new ai software or tool tomorrow so there's tons of free videos online. Like I actually did a simple YouTube search before recording this segment of this doc. And I saw there's so many long hour, two, three hour long trainings, so many different softwares. Cold emails have to be made very easy. So you can just take these templates and go make it work. And um, if this stuff, you know, if the process does change, just of course, once again, just do more research and find um, softwares. But more importantly, I've given you the templates, not the actual, you know, which software should I use? How should I scrape emails? There's always going to be new tools, new software. So you can, you know, just take a look at them and uh, you know, find more in-depth training on YouTube because that stuff's going to change. And I want to make sure that the information that I have in this doc is evergreen. All right, so let's talk about cold calling. First and foremost, when you're going to be cold calling, the number one thing that you first need is you need to gather the leads information. Now, when I'm talking about gathering the leads information, you want to have stuff like their website, of course, their phone number, email address, the city, and the time zone. Now, the most important one, and the reason why I bold it, the time zone is because it will dictate, the time zone will pretty much tell you when and when you should not be cold calling this person. So the time zone, I'm going to write this down. Time zone will tell you when you can or cannot call this prospect. You don't want to be the one person that's calling your lead at 8 p.m. You're just going to piss people off and these people are going to tell you to never call them ever again. And they're just going to get cussed out. So time zone is going to tell you that. Now, the reason why you want to get the prospect's city is because it will tell you the phone number that you should be using. I'm based out of Vancouver. So the, the, the area code that we have over here is 604. So if I'm getting a call from this number from Texas, I'm just not even going to pick up the phone. However, if someone calls me with a 604 area code, the, the likelihood that I'm going to be picking up the phone is much higher. So the city will tell you, you know, which phone number to use, right? So think of area code. Okay. And you want to have stuff like, <clears throat> and you want to have stuff like the websites and email addresses just so you can follow up. Of course, email addresses are used to follow up and website is to use. So you have some sort of ammo and some stuff that you can talk about. Now, number, uh, point number two is call them twice. Now, there's something in our world that is referred to as double dial. What I, uh, what I mean by double dial each lead is you want to call each lead twice. If you're going to be calling, cold calling someone, you don't want to just call them once. And then if the person doesn't pick up and move on to the next person. Instead, you want to call the person twice. That's what we refer to as double dial. Call them back to back. And ideally, you want to block out three to four hours per day to cold call. This is where you just sit down. You don't do anything else, but you just cold call. And ideally, you want to call people i lead ideally you know after 9 a.m and you know before 4 to 5 p.m on monday to friday and if someone doesn't pick up the phone the second time that's when you can sort of leave a voicemail now of course you know you could follow up via email and you can also set up tasks within the crm to follow up that's totally uh, up to you but of course you know the more the touch points once again you know if we go back to this one rule that i may or may have not mentioned earlier but there's something called the 7 11 4 rule Someone needs to watch seven hours worth of content, have 11 different touch points across four different platforms to become a customer, to buy something from a brand. And this is something that I'm not coming up with. This is instead something that Google had, has published. So that's just, you know, sort of something to keep in mind. So keep in mind uh, the uh, 7 11 for, uh, rule. Okay, so I'm just going to bold this just for your information. All right, so let's go over the script. So the script is very straightforward. Now, before I get into the script, I want to tell you that 
The way we came up with the script is I've built an outbound commissionally sales team that just did outbound sales. This is where I had a team where they just cold called other real estate agents. And we booked people that didn't know us, people that did not come from paid ads into appointments. Number two, I've also bought a lot of sales training from a lot of different gurus, coaches, mentors. And this is a one sales script, uh, one cold call script that just seemed to work out of all of them. And number three, we've actually used this real life. So this is really the only script that you need to book cold people into appointments. So let's get started with the script. So first and foremost, once again, if you are in another niche, you can sort of take this framework and apply it into your niche. And I'll sort of teach you the framework as I'm going through this. First and foremost, hey, first name, hey, agent name. This is Jazz. How are you doing today? I'm calling from General Agent Leads because we're looking for three agents in our area to try out our system for free where we specialize in generating and booking appointments for you on your calendar. This means we will literally book in someone to speak with you for free just to show you that our process works. Do you have time for a quick chat right now? Let's just say they say yes. I just wanted to ask you some qu uh, quick questions to see if you qualify for a free trial of our system. We want to make sure that everyone is a fit and can handle what we'll do for them. Cool. Okay, so the first question. The trial is free in terms of labor, but what you will be paying for is 30 bucks a day for ad spend for 10 days totaling to $300, which you'll prepay to start the trial. Are you okay with that? Along and, and then you know, once we sort of get away with the money qualifier, because we don't want to mislead people and we don't want to book appointments just by saying, oh, you know, I'm giving you all this stuff for free. There is some sort of a money component involved, which is, you know, 300 bucks. Of course, you know, that's going through to Facebook. We're not making anything out of it. So, of course, we want to, you know, get that point across to the prospect. Number two. How long have you been a residential real estate agent for? So keep in mind, you know, we're sort of asking about the current state right now. Question number three, what are you currently doing to generate new leads? Where is your business coming from? So of course, you know, over here, we're once again, we're asking for the current situation. What are they currently doing for lead generation? That's what we're asking right now. So look for answers like, you know, I'm doing referrals, I'm doing word of mouth, I'm doing flyers, I'm doing bus stop ads, I'm cold calling, I'm doing open houses. Question number four, do you manage a team as a broker right now, or do you operate as an individual agent? Once again, we're asking this question to sort of get an idea of the type of avatar that we're speaking with. How many deals did you do last year in, uh, you know, 2024 or whatever? In the next six to 12 months, how many closings do you want to be doing? So as you notice, you know, we went from current situation to now their goals. Where do they want to get to? So in the next six to 12 months, you know, how many closings do you want to be doing? Where do you want to go? And then, you know, they talk about their goals. So, and then we have uh, another financial qualifier to make sure we're booking qualified appointments. Number seven, you know, hypothetically speaking, if, if you move forward with the trial and have a good experience with it, are you willing and able to invest, you know, six to $8,000 for the year? So this is sort of our money qualifier. We're just looking for red flags here. We're looking for any possible red flags that we can get. So just so we don't waste our time with someone that's not qualified. Question number eight. And full transparency, just to get a feel for how decisions are made. Who else is involved in the decision to move forward with something like this? Who has the final say? Okay. So this is where we're getting the decision maker. We're figuring out that is this person working on their own or is someone else going to be giving their credit card? Is someone else going to be giving the green light to move forward? Is someone else in charge of the finances? We're trying to figure that out. The last question is, let's say you find value in our presentation for the trial. How soon would you like to get started on the trial? So once again, we're not asking them to become a customer, but instead get started with our free trial. Now, let's just say we get positive answers to all of the questions. We're going to then follow up by saying, well, based on what you told me so far, you sound like a great fit for our trial. What we can do is get you booked in for a demo call with one of our, our account executives and they will visually walk you through the process. This call will be on Zoom, so you will need we will need you to be in front of a computer. What time zone are you currently in? I'm looking at my calendar and I have so-and-so available on so-and-so. Do either of those slots work for you? 
So once again, over here, you don't want to ask the prospect for their availability. Instead, you want to ask for and instead you want to check your account executives availability, quote unquote, account executives availability, because you have a big team, your, your salespeople are busy. So that's sort of the angle that you want to take that I'm running this company. And I have these account executives and their calendars are super packed and they're super busy. They're in very high demand. So you need to sort of get that point across by the way you sort of ask your questions. What's the best email to book you in for the call and send you the invite? Perfect. Now that you're scheduled, please go to your email and click yes on the invite. So it shows up on our calendar. Earlier last year, Google came up with this you know, new update where if you book an appointment with a prospect, it's going to say unknown sender in their email. So that appointment is actually not going to show up on someone's calendar. So the only way to actually prevent that is they need to manually go into the invite and accept the invite. So make sure you tell your prospects to accept the invite. If they don't accept it, they're not going to see the appointment on their calendar. Okay. And that heavily drops the show up rate. Another thing is uh, we're going to provide a bit of homework for the prospect. Okay, great. One last thing. The account executives will be walking, uh, will be sending you an email with more information about us. Please take a look at this email prior to the call as it's going to give you a better understanding of our process and make the Zoom calls more productive. Could you take a look at this email prior to your call? Now that is pretty much all what the script is. It's very similar to a sales script. All you're doing is just qualifying the prospect. You're qualifying, making sure that they have a need for something like this, make, making sure that you're talking to the decision maker. Number three, you're actually talking to someone that's qualified, which means that they have money. You don't want to be doing free trials for people that just want freebies. Okay. So, you know, these are just some of the questions that we came across. Of course, you know, you can cater this towards your niche. But some of the questions that we had was, you know, how much does this cost? For larger teams, you know, we have different packages. I'll set you up for a demo to walk you through our process and the options we offer. Once again, we sort of, uh, you know, directed the answer to this question that, Hey, you know, you know, we do have a lot of different packages, but we can walk it to do this on a Zoom call. So we sort of indirectly answered this question, right? It's called deflecting. We sort of like deflected. What do you guys actually do? So we generate leads for you by running paid advertising on different channels like Facebook, Instagram, Google, LSA, and some organic methods. We also do something very different from everyone else called the video sales editor. We have found that a lot of agents don't utilize this which leads to them being seen as a commodity. The only people in this industry dedicated to solving this very particular problem for real estate agents. What's included in the free trial? You know, in the free trial, we'll handle everything. Our team takes care of nurturing, booking leads onto your calendar. You just show up for the appointments. For the trial, you won't pay us for anything, just the ad cost to Facebook and Instagram. Does that make sense? What is this going to cost? So for the free trial, you will not pay our company a dime. You will, of course, have to spend $300, which is going to be paid to Facebook and Instagram for the advertising. Once the trial is done, if you would like to continue working with us, the company, the, with our company, the investment for the entire year would be $6,000 to $8,000 for the whole year. That being said, first name, if you move forward with the trial and have a good experience with it, are you willing and able to invest six dollars to $8,000 for the year? What makes you different from everyone else promising the same things? We generate leads for you by running paid advertising on different channels like Facebook, Instagram, Google, LSA, and some organic methods. On top of that, we also do something very different from everyone else called the VSO. We have found that a lot of agents, I think I repeated this question. I think this question was up top. So I'm going to skip past this. <laughs> what makes you guys different from me running my own ads? If you are thinking of running your own ads, consider the time and the effort that it takes. Most agents find themselves spending more time on marketing than on the actual business. This will really come in. We'll handle all of the marketing, freeing you up to, for you to focus on selling homes, building relationships, and closing deals. Our team has already developed a proven process, including lead follow-up strategies. Including lead follow-up strategies. Working, as, working with us means tapping into the years of industry's expertise. Does that make sense? What's the difference between six to eight thousand? Now, if you're providing a range, you will start getting questions like, <clears throat> like, like, what's the difference between you know six thousand, eight thousand? The difference is because you know we have incentivized pricing. So agents who are able to save our company the time of going back and forth, 
we're able to offer them uh, you know, discounted pricing. Why don't you offer pay at closing? Pay at closing, now for those of you that don't know, the way real estate just make money is they either help someone buy a home, they help someone sell a home, and if they don't do that, they don't make any money, but if they do that, they would get a big commission check. Now pay at closing pretty much means that, oh, you know, if I sell a deal, if I sell a home, shouldn't you get paid then as a marketing company? Now pay at closing makes sense for agents starting out with limited capital. In the long term, pay at closing doesn't make sense because if you really think about it, three out of every 10 deals will go to our referral company. That means $100,000 in commissions for you will mean 30,000 of that 100K will go to the referral company. <laughs> like most of the time, you know, this referral company referral fee doesn't factor in brokerage splits and your share ends up being a lot less. So of course, you know, if you pay this com big commission to the marketing company and then you have your own brokerage split and there's all, a, all of the... And there's all of these other expenses that go into closing on a home. You're really not left with much. So that's the argument that we make to the realtor against PA closing. We work with a lot of top agents and they prefer to pay a flat fee and be covered uh, for a year. Are you open to pay, a, uh, pay, a, pay to play option? Or are you just looking to pay at closing, right? How will you get me to my goal? So if someone is sort of skeptical about sort of the service that we offer, this is what we said. So agents working with us who spend about 300 a month in advertising usually are able to close one to three deals per month. So to get to your goal, we would set up the systems to help you scale. Then it's just about spending more on advertising to close more deals. Now, just like that, we answer majority of the questions that we're going to come across. You know, if someone does, uh, you know, start asking us any questions. So that is the cold calling script. And we will now move on let's move on to the next part one of my favorite parts which is going to be funnel building you will be using what is called the vsl video sales letter funnel which has proven time and time again to build multiple eight figure per year companies there are so many multi eight figure companies that have been simply built on the simple vsl funnel and a vsl funnel the best part is that it only has five different steps this is all you need to worry about let's go through each one together First and foremost, you're going to have what is called the opt-in page. People, other words, people also refer to this page as a landing page. But the opt-in page, essentially, in other words, is where people will give you their name, email, and phone number. This is where people opt in, right? So in other words, you know, this can also be referred to as, can also be referred to as a landing page, right? So when someone clicks on your ad or when someone goes to a page, this is a page that they land on, landing page. The next page you, we have is what is called the VSL page, the video sales letter page. This is a page where we're going to put the video. And we're going to be diving deeper into what a video sales letter really is a little bit later on. But this is pretty much a page, as a very simple page, where you're just going to have a video staple to it. Now, once someone goes from the opt-in page where they, where they give us a name, email, and phone number, they land on the VSL page with the video, they're going to end up on what is called the application page. So if they watch the video and it piques their interest and they want to learn more about the offer, they land on this page, what's called the application page, where they will fill out some pre-qualifying questions. This is where, once again, you can ask for their name, email, phone number, and you're going to ask additional qualifying questions, which, which we'll be diving into deeper later on. And once someone fills an application page, then they can book a call. This is what we refer to as a booking page. Very simple. You can have Calendly on here. You can have one sub on here. You can have a high level, go high levels calendar here. Once someone books a call, they end up what is called the thank you page. This is sort of where you thank them. And I'll dive deeper into what is we like to call homework. But this is essentially where you provide homework to the prospect leading up to the sales call. Now, let's talk about some of the upsides of using this funnel. Let's talk about some of the pros of this funnel. Number one, it's a simple five page setup, not too complicated. It's very simple. It's super scalable. You can grow it as big as you need. I've seen once again, companies do multiple eight figures per year, just based on this one funnel. It's very easy to test different elements. If you think about it, majority of the testing is going to be done on these two pages. So if there's five steps to the funnel, majority of the testing is just going to be done on the opt-in page on the VSL page, 90% of the testing. It's very quick to set up and you can get it up and running, you know, within like five to 10 minutes if you're sort of a pro at this. 
it's not going to take you that long to get set up. Now let's talk about how do you succeed with this funnel? Now the success of your funnel is dependent on getting a lot of good leads coming up from paid advertising. So we're going to be diving deeper into paid advertising and how to get high quality leads. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Number two, writing great headlines for your opt-in page. Better the headline. The headline is usually going to have the biggest impact on the conversion rate of the opt-in page. Number three, having a very engaging video sales letter. So once again, we're going to be diving deeper into the opt-in page and we're also going to be diving super deep into the VSL page and the, the mechanics of a VSL. Now let's talk about some of the downsides, some of the cons of this funnel. If you truly want to see amazing returns with this funnel, you, you do need what is called appointment setters and you also need a solid email and text follow-up. What do I mean? Appointment setters are people, appointment setters are people that call the leads coming in and book them into appointments. That's what appointment setters do. Right? Uh, email and text based follow up is done through uh, is done through automation and what is called uh, drips. So the key is that you need to have really good follow up, right? If there's a hundred people that are opting in, giving you their information, you want to convert the most of them into appointments. This can only be done if you have once again appointment setters and you have you know, text-based follow-up and email-based follow-up that is going out. Now, if you need a funnel, now what I've done is you can simply copy this exact same funnel that I'm currently using for my own business that you can paste into your ClickFunnels account. So I just want to keep in mind that this is, I want to make a quick note here that this template is only for click funnels. Once again, if you want to use, if you want to use a different funnel builder, you can copy the exact format. These funnels aren't too hard to build. So even if you're using a different funnel builder, you can easily copy it. But just click on this link here and then you can, uh, you'll get redirected and you'll be able to load this funnel to your ClickFunnels account. So I'm going to just do that right now. So I'm going to let that load. And once that is in, then we'll take a look at the funnel. This is all what you got to do. Just let it load. And then just click on view funnel. And there you go. You should have the opt-in page. You should have the VSL page. You should have the application page, the booking page, the thank you page, privacy policy. And you should also have the terms and condition. We'll be diving deeper into the privacy policy and the terms and condition. You have to worry too much about that right now. But we're just going to focus on the opt-in page, VSL page, application page, booking page, thank you page. And we're going to be going through each page one by one. So I'm going to walk you through this. Let's go back over to the Google Doc. So once again, if you're not using ClickFunnels, you can use Go High Levels Funnel Builder. Apparently, what I've heard from Go High Levels team, since we work closely with them, is that their funnels are their uh, funnel speed is one of the fastest in the space, and it's been proven by a lot of different. Um, tracking softwares so they have a lot of data to back that claim up so you can just go high level click funnels they're both good uh, and these are very easy to copy so you can easily copy this into your go high level account go back over to the doc so once again you know click funnels versus go high level while i've talked to, uh, a lot about go high level on my channel and used them a company that all in one tool not just for funnels with specialized funnel building i recommend click funnels reliable and fast which is key key for successful funnels so the reason why i use click funnels is because number one it's a software that is just made for funnels. A go high level is sort of like an all-in-one tool. 
so they don't like specialize in funnels so i'm just gonna go with uh click funnels now we're gonna get some technical stuff done first and foremost we need to copy some codes onto your funnel and these codes may or may not be confusing to you but the first code that we're going to be adding onto your funnel is the facebook meta pixel now i'm going to get a bit technical now and the stuff is going to get a little bit more advanced but just follow along i'm just going to tell you exactly where to click copy paste this or to here and just do this and do that okay now what is a facebook meta pixel before back in the day you know this used to be just called a facebook pixel but now it's called a facebook meta pixel since facebook renamed it itself but this is key, adding the Facebook Metapixel. What it is, is it's really just a small piece of code that you just copy paste in the global header tracking section of your funnel. And I'm gonna show you where to do that. Now, what's the purpose of the Facebook Metapixel? The Facebook Metapixel tracks everyone that visits your funnel pages. It lets you retarget these visitors with Facebook ads later on. So for example, if I have a website, and I make this organic TikTok post or I make this Instagram video or make a YouTube video and someone ends up on my funnel page, I can retarget these people. Anyone that visited my website, anyone that visited my funnel, I can hit them with ads, right? This is how you uh, sort of receive this omnipresence sort of, uh, you know, influence. It's sort of like, uh, you know, TikToks and Instagram's algorithm. If you start watching the one video, you start getting targeted by products or services around that one thing that you were clicking on. That's sort of how it works. This is how you sort of create that everywhere at once feeling, making your business seem omnipresent to potential clients. So that's the point of the Facebook Metapixel. We're just going to go ahead and just get this done. So the, what, the way you do this is you need to go over to your Facebook and we're going to go over to the events manager and we're going to copy and paste this one code to this funnel. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right. So let's get started with the Facebook meta pixel. I've included a link here. Just click on this link and you should end up on the events manager within Facebook. Once you open this up, you'll likely get redirected to some page, depending on if you're logged into your Facebook account, if you're not logged into your Facebook account, or if you have an existing business manager, if you don't, depending on whatever page you end up on, you should see some business accounts if you already have an existing business manager. But if you don't, you should just see your personal account. I prefer to use a business account, a business manager. So for this reason, I'm going to open up my business account. We recommend that you have a business manager, whether you're running ads for yourself or you're running ads for a client. Now, ignore whatever you see on the screen. But what you are going to pay attention to is this green button here that says connect data sources. Click on this button and click on web because we're gonna be tracking traffic that's being sent over to a website. Click on web and then click this blue button here that says connect. And we're gonna go ahead and name our uh, pixel something. So I'll just write, uh, you know, SMMA guide, you know, YouTube or something, right? You can call it whatever you want. Click create. And it's going to go ahead and create me a uh, pixel. So for now, I'm just going to, uh, you know what? I can, I can write my website URL here. So if I go to my website URL, it's this link here. I'm just going to click copy. And I'm just going to add this in and click check. I think I should already have a uh, pixel, but I'm going to click next. And I'm going to add in the meta pixel myself. Click on next. And we're just going to add in the meta pixel only. Okay, so click next. And we're going to manually add the pixel code to the website. In other words, the funnel. So install the code manually and just copy the code here. This is your meta pixel code. And we're going to head over to click funnels. And we're going to go over to the settings. And we're going to add in this meta pixel throughout the entire funnel. So we're not going to add it on one individual page, but instead we're going to add it to the entire funnel. And you can already see that I'm a meta pixel code here, but I'm just going to delete this just for the sake of the video. And I'm going to add it right at the top of the head tracking code. Click paste. And make sure that you click save and update settings. And just like that, you've added in the meta pixel. 
Let's head back over to the dog here. And before we move on, keep in mind, guys, we're going to be testing all of this stuff later on. But just for now, make sure you click on settings. Make sure you add in the head, the, the metapixel code here in the head tracking code. So that's pretty much how you add in the meta pixel code. And pretty much what that's going to do is it's going to track all of the traffic that's coming to your website. And we can track all these people within Facebook. That's the whole purpose of it. But now let's move on over to the UTM parameters. Another crucial step in setting up your funnel is adding UTM parameters to your global header tracking code. Now, I'm going to talk about what UTM parameters is. It's, it's like a fancy term. It, it may sound a bit complicated, but don't worry. It's super simple. Just for now, copy and paste this code that I provided to you underneath your Metapixel code. So once again, take this code, copy it, and head over to your funnel. And you can already see that I already added in this code at the bottom here. I'm just going to act like I didn't have this code here before. And I'm just going to copy and paste that code underneath the Metapixel code. And make sure you don't mess this up. Make sure you click Save and Update Settings. So now we've added in the, the two codes that were necessary globally on, on the funnel. Now let's head back over to the doc here. Let me explain to you the purpose of UTM parameters. So what's the purpose of UTM parameters? The, the purpose is that it can help you track where your leads applications and your call bookings are coming from you're going to attach these parameters to your links and when someone clicks on a on a link the utm parameters will record where they initially came from and you can store information like this on a google spreadsheet your crm and also send it to slack in the most simple terms possible utm parameters let you know where the original source of the lead came from for example if you posted a YouTube video and in the description of the YouTube video, you included a link to your funnel, anyone clicks on the link and it has UTM parameters, we'll be able to track that, oh, you know, this person came from this one YouTube video. Another example, let's just say you post TikToks or whatever. And in the link in the bio of your TikTok, you have a link to your funnel. Now, if that link contains UTM parameters and someone clicks in and opts in, we know that now this person came organically through TikTok. Another example, let's just say someone, let's say you have this link in your, uh, in your uh, bio for your uh, Instagram. If anyone clicks, opts in, we now know that this person came from Instagram. That's the whole purpose of this. So we can sort of see, you know, where are these people coming from? Now, if you take a look at UTM parameters, there's a UTM source. It identifies which site sent the traffic, the UTM campaigns. Uh, and then the UTM medium and the UTM content. Now you don't have to worry too much about these three, but let me give you some examples on how you can use this and the, and the use case and the purpose of this. So for example, I'm gonna be diving deeper into how it's used with advertising a bit later on, but for now, uh, we can see, you know, which person came from which ad within, uh, you know, a Facebook ad. So the way it would be is you would just add in a question mark at the end of your URL, for example, if that is my, let me open up my URL. Now this is my URL. So if I just open this up and I, you know, add in like question mark, whatever that stuff is, uh, I just copy, copy this and now it appears to be on this, uh, behind the URL. I know that this, if someone opts in, I know now that this person came in from a Facebook ad. And the targeting that I had when this campaign was, you know, open targeting and the, the campaign that I was running within Facebook, it was, you know, ad angle one, maybe you, you kept put all of your ad angles on a Google doc. So you're able to track it that way. And the UTM content is, you know, this one ad was heavily based around a case study around a testimony around a, uh, you know, client case study. So now anyone that opts in. We're going to know that this person came from this link. Let me give you another example. Let's just say you send out email blast to the list. We can track, for example, UTM source. It came from active campaign, active campaign is software that we use to send out the emails. We, we will now know that, oh, you know, this application or this booking came in to do an email blast. The medium was a email blast. 
the campaign, you know, we sent this campaign out on, you know, January 30th, 2024. The content within this email, it was a heavily based around a case study. I already gave the example of Instagram. I also gave the example of a YouTube video. But the sole purpose of this is we can add these, you know, question mark, UTM sources, mediums, campaigns on any link. And if you're doing a lot of organic outreach, you know, you, you're, you post content on social media, you'll be able to track that on the back end. And it's super cool to see, oh, you know, we had five customers that came in from Instagram. You know, we had, you know, 10 customers coming from TikTok. That pretty much means that, you know, TikTok is working for you and you should do more of that. Now that we've added in the Facebook Metapixel and we've also added in the UTM parameters, we need to now add in what is called the conversion event tracking. Now, these few terms may sound very confusing and there's some super fancy terms, but the concept behind these words is super simple. The whole purpose of this conversion of tracking is you want to think about the Facebook algorithm. Now think about the Facebook algorithm. You want to feed the Facebook algorithm more data to help it better optimize and help you find and help the Facebook al algorithm find you better leads. So for example, if 100 people opted into your funnel, gave, gave their name, email and phone number, you essentially want to send that data back over to Facebook and tell Facebook that, hey, Facebook, find me more people like these 100 people. Find me more high quality leads that are similar to these 100 people and do it at a cheap cost. Hey, Facebook, these 10 people filled out an application and these five people booked a call. Facebook, find me more of these people. That's the whole purpose of the conversion of and tracking. We want to send this data data back over to Facebook and the whole game with Facebook advertising, which we're going to be diving deeper into later on, is to help Facebook's algorithm optimize better. That's the entire game. Facebook's algorithm or any social media platform, for a fact, algorithm knows you better than you know yourself. That's why, for example, if you go on TikTok and you start watching soccer videos, you're just going to keep getting targeted by soccer videos. If you keep watching videos about, you know, about Drake, you're going to keep getting targeted by Drake memes. So that's the way the algorithms work. So we just want to let Facebook's algorithm do all of the heavy lifting for you. And that's the whole purpose of the conversion event tracking. Now, the, the way to make the conversion event tracking work is by just putting these few codes on a few pages. You only need to put a code on the opt-in page. You need to put a code on the VSL page. We need to put a code on the booking page and the, put a code on the thank you page, very similar to what we did with the UTM parameters and the, and the Facebook Metapixel. But let's get started with the opt-in page first. So to start off, open this link and copy these codes into your opt-in page. I'm just going to copy this. I'm going to head over to ClickFunnels. And I'm going to click on the first opt-in page and click on edit page. Once I'm here, I'm going to head over to the tracking code. Ignore the trust pilot here. Of course, we have a trust pilot for our company, which is very similar to Google reviews. And we have, I believe, around 70 good reviews. So of course, I want to showcase that on my pages. However, if you don't have that, don't worry about it. Just ignore it and you can and you can delete this. A copy and paste this code into the header tracking code here. Head back over to the Google Doc. And we're going to copy this code here, this long code, into the footer. So just make sure you copy this entire thing here. And we're going to copy and paste this into the footer. Copy and paste into the footer. Now there is still one more code that we need to copy and paste, which is the custom CSS. Now I'll explain to you the, the benefit of installing this code onto your opt-in page and the use case of it. And head back, go over to settings, go to the custom CSS and just copy and paste this code here. Now, once you copy and paste these codes here, make sure that you click save. Otherwise, it's just gonna the, the changes are gonna get discarded. Once the changes changes have been made, click on preview. Keep in mind, we don't have any content on the page yet, so ignore that. We're gonna be adding in the content a little bit later on. But once you click on watch the free training, you'll see that 
since this is an invalid phone number, I cannot opt in. So even if I'm like clicking on this button here, I cannot opt in. So what's the benefit of that? The benefit is that if you or your sales team is going to be calling leads, you know for a fact that you're going to be calling in valid phone numbers. For example, if I put a real phone number here, don't worry, that's not my number, so don't try calling me. But if I put, put a valid phone number here, it's going to show up as a green check mark. And then only then people can opt in and give you their information. So let's make sure that you or your sales team is not wasting their time. Now, do we know that this phone number is mine? Of course not. There's no way we can guarantee that's going to happen. But to a certain degree, we know that the phone numbers are correct. And people can't just like, you know, spam the shit out of this and then, you know, try opting in. They can't do that. So that's a benefit of adding this code to your page. Secondly, we're going to add in this code, which is a super short code, onto your VSL page. Let's exit back and head over to your VSL page and copy and paste them into your booking and the thank you page. Keep in mind, there is no code that goes on the application page. And I'll tell you why that is the case. But head over to the booking page and copy and paste the exact same code into the header tracking code. Copy and paste it here, and then make sure you click save. Head back. And I'm just going to close these tabs here just to keep things super simple and straightforward. And I'm going to open up this link here and I'm going to copy and paste this code into the thank you page. And once you do that, you have now added in all the codes that you need on your funnels. And so you've pretty much got all the technical stuff done and we're going to be testing this shortly. But now let me explain to you the purpose of these codes here. All right, so let's add in the next code, which is going to go to the VSL page. Let's open up the VSL page. Unlike the code that was going on the opt-in page, this is a super short code. So just copy and paste this into the header tracking code of the VSL page. Now, the purpose of this code is when someone lands on your VSL page, we're going to mark that person as a lead. And we're going to send that data back over to Facebook. You can see that it says lead here. And the reason why it says that is because we're now counting this person with a name, email, phone number as a lead. If you see this here, just go ahead and delete it because, of course, you don't want to be using our trust pilot. I like to put our trust pilot just because it serves as good social proof. And we have around 70 ish reviews. And it's good to put it on your landing pages and it's good to get started on your trust pilot early on to start gathering those trust pilot reviews. And I'm going to follow the exact same process for the booking and the thank you page. You'll notice that we don't put any code on the application page. And although this says submit application, we're instead putting this code on the booking page. Why, you may ask? Because once someone fills out an application, they then end up on the booking page. So once someone ends up on the booking page, we're going to mark that person as someone that filled out an application. Let's copy and paste this code into the header tracking code. It's already here. I'm just going to copy and paste it and click save. I'm just going to close this tab just to keep things nice and clean. And I'm going to open up the thank you page code. And this one should be a super short one as well. And I'm just going to copy this code and paste it into the thank you page. Now, each time someone books a call and lands on the thank you page, I'm going to send that data back over to Facebook. But hey, Facebook, you know, this one person with this name, email, phone number booked a call. Please, Facebook, find me more of these people. We're going to be diving deeper into that once we get into the advertising section. But you want to make sure that you have the lead, summit application, and the schedule conversion events installed properly into your uh, funnel. And once you've done all of these steps, don't worry, we're going to make sure and test each and every step and all the codes that we've added in so far to making to make sure that you've added them in properly. Next up, domain. Let's talk about the domain. As you can see, I've already added in a domain, but 
when we're talking about domains, there's really only two big options that you have, Cloudflare and GoDaddy. I think I've talked about this before, but we prefer Cloudflare over GoDaddy just because it's much safer. We've had issues where someone's hacked into our domain and that's only ever happened when we've used GoDaddy. So I don't recommend GoDaddy. Let's talk about adding in the domain. Now, I'm not going to show you the exact step-by-step -step process to add in the domain because ClickFunnels already has much better videos that showcases the entire process depending on the domain service provider that you're using. So follow their tutorials and go ahead and add in your domain. And the way you add in your domain initially is you got to go to your account settings and add in the domain there. And once you've added in the domain there, domain there, then you just go over to the settings and you select your domain over here. And once you select your domain over here, you go ahead and click save and update settings. So I'm not going to show you the exact exact step-by-step -step process to add the domain to your click funnels because that's already pretty straightforward. However, but what I am going to talk to you about is the URLs. Now, if you notice carefully, especially based on you know, this example here, you want to have different words for your URL. So your URL should end with different words, words that are completely different from one another. Now, why is that? Facebook's tracking isn't the best. So you want to give Facebook the best possible chance to not mess up your tracking. You want the tracking to be as accurate as possible. And the way you do that is making sure that the words with the URL are completely different. So if you notice carefully, you'll notice that my opt-in page ends with OPT. And the funnel step name is opt-in page. My VSL page ends with free dash video. You can really put whatever words you want, but I'm, these are just some of the words that I'm using. You'll see VSL page, free dash video. My application page ends with slash application. My booking page, if I go over to my booking page, it says my, uh, my URL slash book. And you do that under publishing. So make sure that your URL, URL ends with different words. And this is to prevent tracking issues. Now, we're going to be testing your funnel and all of the codes that you've added in so far and making sure that you've added all of the stuff in correctly. All right, let's test out all of the codes now. First and foremost, we added in the Facebook Metapixel. Let's go ahead and test that first. There's two ways to test. The first way is to test by using the Metapixel helper. And I've included the link. Just go ahead and download this Chrome extension. And once you download the Chrome extension, you should, you should, see, you should see something like this. Okay. So this is my Chrome browser. And you can see the Metapixel helper, helper here. Now, what you want to do is you want to open up the first URL or really any URL for that matter. And that little Chrome extension should fire off. You can see it just fired off. You can see that there's a page view and a view content. And there's a green check mark there as well. And you'll see if you notice, if you notice carefully, it says something called pixel ID. This is your meta pixel ID. Now you want to just double check that this matches with the one that you just created. The way you do that is head over to your events manager. And you want to open up. I think I made this one. Did I make the SMM guide? I think it was this one, yeah. So just head over to the settings and make sure that the number, your data set ID matches with the one that you see over here. So this one ends with 9601. This one ends with 9601. So this number matches with this one. So if it's firing off, that means you've installed your Facebook Metapixel correctly. Now the second way to check this is to do what is called the events manager within Facebook. If I go back over to the events manager within Facebook and I go to test events, confirm your website events are set up correctly. Click here and add in your main URL here. So I'm gonna go to the first page, which, which is the opt-in page. And it's gonna I'm gonna open up the website. Head, head back over to the events manager and you can see that I just processed these two events. So I know for a fact, that my Metapixel has been installed correctly. Another thing that we did 
was we added in the UTM parameters. So I'm not going to worry too much about the UTM parameters yet because I'm going to be covering this later on when I'm going to be diving deeper into advertising. Let's double check whether the conversion events are working. And the way you do that is I'm just going to opt in. Click here. And let's just say, you know, I put a number here. Click watch the free training. And now once I end up on the VSL page, I should be marked as a lead with an events manager. Let's double check. As you can see, Facebook just marked me as a lead and I came in. Now I'm going to test this one more time and I'm going to end up on the booking page. So let's just say I filled out an application. I ended up on the booking page. I should now see a submit application with, within events manager. There you have it. So my conversion event of submit application is working. I'm also going to end up on the thank you page. The reason why you don't see any content here yet is because we haven't put anything on here yet. But I'm going to end up on the thank you page. And I think it was, what was the URL? I think it was meeting scheduled, I think. Yeah. And I should see schedule event show up. So just like that, if the schedule is showing up with process, the lead is showing up, summit application is showing up, you know for a fact that your conversion events and the Metapixel has been set up correctly. Okay, now we are going to start getting some creative work done. Now that we got the technical stuff set up, we're going to now start adding in the words, the videos, and the applications, the booking pages, and all that sort of fun stuff. I think I forgot to add in the opt-in page. So go ahead and add in a headline. And also add in what is called a sub headline. Let's talk more about this. So let's open up edit page. And we're going to go ahead and add in the headlines. So the key is that your opt-in page should be super simple. You don't want to overcomplicate things here. You don't want people to end up on this page and there's like 10 different pictures for them to look at, two different paragraphs to read, and just like a video that they got to watch. Just keep things super simple. Just add in a smaller headline and add in a bigger headline. This is referred to your sub headline. This is your main headline. The only goal here is to someone is to get someone to opt in. The only goal here is for, for us to get someone to give us their name, email, and phone number. Now, since I'm in the real estate space, I'm going to give you guys some examples of headlines that we can use in the real estate niche. Now, I'm going to skip a little bit ahead and I'm going to copy some headlines, which we'll be talking about a little bit later on. I'm just going to end up on this page here. And I know that I wrote some headlines earlier. So what I can do here is I can copy paste one of the headlines here. Uh, let's see which one I can copy and paste. Let's do Let's copy the second headline here. I really like the second headline. I'm going to copy and paste this here. Keep in mind, we can always come back and change these words before we start running our ads. So for now, we're just going to write this headline. I'm just going to divide this headline into two. I'm going to paste this here. So the new way to generate high quality buyer leads in 2024, discover how any realtor can add in, add an additional six figures to their yearly income with this one simple strategy. Let's take a look on what it looks like on mobile. So of course there's nothing there on mobile. I'm going to copy the copy and paste this into mobile as well. Copy and let's paste this into over here. So once again, keep in mind, we can always come back and we can change the headline. So for now, I just want to show you like the creative work that needs to be done on these pages to finalize them. Now we can, you know, make this look nice and pretty. So what I can do is I can bold this word here. Since it's like a big word that we want to, you know, get across the new way to generate high quality buyer leads. And I can, um, you know, underline this. That looks nice. Looks a bit better. And let me do the same on mobile. Keep in mind, majority of the, the traffic is going to come to mobile. So if you are going to spend some time making your pages look nice and pretty, Spend majority of your time on the mobile version. And underline high quality, just like how I did in the main page. And now 
discover how any I could even make this italic can add an additional uh let's to their yearly income with this one simple strategy six figures I can probably underline this make it look a little bit nicer there you go let's do the same let's make this uh italic can add an additional six figures I think that's what I underlined earlier and then I can make this bold okay cool looks much better and one more thing that I noticed is don't have my company's name here instead have your company's name here so let's just say I was I'm gonna go with my domain I'm just gonna add in my name here All right, that looks good. Let me make sure that it showed up on the mobile version as well. Yes, it did, that looks good. Now, let's go over to the settings and make sure we set up all the settings properly. Let's do the SEO metadata first. You can leave that as watch free training, page description. You can really just copy and paste this into the description. You don't have to worry too much about the keywords. Social image. You can really just add in any image here. It's not really necessary. I'm going to leave that the way it is. Tracking code, we've already added in the tracking codes. Facebook pixel, we've already added in the Facebook pixel globally. So you don't have to worry about that. Custom CSS, we were, we've already added in. Background, ignore. Typography, ignore. However, make sure that on submit, go to your VSL page link. My VSL page link was slash free video. Okay. So make sure that on submit, this page goes to the VSL page. So make sure you add in your VSL page link here. Let's open up the pop-up now, because that's really the only thing that's remaining here. And on the pop-up, you can really leave that the way it is, but I'll just, I'm just going to click on this, watch the free training and the action here should meet submit order slash submit form that should be the button action so make sure that you don't have the go to next step in funnel or you manually add in your next pages url here just just, just do submit order submit form and you don't really have to change too much here i mean the main thing that we're looking to collect is name email and phone number And uh, other than that, I think we've got everything here. We're not really missing anything. And if I did end up missing something, I'll come back and I'll mention that to you. But uh, oh yeah, the, the custom JavaScript slash HTML. Just remove this. You don't have to have anything in here. I believe I had my trust pilot here. So that's why so I ended up removing it. But you don't really have to have much here. Uh, just like that, if you you know open up the mobile version, it's gonna look something like this. You can add some social proof at the bottom here, but that's totally up to you. If you want to add in some social proof, we add our trust pilot here. But if you want to, you can. Otherwise, you know this is a super clean landing page. You can test this by opening up the preview, and the changes should show up here like this. And make sure you double check the mobile version. The way you do that is click on inspect. And then if you click here, you can see the mobile version. This is how it's going to look like on mobile. And you can always send yourself the link and just make sure that it looks nice and clean on mobile because majority of the traffic is going to be coming from the mobile version. In terms of the headlines and the copywriting. Once again, I'm going to be diving deeper into the copywriting once we get into the advertising. So we can also come back and you know update the page. We just add in a subheadline and headline, and you are good to go. But we will eventually come back to edit the privacy policy and the terms and condition. But that's pretty much it. Make sure you click save and then go back. Now let's head over to the VSL page and complete what's required from our end. So once again, I'm going to click on edit page and I'm going to add in the headline and subheadline. So let me go back and let me actually open up 
the previous link and copy and paste the subheadline and the headline. Once again, guys, we can always come back and change the headline and the subheadline. We can always come back and change it. But the most important part of your landing page, your opt-in page, is going to be the headline and the subheadline. So we are going to spend a lot of time crafting some good headlines, which we're going to be doing a little bit later on. We're just going to copy, you know, that same headline, post it here. And I'm going to do the exact same thing with the subheadline here. And I can sort of follow the exact same format. I think I did this high quality. Oh, any realtor can make this italic. I really just like, there's no formula that I like to follow when doing this stuff. I just mess around with the, like the words or the numbers that are super important. So like, uh, like for example, like this one word, I want to put a lot of emphasis on this one word. So I'm just going to make it a different color. Let's copy and paste this into the mobile version. Already showed up on the mobile version. Perfect. So here is where you add in your VSL, your video sales letter. Now keep in mind, VSL is something that I'm going to be covering next. So you don't have your VSL made just yet. But what I did is I opened up one of my previous VSLs. And what you're going to be doing is once you do complete the VSL and it's edited, we're going to put that on Wistia. And once we put that on Wistia, what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the link. And we're going to paste this link right here, Wistia URL. Okay. So once again, we haven't created the VSL yet, but we are going to be creating it next. But once you do create it, you're going to put that on Wistia and you're going to copy the link and paste it into your funnel. You can leave this the way it is. And over here, I had my trust pilot reviews but of course you know you don't have this you're likely not going to have this what you can do is you can just cut this and remove this and uh you know we can leave this the way it is but if you want to add in some social proof i see some people adding like a bunch of pictures of people and then underneath they'll just write oh 800 people have watched this training in the past you know 30 days or these or or you can have something like 20 five star Google reviews or something. You can add in some social proof here if you like. But if you don't want to, you can just leave it the way it is. Once you add in your video and someone clicks on apply now, just make sure that this action is set to go to the next step in the funnel. The next step in the funnel in the, is the application page. Make sure the same is set on, on uh, mobile. So make sure the set action is to go to the next step in the funnel. So once the video has been added in, this is going to the next step in the funnel. Just make sure you change this bottom part here, which is like the footer. I'm just going to add in my name here. And then we'll come back to the privacy policy and the terms and condition once we're done with the entire funnel. And don't worry about the integrations, SEO metadata, just write watch free training. And just write your he sub headline and you can copy and paste the description. And uh, let me just copy and paste this into the SEO metadata. The new way to generate high quality leads in 2024 SEO metadata. And uh, I'm going to remove this picture. But you don't, it doesn't really matter. You can just open this page up and just screenshot it and just add that image here doesn't really matter. Don't worry about the tracking code. We've already added in the tracking code. It should say lead. Facebook pixel, we've already added in. Don't worry about the custom CSS. None of this stuff matters except the general. Make sure there is nothing here. Yeah, okay? should be empty. And just like that, you completed your VSL page. But this is pretty much where you just add in the VSL. And click save. And they'll move on to the application page. Next up is the application page. The application page is one where you simply just ask a bunch of qualifying questions to the prospect. And the reason why we have this in the funnel is because later on we can start marking each application as qualified or non-qualified. 
And if you get even deeper into sort of like the mechanics of all of that, you can run ads, which is bringing in more qualified applications. And then you can turn off ads that are bringing in unqualified applications. So this is a great way to, you know, learn which ad is actually performing better. Which ad is really bringing in the right people that you want to be working with. Now, the question is, what helps us do that? And salespeople, plus yourself, you guys are going to love having an application and just being able to build, get some ammo before the sales call. So although you may be creating friction and you may get less call bookings, you're also going to get higher quality people that are going to be coming in. When you, open the, uh, when you open up the application page, it's a super simple page once again. First thing I'm going to do here, though, I'm just going to first go ahead and change the domain here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I feel like I'm getting blind right now. I'm going to have to go get my eyes checked out. But go ahead and add in your uh, domain here. And get that done first. And just make sure that it updated on the mobile version as well. And then here... As a headline, you could just write, just answer a short questionnaire below and you're one step closer to, you know, exploding your, and you're one step closer to exploding your income or skyrocketing your income. I can copy and paste this exact same one into the mobile version. But the most important part here is this custom JavaScript. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called job form we're going to use this job form to create us a application there's a lot of tools that you can use on the marketplace but you know we've just been using job form for a very long time but i opened up the questionnaire that we've been using for my agency and this is sort of what we had if i had if i head back over to the questionnaire your questions should aim to understand what the prospect is where the prospect is currently in their business journey, where they want to get to and identify any potential challenges. So what's the purpose of asking these questions? We can help. It can, it's going to help you gauge the quality of the prospect. You want to find out if they're really in need of your service, if they can actually afford it, and if they really are the decision maker. Are they the ones that are going to give you the green light? Are you talking to the person that has a credit card? So if you look at the questions here, we sort of divided it into current situation where they want to get to, which is their goals. And we're just going to start looking for possible red flags. So let's go ahead and create a job form. This is what I already had, but I'll just create one from scratch in front of you. So uh, let's go ahead and start from scratch. Let's do a card form. And uh, let's go ahead and start this off. Uh, I'm just going to open up my previous one just to reference. And the first question here is in my case is are you a solo agent part-time agent partnership or an agent with the team or other so i'm just gonna copy this question and let's add in a form element let's go ahead and add in a single choice I'm just going to remove this. The reason why we ask is you always want to add in a reason why you ask the question, but just for the sake of the video, I'm not going to add this in right now, but uh, we always want to add in a reason as to why we're asking some of these questions. Otherwise, some prospects may just be like, like they might get weirded out. Like, why are you asking me these questions? Is it necessary? So I'm just going to remove this uh, for now. Make sure, I mean, first, change up the background here because it's pissing me off right now go to custom let's remove the background color and let's make the theme blue because i like the color blue i like that color then i'm just gonna remove the background color because i don't like i just like having white and blue cool and then make sure you make this form required we can start typing in options now. I can type in single agent. I'm just going to reference my previous questionnaire just to make sure that I'm not missing anything important here. I'm a single agent. I can say, you know, I'm a two agent partnership. 
I can say I'm an agent with small team. I can write agent, you know, agent with a team. And then I can also write, you know, I am a broker owner of a franchise. And the last option, I can just make it other. Let's move on to the next question. Once again, keep in mind, we're currently in the current situation. My next question could be, how are you currently generating new business for yourself? Go back over to the form. Let's do. Let's do multiple choice. Because there could be multiple answers to this one question. How are you currently generating new business for yourself? Uh, word of mouth. Referrals. Door knocking. Cold calling. Facebook ads. And then I can do other. Keep in mind, once again, we're asking current situation questions. This is going to give you ammo for the sales call. It's, got, it's also going to help you understand more about uh, the prospect. Once again, make sure that this field is required. The setback, uh, let's see how many deals are you or your team currently doing per month? So of course, I had a lot more options in my agency's job form. How many deals are you currently doing per month? Ballpark. So once again, if you if you look closely here, I provided a, I provided a reason as to why I'm asking this question. Once again, you want to provide a reason for every question because otherwise some prospects are just going to get weirded out and it might piss some people off. As to why are you asking me these such sensitive questions? Who are you to ask me these questions? Why should I even answer your questions? So how many deals are you or your team currently doing per month? Ballpark number. And we can do, you know, one, two to three per month. Let's do three to six per month. And then um, we can do six plus per month. All right. So we've completed the current situation where they're currently at. Let's, let's talk about the goals. How many deals do you want to be doing? And this time we'll make it a single choice as well. How many deals do you want to do per month within the next six months? Only reason I we here to get the only reason we ask this is is to get an idea. Of whether we can, whether we can help, idea whether this is the right fit. Once again, let's make this required. Let's go back over to the doc. Now, what's stopping you from getting there right now? Like what's currently stopping you from reaching this goal on your own? So this one, I can make it into a short text. Most people here are, are going to say stuff like, I just need more leads or I just need more business or I just need the right marketing or stuff. What's stopping you from getting there right now? reason we ask is is to see to reach that goal all right so now we're done with current situation future situation their goals let's look for a potential red flags this is where we i i like to qualify for finances 
So I can just copy and paste this exact same question here. Single choice. Keep in mind for a question like this, what you're really looking for is for people to say either to either say yes or maybe. Anyone that says no is automatically disqualified. So this way you or your sales team is not wasting your time on people that are that, that just don't have the money. So you don't have to provide an exact dollar amount, but you can provide is a range. And if people ask you, like, what's up with the range? What's the difference between um, six to eight K? You can mention that, uh, you know, you different pricing packages and uh, you also have it, um, incentive based pricing. Let's move on. The last question isn't mandatory, but you can ask if it's up to you. But uh, I'm just going to leave that question for now. And once all of this is done, make sure you are asking for their full name, their email address, and their phone number. Because so we need to collect that sort of information. Make sure this is required. I like to always ask for their contact information last. And we like to ask these qualifying questions first. Reason, be, reason being is because we've seen the conversion rate to actually be much higher when we put these questions at the end. Now, one important step here is we want to add in these hidden fields, and I'll tell you why. But just for the sake of the video, add in these hidden fields here. UTM underscore campaign. And just make sure that then this says UTM campaign. This is a hide field. Do the same here. So once again, you can, of course, look at these settings here. Just make sure that this says UTM underscore content. So what this is going to do is it's just going to be used for tracking purposes. So just might as well just get this done and just, just follow along. And for this one, we're going to do UTM uh, content. Then UTM content. Let's go ahead and copy the UTM medium. UTM medium, and then we can copy the UTM source. <clears throat> Essentially what this is going to do is it's going to pass on this information to your funnels and to Slack and to Google spreadsheets that you've gathered from your UTMs. All right. So just copy whatever I'm doing and just make sure that the fields are hidden. And just like that, you've created yourself an application, but there still is one more step that is remaining. And the step is we need to add in the redirect URL. And this redirect URL is your booking page link. Head back over to ClickFunnels. I'm just gonna click save here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy the link to my booking page and I'm going to add that in over here but there still is one more little step that we're going to do and that is we're just going to add in we're going to pass on this information here as well we're also going to pass on the email name and phone all right so just copy and paste this. I'll, I'll add this to the doc here as well uh, do 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 Uh, hidden UTM fields, right? UTM content. So what I'll do is I'll just add this on my own time, but just make sure I'm saving your, you time. Just follow along and just make sure you add in these, uh, parameters here or whatever is in the doc, just copy whatever is in the doc. Now, once that is completed, 
for the settings and what we're going to do is we're going to take this link and we're going to embed this into our and just turn off the full screen i don't like the full screen but just copy this code and add this code to your booking page uh, to your application page sorry add this to your application page and once you've added in the code to your application page to the custom javascript html you have now added in your application let's preview this And there you have it. It's going to show up right here. I'm just going to go back and I'm going to remove the welcome page because I don't like the welcome page. Let's go to the edit welcome page and let's, uh, uh, I think, I believe it's in the settings. Where's the welcome page? Welcome, 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 welcome page. How do I remove the welcome page again? Let me figure this out. Okay. So I spent a good amount of time trying to figure out a way to, you know, get rid of the welcome slide, but I just couldn't. But I'm sure if you spend enough time, you'll be able to figure out a way to get rid of the welcome page. It's likely going to be in the settings or it's going to be under the publish. So just try and try to remove the welcome page. The reason why is because you don't want to create unnecessary friction. We already have enough questions, so we don't want to just add it one extra slide that is just not necessary. But there is one more thing that I had forgot to mention previously. I included a link to a doc here. That you can open up and instead of just you know embedding this directly to click funnels we're just going to take this share link here and i'm going to put this share link on top of what's highlighted here in yellow and then i'm going to take this number and i'm going to copy paste this number here and then i'm going to take a look at the title of my form which is form and i'm going to write form here which is already done for you and i'm just going to highlight this in yellow just so you know what needs to be changed and then you want to take this entire code and copy and paste this into uh, ClickFunnels. Okay. Take this entire code. And I'm going to copy and paste this into ClickFunnels JavaScript slash HTML. Now you might be wondering why we're doing it this way. We're just doing this just for the UTM stuff. So that's way we can carry on the, the UTM so we collect it and pass it on to our CRM, Black, Google spreadsheets, and just so we can keep track of all of that. So just take this. I already, I already put this in here when I was testing it out. Uh, just copy and paste this here. This shouldn't be here. But your script, it should look something like this. Click save. And once you preview this, you should see your form pop up. So we're going to go ahead and click start. And let's test it out. Are you a solo agent? I am a single agent. How are you currently generating new business? I'm door knocking. Uh, I'm doing six plus deals per month. How many deals? Oops, I think I, I think I forgot to add in how many deals, but it's okay. What's stopping you from getting there? More leads. Do I have the money? Yes, I do. What's my name? Blah blah. blah. What's my email? Blah, blah blah. Phone number. I'm just gonna put a random phone number and click submit. Now I should get redirected over to the booking page, which we're going to be covering next. But just like that, you've completed your application page. Okay, so the last step is we need to add in the calendar to the booking page. I'm going to head over to the booking page and now let's talk more about what sort of tools we can use and how to set everything up. Once again, if you take a closer look, the page you're going to see is once again, super simple. I don't even have a title on this page. And that's because it's pretty straightforward. They should see a calendar and it's pretty common sense for them to book a call. First thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this um, company name. And then I'm also going to edit the privacy policy and the terms and conditions later on. But the SEO metadata, make sure that is correct add your company name here i'm just gonna write you know my company name uh you know this i can change it to i could even remove that it's not even needed right but now let's go back over to the google doc choosing your calendar tool for scheduling appointments i recommend using one sub it's user friendly and integrates well into your funnel setup now here's the thing i was initially going to show the calendar setup for once hub 
But I found that as a beginner, or if you're not spending more than like 10K per month on advertising, you can use something as simple as Calendly. Calendly is much user-friendly, beginner-friendly. It's much more simple. And I believe it's also cheaper than OneSub. The only reason we use OneSub is because we have a sales team. And what we like to do is to combat the show up rate issues. We sometimes tend to book two appointments in one slot or three appointments in one slot. But if you're just starting out, Calendly is a, is a great tool for you to use. So head over to Calendly, make an account. I'm not going to show you to make an account, but let's go ahead and create an event type. It's, it's very straightforward to, uh, you know, create a calendar. So click on 101. I can name this, uh, you know, free strategy session. You can really call it whatever you want. Uh, we'll call it like a free, uh, we'll call it like a rain making session. I like that word, rain making. And we're going to do this for 60 minutes. This is going to be a Zoom call. Click continue. And myself, scheduling uh, settings. People should only be able to book two calendar days into the future. Available hours, you can just do your own time. You can do nine to five. Buffer. We should definitely add of after a minimum notice we definitely want a four hour minimum notice you can even bump this up to six because you don't want meetings to be booked the day of daily limit there's no time limit but wait what happened here to calendar save uh da, da, da. to calendar what is it today it is 20 oh weekdays that's what i meant yeah there we go now people can book book on the monday and the tuesday save and close booking page options we're going to add in let's get rid of this question here we're going to add in a question for phone number we want to collect everyone's phone number here make that required just throw in phone number and then we'll throw this at the top. Can we do that or no? Okay, we can't. That's fine. We don't want to click payment. After booking, we want to redirect to the external site. And this external site, if you've guessed it by now, is going to be your thank you page. Let's go over to the thank you page. And let's get this thank you page link. And let's add it here to your Calendly. And you can pass event details to your redirected page. Click save and close. And let's talk about communications. Now this email reminders and the text reminders and all that sort of stuff. We're going to talk about that later on when we're going to be covering sales. But for now, we're just here to add the calendar to the booking page. Now, once that is done, we're going to go ahead and click uh, share. We're going to add this to the website. Let's do the inland embed. We're going to get the embed code and just throw it up on the booking page. Okay. Let's go to custom JavaScript, open code editor, and go ahead and throw in the code here. Click save and make sure you double check that this works on both mobile and desktop. So click on preview and you should see the, the calendar pop up here. There you have it. Now people can only book in two weekdays apart. Oh, this is in 30 minute increments. Instead, we want to change this to um, 30 minute increments. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, yeah, start time increments. Let's change this to uh, 60 minutes, save and close. Now, if I refresh this page here, it should show that it should show that to me in uh, 60 minutes. Let's see. Yep. There you go. 9, 10, 11, 12 p.m. There you go. Perfect. Cool. And that is pretty much it. That's pretty much how you set up the booking page. Now we're going to head straight to the thank you page. Okay. Now we are going to go straight to the thank you page. So we've completed opt-in, VSL page, application page, and we've also completed the booking page. Now comes the final step of the funnel.
this is the page that people are going to see once they book a call. If you notice carefully, it's a very simple page and we're essentially just providing instructions to the folks that just booked a call. Now, step one, you want to leave it the way it is. But what you want your prospects to do is add the new calendar event to their calendar. So Google pushed out this new update, I believe it was last year, where it says that the invitation came from an unknown sender. So these appointments that, that you're booking, they actually don't show up on their Google Calendar. So you want to make sure that the appointments are showing up on the Google Calendar because otherwise they're not really going to get notified. So just leave this uh, you know, picture the way it is. However, let's move on to step two here. Uh, over here, you can create a quick thank you video and you can provide homework to your prospect to further nurture them before the call. But you can also throw in your BSL here. It's totally up to you. Now, get rid of the step three. We sort of had a written sales letter, which we added in here, but you can get rid of it. It's not really needed here. As a bonus, you can also request your prospects to message you on Instagram. If your Instagram is popping and you have some good content, you know, you post daily stories, you use you know, Instagram for business purposes, you're going to get people to message you on Instagram where you can further nurture your prospects. And you can also offer something in exchange. You can offer like a free training. You can offer like a free course. You can, you can offer whatever you want in exchange to someone messaging you on Instagram. The whole point here is to just get people to look at your content on Instagram. That's all what it is. That's all we're trying to do here. But, uh, you know, you can do message me on Instagram. And over here, include a link to your Instagram. Once again, include a link to your Instagram. But other than that, that is pretty much it. And just make sure we change the SEO meta data. And there's tracking code should be schedule here. Uh, there's nothing that's going to go into general. And of course, make sure you change in the footer. Make sure this is done properly. And just like that, you know, you've finished creating your thank you page. And just click save. And we've done the creative work and we've also done the technical work. But let's move on to the next step here. Now, once again, make sure all your pages look good on mobile. I can't stress this. I can't stress this one thing enough. Majority of your traffic is going to be looked at on your phone. So majority of the people that are going to be on your phone are going to be on their phone. So make sure that your pages look aesthetic on the phone. And make sure you also change the SEO metadata for all of the pages. And lastly, the legal stuff. I've included a link to the privacy policy, and I've also included a link to the terms and conditions. What you want to do here is you want to go to the privacy policy and you want to open this up and wherever you see company name, add in your company name here. For example, you know, my company name, let's just say my company name was like my first name, which would never be the case, but let's just say it was. On this right, you know, so and so company name understands that privacy is important to you. Blah blah blah. Just wherever you see company name here, just go ahead and change it and then click save. Let's just say I, I've gone ahead and done that. I'm gonna click save. And I'm going to copy this privacy policy link and I'm going to include it and I'm gonna link it in the bottom of all of my funnel page uh funnel pages. I'm just going to highlight over this. Let's remove this. I'm just going to hover over it and I'm going to include a link here and click enter. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of the pages. So make sure your privacy policy has been attached to all of the pages. Now, I don't think I'm going to go ahead and do this for all the pages, but you get the point. I'm just going to remove this link here and I'm going to go ahead and hover over this, highlight it. And I'm going to change this uh, to here. 
Once again, I think I forgot to remove this here. So make sure you change this to your company name. All right. And do the exact same thing with the terms and conditions. Now, I think this is pretty straightforward and I'm sure you guys can figure this out, but take the terms and conditions link and add it to all of to the rest of the funnel pages. All right. So once that is completed, you've officially completed everything that's required but and as this is optional but you can also add a company logo you can mess around with the colors if you like you can mess around with the the font of the funnel depending on whatever you want to do but uh this is the bare minimum that is required if you don't like the colors here you want to change the colors to green blue whatever you want to do go ahead and you know customize the funnel to your liking but this is what is required so let's talk about the bsl now, I can't stress to you enough, but the, the VSL is the most important part of your entire funnel. The VSL is the most important part of your actual business. There is nothing that is more important than the VSL. So I can't stress this point enough to you. So let's, let's actually understand the VSL. So what is a VSL? A VSL stands for Video Sales Letter. It is a video that essentially sells the vehicle, the method, the steps of achieving the desired outcome, the unique mechanism, essentially the way of doing shit. Let me explain. A BSL doesn't talk about your product. It talks less, it talks very little about the product. But what it does is it convinces the viewer that your way of doing stuff, your method, your vehicle is the best, fastest, easiest, most predictable, and the simplest way of getting to the end outcome. Let me repeat that. The whole purpose of a VSL is to explain to the viewer that your way of doing stuff, your way of doing shit is the most easiest, fastest, cheapest, most predictable, and the simplest way of getting to the end outcome. That's the whole purpose of the VSL. This is the only purpose that it serves. It's, it's other words, a sales video. This is where you're trying to convince a viewer into buying something from you. It is carefully designed to overcome objections, and it makes a clear argument why you are the only option in the marketplace to work with. It's essentially a sales pitch, but it's disguised as an educational video. The way you present the, the VSL is you tell prospects that, hey, you know, this is a free training, this is a free educational video. But instead, what you're really doing is you're trying to sell the prospect onto something. Now let's talk about the different types of VSLs. So a VSL is a video. Any webinar that you see online, whether it's live or pre-recorded, or quote unquote free training that you opt in for, challenges, masterclasses, events, even in-person events, seminars, they're all just VSLs, but that are disguised as educational content. The, these are all just like free stuff that people like to give away, but behind the curtain, they're actually following the VSL method. That's the truth. That's the reality. So your final VSL is what goes on the video sales letter page. If you remove the word, word video, if you remove this word, you're left with the word sales letter. This is pretty much in the form of written documents, long form landing pages, emails, ebooks, PDFs, and presentations. These are all written sales letters. So anytime you come across like this long, never any page where someone is trying, trying to sell you something, whether it's for like $47, like it's like a course, maybe a PDF, it's a long form sales letter. That's what it is. How long should a VSL be? A VSL can be for 15 minutes long and it can go all the way up to three hours. There's no sort of right time in terms of this is how long a sales letter should be for. There's no like correct amount of time. Like it can be for, it can even be for 10 minutes. You can get it done within five minutes. You can get it into 30 hour, however long it's, it's, it's going to take to explain the entire concept. Majority of the sex, uh, success of the VSL comes from the copywriting aspect itself. Throughout the VSL, you're covering, you're overcoming objections, limiting beliefs, and you're answering questions that a prospect is going to have in their mind along the way. That sounds very easy. You're covering case studies, testimonials, client success stories in a way that is going to closely resonate with the audience. 
You're talking about your unique system, your blueprint, your framework formula model in a way that makes it sound like it's the only viable option in the marketplace. The way the VSL is set up is that there's this problem and you are the only option in the marketplace that can possibly solve this off, uh, problem in the best way possible. That's the whole purpose of the VSL. It makes a clear argument that if I can do it, so can you. Let's talk about the steps in order. You first write your sales letters in the exact format that will be covered next. So, I'm, so you're going to first write the entire VSL using words. And then you can put this into a Google slide presentation. You can put it into the PowerPoint presentation. And then you can finish off by recording over the PowerPoint Google slide presentation. The most time consuming part is actually getting all the words down and getting the entire format completed. Recording. If you write the VSL yourself, then recording the video itself is not going to be hard. The hard part is actually writing everything down. It's getting the ideas on a piece of paper. And we're going to talk about the, 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 the format that you should be following. Now, I get this question all the time. Should I have my face or should I not have my face in the video? Either or works. Uh, no face works better if you're looking to just read off a script. Ideally, you should have a script that you're following. I've seen a lot of companies that are doing multiple eight figures per year and they have no face in their VSL. So it definitely works. You don't have to do the VSL in one take. There is no need for you to do the VSL in one take. Instead, you can just record one segment at a time. Now let's talk about the importance of a VSL. A VSL is not something that you just get done within a few seconds. It's also not something that you put on the back burner. It's also not something that you do last. The VSL is the most important part of your business. Why? You're overcoming objections, limiting beliefs, answering questions in a way that sounds sexy. All this stuff that you're covering is going to be put on landing pages, emails, uh, Instagram. We're going to put this on Facebook, on YouTube videos, and short, short and long-form content, TikTok, website, funnels. All of the content ideas that you're going to be talking about on social media, on Instagram stories, Instagram posts, Facebook post, email blast, everything is coming from the VSL. All of the content that you post out there is coming directly from the VSL. So my point is that you just get the VSL done once. And then the rest of all of this stuff is easy because you just, you just go to, to your VSL and you just pull ideas and you make your content. You're covering case studies, testimonials, and client success stories. Once again, all that stuff goes to landing pages, emails, Facebook, YouTube videos, short and long form content. You're talking about your unique system, blueprint, framework, formula, or model in a way that makes it sound like it's the only viable option in the marketplace. As I mentioned earlier, competition is for losers. You never want to be in competition. You never want to be in a position where you're getting compared to another competitor in the marketplace. There should be no alternative option than working with your company. If that is the case, the VSL explains all of that. In conclusion, just do this shit properly once. It's going to be hard. It's going to be long. It's going to be time consuming. You might want to pull your hair out. You might get gray hair in the process. But once you do this once, your life is going to be 10 times easier. Think about it. You can also... Use a VSL to train your employees, team members, salespeople. You, have, you just onboard a new sales rep. Hey man, study my VSL. Right? You're gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to overcome objections. I'm gonna teach you how to overcome limiting beliefs. I'm also gonna teach you uh, all of the case studies that we have. You hire a new operations manager, you hire a new client success manager. Like, hey, person, go study the VSL. Your is it's like the VSL is pretty much like your entire business summarized in one. That that's the whole purpose of the VSL. So treat it like that. Now I'm gonna walk you through the entire step by step process to build a VSL that will make you millions. Keep in mind, I'm showing you like the exact format. So once you write your entire VSL, write it on a Google Doc, and then you can take this Google Doc and turn it into a PowerPoint presentation, a Google slide presentation. But you initially first want to get the entire script written out and then you can just take the words and copy paste from the google slide powerpoint and then you can record the video but this is the most important part which is you know getting the words out 
first and foremost, the first slide of your VSL is going to be the headline. What is the headline? The headline is a big claim that you're making. It should grab your prospect's attention. The way you want to think about this is this is this. If someone is scrolling through Instagram and they come across your ad, would they immediately stop anything they're doing to listen after hearing this first sentence? If the answer if the answer is no, the headline needs to be much better. So the headline needs to be attention grabbing. So I'll give you some examples here. How to achieve desired outcome in this time frame without whatever objections they have. Here's an example. Once again, real estate specific. How do I how to add an additional $300,000 per year in GCI within one year or less without becoming a slave to lead generation companies? This is the, this is the desired outcome. Make an extra 300K per year. This is the time frame. 12 months. The objection is, or the fear is, you know, you don't have to become a slave to lead generation companies. I don't want to become dependent on lead generation companies. That's the objection. That's a fear. Second example, how to achieve, how to achieve desired outcome in time frame with using your unique way, way of doing stuff without the objections. So how to add an additional 300K per year in GCI within 12 months or less using AI machine learning without spending more than five minutes per week. Now, if, you, if we dive deeper, closer into this, additional 300K per year in GCI, that's the desired outcome. Within 12 months or less, that is the time frame. My unique, my unique way of doing stuff, which is AI machine learning, this is something that's completely brand new to me. That's my unique way. And without objection is, you know, I don't want to spend, I don't want to spend too much time or effort doing this. <coughs> so here I write, you know, without spending more than five minutes per week. Let's go to another example. Discover how, call it your target market, can desired outcome in time frame using your unique method, using my unique method, your unique method without objection. So let me, let me give you an example. Discover how any top performing real estate agent can earn an extra $300,000 per year in 12 months or less of starting an online coaching program without any tech or coaching skills. So this is for a different offer. If you remember earlier, I'd mentioned about a Renegade Real Estate Millionaire program where we essentially help real estate agents start their own coaching programs. So this is a headline for that offer. Discover. How any top performing real estate agent can earn an extra $300,000 per year with one year or less by starting an online coaching program without any tech or coaching skills. So if we think about it, this is my target market. The outcome, make an extra 300K per year in time frame within 12 months or less. My unique way of making this money is, hey, instead of just, you know, selling homes, and working with people that want to buy or sell a home, how about you start an online coaching program? That's my unique way of doing stuff. And the objection that a real estate agent might have about starting a coaching program may be, oh, I don't know how to coach other people, or I don't know, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure how I need to set up all the tech, or I'm not going to have enough time to coach other real estate agents. So I can in include some of the objections here. The most common one here would be, oh, I don't have any coaching skills. For that reason, I added that over here. So you can take this formula and you can use it to create yourself a few headlines. I would write about three to five headlines and then you can pick the best one that you feel like is going to perform the best. Now, when we're talking about objections, objections are only ever going to be related to these four things. Number one, money. I don't have the money. Number two, time. I don't have enough time to do this or it's going to just take too much effort from me. It's too hard. You know, I don't want to learn this new stuff. I don't have the skills that are required for me to do this. Skepticism. I want to use something that actually works. There's a proven track record of it working for other people. I don't want to be sort of like a test. I don't want to be a test. Okay. So when I, when I have stuff like, you know, common objections or I have objections over here, without objections. What I'm referring to is it could be any one of these objections here. Okay. 
So once you get your headline, you know, you're going to put your headline on one slide. We're going to move on to the next step, which is proof. Now, as soon as someone reads your claim, they want reassurance that whatever you said is actually true. This is where you show proof to back up your big headline that you just threw at them. You need to show undeniable proof here. The proof will make it very clear to the prospects that you're not bullshitting. So when you make a big claim like something like this, a real estate agent is going to be thinking to him or herself, can I really make $300,000 per year coaching other real estate agents? Like, is that really possible? Is this guy lying to me? Like, prove it to me. Prove it to me that I can actually make a 300 k per year. Like, tell me more. Like, you got my attention, but is this really true? Their guard is going to go up. So for this reason, we need to show them some proof. You can show revenue or income claims. You can show your payment processor screenshots. You can show stuff like Stripe. You can show bank statements. You can show recordings. You can show client case studies before and after stories with the time frame. And if possible, show your client's faces. This increases trust. Conversations and testimonials. Display screenshots of Facebook or Instagram chats or posts from client-only community groups. Show your own results or client successes. Share these, sharing these stories builds trust and demonstrates the effectiveness of our approach. So you just want to show like undeniable proof here. Income reports, income claims, like whatever you're promising to your client and whatever the headline shows. And if you're talking about money, just show them some proof. This is where you want to show some nice proof. And then we head into the expectations. We're going to set the expectations for the rest of the video. And the first one is who is this video even for? Just give a few bullet points as to who is this video for. So if you're a solo real estate agent or running a small team and the majority of your business is coming from referrals. So I just uh, you know switched over to the lead generation offer and for this example, so let's just say, you know, I'm selling like Facebook ads, you know, digital marketing, that sort of stuff. Then I can say that, hey, you know, if you're a solo agent and the majority of your business is coming from referrals, this video's for you. Now, what are they going to learn from the video? This is where you sort of give them like a quick roadmap of the journey that you're, good, that you're about to take them on. We're going to be covering the core concept, which is going to be covering next. So what we can do is we can first get the core concept done and then we can come back and add in uh, added to the expectation slide. You can mention that uh, you're going to dive deeper into other people like them that have achieved the end outcome that you're actually promising. So you're going to be talking about the case studies and how the exact steps that they took to get to the end outcome. So for example, if I'm mentioning that realtor, you can make an extra 300k per year by coaching other real estate agents, I'm going to talk about how I'm going to dive deeper into these three case studies of other real estate agents that got into coaching and that are now making more than $300,000 per year. And I'm going to cover the exact three steps that the, the three, you know, steps that they followed to make an extra $300,000 per year. And how, and we're, we're also going to mention how they can work with you one to one at the end. So this is, we're just setting the expectations here. Another question that your expectations should be able to answer is why should this stick till the end? Like, why is it important that, you know, this person keeps watching the video till the end? They got fear of missing out. So YouTubers do this very well in their, their videos, but is there a bonus that they're going to receive for sticking till the end? What incentive do they have to stick around? They can mention stuff like, you know, there's a special bonus for those who watch through the end. Are they getting information that they can't find anywhere else? So you're revealing insider secrets that cannot be found anywhere else. So why? So you need to think to yourself, what reasons can I give them for them to stick around till the end? So this is your expectation slide. Who is this for? What exactly are they going to learn? And why should they watch till the end? Of course, you know, you can split this up into two or three different slides. But uh, this whole sort of category is expectations. Just set the expectations from them. This is for you if X, Y, or Z. This is what you're going to learn, right? And this is why you should stick around till the end. Fear of missing out. 
All right, let's get into the core concept. The core concept is the heart of your video sales letter. If you're going to spend time on any part of the VSO, the core concept is where you should be spending majority of your time. The core concept is going to dictate whether someone buys in or not. It's, it's going to sort of make or break your VSO. So you, you want, if you're going to spend time, spend the time here. So this is where you're going to really sell the prospect. All of the selling is done here. Now, the question is, how do you actually sell? Here, you must convince the viewer that your way of doing stuff, your method, your unique mechanism, your, your, the, way, the way you like to do things is the fastest, easiest, most predictable, most simple, and the best way to, for the prospect to achieve their desired outcome. So let me repeat that one more time. Your unique mechanism, your method, your way of doing stuff is the fastest, best, easiest, most predictable, and the simplest way of the prospect achieving the desired outcome. The whole point of the core concept is for you to make that argument. Now, I use some fancy words, but I also use some super simple words to help you understand what's the purpose of the core concept. So let me give you an example. Let's just say I was selling a Amazon, you know, FBA program. Let's just say I sold like an online course where it's like, guys, here, you know, come buy my Amazon FBA course. And I'm going to teach you guys how you guys can start making money and selling products on Amazon. I would need to convince the viewers that making the selling products on Amazon is indeed the best, the best, fastest, easiest, safest, simplest, and the most predictable way of making money online. If I could convince someone of that, every other objection becomes irrelevant. So this is if I was selling a course on helping people sell products on Amazon and making money on Amazon. That's what I would need to make my viewers believe in order for, to, for me to get people to buy my product. It's sort of like asking yourself the question, what is the one thing that my prospect must believe that every other objection becomes irrelevant? Let me repeat that one more time. What is the one thing that my prospect must believe that if they believe it, every other objection becomes irrelevant? There's two key elements to the core concept. The first is you need to baby the prospect. The way I like to think about this is you want to, the way you want to think about this is like, let's just say you have your prospect in your arms and you're telling the prospect, Hey prospect, it's a okay. It's okay for your past failures. You know, we can blame him or her. We can blame that one thing. We can blame that one external factor. It wasn't your fault. It was the market's fault. It was, it was this one trend that came in. It was that external thing where you just didn't have control over it. So you want to tell the prospects that it's okay for your past failures. And you want, the way you want to think about this, it's like a mother consoling her child. Think of you babying your prospect. The prospect should want, for once think, finally someone understands how i really feel and you're letting them know that hey you know it's not your fault it's that other things fault it's that external factors fault that's the way you want to think about it now let's just say i'm targeting real estate agents for lead generation hey agent it's not your fault that you've been stuck your brokerage just sees you as another big number in their database your brokerage initially made big promises for you to come join but as soon as you joined, they just turn out to be empty promises. There's no help from them whatsoever. This is a reason behind your failure. This is a reason why you're not making six figures. This is not your fault because you've been brainwashed and convinced to work with these big companies that just take a 35% marketing fee. You're barely breaking even with your marketing and even your brokerage isn't telling you anything about it. So you want to tell them that, hey, you know, it's not your fault. And if, if you can tell them that, they're going to for once think that this person finally gets me. And then you want to follow up by saying, the truth is, this is where the big domino falls. This is a big idea. The truth is something that they're scared of, their fears of what keeps them up at night. The way you can think about this is, the truth is you don't have to sit and pray each night that you get a referral or, some, or someone magically calls you to list their home. 
Instead, this is where you can sort of bring in your unique mechanism, right? The truth is something. What, so what are real estate agents scared of? Real estate agents work commission only. So if they don't get a client, they don't make any money. If their client doesn't close on a deal, then they don't make any money. So for them, their biggest fear is them not getting new clients. Their biggest fear is not having deals in the pipeline. Because if they don't make money, they don't get paid. So that's why you want to think about it. Now, I'm going to come back to this here. But first, I want to cover like the wording that I just mentioned above. And I'm actually going to copy and paste. So we need to follow the following wording. Let's, let me give you an example. Let's just say I am actually selling a different offer. The offer that I'm selling here is I'm helping top performing real estate agents become coaches. I'm helping real estate agents get into coaching, coaching other agents. So for that offer, I'm going to give you an example. It's not your fault that you're not progressing in your career because your brokerage doesn't want you to get into coaching. Your brokerage would be a major risk if you ever left and got into coaching. Your brokerage wants you to keep closing deals and bringing in revenue for them. Keep in mind, guys, in the, in the real estate space, if someone gets like a $20,000 check from selling a home like a real estate agent, the brokerage might keep like 20 or 30%. So the brokerage actually makes money each time that their real estate agents, you know, close on deals. So the brokerage is not incentivized to, to help their top performers get into coaching. So it's actually against what's going to help grow their company. Furthermore, no real estate guru or coach wants you to come and take their clients away from them. So no other guru or real estate coach wants you to come in and take their clients. Right, so it's not your fault that you never knew about coaching. Keep in mind in this in this example, getting into coaching, becoming a real estate coach is like the unique mechanism. It's a new way. It's how I'm teaching them to make an extra three hundred thousand. I'm not telling them to go sell more homes. I'm telling them to get into a better vehicle. So the truth is, if you are a top agent in your area. Coaching others is the easiest and the most predictable way to earn an extra $500,000 per year. Right? That's, that's the truth. Now, what would I need to do over here to convince people? Over here, I would need to tell them that, you know, coaching others, becoming a real estate coach, is indeed the best, fastest, easiest, simplest, and most predictable path to making 500k per year. So in this example, I would have to talk shit about and just selling more homes. So what other example, what other alternative would this real estate agent have? Other alternatives. Sell more homes. Build a team. Uh, you know, open up your own independent, you know, brokerage. And then the only other option is get into coaching, right? Get into coaching. So what I would have to do over here is like, I would have to like convince the real estate agent that, hey, the best vehicle for you the best opportunity for you is to get into coaching. I would have to convince the real estate agent that, hey, you know, you need to get into coaching. Don't, don't sell more homes because you're going to end up working more, sacrificing time from family, and your income is capped to how many homes you can sell. And then building a team, I would, I would, you know, make it clear that, you know, it's very expensive. Uh, it's very low margin. And I know this because I know a lot of team leaders that have eventually gone into coaching and they've all mentioned that building a team is very low margin, highly stressful, right? Income is dependent on the quality of your agents, right? So there's so many downsides of, uh, you know, building a team. Or, you know, you can take another route where you can open up your own um, brokerage. But the downside here is very expensive. 
a lot of startup cost. Um, low margin, right? So the best vehicle for you is to get into coaching. And then I would need to start convincing them with the numbers, uh, you know, authority figures that, you know, getting into coaching is indeed the best vehicle for them. So how would I convince people? The way I would convince people is you could bring up, uh, you know, numbers. Where is the world heading? But uh, how, do you, how do you convince people? You need to uh, provide in numbers. So for example, if the, the market is trending where a lot of people are end up, uh, becoming coaches or, uh, you know, this is, this is sort of like the new way to make money. You don't have to like be out in the field, sweating, working under the sun during the rain, running around trying to sell homes when there's a much easier path that you can take. You can bring up studies, conduct a service done. So what I would do here is like, let's just continue with this example is what numbers would I use here? So, uh, you know, over here I can use numbers like how much do real estate agents spend on coaching each year? Right? So if, if agents are spending like 150 mil overall into education, the real estate coach can take advantage of it, get a small chunk of that. I can mention that, oh, you know, there's 50,000 new agents becoming licensed each year. If I became a, a real estate agent tomorrow, I would need to get a coach because I, I wouldn't know what I need to do to sell homes. I don't know how to write other contracts. I don't know how to, you know, talk to leads. I don't know how to book appointments. I don't know how to you know, meet with people, uh, like during an open house. I don't know how, to, I don't know how to do the listing presentation. I would need a coach. So I can mention that all these 50,000 new agents, they need a coach now. And this is where the opportunity lies for you. I can mention that nine out of 10 realtors quit real estate within five years. Why, why are 90% of real estate agents quitting real estate? Because they don't have proper education. Real estate agents need education. And this is where you can come in and you can solve this problem for them. So this is how you can use numbers. Okay. Next, you can talk about where, you know, where the market is trending. You can, uh, you can mention stuff like, you can, you can use other examples. For example, there is this big real estate coach who's doing like 40 million a year, believe it or not. That guy hasn't even sold a home. So I can even bring up that example. That you've, that hey realtor, you've sold like 20, 30, 40 homes in a year. You've made three, 400K per year. There's another guy that's making $40 million a year coaching real estate agents, but he hasn't even sold a single home. So if he can do it, why can't you? Right, so I can bring up that example as well. You can use authority figures. So for example, if someone like big in the space or like a famous business person or someone has said, you know, that getting into coaching is the best vehicle. I can bring that here. So once, the, once again, you can do a comparative analysis. So I would, so for example, this table was one that was created for my lead generation program, but I would create a table and I would compare all of the, all of these different vehicles. I'll be like, hey, realtor, you know, you're making six figures per year. You can either make, you can either sell more, home, more homes, but you're going to sacrifice time with your family. You're going to end up working more. You're going, your income is still capped because your income is now still dependent on how many homes you sell. The most homes you can sell per year is like 50 to 60. Otherwise, you're going to lose your mind. You can either build a team, but it's highly stressful. You're going to manage other people. And you're only ever going to make money if your agents are selling homes. Or your third option is, you know, you can go start up an independent brokerage, but you know, the startup cost is so high. There's so low margin. It's like starting up a brand new business or whatever. But the fourth vehicle is getting into coaching. Now, this is why coaching is the best, fastest, easiest way for you to make $300,000 per year or 500K per year. And then you need to convince them here. But this is, I mean, I, I, did, I, sort, I sort of did an example in front of you here. But this is how you would want to convince them. And this will then lead you into your background. So once you're done with your core concept, this is when you naturally, gradually transition into your background story. 
Now at this point, this person is going to be thinking, like the viewer is going to be thinking like, who the fuck is this person making this argument? Like, it just makes so much sense. It's clicking in my head. Like this big idea, it's like it just makes sense. So this is where you, you know, transition into your background. Now we're talking about the background. You can start off by, you know, who you are. You can talk about what you've accomplished, your awards, recognitions, certifications, your track record. If possible, if you've been featured anywhere, I've seen in. I like to say stuff like, you know, I've actually walked the walk and I've practiced what I preach before ever teaching anything to anyone. So you want to be sure here that, uh, you know, you don't like, uh, you know, piss people off by saying stuff like um, that. You don't want to piss people off by coming off as too cocky or arrogant or egotistic if you just keep talking about yourself. So you want to use words like, you know, I'm not here to brag, but I'm not trying to show off. But, you know, instead, not that it matters. You want to you want to say words like this is to sort of get their guard down. And then, you know, once you give a little bit of a background on yourself, then you want to get into your story. So the whole point of the story is like, it's sort of like you're taking them on a hero's journey. So you start off by where you were before. Before you, you know, discovered this one big idea, before you discovered this method, this unique mechanism, where were you before? Before you discovered this entire thing that you were talking about earlier. So here you want to talk about your painful journey. You want to talk about your nightmare story. You want to talk about the difficulty you faced. Share how nothing worked until you came across that one idea. Until you came across that one thing that changed your life forever. So the core concept. This is where you sort of, you know, talk and, and, and mention that, you know, your life was hell before you discovered that one thing. Right? So. These, you know, the, these are the three steps you're going to be covering later on that you discovered throughout your journey from the before and after transformation. So you can refer to these as the three secrets. So you can mention that, you know, whatever you discovered, you built this, you know, three step system, you built this three step blueprint, you, you made this three step framework or formula or model. And it was because of this, you know, formula, this three step formula that your life changed forever. You gave all of your success to this. And then you went from before and you, you somehow discovered these three steps. You know, you discovered this magic formula, this, this magic pill you, that you discovered. It was these three steps. And that took you to after. This is where you cover what happened after you discovered the three steps. This is what you achieved after discovering the three steps. This is the transformation you achieved before and after. It's all like the ending to the movie where the hero ends up killing the villain. All of the problems get solved. Internal, external. This is a realization you had. This is the realize this is a realization you had along that you were just doing things wrong. So you just had this realization that, you know, this entire time, you know, once you got to your after state, that you were just doing things wrong. The three secrets were the only missing parts in your life. All the all of the credit goes to the three step system, blueprint, formula, framework, or model, whatever you want to call it. So this is to show that anyone can do it. Right. So here, the whole purpose of this section here is you want to talk about your story, you know, where you were before. And then somehow, you know, as you know, you're go you were going on your way with your life. You, you discovered these, you know, these three steps that you took that turn into the system and be and, and you're only that your life success is because of this system or the blueprint. Right. And if you can do it, so can they. And this is when this is where you transition to the three steps that you're going to be talking about next so the transition here is uh one question that they're going to have in the back of their mind is that uh, what's in it for them if they're if they discover these three secrets if they discover this one thing why wouldn't they just want to keep it to themselves why don't they just get more success why don't they just keep continue making more money why would a magician reveal his tricks that's what they're thinking so you want to provide yourself uh, you want to provide selfish and unselfish reasons so this is once again going to build trust and be honest with your unselfish reasons here as well. I believe that, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, making it clear that you just want to make more money. So you can let them know that, hey, this is my selfish reason for doing it. I'm going to end up, I'm going to, of course, get paid more money because I am creating more value. But also, I also have, you know, unselfish reasons why I'm doing this. 
Oops, so there's a mistake. My selfish reasons. So you realize, you know, you, you know, what? Why am I doing this? I had a realization that more people like you need a solution to the same problem. No one else is teaching this. For, so for this reason, you know, I'm, I'm giving away this. And you also want to answer the question, like, why is this important right now? Why is this important to the viewer right now? Why not tomorrow? Why is this so immediate right now? So you can mention stuff like, you know, we're living in the most uh, difficult time in history, this uncertainty and lack of security. If you don't solve this problem right now, you will drown. So while you're transitioning, you want to mention like, why is this so important right now? And what's in it for you, your selfish and unselfish reason? And then, you know, before you get into the steps, you want to get the viewer excited once again by saying the big headline that you had mentioned earlier. So once again, I'll just quickly recap what the whole point of the transition is. So what's in it for you? Right? Nothing wrong with having a selfish reason. And you also want to provide a unselfish reason. The number one thing that someone's going to be thinking is why, if, you know, if you're making so much money, why would you want to, you know, teach other people your secrets? Why do you want to give away your secrets? Why don't, why not just keep it to yourself? A business is all about secrets. A business knows something that another business doesn't, which is why, you know, they're making more money. So why would you want to give away your secrets? And then this is when you get into the steps. There's always going to be like three big steps. Now, the way you want to think about steps is a few important notes. Number one, you talk about the what, not the how. Talk about the what, not how. The how is your service that you're pitching at the end. It's sort of like uh, when you tell a friend about an amusement park. You hype up the rides, right? That's the what. Oh, you know, they have that uh, in roller coaster. That, that they have the, this, you know, these three roller coasters that are so nice. But you don't tell them about the how. How you're going to get them there. Now, you can fly to the amusement park, which is sort of a crazy example. You can take a helicopter there. You can drive there. You can take a bike there. You can walk there. You're not going to talk about that, but you're going to stand talk about what they're going to get as a result of, you know, going there. Right? So you're selling people on the what. Each step is something you discover throughout your journey. Each, okay, each step is sort of like an aha moment. You essentially figured out the correct way of doing things that actually work. Right? So I'm going to be diving deeper into the steps and it's going to start clicking in your head as, as to why each step is the way it is. Each step is sort of like you, you essentially figured out the correct way of doing things. You want to imagine each, each step in your service as sort of like a light bulb moment that went off. Right? These are the times when you figured out the right way to do things. The way that, the way that actually works. The steps are like a set of activities. You always want to start off with the verb. So once again, I'll dive deeper into what I mean by start with the verb. And I'll dive deeper into what I mean by set of activities. So think about these steps like this. Say you weren't going to pitch anything at the end. Let's just say, for example, like you have a VSL, but you're not going to pitch anything at the end. What would the prospect actually need to do to reach the desired outcome? These are your steps. So this is, a, this is where your prospect is currently at. This is where they want to get to. And there are the set of steps that your prospect needs to take to get to the end outcome. And each step is a, it's like an activity. They got to do something, right? It's something, it's like an action. There's set up there's action one, action two, action three, and then end outcome. Forget about your product. Don't worry, don't think about your service or what you're gonna do for them. Let's just say they were trying to get they were trying to do the process on their own. What sort of activities, what sort of actions would they need to perform to be able to reach that result on their own? That's how you want to think about it. So let's go through the steps because the steps are uh, super important. So step one is you compare the old way of doing things, the old traditional way of doing things. And then you compare that with the new way of doing things. So once again, you compare the old way of doing things, the old traditional things, the ways that don't work anymore. And you compare and contrast that with the new way of doing things. And this new way is your method, is your unique mechanism, is the way you do things. And the old way of doing things is slow, doesn't work, time consuming, takes a lot of effort, expensive. But the new way is easier, faster, cheaper, more simple, more predictable. Right? So you want to think about it like that. And be because of this, and once again, as I do go through this, I will give you an example as I go through this. 
And because of this old way, you know, there is an old result. Right? As a result of doing the old ways, you know, it's slower, more expensive, whatever I just mentioned. Versus a new way, where, you know, which is much faster, easier, cheaper. And then you want to prove your point with you know, numbers if possible. If you make if you make a new claim, you need to, you know, be able to back it up with evidence. And I'll dive deeper into what sort of evidence you can provide when you're turn, trying to prove stuff. But you compare the old way, new way, and then you want to prove your point. And because of proving this one point, you sort of discover this one unique secret. This is what you discovered. Right? This is like your step one. This is what you discovered. When you're thinking about this, uh, you know, step one, the way you want to think about it is like, you know, your before and your after, your, your own personal journey. And then as you were sort of making this transformation, you sort of discovered this one secret. And this one secret turned into a step. So we'll we'll get we'll dive a little bit deeper into this as well. And you also want to show uh, client results because of this one new secret. So keep in mind, you know, they're only familiar with the old ways and the old result. Since you're bringing something new to the table, you need to be able to back it up with a real life proof. And the perp and and when you and you want to show testimonials or a client case study that prove that your point is your point if possible. You want to use a client results to overcome objections. The purpose of this story is to make it as relatable as possible. The viewer should resonate with the story. This is what's going to convert people. Now, if you don't have any case studies, you can always use an external case study to present an argument. Now, let me more so show you an example. Say I'm working with real estate agents and I'm selling a service of done for you TikTok ads. I must convince my viewer that TikTok ads are indeed the best, fastest, easiest, simplest way of getting new clients online. Now, let's say I'm just selling a done for you service and my whole service is sort of based around TikTok ads, right? So my step one would be run TikTok ads. That's a verb. This is a verb right here. You need to run TikTok ads. What's the old way? The old way is you're running Facebook and Instagram ads. And you're just like every other agent in your market. It's a crowded space. The new way is you're running TikTok ads. Now, what's the result if you keep running Facebook and Instagram ads? Super competitive. Every real estate agent in the city is already running Facebook ads. Cost per lead is going year up year over year. Cost per acquisition is on the rise. The lead quality is low. You just get tire kickers with Facebook ads. However, with TikTok ads, there's a cheaper cost per lead. No agent is running TikTok ads, so it's a blue ocean. Low competition, low cost per acquisition. Right, so I'm talking shit about Facebook and Instagram ads, and I'm 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 talking about the new way, which is TikTok ads. Now, the secret that I discovered was that TikTok ads are not just a new new trend; they're the most cost-effective and profitable way to attract new clients right now. That was a secret that you discovered. Now, if you made this point that oh, you know, TikTok ads are much better than Facebook ads, you know, screw Facebook ads. That you got to prove it. You got to be able to back it up with evidence. I found this uh, one stat. Of course, you know, you can always use ChatGPT to come up with these numbers and stats. I found this one stat that said, an impressive honor for the video. Uh, what the, the stat pretty much said that, hey, TikTok ranked as the most downloaded app of 2021. It beat out longtime social media favorites, Instagram, Facebook, and Snapchat in terms of downloads. So we can prove that, you know, there's more users on TikTok than ever before. Therefore, realtors should be advertising here more than the other platforms. I can also mention that TikTok ads is much cheaper than Facebook ads. So there was a study conducted and they found that TikTok ads cost to show your ad to a thousand people is approximately half of Facebook. So on TikTok, it's going to cost you $6 to show your ad to 1,000 people. Whereas on Facebook, to show your ad to 1,000 people, it's going to cost $12. So you're paying twice the amount of money on Facebook to advertise to the same people. You can also mention that the cost per click on Facebook is much higher, right, compared to TikTok. 
So I'm using numbers and I'm using real life studies to prove my point. If I'm making a point, I'm going to make sure I prove it. Now the real estate agent is going to buy into the fact that, holy shit, you know, I need to run some TikTok ads. You know, you know Facebook ads clearly don't work. I can also mention that, uh, you know, Facebook's cost per lead and CPA has been rising year over year. And once again, you know, this data over here shows the difference in the CPMs. This over here shows that the cost per click grew from $1.85 in 2020 to $2.20 in uh, 2022. I can mention that the cost to advertise has been rising from 2020 to, to 2022. The cost per click is clearly rising. Right? So I can, I, can, I can prove to the real estate that, hey, you know, Facebook is just becoming more and more competitive each day. So the conclusion here is, uh, you know, TikTok is a blue ocean for real estate advertising. There's less competition, there's lower cost and growing user base. Now, if I made this point, you know, I proved it with all these numbers and stuff. I still need to show client testimonials. Here, I can mention that, hey, you know, I have this one case study of John. He's a realtor. He closed seven deals in three months using TikTok ads. He spent $500 and he made back, you know, $25,000 in commissions. His cost per acquisition was, you know, a thousand dollars. His uh, his return on advertising, uh, you know, versus TikTok was, you know, the 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 cost. His return on advertising on TikTok was five times higher than Facebook. So I can prove it with client testimonials as well. Let's just say you don't have a case study. I can bring up another top performing agent in the area. And you can mention how fast this agent has grown just because he is the one that's leveraging TikTok ads. So you don't have to have a, a client. If you, you don't have to have a case study, you can also bring up other people that have been able to do this. Here, we're just trying to prove that, you know, TikTok ads is the way to go. Right. So that would be step one. The secret that you discover was as you know, throughout your journey, you discovered that, you know, TikTok ads is the way to go. That's what you discovered. For step two, we are going to follow the exact same format. So I'm going to continue with the exact same example. But say I'm working with real estate agents and once again, you know, selling a service of TikTok ads. I must convince the viewer that my TikTok ads are indeed the best, fastest, easiest, simplest way of getting new clients. Second part of this would be lead follow-up. Let's cover it. So for step two, I would say like, hey, use AI to follow up with new leads. Old way manually texting each lead it's like fishing in it's like fishing with a single rod the new way is use an ai powered text-based chapa imagine fishing with a net that never sleeps that's such a good example i got that from chad gpt but what i'm saying is like hey you know instead of like you know manually texting all these people one by one with your phone instead you're gonna have a net that just never sleeps and you're fishing with the net the old, the old result of, you know, doing this stuff, it's time consuming, manually texting people, it's draining. You're sifting through leads hand by, by hand. You're missing out on quick follow-ups. You're juggling the stress of constant engagement. Now, the new way is, is time-saving. It's also stress-free. The AI chatbot sorts all the good leads for you and it operates around the clock and it handles objections more efficiently. It's like having an assistant who works 24 seven. So what's the secret? You found that using an AI powered chatbot is the most efficient way to follow up with leads and increase marketing ROAS, right? That's the secret that you found and you need to prove it. So of course, you know, there's so many stats that prove that AI, you must use that AI based follow up. A few to name is, you know, increase its conversion rates, efficiency. You know, uh, this one report, uh, found that a response within five minutes can lead to an 85% conversion rate. Responding within one minute can improve conversions by 391%. Now, hey, realtor, do you think you can manually respond to every lead within five minutes? Can you follow up with each lead within one minute? Likely not. Well, we're going to get, we're going to use AI's help to do that for you. The productivity boost. AI sales assistance increase sales reps productivity by 35%. You're going to become more productive by one third. Your customer acquisition cost is going to drop by 
it can drop by 80%. That's what studies show. And of course, you know, you could bring more and more stats. You can bring so many stats about AI. But over here, the whole point is that I'm, I'm making a point that, you know, AI powered chatbot is an efficient way to follow up with the lead. So I'm going to prove it with, uh, you know, studies and numbers and stuff. And if possible, you want to also show client results. So you can bring up testimonials. And this is where you can also cover any objections and limiting beliefs with the, with the case study. I didn't show that here, but with the case study, you can show their before and after, and you can uh, cover and overcome objections and limiting beliefs here. Now, once you've covered step one, step two, step three, you want to provide a recap. So provide a recap of what you initially promised at the beginning of the video and how you delivered it. So I just shared with you the three steps and you know, whatever the headline was, you know, how to add an additional 300k in GCI within one year or less without becoming a slave to lead generation companies. You know, step one, you want to run TikTok ads. Step two, you want to use AI to follow up with leads. And whatever the third step that, that you had. So you're giving a quick recap. Now, if you have case studies, this is where you bring in the case studies. And this is where you can go hard with the case studies. So once you uh, you know, you know, you've showed step one, step two, step three, you give a quick recap. Now you want to add in, you know, the cherry on the top by showing all of your testimonials and all of your case studies. So each case study should have sort of had the, uh, the following elements. Where were they before? The challenges that they faced, struggles, the pain, the difficulty, the hardship that they faced, how nothing was ever working. But then, you know, they came across these secrets. Right? Of course, we're not mentioning your product here. We're mentioning the three steps. Keep in mind, we're not talking about your service or your product or whatever you're selling. Instead, we're talking about the steps that they followed, the secrets that they followed. So afterwards, you know, after they found out about these steps, these step one, step two, step three, and then they started incorporating it, this real estate agent closed an additional four deals within you know, 48 days. Talking about the time frame it happened in 50 days or whatever. So once again, you can uh, overcome objections here. So as you know, talking and going through each case study one by one, you want to overcome the objection. You can mention that, oh, you know, this, this real estate agent had no money, but uh, so since, this, since this real estate agent had no money uh, and the few hundred dollars that this real estate agent had, they put that towards TikTok ads since it was much cheaper. And as a result, X, Y, and Z happened. Um... <laughs> So you can, uh, you know, use, of course, you know, any element here for the story. So once you sort of go over your case studies and testimonies, you want to provide your prospect with some alternatives. So if your client wants to follow step one, step two, step three, what options do they have? So I'm going to continue with my example. So the, the option one that this real estate agent has is they can hire an in-house marketing team. However, this real estate is going to have to pay $5,000 a month. That's 60 k per year. This is without considering the cost of training. Right? So a real estate agent has to pay, you know, $6,200 per month to hire an in-house marketing team that can do all of this stuff for them. Or option number two, the real estate agent can learn all this stuff themselves and do it themselves. However, it's going to take time, energy, resources. Time is money, right? However, the third option, wink, wink, is, work, is working with you. The third option is working with you. You can, you can get the entire system up and running in less than seven days for one-tenth of the price and the effort, and you can ensure that the client never loses money, right? This is where you, you say that, you know, working with you is you get, you, you get uh, faster results, it's cheaper, it's much easier. You're saving time, money, and energy. It's more simple. It's more predictable. You can mention and you can throw in some status here. You know, you know, over the past few years, you know, we've worked with hundreds of agents just like you. We know what works. We know what doesn't work. How to add profits to the bottom line, so on and so forth. All right. So you're just, so you're just really just providing alternatives here. Like option one, you can do this. Option two, you can do this. You know, option number three, you can do this, so on and so forth. And then. You want to quickly talk about who is this not for and who is this really for. Now, this is, this is where you're disqualifying people. 
but if there's anyone that you don't want to bring in and if there's anyone that you don't work with uh you don't that that is an unqualified prospect this is where you bring it up you know this is not for you if you're just looking for a magic bullet without having to put in any work of course you know you want to make sure that you're not bringing in any bad clients here but who is this really for this is for single agents and small teams who want the number in their checking account to go up but are dealing with not so profitable scalable or predictable real estate business you want your net take-home income to increase this is also for the broker that wants to know how to generate business and appointments out of thin air right so once again you just quickly briefly talk about you know who is this not for this is where you disqualify people right so who is this not for disqualify people that you know you don't want to work with and then who this is for to regurgitate uh, once again uh briefly cover who this is for right and then you talk about the quick short quick benefits of the transformation your prospect will be able to achieve over here the way you want to think about the benefits here is let's just say you know you work with these clients and you help them achieve an end outcome what will they what will they be able to benefit what will they be able to do how has their life changed now how does their life look different now from before what skills abilities do they have now that they never had before so now, realtor, you can get to 250k net in 12 months if you execute properly. You can finally get rid of these other lead generation companies that just burn your pockets, that just steal money from you, that, that just scam you. You can forget about clients that don't respect your time. You know that are uh, you know that are cold. You could forget about clients that are, that don't respect your time. You could forget about cold calling. You can for, you can forget about the constant need to check your bank account to see if the commission check has arrived. You'll feel motivated. You're going to feel driven. You're going to feel stress-free. You're, you can finally take significant market share. You know, you're going to, you're going to be able to go to sleep peacefully at night that you now have a consistent lead generation system in your business. And then you make your pitch. So once you've laid out all the options, it's time to make your pitch, right? This is where you give them a special invite to come work with you. However, this part should have the following element. You got to throw in some scarcity, right? So. An example of scarcity is, you know, I only look to bring on X amount of agents. And you also want to provide a reason, otherwise they're going to uh, break report with the with the client. So if you're saying that, you know, you only work with an X amount of clients or X amount of real estate agents per area, or you only take on X amount of people before, you know, December 31st, or you only work with these many clients at any given time, you need to make sure that you give a reason, provide a reason. If you don't provide a reason, you're going to break a report. You know, we only provide a solution to X amount of clients at any given time. So here, what you're really doing is you're really just inviting the prospect to want to come work with you. And then you make a call to action. This is where you make a call to action. Your call to action here could be, uh, you can request uh, that person to come book a call with you. You get to throw in two elements here. Urgency. The first one is, uh, what I mean by urgency is, why should the person book a call today? Why not yesterday? Why not tomorrow? Why should the person book a call today? So if you're uh, asking the, the prospect to come book a call with you, why today? Why not tomorrow? Why not before? So book before X date. You know, we're, once again, we're only taking on these many agents, you know, in 2024, in the last four months of 2024. Spots are filling up fast and there's a chance that another agent in your market will take that share from you. This is where you can also throw in bonuses. So you, make the, you can make the core offer even better by throwing in bonuses here okay so once again i just want to uh, quickly recap here so here you're pitching you're pitching your uh, you're pitching your service you're pitching your done for you service if you if if that's what you're running with and you're asking the prospect to want to come work with you and then uh, you make a call to action so what should they do if they want to work with you here you can say hey come book a call with me and the uh and the urgency here is uh whatever you can uh you know think of and come up with and, to, and and then you sort of end off the VSL with a Q&A, you know, frequently asked questions. Okay. But this is sort of the structure that you want to have for a VSL. So just to recap, 
if we take a look at the outline here, you can just simply follow this outline. You have a headline, you make a big headline, and then you provide proof to back up the headline. And then you set some ex expectations as to what this free video is going to contain and who is this for? What are they going to learn? Why should they stick around to the end? And then you talk about the core concept, which is the most important part of the VSL. This is a big idea. The, this is the, um, the big domino that's going to fall. And then you, uh, you give a quick background on yourself. Why, are you, why should we listen to you, pretty much? And uh, you talk about your story, the before and after, and these you know, secrets that you discovered along the way, which ended up becoming the step one, step two, and you made the system around these secrets, right? You can call it like the, the, the bulletproof, you know, real estate income, you know, on steroids, whatever. You can come up with the name. And then you have step one, step two, step three, and then you provide a recap. And then you cover case studies. Your, your testimonials and social proof. And then you can offer uh, alternatives. What are the different other options that this client has to uh, achieve this end outcome? Who is this not for and who is this for? And then you cover quick, short benefits. You bang them out and then you uh, pitch. And then you end off with uh, a call to action. The call to action is going to be book a call. And then you end off with the Q&A. But this is the entire framework and you can take this framework and you can put this on a Google Doc. You can, you know, make a Google slide presentation. You can make a PowerPoint presentation, whatever you want to do with it. But the, the PowerPoint should follow this very simple structure. This is what's going to get people to buy in. We've generated millions of dollars, you know, using this exact framework. So just use and abuse. It is a brand new day. And we are going to be covering a brand new section, which is called advertising. I don't know a single seven figure agency that does not run paid advertising to get new clients. To add fuel to the fire, you must master running paid advertising to get new clients. I've been in this online, you know, online business world for a very long time, and I haven't found a single agency or really any business that can do multiple seven figures per year in revenue unless you have this huge organic following so unless you have you know a big youtube following maybe you're really big on tiktok or instagram you will likely have to run paid advertising that's the truth the ads manager for those of you that don't know what the ads manager is that's pretty much where you run and that's where you click the buttons to get the ads set up to, and to run the ads that is where the money is made you look at ads sort of like a slot machine. You're playing a game. That's what you're doing. You're playing a game. You're putting a dollar in and you're playing this game to the best of your ability to make back three or five dollars. If you get really good at this game, you can turn one dollar into ten. This part of the training is to teach you how to do that. Now, once again, to prove to you that I actually know what I'm talking about, Here's how much money that I spent on paid advertising yesterday with my own money. So actively, I'm spending about two right now at this current time. I'm start, I'm spending about two thousand dollars of my own money on advertising. That's per day. So this is pretty much my own money on the line. This is not a client's money. I'm not taking my real estate agent's money and their ad spend and counting that as mine. Instead, this is my own money that I'm paying to Facebook. To run ads so i do know what i'm talking about so i'm spending 60 70 80 thousand dollars a month and i wouldn't be doing that if i wasn't able to get a return back so you can trust the information that i'm going to be giving to you right now now before we get into sort of like the technical side of the ads manager you know what buttons to click how do you set up the ads the campaign structure and all of that sort of stuff we need to first get these fundamentals in place now since the video sales letter stuff is fresh in your mind the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to write up the ad copies the ad copies is going to be the most time consuming and it's going to be the hardest part so let's get let's get done with the hard part first and then we can do the easy part the, the running the ads is is you just press you just press a few buttons you copy and paste the ad copy and you get the ads up and running but the hard part and the part that's going to take a lot of your energy and this is where you're going to be scratching your brain is for the ad copies so let's get the ad copies done first now when we're looking to write copy now i'm not trying to turn this into a copywriting course 
but there are a few pointers that I'm going to give to you that is going to help you write ad copies. Now, once again, Peter Thiel has said, if you're competing, competition is for losers. So we don't want to be competing with another person. We don't want to compete with another competitor. Therefore, we're not going to copy what other people are doing. If you copy what other people are doing, and let's just say you just copy what they're doing and you, you run that as an ad, you run that as an ad copy and it doesn't work. How do you fix that process? You didn't write the ad copy. So you will then be stuck and you will be stuck at ground zero. So what you want to do, the better way is you learn this framework, a framework that works. And with copywriting, there is sort of like an architecture. A lot of the copywriting stuff that I learned has been from Agora Financial. Now, for those of you that don't know what Agora Financial is, they're sort of this publishing company that um, they have newsletters and then they, uh, they talk about investment opportunities with their subscribers and they have a whole bunch of products that they promote. But their copywriting training is one of the best and they do hundreds and millions of dollars per year in revenue. I believe last year they did like 140, 150 million. And all of this revenue is coming from the sales letters that they're writing, their copywriting. The copywriting is that good. So that's where the copywriting training is coming from. Now, when we're uh, writing copy, what I've done is there is like a, the way I want you to think about this is think about, let's just say you're going to build a house. To build a house, you're going to need plumbing. You're going to need lumber. You're going to need a whole bunch of, you know, materials to build the house. Similarly, when you're writing copy, you're going to need these few elements that's going to make up this copy. And when you put all of these like few elements in together, it's sort of like you're, you're doing a, it's sort of like you're meeting this checklist. That, okay, I have this element, I have this element, I have this element. Okay, now I can push this copy out. So there's a few elements and I call them copy hacks. These are some hacks that you want to have. And I'm going to be covering these hacks in depth. And when we're writing the ad copies, I can, I can show you, I'm also going to show you examples of, you know, exact ads that I wrote that are pre-wrote just for this training. And I'll show you where each element is being used. So let's start off with the first one, which is the big three. Now, when someone reads your ad, they should clearly have an answer to the following three questions. Number one, why should I listen to this guy or girl? If someone is watching your ad, the first question that's going to come in their mind is, who is this person? Why should I listen to this guy? Like, who are you? So we need, to, we need to answer this question. So you should be able to answer this question somewhere in the ad copy. For example, uh, once again, I'm going to continue with the example that I'm working with real estate agents. So I would write something like, somewhere in my ad copy, I would write, you know, I've worked with over 1,000 real estate agents to date. I have over 20 case studies of real real estate agents that I've worked with on my website. You know, I've won these, you know, four awards. So in the back of me, you can see that I have four ClickFunnels awards. So these each war, each you get rewarded each award for doing a million dollars with one funnel. So that is clear proof that I've made a confirmed four million dollars online. So I can sort of you know, show off those proofs to sort of add credibility to myself, to, to establish myself as an authority figure. I can mention stuff like, you know, I've been doing this for five years now. We have a trust pilot, which is uh, very similar to Google reviews. And we have around 70 something reviews and at a 4.8, 4 4.8 star reviews. So that's something that I can mention that on trust pilot, our customers, our clients have given us an average 4.8 star rating. And this has come from 70 something reviews. So I can talk about that. I can mention that somewhere in the ad copy. Another uh, something else that I can mention is, you know, this is a framework that we've spent years developing and one that so-and-so realtor from EXP Realty used to make over $400,000 in 2024. So these are just a few examples that I can have in the ad copy. But this clearly shows the prospect why they should be listening to me. And you need to somewhere in the ad copy be able to answer this question. Second question, what are they getting out of watching your ad? Like what's in it for them? You need to be able to answer that question. For example, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to continue with the, with the real estate example. If I'm talking to real estate agents, I can say something along the lines of, 
you'll get access to a free step-by-step -step training blueprint that will cover three simple bulletproof steps that will transform struggling real estate agents barely scraping by into high earners all within a few months of following this process to a T. Another example. You'll get an in-depth breakdown of three simple steps countless real estate agents follow to go from barely getting by in a real estate, getting crushed by competitors, to earning multiple six figures per year in income. How any real estate agent, even one with less than one year of experience, can copy-paste this winning formula. Another example, you'll get direct access to a free lead generation campaign to generate home buyers or sellers in your area as for free as a bonus for attending this training to start generating leads tonight that will take less than five minutes to set up. And that's a really good one. What I'm mentioning is, you know, I'm going to give you access to this training, but as a bonus, I'm going to give you this free organic lead generation campaign that you can set up. It's not going to cost you anything to set up. And it's going to take you only five minutes and you'll start getting home buyers and sellers as leads in less than by tonight. That's essentially what I'm promising. The last point here is you'll discover how to avoid getting ripped off by big lead generation companies. The one simple yet overlooked mistake 99% of agents make with their Facebook ads that's costing you thousands. And the only lead generation strategy that actually works today to consistently generate new home buyers on demand so just to recap i'm establishing myself as an authority figure i need to add credibility once i've been able to do that i need to also get across like what are what's in it for them like what are they getting out of the ad and then last why is this something that i should take action on action on right now why is this important today why is this not important tomorrow if someone is watching your ad why should they click on it at that very second so here, here are a few examples. I'm only keeping this training up until we fill in the seats. We're pulling the curtains one time and one time only. If you miss this, you're going to be at a complete disadvantage from every other real estate agent in your area. The number one real estate agent in your area unknowingly, unknowingly does this, but you could deliberately copy it today and get ahead of them. It's going to benefit the ones that take action on this immediately the most. So I'm providing clear reasons as to why they should listen to me, what they're getting out of watching this ad, and why they should be taking action on that right now. So we should have these three elements within the copy. And let's move on. Another thing that I like to do is I like to throw in numbers into my copy. Now, if you're making like a promise, you need to be able to back that up. If you're making a claim, or you're promising something, you should be able to back that up with evidence, with proof. One of the things that I like to do, but the, the way I like to think about things is humans can lie, but numbers don't. Let me repeat that. Humans lie, but numbers don't. So if I'm seeing stuff like, you know, nine out of 10 real estate agents quit real estate within five years. Real estate agents aren't given the proper education to succeed. I'm not making this number up. If I made a number up, no one would believe me. But this is a clear stat in the, in the real estate industry. So I could bring that up. So when you're explaining the problem, you can use numbers to explain how bad of a problem it really is. So if you're making an argument and if you're talking about something, numbers is something that you can use. And I had mentioned this earlier, but you can use ChatGPT to find you these numbers. So gone are, are the days where you're going to have to sit on Google, read a few studies, research, spend a good 30 to a 60 minutes. But now you can just do a quick search on ChatGPT and it will give you a bunch of these stats for you. So the research part is already been taken care of by ChatGPT. So you can use AI to do the research for you. So you can use numbers when you're talking about, you know, what's new in the market? What's becoming old now? What's being backed by numbers? What do numbers show where things are heading? Here's some examples that you can read. Um, a good one here is there are over 3 million. So for example, I'm setting lead generation. There are over 3 million real estate agents in the U.S. alone, all dealing with the one problem, lead generation. 
So the number that I used here was 3 million active licensed real estate agents in the US. That's a stat. That's a number. And that's proven by, that's proven by statistics. So I can use that stat. And I can mention that all of them, every real estate agent is dealing with, dealing with one problem. Lead generation. So you can view these examples and sort of see how you can sort of apply this to your niche if, if you're able to make it work. And when you're trying to build trust within your copy, this is where you can also bring in numbers and use exact numbers to build trust. For example, my client only spent, like, for example, you can use this uh, in your case study, right? If you're bringing up testimonials and stuff. My client only spent $156 on ads to book four listing appointments. Now, Notice how I didn't say, oh, my client spent only $100. I put the exact number. This is going to build trust. In their copy, there's something called specificity. You want to be very detailed and specific with your numbers. My average real estate agent client closes an additional 2.6 deals per month. If I use the number three, it wouldn't be as believable. But if I'm using the number 2.6, it's much more believable. The viewer is able to think to themselves that, okay, you know, it seems like this person did, you know, do some research and they're not just pulling these numbers out of their ass. Another example, here's how to make an extra $194,242 per year with this simple, never seen before marketing system. Use how, see how I'm using these numbers here. Now, once again, you can use, uh, numbers and exact numbers when you're talking about case studies testimonials or when you're providing proof i think i mentioned this earlier but let's go over it uh, one more time we've worked with 739 agents in the past four years last month we generated 4392 leads for a real estate clients company company wide we know what ads actually work to generate the cheapest cost per lead we spent $321,403 on paid advertising on the behalf of our real estate clients in the past three years. After years of trial and error, hundreds and thousands of dollars spent on advertising, we know what really works to generate quality seller leads. Our client, Lisa Trombetta, closed 40 transactions in 180 days. This client closed eight buyer transactions in 90 days. This client closed 15 transactions in one year. We've generated 391 listing appointments for our clients last month. So when you're writing copy, use exact numbers. That's number one. That's one takeaway. Number two, use chat GPT to help you find these stats that you could throw into the ad copy if you're maybe talking about the problem. So if you're making a claim, Make sure you're able to back that claim up with proof. An example of that is, let's just say, you know, I'm writing something about, you know, this medical condition. I'm not even a doctor, but if a doctor wrote that, you know, it would be much that whatever the doctor wrote would be much more credible if compared to if I wrote it. Now, another element that you want you want to have in your ad copy is talking shit. So what I mean by talking shit is. You want to talk shit about the competitors. That's pretty much what I mean. It's throwing rocks at the enemies. However, one mistake that I see people make is they use like their competitors' names or uh, other people's name. You don't want to do that. It's an open playing field and there are other businesses that are also trying to generate a profit. These other companies, they're they're putting food at the they're putting food at the table for their families through their businesses. So you don't want to, you know, bring up other people's names and companies' names and, you know, create this unnecessary drama. You want to treat, you know, business as sort of like an open playing field. The ones that are good will win. So, you know, don't be that guy that calls out another company, right? You're just going to lose respect. You want to be ethical and be respectful. But the way you want to think about talking shit is it's sort of like the us versus them mentality. Who are you up against? 
So for example, if I'm like, you know, in this industry, like the industry that I'm in, you know, where I'm posting YouTube videos and I'm, you know, giving people different ideas on how to make money or this is what worked for me. And I'm sharing my story. I'm sort of, I'm sort of going up against other people that are teaching people how to make money, but they haven't really run a real business. Those are the people that I'm up against. Another example is if I'm selling lead generation to uh, real estate agents, I'm going to talk shit. I'm going to throw rocks at these other big lead generation companies that see these real estate agents as just a number in their database. And they're taking these huge marketing fees. And I don't do that. And they're, they're charging so much money where the real estate agent is barely even breaking even with their you know, marketing agency. So those are the people that I'm going up against. I'm also going up against brokerages that don't provide education to their, you know, realtors. So you want to have a us versus a mentality. And this works really well. Now I had mentioned, you know, babying the prospect earlier, but I want to, you know, bring it back for the copy aspect. You want to let the prospect know that it's a-okay for their past failures. It's sort of like a mother consoling her child. Think of you sort of holding your prospect in your arms and you're telling them it's okay. You know, it's not your fault. It's not your fault because of this one external thing. It's not your fault you've been stuck because your brokerage never gave you the education that was required. It's not your fault realtor because you're being taught by your real estate coach these lead generation tactics that worked 20 years ago but they don't work today realtor it's not your fault because you've been brainwashed to work with these big companies that end up taking a 35 percent marketing fee no wonder you're barely breaking even with their marketing spend so you want to let them know that hey prospect it's not your fault it's okay right so for once they're going to feel like someone finally understands how I really feel. Now, this one, I like to refer to this one as becoming the savior. What I mean by becoming the savior is you do the exact opposite of what your prospect fears. List your prospect's fears and you do the exact opposite. People always want to have a victim mentality for their fail- failures. Therefore, you want to give them that. So let me give you an example. As a real estate agent, if I'm a real estate agent, my fear is that, you know, I don't want to pay thousands of dollars for marketing that doesn't work. That's my fear. So I can, you know, use that to my advantage as the person that's writing copy. The truth is you don't need to pay thousands of dollars for marketing to just break even. That's what they're scared of. You just need to spend as much as two Starbucks coffee drinks per day on one simple Facebook ad. So you see what I did there. So what are they scared of? They don't want to pay thousands of dollars to just break even. So the solution and the and the opposite and how we're opposite is you just need to write one simple Facebook ad and it's going to cost as much as two Starbucks drinks. Another fear that a real estate agent may have is I don't want to do all this marketing stuff. You know, that's going to require technical skills. I don't want to do all that sort of stuff. I can say the truth is consistent, consistently generating new buyers and sellers on demand doesn't have to be so complicated. All you got to do is just, uh, you got into real estate to sell homes, not sit there to learn how to run some Facebook ads. Instead, we're going to take that care. We're going to take care of that for you. So you see what I did, did there? We're doing the exact opposite. Another element that you can have is be in their head. So there's some things that um, your market is likely going to be suspicious about. It's sort of like watching a YouTube video. It's like it's like let's just say let's like it's like let's just say you're watching a YouTube video of another finance YouTuber or someone that teaches people how to make money online. In the back of your mind, you're gonna be suspicious that, come on, bro, you're just trying to sell me on a course. That's what th- that's what you're suspicious about. Come on, bro, I see that you just want me to sign up under your affiliate link. It's sort of like the suspicion that you have in the back of your mind. 
it's sort of like your gut telling you that it sounds too good to be true like what's this person's real motive behind this you can incorporate this into your copy it's true so uh, let's just say for like uh for a real estate agent they may think oh you know facebook ads it doesn't work anymore you know, I've been trying Facebook ads for the past two years, but it just seems like I don't think Facebook ads works anymore. You can mention that it's true. Facebook ads just don't work anymore. Cost is rising and each day there's a new agent that's using them. This cutthroat competition. You need a new different platform. And let's just say I was selling TikTok ads. That's where I could come in and I can mention that this is the new platform. So you see what I did there? Another thing that I like to talk about is magic. Now, this is something that will like transform the way you write copy. There are a few more elements that you want to have in your copy. And I, I, I've made a checklist for you towards the end. But this is to, and I made a checklist to make sure that you don't miss any element. But this was one of like the biggest breakthroughs that I had when writing copy. Let's start off with the first one. This is why I like to, you know, refer to it as, uh, you know, true magic. First one is the words actually and really. This process actually works unlike the typical, you know, Facebook ads. You know, this is a process that the number one agent at EXP Realty really followed. This is how you actually run Facebook ads to generate home buyers and sellers on demand. This is what the top performing agents in your area are really hiding. So if possible, include these words into your copy, if possible. Second one, you want to make things simple. You can, words, you can use words like one. Prospect wants that thing to be super lazy and people want things to be easy. So you want to incorporate this in your copy. You just need to run one simple Facebook ad that only requires five minutes of your time. It can be set up in eight clicks. So if I wrote this in my copy, for one, I'm using exact numbers. And number two, it sounds very easy. That's what people want. People want easy stuff. People want things to be super simple. This is for you if you're lazy and you're looking to spend the least amount of time on your marketing and get the highest return. A 10th grader can follow this. So when I'm saying stuff like a 10th grader, I'm making it sound like if a 10th grader can do it, so can you. So it should be easy. This one simple hack can transform your real estate business overnight. This one simple hack. This one simple yet genius tactic can double the amount of leads you generate with your Facebook ads. Anyone with a laptop can set it up. So all this stuff that I'm saying, it makes it sound like Whatever this is, it's super easy. And, and a lazy person can do it. And it's very simple. It only requires this one thing. So see if you can use these elements of simple, one, lazy, and easy. Let's go to new. This is the most important element within this magic section. People always want new. People don't want something better. People want a replacement. Let's, let's continue with the example. This is a new way to generate leads in you know, 2024 that actually works. It doesn't require you to spend more than $500 per month. This new way to generate leads is taking the industry by storm. Every real estate agent that I've shown this new method, every, new, every real estate agent that I've shown this new method to has doubled their lead flow overnight. Use only if you're looking to skyrocket your business. This new lead generation strategy is one that will allow you to overpower your competitors. You'll get rid of the lead problem in your business once and for all. So if possible, introduce something new. People don't want to hear the same stuff that your competitors are saying. People don't want to hear the same stuff that's already been said in the marketplace. People want new. If there's so much competition, how do you cut through the competition? How do you cut through the noise? You bring something new to the table. Another element only. There's something that you can incorporate into the copy as well. An example of this is we're the only ones in the industry that can do this. This is something only we provide because we actually X, Y, and Z. So if possible, try to incorporate the word only. 
into your uh, copy. Another element is big. If possible, you want to seem some things. You want to make some things seem big. For example, I've worked with a thousand realtors. Sounds like a big number. It seems like you know I've worked with. Holy shit! I worked with a thousand people. My average real estate agent adds an additional hundred thousand dollars to their income each year. It's a pretty big number, right? So you want it's an element of big. My process has been proven to work across all 52 states and Canada. Sounds very big. It seems like, you know, my solution is proven to work across North America. There are over 3 million real estate agents all dealing with one problem, lead generation. 90% of the real estate agents quit real estate within five years. When someone reads that, they're like, holy shit. How many real estate agents quit real estate? That's crazy. Real estate agents spend, you know, $2.2 billion on marketing each year. Yet, 90% of real estate agents are still quitting real estate. And yet, they're only making, you know, $40,000 on average. So you see, like, how I'm using these big, big words. My clients are spending a combined $200,000 per month in advertising. So here, I'm making it very clear that you know, my, the, the, that I have a lot of experience with advertising because my clients are spending $200,000 per month on ads. So these are just some additional examples for you to look at. But this is what I mean by the element uh, big. Another element that you want to introduce in your copy is fast. This is where you can bring, you can bring this element when you're talking about case studies and testimonials and social proof and the, and the clients that you've uh, worked with. For example, I helped John Doe go from a struggling you know, real estate agent to closing an additional three deals per month in less than two months of starting. What's fast here is the two months. Only took me 60 days. I would actually replace them uh, with 60 days. It sounds much better than uh, saying two months. Our clients generate an extra 120 leads per month on average within 30 days of starting with us. I would even change this to 28. Within 28 days of starting with it sounds much better now, even though it's only a difference of two days. You know, if you start working with us, you're going to start having leads flooding into your inbox starting tomorrow. Very fast. Less than 24 hours, you're going to start getting leads. John Doe from this realty closed his first deal within seven days. John Doe, John, you know, this other realtor closed his first deal within 21 days of starting. Very fast. So people want fast, fast, fast. Right, so for example, if I wanted to get this coffee, I, I didn't want to wait at Starbucks for more than two minutes. You know, bring me my coffee fast. That's how you want to think about it. Safe and predictable. How can you make your stuff seem safe and predictable? Let me give you an example. You know, we've guided hundreds of other realtors to success and we've broken it down to three simple bulletproof steps. These aren't any steps. It's a blueprint that has transformed complete beginner agents into higher earners. Now, let me ask you a question. How do you see that being safe? What's so safe about it? What's safe is, you know, we've guided hundreds of other realtors. Right? You know, what would have been better is, is if over here I said, you know, we've, uh, you know, guided 246 other other realtors to a multiple six figure per year income now that that sounds much better now you know we've guided 246 other realtors to a multiple six figure per year income and we've broken it down and it sounds very safe because now the, 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 the prospect can see that, you know, this individual, this person has helped 246 other people make multiple six figures per year in income. You know, it's likely to be safe. It sounds predictable. 
You know, we've spent over $500,000 of our money in the past five years testing these ads across 52 states. These are guaranteed to work if you simply just copy paste them. It sounds very safe. And why does it sound safe? We spent this much money in the past five years across you know, all these different locations. It's guaranteed to work. It's predictable. So if possible, you know, try to use these elements in your copy. Always. Right, so just to recap sort of where we're at before we start looking at some examples of ad copies. Think about the big three. Use numbers. Talk shit about your competitors. Baby their prospect. Tell them, you know, it's not your fault for your past failures. Become the savior. Uh, the savior uh, is pretty much, um, if they're suspicious about something, uh, you want to do the exact opposite. The magic. This is this is the magic elements, right? So we'll try to incorporate this into your copy. Uh, now let's move on to the next one. Now the next element is jealousy. Ask yourself, you know, who is my prospect jealous of? Now, if I'm thinking about a real estate agent, I would say something along the lines of, are you tired of seeing that one agent across town who just seems to be everywhere? Marketing is done so well, and now this agent's got a nicer car to show off, making the marketing even better. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? You keep seeing these other realtors who seem dumber than you, doing better than you while you've been in the industry for, you know, while they've been in the industry for a few years. So you want to think about this. Who is my prospect jealous of? You can also incorporate trends. Ask yourself the question. Where is the market trending? Where is the market heading? How can my client get in early on this trend? What's the most common well-known trend people are expecting? Right now, this big there is this big trend of AI. You know, everyone's talking about AI. You know, before that is, you know, it was NFTs. Before NFTs, it was crypto. So there is like these all trends. And there's always going to be a new trend. So if possible, now this isn't necessary, but if possible, ask yourself the question, am I able to incorporate a new trend? So let me give you an example. So with AI, you are able to incorporate AI into you know, your ad copy. So for example, I can write something along the lines of, Here's how we're consistently getting a 5x ROAS on Facebook ads for realtors using the power of AI-powered machine learning algorithms. Now, do I know what this is? No, but I'm incorporating this trend of AI. This is something the market has never heard before. And since everyone's sort of talking about AI, people are going to be more keen to listening to this. Second one is uh, without giving up. Ask yourself, what does my prospect not want to give up? You can include this into the copy as well. You can mention something along the lines of, you know, without having to give up time, family time with their kids, without having to give up weekends, which are meant to be spent with their family, without having to give up your sanity for a few extra bucks. So see if, it, see if, it's, if it's possible for you to incorporate that into your copy. Another one, the number three. Have you ever wondered why every good copy always uses the number three? That's a question for you. They sort of say, you know, three simple steps, three step process, three ways. Here are three reasons why. The reason why people uh, use that number is because it's just much easier to comprehend. People respond better to the number three. So if possible, try to use the number three. Now, if you remember in the VSL, we talked about a three-step process, a three-step system, a three-step formula, right? A three-step framework. The reason why we did that is because the, the number people just seem to respond better to the number three. And once again, in your copy, see if it's possible for you to incorporate a selfish and an unselfish reason for you, for you to give this away. And, you know, like what's in it for you? So your selfish reason could be... Uh, for example, if for example, if I'm teaching people how to make money with Amazon FBA and I'm sell and I'm promoting a like a coaching program or an online course for how to make money on Amazon FBA, someone would think to themselves, if you're if if this if this works so well, 
and you're making so much money from Amazon FBA, why would you want to teach other people? Why would you as a business owner want to give those secrets away? What's in it for you? Like, are you like, why are you, why are you doing that? It makes no sense. So this is where you can sort of answer that question. That for you, as the advertiser, what's in it for you? Now, this last one is something that, uh, that everyone should understand. Like, this is something that is sort of like a fundamental when it comes to copywriting and even marketing. And as a salesperson. So it's, it's, it's vital that you sort of understand this concept. And you may not get it the first time. But just try to pay close attention. And if you get it, great. But if not, rewind this section and try to study it again. You can also put this in chat GPT and for it to get further help on how to really understand this concept. So here's here's what it is. So Eugene Schwartz uh, is this famous person. And I'm trying to think about a very simple way to explain this. But he's this very big marketer, copywriter from back in the day. And he wrote this um a book called breakthrough advertising and it's one of like the most well-renowned books well-renowned book in the marketing world and in that book he talks about the way you're going to market is based on the sophistication level of the market now there's only five levels to where the market is at so let me explain that in simpler terms each market is sort of at this current state and as more and more competitors come into the space and more and more people are advertising, uh, the, the industry sort of levels down to the next level. Let me give you an example. This like, example would be the best way for you to understand this. Now, the first level is you're the first one to market and there's a new claim. So an example of this would be, let's just say Facebook ads was something brand new, right? Facebook ads was something that was never heard in the marketplace before. If I, you know, invented Facebook ads or I was like the first one to figure out Facebook ads for realtors, I would say something along the lines of, hey, realtor, close an extra one deal per month using Facebook ads. Right. So no one's heard of Facebook ads. So everyone's like, what the hell is Facebook ads? Does it work? Right. So people are going to pay attention because it's something brand new. Right, you're the first one to market Facebook ads. But let's just say, but now more and more people are now starting to learn about Facebook ads. There's other competitors that are also promoting, you know, a Facebook ad agency service. Now you're the second to market. So now the person that can, you know, make the biggest claim is going to win and get the most amount of attention. So instead of saying, you know, close an extra one deal per month. I'm going to now have to say close an extra three deals per month using Facebook ads. So you're sort of like pumping up the claim a bit. You're getting a bit more extreme with their claim. So we went from, you know, one transaction to three transactions now. Now, of course, you know, we had to do this because, you know, we had more and more competitors come in. I'm looking at my other competitors ads and everyone's talking about Facebook ads. So now I had to like pump it up a bit more. Now, the third level is... There's so many competitors, you know, coming in. Everyone's talking about Facebook ads. And now you have to put emphasis on the Facebook ad. So, for example, close an extra three deals per month. But with this one simple Facebook ad that works 100% of the times. So, we're not changing this part here, the claim. But instead, we're focusing more on the mechanism. So, we're talking about the Facebook ad. But now we're talking about one simple Facebook ad. Right, so we're talking about Facebook ads in general, but we're talking. But now we sort of narrowed it down to one Facebook ad. Now let's just say you know we got more and more competitors coming into the market. Now there's com there's so much more competition. You know there's like thirty other agencies in the space. Everyone's saying the same stuff. And now you gotta you're like fuck. I gotta come up with something new. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna put make the mechanism better, faster, and cheaper. So the way you do this is let's continue with the example. Close an extra three deals per month with this one simple Facebook ad that generates high quality seller leads for less than $15 a pop. So I just made this cheaper, right? Now, all my competitors are talking about Facebook ads and they're saying, oh, close three deals, five deals, 10 deals, whatever. But now you're saying that with Facebook ad, you're getting these seller leads for $15 a pop. Now, 
this is going to sort of cut through the noise now. You're making the clean better. And out of this, you know, I sort of chose uh, the cheaper one, right? That's what I chose. I could have even made it better. I could have said this one simple Facebook ad generates, you know, 200 leads per month for less than $500 or whatever. But I, I, I chose cheaper here. And let's just say, you know, there's more and more competitors and this, you're, you're, you're in a, such a competitive market. It's been saturated with all these different claims. And now you're sort of left with the last level, which is, you know, you're the last fifth to market. And you need to focus on the identification with the prospect. What do I mean by that? Identifying is the prospect identifies with someone. So let me give you an example. For those of you that don't know, Ryan Serhant, um, if you just search him up on YouTube, uh, you know, he, he has a huge YouTube channel, and very big on social media, one of the most renowned real estate agents in the US. He has a huge brokerage, he's also a coach, and I think he's, uh, he's also listed one of the most expensive, you know, penthouses in New York or whatever. Every real estate agent wants to be like him. Every real estate agent, right? This guy has a driver. He's rich. <laughs> he's, uh, he's living the life. He's also really good looking. It's great hair. And everything about him is just perfect. Everyone wants to be this guy. So now I'm going to identify with them. I'm going to close an extra de three deals per month by copying Ryan Serhant's Facebook ads. Right? So now you're identifying. Now no one's saying that, right? But we're now identifying with a prospect. We're identifying with, uh, like, who does my prospect want to be like? If I'm going with a real estate agent, Who's like the top real estate agent, right? It's, it's Ryan Serhant. So that's the way you're going to have to break through um, uh, the competition. So does that sort of make sense? If it doesn't, rewind, rewatch this section. And if it's still confusing, put this into ChatGPT and uh, try to learn it using ChatGPT and get ChatGPT to break this down even further for you. Tell it to use simple words and break down this concept and then you'll get it but uh you know if there's one thing they're going to take away from this you know copy hacks this isn't even sort of a copy hack but it's going to help you think about the way you're going to market and it's going to change the way you're going to market now i've made a checklist for you keep in mind when you're writing copy you don't have to meet all of them but just try to get as many of them in your copy do you have a reason in your copy why someone should take action right now are you talking shit about the competitors? Are you talking shit about other methods, mechanisms? So for example, if I'm running an agency on TikTok ads, I'm going to talk shit about Facebook ads. I'm going to talk shit about YouTube ads. I'm going to talk shit about all these other ads, these other, you know, lead generation companies or whatever. Who can I blame for past failures? If it's possible to inc include it into your copy, are you able to include these words into your copy? Do you make the opportunity new? Are you the only one solving it? If it, is it possible to make it seem like that? Is the opportunity gonna, going to get the end outcome fast? Are they going to be able to start getting leads within seven days? Are they going to be able to close deals within a month? Are you able to incorporate big, big stuff? You know, big stuff could be um, like, uh, you know, we've worked with, you know, 1,000 plus real estate agents. Uh, you know, my clients are spending like $200,000 per month on advertising. Are you able to include that into your advertising? Stuff like uh, safe and predictable. Can you make your stuff safe? Make it sound safe and predictable. Is my prospect jealous of anyone? You know, where's the market trending? So if the market is trending towards AI, everyone's paying attention to AI. You can incorporate AI for lead generation. What does my client not want to give up? So use this checklist. You don't have to meet every single one of them, like I said, but try to do as many as you can. Okay, let's structure the ad copy now. So now that you have a basic understanding of the fundamentals of copywriting, we're going to go ahead and write some ad copies. And I'm also going to give you some examples to look at. So your free thing that you're going to be giving away in the ad is sort of, a, it's called a lead magnet in fancy terms. It can, it's going to be a free training. So whenever you're going to write up an ad, you have to give something in exchange to get their name, email, and phone number. And the one thing that you're giving in exchange is a free training. 
and this free training is really your vsl that's what it is it's free training and like the you're advertising it as a free training but it's really just a vsl right of course you're not going to write vsl in the ad you're also not going to write video sales letter no one wants to be pitched you're just disguising it as a free training the ad copy itself is it's essentially just a cut down shrunken version of the vsl that's all it is the vsl is like you know this long your ad is much shorter right and it's it's taking the exact framework from a vsl you talk about what in the ad and the and and promise of free train free training covers the how so for example you promote the what but the free training covers the how so think about it let me repeat that you cover the what in the ad but in the free training they're gonna be able to learn how to do that what okay we also found that you know just saying uh look click to learn more call to action works the best so you're gonna see that in the ad copies below you'll likely not get the winning ad in your first try so the whole game of you know running ads is you're just testing 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 oh this ad worked this ad didn't work you know if this one worked let's let's do more of it let's try to create more ads similar to this one why did this one work you break it down for the ones that didn't work okay let's make sure we never do that ever again right so eventually you just get closer to the truth that's all what paid advertising is let's take a look a, a, let's take a look at a simple winning ad copy structure that you can follow to begin you call out the audience okay you always call it the audience first especially i mean since you're going to be in the b2b space and you're pitching your service to business owners you want to make sure you call out the audience always want to call out the audience if you want to if you don't want to directly call out the audience you say something that only they would be able to understand so you use their terminology you use their words you use their language and i'm going to dive deeper into that and then you sort of have this hook in other words you know your hook is just like uh the headline in other words so it's just from the from the vsl right this is your hook okay and i didn't include it here but you can also include some uh, proof here so once again if you think about it we're sort of following the vsl structure but you can also include some proof here now this is optional because we can always include uh proof later but this is just like a general structure that you can follow so you can include the proof and then if you remember you know when when we talk about the headline proof and we, we, we set the expectations and we get into the core concept and this is where you can also bring in the core concept right the old way new way and then you sort of have a call to action at the end so this is sort of like a simple structure that you can follow but let's sort of dive deeper into some templates that we have the way i like to do things is i write the initial ad copy and then i put that ad copy into chat gpt to proof proofread it find better words and to make it flow better right so if you have these ai tools you want to use them to your advantage it's all about leverage how can you get the most amount of output for the least amount of effort once again how do you get the most amount of effort a most amount of output with the least amount of effort so as you're working through this you don't want to just be scratching your brain spending two spending a whole week on writing these ad copies and you're losing your mind and you're trying to read every copywriting textbook there is you're, you're, you're not going to be able to get anywhere right take these fundamentals write some stuff up and then let chat gbt do the rest so when we're talking about the the language you're going to use always keep in mind the key is that you always want to use simple language if you look at some of the biggest speakers in the world some of the biggest authors in the world biggest youtubers in the world these are people that can just break stuff down they're really good at simplifying think of mr beast he makes these uh these videos that are super simple to understand an 80 year old can understand it as well as a 60 year old who's on the complete opposite end of the spectrum so always keep in mind that you're always going to know more than the prospect so just use very simple language that really that they can understand like this okay 
Now I left you a prompt that you can put into ChatGPT, and uh, it'll it can it can help you find better words and it can help you proofread and make it flow better. Okay, so I'm not gonna do this right now to show you, but I, I want to dive deeper into some of the ad copies that I wrote uh, for this training. But these are just uh, some things to keep in mind, right? The main the, the the biggest key takeaway here is you have your VSL that you wrote earlier, and the ad itself is just components of the vsl it's just like a shrunken shortened version of the vsl that's all what the ad is and you can follow the structure or, and and we want to use the elements of the copywriting here all right so let's dive into some examples let's go into angle one case study heavy angle so this is a uh, case study heavy angle so when we're writing ad copies the way you want to think about this is you want to write five different angles and now, whenever uh, I use the word angle, it's very hard to explain. But the way, but what I mean by an angle and five different angles is each idea within the angle should be different. So, for example, this is heavily based on case studies, right? Just talking about case studies, right? So let's go through this ad copy. Calling out the audience. Real estate agents. That's the first thing in the ad. You can fake testimonials, but you cannot fake real estate agents. Right, you cannot fake real agents. So I'm sort of throwing rocks at test. Uh, I'm throwing rocks at my um, competitors. I'm sort of talking shit, right? So I'm talking shit about competitors, right? I'm throwing rocks at my enemies. That maybe some of these other companies that maybe they maybe they may be fake their testimonials, and this is heavily case studies, right? It's gonna build trust. This is building trust is making it seem, seem like whatever we have or whatever we're selling, it seems safe. And it also seems fast because, you know, this agent closed 14 deals in one year. This, this agent got a deal under contract in seven days. This agent closed eight deals in three months. It seems fast. And the old way is that now we do not generate these, uh, you know, results above with, you know, Facebook ads, SEO, Google ads. You know, just jumping up and down in social media, uh, you know, paying big lead generation companies or cold calling or door knocking, right? Every real estate agent in the area is already doing this. There's no unfair advantage in this. However, there is a new, powerful, yet simple online lead generation strategy that's, that's generating appointments on demand for our clients. So what's the element that I used here? New, right? So I use the word new here, something brand new. Right, so I'm not explaining how, but I'm saying there's something that's brand new. Right, so I'm giving them the what. And it's very simple. Right, very simple. And what's the benefit? So if you keep in mind, you know, I'm getting this from the VSO. It has no competition, it's profitable, it's been battle tested, it generates buyers and sellers like clockwork. Now, after working with over 1,000 agents in the past five years and generating $50 million in sales for our clients, we found this to be the only lead generation strategy you need to make multiple six figures per year. So I'm using the word only here. So you see what I did there? Using the word only. I'm using some big words here, like 50 million in sales. I'm adding some credibility to myself. Why should they listen to me? Because I've worked with over 1,000 realtors. I've been doing this for five years. That's why you should listen to me, Mr. Realtor. No, we've never come across a strategy that's consistently generating higher, high quality buyers and sellers on demand like this. However, here's the thing. Why should they act today? Why should they, why should they listen to me? Why should they click learn more today? Why should they be watching this ad right now? This new lead generation strategy will only get crazy results for agents that are the first movers with this. To avoid joining the crowd when everyone's already doing it, I put together a free training, right? So that's what they're getting. They're getting access to a free training. That's, that's what we're giving to them in exchange for their name, email, and phone number. The shares a complete step by step breakdown of this new powerful yet simple online lead generation strategy and how any real estate agent can steal it to explode their income click learn more to get access to this free training and see you on the other side so you can see that i uh you know i've used all of these other elements here that i've put on the right side here let's go to angle two this is one where 
the angle that I'm taking here is I'm just talking shit about other competitors. So keep in mind, I'm not naming anyone. All right. So once again, I'm calling out the audience, real estate agents, team leaders, and brokers. Are you tired of paying, paying these big portal lead generation companies that are eating your margins away? I'm talking about how these other companies, you know, they're not profitable. You know, where you're lucky to even break even. You're still chasing leads. You're still competing for the same lead with 10 other agents. But what if I gave you an alternative? An alternative where buyers and sellers chase you. You're attracting rather than chasing. Hyper profitable sets you apart from the competition. A method that actually works. Now, I'm not talking about the typical copy-paste Facebook ads that every other agent in your city is already running or Google ads that drain your wallet. Instead, it's a new way to generate new leads that very few agents know of. Any real estate agent, regardless of the years of experience, can take advantage of this. Right, And then I'm adding in some social proof. Once again, you know, we're taking this from the proof section of the BSO. It's fast, 90 days, 90 days. They should be listening to me because, you know, I've helped all these people. They should listen to me because I've been working with over 1,000 realtors. And I've found this one strategy and I'm using the, the, the number one. This is all they need. We've never seen a cost efficient strategy that actually works like this before. Now, what are they getting access to running off with the call to action? They're getting access to a free training. And then once again, why should they act right now? We're, we're, we're not sure how long we're going to keep this training up for since it's only going to benefit the immediate action, take, action takers. So if you want to move fast and get a competitive edge over your competitors, click learn more and we'll see you on the other side. Okay. Angle three. This is where I'm taking the angle of, you know, the old way and the new way. So I'm talking about the old lead generation methods. Once again, I'm calling out the audience. 90%, so I'm bringing numbers here now, right? I'm talking about the, how big the problem is. I'm, I'm using stats. 90% of you will quit real estate within five years. In other words, 96, 9 out of 10 agents aren't going to make it to the sixth year. Why is that? Because 99% of real estate agents are still using the same old lead generation methods that, that just don't work anymore. Most realtors are cold calling. They're door knocking. They're sending all these flyers. They're doing bus, bus ads. They're doing all these billboards. You know, this, this, this isn't your fault. So once again, I'm telling them that, you know, this is not your fault. Because, you know, you're being taught by 20-year-old veterans in the game. You know, sure, they may have worked 10 years ago, but today they're simply outdated. Now, I'm not saying that these old methods don't work. They can work, but there is a new, better, and a much easier way. One that is cost-efficient and actually works in today's market. One where you don't have to chase people down. One where you're attracting rather than chasing hyper profitable and no other agent in the market is currently doing. Now keep in mind, um, I've put the elements on the right side here that you, that you can see. But as you're reading through this, look how I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling them what, like what exactly it is. I'm telling them about the benefits. Right. And if they want to learn more and how exactly to do it, then they have to watch the free training. Right. So I'm redirecting them to the free training. You know, I've recorded a free step-by-step -step training that will walk you through the exact steps that you can take to implement this new strategy in your business and how countless average agents are joining the top ones are doing one percent doing this. And uh blah blah blah. And you can read the rest. Okay. So you can see I put the angles here. That's a case study angle that I'm taking, is case study heavy. This is where I'm talking shit about the competitors. And the third one is talking about the old ways of doing stuff. So once again, this is where the sophistication levels come into play. If you're, comp if you're selling something about TikTok ads, you would mention that the everyone is doing Facebook ads. Everyone is doing uh, Instagram ads. Everyone is, uh, you know, running, uh, you know, YouTube ads. You got to do TikTok ads. Here's why TikTok ads are much better. Now, if you want to learn the exact, uh, you know, three step process to get your uh, TikTok ads up and running and how to start generating buyers and sellers on demand, you know, click the button, learn more 
and watch our free training that will show you exactly how to do that. Right? So depending on the angle. So this this angle is um talk about a new lead generation strategy. This is a good example. So this one, um, I didn't call out the audience, you'll see. And why is that? Because seller leads guaranteed. Automatically, a real estate agent is going to talk to see this because that's what they want. If I'm a chiropractor or I'm like a dentist or I'm a plumber, am I going to stop to read this ad? No. It has nothing to do with me, right? So uh, a real estate agent is automatically going to stop to hear this. So what is this? It's something brand new. This is a benefit. So this was, uh, so what I'm talking about here is like this brand new system of generating leads. It's like Google LSM. So I was just talking about the benefits of it. And this is the pros and the cons. And uh, I mentioned that, you know, this is not like the typical Facebook or Google ads. Instead, it's a blue ocean. Very few agents know of this. Now, after working with over 1,000 realtors in the past five years, generating over $50 million in combined sales volume, we've never seen a strategy like this that actually works. To get in before your fellow realtor friends, click learn more to get access to a free step-by-step -step training that will walk you through how exactly this new method works and how any ordinary agent can set it up within 30 minutes in three simple, easy steps. So you'll see that, um, you know, we're just taking stuff from the VSL, but, but sometimes, you know, we can move it around. Right? I, I called out the audience, but this time I didn't say like, hey, real estate agent, hey, realtor, hey, team leader, hey, broker. I didn't say that. But instead, I said something that only they would know of. Let's move on to the next angle. Angle five. So this one is, uh, I'm sort of going after the agent that's already doing six figures. So I'm trying to go for like the top end of the market. So keep in mind, if you're going after the top end of the market, they're likely going to have different problems compared to the average person in the market. Right? So, you know, if you think about it, just with different messaging, I can attract better clients as well. So once again, I didn't call out the audience in this example. I already, I just said stuff that only realtors would know of. Is that, is a, is someone that's working as in a Walmart doing open houses? Of course not. So, you know, you've wasted time at open houses, right? You've exhausted your database. You've done circle prospecting, cold call and door knock. Heck, you've probably already hit six figures, but what's next? The only way to grow is to exchange more time for money. Sacrificing, sacrificing family and personal life in the process. My life has been one big journey of educating agents on how to get out of this hell. But I always check the source material. I'm happy to say I found a new one. So once again, I'm using the element of new here, right? I, mean, I use the element of new. And, I, and, I, and then I, I go from the old way of doing stuff. You know, this is all old way, right? This is what they're already doing. This is what they've heard of. This is what their real estate coach is telling them. This is what their brokerage is telling them to do. I'm now saying, okay, you know what? Forget about all that stuff. I'm going to give you a new way. You know, after reviewing top producers, working with seven figure earners and generating a combined $50 million in sales, I finally found the new best way to, for realtors to add predictable revenue uh, to their business. So I'm talking about a new way. I've been revealed what it is. It's one where, you know, buyers and sellers actually chase you. I'm talking about the end benefit here. So once again, I use the element of actually here, right? So I used the element of, I use the word actually here. And I'm talking about the new best way, right? It's the best way. Uh, so these, uh, you know, these are just benefits, right? You know, work with a client that makes, uh, uh, work with a client that makes paid advertising profitable. Most agents get the wrong. They want to work with whoever they get, right? So benefits, uh, you're going to become a local celebrity. That's a benefit for you. Uh, and you can scale. So th these are just three things that we just took out of the BSL. So the truth is you can, you can get leads reaching out to you. You can attract seller leads simply due to the power of your brand. You no longer have to cold call door knock and attend open houses. Okay, and call to action. So this is a bit of a more advanced uh, copy, but you can sort of break it down and sort of see 
which elements I'm using here. So how long does it take? How, how do I learn what to offer? How do I have time? All this sort of stuff. And we say that, hey, if you want to get all the, your questions answered, plus you want to get a step-by-step -step training on how to exactly do this, click learn more and we'll get you on the other side. Okay, so this is a little bit more advanced. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spend too much time there, but for the advanced ones that are watching this video, you can spend some time, you know, put that on a different Google Doc and try to see, you know, which element we use there. This angle is we're taking the angle of the one thing. So you'll see what we did here. The one massive, so we of course we use the element of one. One massive thing that we learned from generating on average 32 appointments with buyers and sellers each month for over 1,000 clients. So once again, I'm adding credibility here. This is why you should listen to me because I've been able to do this without all the other things that they're currently doing, you know, their, their old way, is that the traditional prospecting methods are both limited and unreliable. So talking about the, I'm talking shit about the old way, right? So this is uh, in the result of old way. You know, you have to sit around and you have to hope and pray that you get a new client. You know, you have no control over lead flow month in and month out. Right, meaning your business is in the hands of something that you can't control, which is pretty scary. But what if you could generate new appointments at will with full control? This is the benefit here. Right, so keep in mind, I'm talking about the benefit, the, the result. It's just like turning on a tap. Right? So uh, once again, it's a bit more advanced. But as you can see, call out the audience. Talked about the old way. Talked about the old result. Right, this is the old way here. This is the result of that. But now I'm mentioning a new way. And the new result is every referral demanded to see me. I, 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 I learned that I don't have to rely on referrals. I don't have to rely on traditional prospecting methods. You know, this allowed me to free myself of the shackles of chasing cold deadly that's a that's a benefit now what's in it for them right what's in it for them they're getting a free training that's going to show them exactly how to generate these 32 appointments all without these old ways right you know you know you don't have to vlog your vlog your damn life on instagram and facebook you don't have to spend thousands of dollars on lead generation companies now why should you listen to me you know i've worked with 1000 realtors in the past five years I've never seen something like this before. Now, learn how to fight off these agents with these tools or don't do anything. And uh, uh, this, is, this is a good sentence that you can also use. Learn how to fight off the top agents with these tools or don't do anything and let them continue to get all the business. This is why they should take action right now. This is why they should not be, you know, hesitating. So the, I'm, I'm incorporating the big three here. Okay. So I've given you enough examples of ads that I wrote for this, uh, for this training, and you can take these sort of templates, but the main idea here is that, uh, you want to take the elements from the VSO and you want to shorten the VSO and the, and then the, you're taking the stuff directly from the VSO. That's, that's pretty much what it is. And, uh, you're just doing some copywriting, right? You're talking about the old way, what they're currently doing, new way. You want to have the sophistication levels in mind as you're, you know, working through this, you want to have a hook, you want to have a headline, and that's usually your headline from the VSO. Uh, you want to use these elements, right? So you can see I've added these elements here to the right side. And you can see how I've structured it. Now let's move on to add headlines. Let's talk about headlines. They will be used in the opt-in page. And they're also going to be used on the VSL page. They will then be used on ads. Now I recommend that you write as many headlines as possible. Ideally 15 to 20. Keep in mind, you only got to do this once and it's going to last you for years. And you pick your top three and then you can try testing them on a landing page, ads, and emails. You know, you can also use ChatGPT to come up with different headlines. Now, I'm going to dive, I'm going to dive deeper into some templates that I have for you to take a look at. Template one. Discover how you can close an additional three deals per month with this three-step buyers on demand lead generation system that takes us than 30 minutes to set up. Discover how, they talk about the end outcome. The end outcome here is additional three deals per month. And what's the new way? The new way is with this new three-step buyers on demand lead generation system. That's template one. 
Template 2. The new way to whatever the end outcome is. And the year. To discover how new way, new result. So let's, let me give you an example. This is a new way to generate high quality buyer leads in 2024. Discover how any realtor can add an additional six figures to the yearly income with this one simple strategy. The end outcome here is, you know, real estate agents, they want to get high quality buyer leads. That's their end outcome. And then you're in the year 2024. Discover how any realtor can add in, you know, the end outcome, whatever it is. Template three is a negative stat. Here's how call out the audience can positive impact with the new way. So let me give an example. Nine out of 10 real estate agents quit real estate within five years. Here's how you can join the elite top 1% in your city with this new buyers leads on demand lead generation strategy. Now keep in mind, we can put this on our opt-in page. So if you remember yesterday, we were, work we were working on the opt-in page. This is where you can add in any one of these headlines here. Number four, this one end outcome that they're looking for. Discover how quality audience and positive impact. This one lead gen hack is used by the top 1% agent, top 1% of realtors. Discover how any real estate agent can steal this one hack with three simple steps. So you see what we did there? This one, we use the element of one is used by the top 1% agent, so it clearly works. Call out the audience, it's for a real estate agent. And the positive impact is that they can steal it with one simple hack with three, that, that's, with this one, they can steal this one hack with three simple steps. Template five, discover the secret behind whatever their end outcome that they're looking for is, even if without, and whatever the, you know, the negative things that they don't want to be doing. Discover the secret behind creating a multiple six figure per month income as a real estate agent in 2024, even if you're less than six month, months into the business. Say goodbye to whatever negative there is in their business and then discover how call out the audience and can end a positive outcome. So say goodbye to expensive lead generation companies that don't work. Discover how you can leverage the simple system used by 1,205 agents across 52 states to close an additional two deals per month. So you can see once again, say goodbye. This is something negative in their business. Discover how call out the audience is used by 1,205 realtors. And the end outcome and positive outcome that they're looking for. They can close an additional two deals per month. Another one, you can start off with 2024's breakthrough, whatever they're looking for. 2024's breakthrough lead generation strategy. The formula to whatever the end outcome that they're looking for. To generate high quality buyer and seller leads on demand. Number eight, eager to break free from your whatever the negative outcome is. Discover how X, Y, and Z. How to break free from your income roller coaster. Discover how this one simple lead generation strategy widespread how discover how this one simple lead generation strategy widespread problem for realtors can transform. Okay, I think I messed this one up here. Uh can transform. Yeah, so discover. Yeah, I think I had a typo there. So discover how this one simple lead generation strategy can transform your laptop into a daily income source, no startup cap and transform your, uh, one simple year you can transform, uh, your real estate, your real estate income. Mm hmm. Discover how this one can. So we need to do a positive outcome. So can add, add an additional uh, six figures to your bottom line. 
So that's the positive end outcome. And this is uh, their fear, like something that they don't like, something that they don't want to do. Call out the target audience, a real estate best kept secret. Discover the one simple Facebook ad strategy that guarantees 10 plus listing appointments per month. Of course, that's a really big claim. So you are, you are going to have to back that up with proof. But that's just, that's just an example for you. Discover how, and then you can talk about a case study uh, before and after. Discover how a struggling mother of two realtor went from $42,000 per year to $284,000 per year in income with a simple yet powerful three-step lead generation system. So before, I'm using exact numbers here, and then this is the after in income. Now, of course, you know, these headlines are too long to put into your Facebook ad. So uh, I put some more headlines here that, 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 that are going to fit in your uh, Facebook ad. So real estate agents, could you use an extra whatever they're looking for? Could you use an extra $300,000 per year in GCI as a headline? Is it possible to add an additional 300k in GCI without cold calling? Number one alternative to whatever their competitors is. is something like a well-known competitor or a big uh, entity in the space. So Zillow is really big. A lot of realtors are buying uh, leads from Zillow. So I'm including that there. Realtors guaranteed, you know, whatever end result that you're promising. Return on ad spend, return on investment, proven track record, guaranteed closings. For real estate agents only, buyers and sellers on demand. So of course, you know, these are going to fit in your Facebook ad. And uh, these are good to fit in your uh, landing page. If you remember, we created the landing page here yesterday. And uh, we can throw these headlines there. So notice how we use the word discover. We never use the word learn. Discover is a better word than learn. And we're always talking about the end outcome, the end positive outcome that the prospect is looking for. And if possible, we try to include um, a time frame. And we try to include uh, you know, elements from the copy hacks that I provide, you know, the new way. Right, we're using numbers here. This one lead generation tactic, making it sound very easy, like anyone can do it. Uh, we're using the word secret. Right, say goodbye to expensive lead generation companies, something that they're already doing this the old way. Uh, 2024 is breakthrough lead generation strategy. So it, this makes it sound like, so we're leveraging the big three here. Like, why should they take action right now? Why should they pay attention to it right now? Because it's a breakthrough lead generation strategy. Uh, you're just one simple Facebook ad. It makes it sound very easy and simple. Uh, and, I, and if you go through these headlines, these are just some examples, but you'll notice that you know, we're using a lot of these copy elements. Another uh, hack for you here is, let's just say, you know, I found this one headline. You can throw this into ChatGPT. And you can tell ChatGPT to give you variations of this one headline. You can let ChatGPT know that, hey, I'm going to give you this one headline. Take a look at what I'm trying to do. This is my product. This is what I'm looking to sell. And I want you to cre create me more variations of this one headline. Give me more examples of this one headline. So you can use ChatGPT uh, and, and leverage that software instead of, you know, just, just trying to come up with these yourself. Okay, so now it's time to move on to the technical side of, uh, you know, Facebook advertising. First thing first, we need a Facebook page. To effectively run ads, it's crucial for your client to have a Facebook page that's not just set up, but optimized for performance. A key part of this regular activity, we recommend posting at least once a week. So one of the things that Facebook wants to see is that your Facebook page that you're using to run ads is active. It's not something that you created like two years ago and ever since you haven't posted anything. This consistency helps Facebook recognize that your client's business is legitimate and active. It's important to remember that Facebook prefers ads to be run from the actual business page, not a separate dedicated page for ads. This helps in maintaining authenticity. So for example, don't we use a separate Facebook page for advertising than the actual Facebook page that your client uses. Use the one that your client uses and make sure that you're posting at least once a week and keeping the page active. So post some content once a week for it. 
To give you a better example, let me show you, uh, let me share an, an example of the guidance we provided to our real estate clients. This will help them in optimizing their Facebook page for better engagement and ad performance. So before we started running ads for our client, we would make sure that their Facebook page had somewhat been optimized. First things first, we would add in a cover photo. We would tell our real estate agent that, hey, use this template <laughs> and um, make yourself a cover photo. And if you click on this template, you can see that we got our real estate clients to create something like this, right? So there's sort of like a call to action. And we're calling out the audience and we're, we made this a uh, nice, cool looking graphic for on our client's behalf. And we would also tell them to that, hey, you know, make sure you guys have a good profile picture. That seems professional. You'll be surprised that this may sound obvious, but you'll be surprised how many of our clients had these weird looking pictures. We made sure that their Facebook bio was optimized and we would edit their profile and add some stuff like, you know, Remax Realtor Fitness Fanatic helped 100 people get into their home of their dreams. Houston Realtor helping people get into the property of their dreams every single day. Real estate agent helping Toronto, Toronto millennials get into the home of their dreams. So make sure you optimize your client's bio depending of the niche that you're in. Additional work that you need to get done on the Facebook page is to edit their work and uh, only use for one workplace. Don't use all the jobs that they worked at. Add in social links and edit your feature. So all in all, in summary, you know, optimize your Facebook page. Make sure that they, they use this Facebook page for their actual business. Keep it active. Make it look nice. And uh, you don't want to have a boring looking page. Now, we need some prerequisites before we get the ads set up. Number one, does a Facebook page exist? Is a page optimized? Then let's move on to the funnel. Has a domain be attached? Have you added in the UTM parameters, the metapixel code, the, the conversion events onto each individual page? Did you check using the events manager? Did you check using the metapixel helper? Did you add in the metapixel helper, helper code globally to the funnel? You've tested everything. Your funnel most importantly looks good on mobile. I'm going to make that bold. You've tested the entire funnel and you made sure that the entire funnel is redirecting as it should. When someone fills out the opt-in form, they end up on the VSL page. From the VSL page, they end up on the application page. From the application page, they end up on the uh, booking page. From the booking, the thank you. Make sure that, uh, you know, it's working. Uh, make sure you have the ad copies ready by now. Headlines ready by now. So now it's just... We're just, we're just going to be clicking, copying, and pasting a few stuff, and we're going to be getting the ads set up. The hard part is, the hard part should be done by now. Now, ground, oh, one more thing that I forgot to uh, add in. Uh, no. VSL. VSL, uh, you know, recorded and added to funnel. application form added to funnel this is a job form booking you know tool added to the booking page this is calendly yeah so make sure uh you know that's been added in all right and then we can move on to setting up the ads. Now, there are a few ground rules that I want to get across before we start running paid ads. Number one, Facebook wants to see that they're allowing a legitimate business to advertise on their platform. Therefore, you must complete the following to, to show Facebook that you are a real business. Facebook doesn't want their users to get targeted by ads from potential scams, fake companies, and from businesses that are just trying to steal from them. So make sure that uh, you're showing Facebook that you are or your client is a legitimate business. First ground rule, never log in using your personal Facebook account. Always log in using the business.facebook.com link. I've included the link here. So whenever you're gonna log into the ads manager, the ads manager where we're gonna be you know, setting up the campaigns, always log in using that link there. Double down on your security. Make a uh, two-factor authentication is your new best friend. So 
Skip the phone number and download an authenticator app on your phone. It's way safer. And use it for all of your emails and your social media accounts and on Facebook, especially. So what this does is uh, no one can hack into your stuff. And if they do try hacking in and they do bypass the, uh, the initial step, then they'll be forced to send you a code on your app and only you're going to have access to that code. So make sure you add in two-factor authentication. We've had instances where people have hacked in and they've spent money on advertising using our client's card or our card. So this is to prevent from that happening. Uh, very important. So just get it done once and you don't have to worry about it ever again. Oh yeah, have the terms of service and privacy policy added to your funnel. This is mandatory from Facebook. I forgot to uh, add that previously here. Uh, privacy policy and terms and conditions added to the funnel. It's mandatory that you have a privacy policy and terms and terms of service or terms of conditions onto your funnel. Have content on your Facebook page. So once again, you want to show Facebook that you know you're running off of an active Facebook page. So just throw in some content onto your uh, Facebook page. Another thing, use a domain that you own. So purchase your own domain, and you want to verify this domain under the business settings within Facebook. So if you go into Facebook and you go into the business settings, you'll be able to verify the domain. So go ahead and do that. We'll talk more, uh, more about negative language. And uh, on file, always have two payment methods on file with Facebook. We do recommend that you use a credit card. I hear a lot of people saying that, oh, you know, connect it directly with your bank account. Why would you do that when you can collect credit card points? So uh, the, the real concern here is just make sure your payment never fails. So for that reason, you want to have a backup on file. Always use your credit card, collect, collect those credit card points and um, make sure that you maintain the health of your Facebook ad account. Once again, I have content on your main domain page, website, Facebook wants to see their legitimate business, all that sort of stuff. So over here, the most important uh, part here is make sure you verify this domain and uh, make sure there's content on your Facebook and add in some security so people don't hack into your stuff. Let's move on to the general understanding of Facebook ads. Facebook and IG advertising is all about just optimizing your pixel. Facebook knows more than you and I. Therefore, the game is all about just training the pixel. The better you train the pixel, the better results you're going to get. You must feed your pixel the best conversion leads to applications that put costs possible. Facebook will then find the right people for your ad. More conversions, better the Facebook, Facebook pixel can learn. If you understand this one thing, you've already done 50% of the work required for Facebook ads. Another uh, pointer, you do need to spend a minimum of $80 to $100 per day for your agency ads to optimize properly. This is something that we learned. You definitely want to spend $80 to $100. Per day. And I'll dive deeper into why that is the case. But you do want to spend at least, you know, more than $2,500 to $3,000 per month on advertising. If you cannot spend, you know, 3K on ads for one month, it's likely that you shouldn't even be running advertising. Now, keep in mind, we're, we're doing this for on, as an agency perspective, not for our clients, but for us. And I'll dive deeper into that. But you must spend at least, you know, 80 bucks per day on ads. When I'm referring to the pixel, I'm talking about the meta uh, pixel that we added into our funnel. The whole point of Facebook ads is Facebook is making it easier and easier by the day for advertisers to advertise. Because the way Facebook makes money is if their clients that are advertising on Facebook are making money. So Facebook is incentivized that me as a business owner, I make money. Right. So they're sort of on our our side, but at the same time, they're also trying to optimize for the user's experience on Facebook, because if there's no users, no one's going to advertise. So it's, it's like uh, they're, they're trying to like manage this uh, this game that they're that they're playing. Facebook is trying to make sure that users don't leave. Users keep using the platform. And what that's going to do is it's going to bring in more advertisers. And if they bring in more advertisers, more advertisers are making money. Facebook's going to make more money. 
So it's like a, a game that Facebook is playing and trying to optimize, right? So you need to understand that before we get into the advertising. And uh, Facebook is, Facebook is going to try to, of course, try their best that you make money. So they're trying to make the targeting stuff, everything much easier and how to run ads much easier. So what I've seen is uh, broader audience sizes, bigger audience sizes tend to outperform smaller audiences. So the targeting is actually done in the video itself within the ad. So if you're targeting chiropractors, you can, you can start off the video by saying attention chiropractors. What's going to happen is the more conversions you feed your pixel. So the more people that you have opting into your ad, the more people that, that you have that are giving you the name, email, and phone number, and the more of those people that you can send back over to Facebook, Facebook is going to find more of those people. Facebook is going to optimize more for those people. So the same thing sort of applies for applications and bookings. If more people book out, uh, fill out an application, more people book a call, you can, Facebook is going to find more of those people. So you want to uh, you know, feed these conversions back over to Facebook. So Facebook can do its job. So you're really just trying to give, you're, just, you're trying to leverage Facebook's algorithm. Now I'm going to get a bit more advanced and you may or may not understand all of this. This is super advanced stuff, but uh, you know, if you do see these words here and you do understand some of the words, you can stick around, but otherwise you can uh, skip this sort of part of the video and move on when I get into the general rules for campaign. But let's talk about, uh, you know, low ticket ad liquidation funnel versus IGDM ads, automated webinar funnel, funnel versus VSL ad. Now, when we're running ads, there's so many different funnels that, uh, you know, you can, you can run and they all do work, but I've just found the VSL to be the most effective. And I'll tell you why the VSL is like a simple five-step funnel. It's not four step. It's five-step funnel, very simple, low complexity, very easy to set up. It's straightforward. It can be set up in an hour. Majority of the split testing is only done in the first two steps, opt in the VSL page. It allows you to hyper-focus and increase the efficiency of the funnel. I know a lot of companies that are doing multiple eight figures per year, just running with this one funnel. Very simple funnel and it's easy. It's a good starting point. Now, the reason why I prefer the VSL funnel above every other funnel is because let's talk about the low ticket ad liquidation funnel. So what is, you know, like, what is this, you know, low ticket funnel? This is pretty much where you sell something for low ticket, usually like 47 bucks. Uh, you can sell a PDF, you can sell a course, you can sell a training, something tangible that people get access to. You can also sell like a, like a thousand dollar course, but that's the automated webinar. But to make this funnel work, you got to be like a next level copywriter. You got to be a really good copywriter. And you must also be super experienced with funnel building, or you need to know someone that can build these funnels for you. You need to understand order bumps. There's just so many moving variables, so much complexity that you're, you're in the beginning, you're better off just staying away from, you know, these low ticket funnels. Um, the whole point of this uh, funnel is to just liquidate the ad cost. So what I mean by liquidating the ad cost is, let's just say you spend like, 10,000 on ads, you're just trying to make back, you know, three, four, 5,000 from the low ticket buys. So you're just trying to make back some money. So that's a low ticket ad liquidation funnel. But if you're starting out, stay away from this funnel. It's just complicated. You gotta be an expert copywriter to make this work. Next one, IGDM ads. So what is the IGDM ads funnel? This is pretty much where you run an ad. And instead of saying, hey, you know, click learn more to watch this free training. You're instead saying, message me on Instagram, DM me. So this is where you're just getting people to DM you. Now, the success of this funnel is dependent on how good your DM setters are. So the DM setters are people that are going to be on your profile, that are going to be messaging back and forth to these people. And the problem here is that when there's people involved, there's errors that are going to come into play. If there's humans that are involved in your process, there's going to be human errors and it's very hard to prevent stuff like that. So this it's hard to make this into like a one-time setup thing where you just set it up once and it's going to continue to run perfectly forever. Instagram also owns the audience since you're not going to be collecting any emails. This is very risky. If, uh, if people are just DMing you on Instagram, your Instagram goes down, you're not collecting emails, you're not collecting phone numbers, you're essentially fucked. So we sort of try to stay away from IGDM ads. Of course, you know, people can say, oh, you know, you can have a link in bio, but that's not enough. And uh, another downside with this funnel is you have to always be hiring new appointment setters. You got to train these appointment setters, a setter can leave, a setter 
cannot be good and that you got to train them. Saturdays don't work 24 seven. Uh, your content on your profile needs to be top notch. Your content game needs to be really good. So there is a, there's a lot more complexity that goes into IGDMs, but I mean, it can work. I mean, I've seen it work for other people, but uh, you know, like my business partner's account got disabled. So that's very risky when stuff like that happens. So in the beginning, I would just sort of stay away from this. I would stick with the VSO, but uh, um, the success of this funnel is dependent on how good your setters are. And number two, your content, your content needs to be top notch banger content. Number two, the uh, the setters need to be qualifying, booking appointments. They they need to understand the product, but you know there's humans involved. Talk about the automated webinar funnel. This is where you know you pretty much. I'm sure you've seen ads where you click on the ad, and then you gotta watch this hour long webinar, and then toward the end of the webinar, you know you're gonna get pitched. It's like a sales pitch towards the end. Usually they're trying to sell like a thousand dollar course or like a two thousand dollar course. It's sort of like a pre recorded VSO. The sole purpose of this uh, funnel is to just liquidate the ad cost. So if some, if an advertiser is spending like a hundred K per month on ads, they're trying to make back 60, 70, 80,000. And, and then they're, they're not, they're, they're trying to break even at the minimum. So to, once again, to make this funnel work, you gotta have tech wizards on your team. There's a lot of tech involved, like with softwares, funnels, you gotta set up the automated text messaging. And you also got to become an expert copywriter. If you can't even make the BSL work, you're not going to be able to make the automated webinar work. And you're going to have an all-star team because they're going to be liquidating the ad cost on the front end. But on the back end, you're going to need a team to convert those people into high ticket customers. So you should only ever think of doing automated webinars if you're selling B2C, sort of something mass market. If you've actually made the BSL funnel work and you could have a big team behind you. So, this was uh, the stuff was quite advanced. Some of you may or may have not understood this stuff, but my point here is I stick with the VSL funnel. Very easy, very simple. There's not much split testing required. And once you do sort of crack the VSL funnel, you can start looking into stuff like the low ticket funnel, the, the automated webinar funnel. This one, you can start looking into stuff like that. But you gotta get the fundamentals in place first. Another thing that we noticed, video ads tend to outperform uh, you know, text or static images. So once again, uh, think about the Pareto principle. 80% of the results you, you're going to generate with the advertising will come from the ad itself. The ad itself is actually more important than the VSL. So that's the first step in the process. It's what's bringing in the people. And we found that video ads tend to build more trust than static images. So you may, you will likely get lower cost per lead with static images, but your return on ads is always going to be higher when you're running video ads. That's just what we found. So it's just like a golden, it's a good rule of thumb for you to uh, have in the back of your mind. The targeting is usually done in the video within the ad itself. Facebook has reached a point where you can just run open targeting. You don't do any interest-based targeting and Facebook will automatically find the people for you. And as more and, more and more people start opting in, Facebook will then find more and more of those people. So we found that just open audience ten tends to work the best. And you can call out the audience either in the ad copy or in the video itself. So bigger the audience, once again, that's going to be possible with open targeting. We found that open targeting just tends to work the best. All of the ads that we run, we just do open targeting. You can do interest-based targeting, but your audience needs to be like super big, like five to 10 million. That's just what we found. Now let's get uh, back into the negative language. Don't use negative language. Stay away from, you know, stuff like crypto, drug, al alcohol. Uh, I believe this was dating. And uh, this is pretty obvious, right? Don't play around with stuff that, you know, it's a bit of in a gray area. Use positive language. Don't use stuff like, you know, above the age of 34, and I've included a link here to learn more about advertising guidelines. But this should sort of give you a general understanding. The most important part here is run video ads. The bigger the target audience, the better. Um, the ad itself is the most important part because that's what's originally bringing in the people. Stick with the VSL funnel. Once you sort of get the VSL funnel, you can then move on to the low ticket funnel with copywriting 
and the automated webinar. Before that, you should just stick with the basics. Now let's talk about the general rules for campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Now we're sort of getting into the technical side of things. Now, for those of you that are familiar with Facebook ads, you have the campaign level, you have an ad set level, and then you have the ads level. And we're gonna be diving deeper into each one. Now let's talk about uh, leads, cost per lead versus bookings. In the beginning, you're gonna be optimizing your ads for leads conversions. What does this mean? You're optimizing your ad to get the most amount of people to give you their name, email, and phone number. A name, email, phone number is equal to a lead. So the more and more people that give you the lead, the better it is. So we're trying to optimize for Facebook to find us more of those people. It's only later on, once you're spending a lot more money on ads, you can start optimizing to get more bookings. But at the beginning, for a very long time, we're just going to be running leads conversions. So we'll, we'll, we'll get into this when we're setting up the actual campaign. Cost per qualified booked call is a real metric you should base decisions off of. The cost per lead could be out of KPI, but if the cost per qualified booked call is within KPI, you keep running the ad. We only look at a few metrics when it comes to paid advertising. The main thing that we really look at is cost per qualified application and the cost per qualified booked call. But the most important one is cost per qualified booked call. If we're getting qualified people on the on the uh, on the phone, we keep running the ad, and of course, the goal is to lower that number. And the way we usually scale ads is we just uh, you know duplicate ads and we just increase the budget. We found that uh, you know if you're if you're running a good ad and as the ad is performing, getting results, we don't just increase the budget on that. We duplicate it and then we increase the budget. And I'll dive deeper into how to how to scale ads. Target KPI. Uh, this might get a little bit more advanced. It's gonna get um, might confuse you a bit, but uh, but let's uh, let me try to simplify it for you. If you're trying to if you're trying to get if you're trying to run ads where you're just trying to get under three hundred dollars cost per qualified booked call, you want to spend at least nine hundred to fifteen hundred dollars to judge whether the ad is a winner or a loser. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm getting a cost per qualified call for less than 300. So I'm going to spend about three to five X that amount. So about 900 to 1500. So depending on how much you're spending per day, that might be, you know, five days worth of ads, 10 days worth of ads. But uh, you want to spend about at least three times the amount before you decide what to turn on and turn off. Once again, the key metric here is a uh, cost per qualified call. That's what we're trying to optimize for. I uh, always use an advantage campaign budget, and we'll dive dive deeper into this. Uh, let's talk about cutting ads. When you're talking about ads, your highest priority is if something is getting your return, keep it on. Second thing that you take a look at is a qualified booked call. If that if that's within KPI, you know if it's under through 200, 300, depending on you know, who you're targeting, then keep it on. But if the, and then, you know, if that's getting out of KPI, then you can base on the cost per lead. But you're really just, you're making, you're really making decisions based on how much you've spent on each ad. It's not about how many days you've run the ad for, but how much money you've spent on the ad. If you're trying to get at least a $300 cost per qualified call, you want to spend at least 900 bucks. Okay. So, so the way we turn on and off ads is um, we ask ourselves questions like, you know, are we getting a return? If it's too early to tell, is a cost per qualified booked call within KPI after spending, you know, three to five X that target KPI? And then, you know, we move on to the next question, is a CPL within KPI? So for example, if it's uh, spending a hundred bucks a day, you need to spend at least $900 before deciding to cut a campaign or not. How do we get 900? 300 times three which is 900. That means you're gonna have to run the ad for nine days before making a decision. Okay, why? Because you're spending 100, 100 bucks a day. You gotta spend 900 before you make a decision to get it running for nine days. Let's say you're spending $200 a day. Once again, you need to spend at least 900 before making a decision. If you're spending 200 a day, you gotta run the ad for five days before making a decision. So you just wanna spend enough money to, whether, to decide whether it's a winner or a loser. So once again, notice how the amount of money that you spend is going to dictate how fast you can test ads and get closer to the truth. 
So once again, uh, you know, when we're doing advertising, it's just a game that we're playing with, you know, Facebook ads of just trying to get closer to the truth. That's all what it is. You know, something is working, keep it on. Something is not working, keep it off. Uh, and then tracking is where everything comes into play. Winning ads. So once you have a winning ad angle, you can create multiple variations for the one ad angle. You can try, you know, banners in ads. You can try different colors in the ad. You can change the first line in the ad copy and the first line in the video ad. You could try different headlines. So just like you're trying to find a different ad angle. So if you remember, we created all these different ad angles here. But let's just say, you know, when we were talking shit about the competitors, that seemed to be working well. I would create more variations of that one ad. Talking shit about competitors. Because that's an angle that seems to be working. Right? So I would, if that became the winning ad, then the next time I would test is more ads like that. So once again, uh, paid advertising is all about testing. You keep what's working on and you turn off what's not working. More data helps you make a better hypothesis. Each new test will get you closer to the light at the end of the tunnel. That's how you want to look at it. So for this, for this reason, your success is depending on how good you are at tracking and making decisions based on data. So Facebook is not, it's not anything emotional. It's just like a bunch of numbers. You look at, keep looking at numbers and you make decisions based on data. That's all it is. It just, it's just like, uh, you just, you just got to become an analytics person. You start by testing different angles across campaigns. This is the utmost importance. Once you find a winning angle, you can test different audiences and ads under this winning angle. So I know this was, this was a lot of theory, a lot of reading, a lot of understanding, but, uh, I'm going to show you live myself setting up a campaign and how I would scale it. And that's, that's, that way it will help you understand how I look at the campaign level, the ad set level, and then the ad level. And you can apply this to the real estate niche if you're in the real estate niche. If not, you know, you can uh, try it in your uh, niche. So it's now time to set up the campaign. Now, when we're setting up the campaign, we like to set up two different types of campaigns. The first one is a cold campaign where we're targeting cold people that don't know us, that have never visited our website before, and that don't know, like, and trust us. The second campaign that we're going to be setting up is a retargeting campaign. The retargeting campaign are of people that have either visited your website, visited your Instagram, or visited your Facebook page. So let's go set up the cold campaign first. So I think I had uh, dropped a link here before. If we just go to the ground rules. Click on this link, open up the business manager, and you should be able to log into an ad account. Now, if you don't have an ad account, you'll be able to set one up. Now, I'm not going to show you the exact step-by-step -step process to set up an ad account. You should be able to figure that out if we're going to be running ads. So once you do open up a ad account within the ads manager, your screen should look something like this. Now, your ads manager will likely be empty but this one that you see on the screen this one has stuff that uh i mean this is an ad account that we ran ads on in the past so for this reason you know you're able to see some campaigns here so just ignore what you see on the screen but what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an ad so what you want to do is leave the buying type as auction and click on the leads one and click continue so of course the objective here is we're trying to generate leads and we're going to set it up manually. I think I was mentioning earlier that Facebook is always trying to help its advertisers and get more people on the platform to advertise. So, so they're incentivized to make this as easy as possible. That's why, uh, I mean, nowadays it's so easy to set up a campaign. So we're going to call this campaign cold traffic. And you can call this cold traffic campaign and, you know, just write add angle one. Don't worry about the special ads category. Leave the buying type as auction. Campaign objective is leads. We're trying to collect more leads. Leave the A-B test off, but we are going to turn on the advantage campaign budget. And this is where you have the ability to set up your daily budget. 
So like I said, I do recommend that for each campaign, you spend at least 80 bucks. You could, you could go down to like 70 or 60, but I wouldn't go below 60. So I'm just going to, uh, you know, type in 80 here, $80 per day for this campaign. Looks good so far. So once again, just to recap, where we are going to be targeting people that have never visited our website before, people that don't know us, that these are people that are completely cold. They're at the top of the top of the funnel right now. And then we are going to click next. Don't worry about the rest here. And then your ad set name. Usually what we do is we do the targeting within the ad set. So this one, like I said, we're going to try open targeting first. We can try interest based targeting, which I can show you how to set up after. But uh, let's set up uh, open targeting first so for open targeting. And the conversion is going to be website. The performance goal is we're trying to get the maximum number of conversions. The pixel, of course, select your pixel. This was a pixel that uh, we had set up earlier. Just like the SMMA. I mean, select your pixel, the one that you set up. The conversion event, we are going to optimize for leads. So like I said, we're trying to get the most amount of leads as possible. So leave that the way it is. And don't worry about the attribution setting. Dynamic creative, you want to turn this on. So what this is going to allow us to do is provide multiple ad copies, provide multiple headlines, provide multiple videos or images that Facebook can then test and facebook will be able to find the best combination out of all of them so this is a super useful tool so always turn the dynamic creative on start date usually i like to start the ad the next day so for example today i can i can set it up for uh you know tomorrow i just realized that you guys might not be able to see this right now so i'm going to expand uh, Let's expand this uh, further. Yeah. Let's expand this. Cool. And audience control. So this is where, you know, we can set up the location for the ad. Let's just say you're running an agency. So for example, if I'm running an agency and I'm going to be uh, targeting a real estate agents, I would target the entirety of Canada. Now, advantage audience, you can use this, but for example, if I'm targeting real estate agents, I don't want to go below, you know, 21 year olds. And I'm not going to touch custom audiences. I'm also not going to touch detailed targeting. We can touch the detailed targeting afterwards, which I can show you how to set up as well. But just pick your location. And one thing to keep in mind here, like I said, bigger the audience, the better. It allows Facebook to optimize and find more of the people that are opting into your ad. Placements, I usually like to just leave it at advantage, uh, automatic placements. So this used to be called automatic placements, but I just like to leave it at automatic placements, which is sort of recommended. So you don't have to touch anything there. You don't have to touch anything that detailed targeting, and you also don't have to touch anything uh, over here as well. Cool. Click on uh, next. Now, this is where you can select your Facebook page. Uh, before we select the Facebook page, I'm going to quickly name my ad. I can just write, you know, add one. Uh, for Facebook page, I'm going to select one of, uh, you know, our previous clients. So for example, let's just, I'm going to be running ads for, uh, you know, this real estate agent. I'm not sure if this real estate agent has an Instagram account. Uh, let's do, try this one. Yeah, which one of these real estate agents has? Uh, let's try this one. But you do want to have a uh, Instagram. Okay, so this real estate agent has a Instagram account. So we got that connected. And usually I like to turn this off. Leave that to manual upload. And here, I like to turn this off as well. Optimize creative for each person. I like to turn this off. But here you can select multiple videos. Like I said, we found that videos tend to outperform images. Therefore, select some videos that you can add in. So you can select you know, three to five videos. 
you can select it. Now we are on the primary text. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go back over to my doc and by now you should have your ad copies ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these ad copies here. Let's do this one. And I'm just going to copy and paste this ad copy uh, here. There we go. Da -da -da. Okay, let's turn the ad preview on. Uh, so we are going to have to add an image here. So let me just select a random image that I can, uh, you know, just use just for the sake of this uh, demonstration. So I'm just going to pick this random. Uh, so ignore the picture, of course. We're going to be uh, using videos. Okay, it's also asking me for the destination link. So yeah, so add in your primary text. If you want to add in another copy, this is where the, this is where the dynamic creative comes in. We can go back to our doc and I can copy another copy and paste another ad copy that we wrote. So I can copy and paste, uh, you know, this one that I also wrote as well. Now I get this question all the time. Should I run ads off of my personal profile or should I run ads off a sort of a company slash corporate profile? I always prefer to run ads off of a personal profile because at the same time, you're also building your personal brand. Headlines. So once again, you know, we wrote some headlines as well. So I'm going to go back over to our ad headlines. And at the bottom, I had a few headlines that you can use. So realtor is guaranteed a return on ad spend. And I'm going to add uh, like two more. So I add, uh, this one as well. Actually, I like this one. Number one alternative to Zillow. So add this in. And then you can ignore the description. But here you want to add in the link to your landing page. So if I go back over to ClickFunnels, and I go to our main opt-in page. This is where you want to add in the link to your opt-in page. Okay. So now you can see the ad is going to show up. So of course, ignore, ignore, the, ignore the profile that we're using. That's actually a real estate client. And ignore the picture. But you can see that we can now see the ad copy. Of course, you know you're going to have a video here. And you're also going to have your own personal profile that you're going to be using. Ignore the display link. We usually, I mean, you can just copy and paste this here as well. Um, and here you want to uh, just leave this uh, to none, right? We want, we want people to click uh, learn more. All right. And we're going to come down here to the tracking. You want to make sure that your pixel shows a green point here. And the website events is turned on. You can keep this on and off. It doesn't really matter. But you want to keep your website events on. And just go down. And this is where you want to add in the U URL uh, parameters. This is what's going to help us collect the UTMs. And I'm going to go back over to our ad level. And I'm going to copy. So once again, if you're a bit advanced as watching this training, you may or may not be using high rows. So if you are using high rows, you want to copy, paste, this link here, uh, you know, these words here, but if you're not just copy and paste this to here. All right. So we'll, we'll be able to know that each lead is coming from a Facebook ad and we will have these campaign names and cold traffic names that will show up as well. But that's how easy it is to set up a campaign. So you can see that, let's just say I was running with this one ad angle with few variations. I can throw those variations in here. And uh, the targeting we usually do on the ad set level. And on the ad level, we're just testing different variations, right? Now what I would do is I would publish this, but before publishing, I'm going to uh, set up a different set of targeting to the uh, you know same campaign. So this targeting, so for example, I am targeting real estate agents. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a uh, real estate, uh, you know, targeting. 
The only thing that I'm going to change here is I am just going to add in a detail targeting. So for example, I can target, you know, real estate agent. Uh, and then once you select one, you can click on suggestions and you're going to get a bunch and then you can add in as many as you can. Once again, keep in mind, the bigger the audience, the better. So I'm just going to add all bunch, all of these here, real estate advisor, sales associate. The job titles are good. So you can see that the audience size right now is about 10 and a half thousand. So that's too small. So I'm going to increase this uh, size here. Real estate agent, consultant, these are brokerages. I'm going to add in on the brokerages here. Uh, brokerage, you know, Remax, these are all brokerages. Realtor. Uh, I can also add real estate as a job title, real estate broker. Realty One Group. I can add all of these here. Real Estate Broker Associate. So once again, you wanna, you definitely wanna get this audience size in the millions. The bigger the audience, the better. So let's continue with this. And keep continuing with this, and you know, you should eventually get a whole bunch that you can sort of add into here and then i can do real estate uh, investing works as well yeah so that it, i mean there you go it sort of increases the audience size by quite a bit uh you know real estate i could probably take out real estate investing and i could just keep real estate as an industry and i can continue with this but you see now, if I take a look at this targeting option, which is open, we're targeting 27 million. The second one, we're targeting, you know, 10 million. So, of course, you know, bigger the audience, the better. And we're going to allow a Facebook to optimize on its own. Right. So, we sort of, I mean, we're targeting real estate agents, real estate sort of like the broader term. So, I can sort of target real estate. So, this audience size is big enough. And, you know, so we know that, you know, this. Is from ad angle one and let's just say for ad angle one i had a few variations of the ad copy and i can add in all the ad copies here all of the headlines here x y and z and we know that this is real estate targeting and we know this one is open targeting and we know this is a cold traffic campaign so i could run this one at 80 bucks per day now let's just say i have ad angle i have another ad angle what i can do with ad, that ad angle is i can have multiple Add copies for that one and I can test those ones as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish this. And of course, oh yeah, so I'm gonna have to, you know, I'm gonna remove that. But uh, you just, yeah, just make sure you have your payment methods installed. And I, there might be some tax stuff that you gotta figure out as well. But that is pretty much how you set up a cold traffic campaign. So once again, I'm just gonna click publish here. And keep in mind, we have the campaign level. We have the ca advantage campaign budget turned on. We're targeting a uh, broader term real estate. We're doing open targeting here. And then within the ad level, this is where we, can, where we can throw in a bunch of different ad copies that are related to the one ad angle. So I hope that makes sense. And let's just say, I'm gonna do another ad angle. I could duplicate this and I can create a new campaign and this would be, you know, add angle two. And the only thing that I got to change here is I just got to change the ad copies here and the headlines. So you can try a completely different ad angle. And this angle could be, uh, let's see, this angle could be, I believe we were talking shit about the um, competitors in this one, were we? Uh, yeah, I think we were talking shit about competitors in that one. So what we can do with this one is, um, if you have a lot of case studies, you can run with a heavy case study angle uh, for this one. Or you can talk about the new lead generation strategy. 
So this can sort of be at angle two, where it's like the new legion strategy. And then what I would do here is I would have a whole bunch of different ad copies that are related to the new way to generate leads, the new way to get clients within real estate, the new way to get appointments within uh, with buyers and sellers, the new way, new way, new way. So there, it would be a whole bunch of ad copies that are related to new lead generation strategies. And then the headlines would also be surrounding that. So if we, if we take another look, just to recap, campaign level, we're differentiating based on the ad angle. And then ad set, where the only way we're differentiating is based on the targeting. And then the ads is just a whole bunch of different ad copies and headlines that we're going to allow Facebook to do its thing with the dynamic creative and find the best sort of combination that it can find. And uh, like I said, you want you want to spend at least you know 70 to 80 bucks per each campaign per day when we're running this. But this is how you set up a cold traffic campaign okay so now that we've got the two cold traffic campaigns set up we can go ahead and also set up the retargeting campaign now in order to set up the retargeting campaign we need to first create some custom audiences the way you do that is you just click on this all tools here and then just click on audiences and we're just going to go ahead and create these three audiences so what we want to do is we want to retarget people that visited your website which is your funnel we also want to retarget people that visited the Instagram account. We also want to then retarget people that visited the, the Facebook page. So let's go to custom audience, create custom audience. And the first thing we're going to do is website. So anyone that visited the funnel, we want to retarget them, especially the people that have visited in the past 90 days. So what you want to do here is select your pixel, select all website visitors and add in the audience name as uh, you know, 90 day website, you know, visitors. Now I've already done this before, so I'm not going to do this right now, but just go ahead and just cl click create audience and you should be able to create the audience. Now the second one that you want to do, the second audience is click on Instagram account, click next. And you want to target anyone that has visited your IG in the past 180 days. So just click on everyone who engaged with this professional account and write this past 180 days, you know, Instagram. Okay. And then click create audience, right? Of course, I don't have my Instagram account connected with this ad account, so it's not going to show up right now. And then do the exact same thing with uh, the Facebook page. Click on Facebook page, click on next. And we're just going to select, you know, whatever agent name page. And every, everyone who engaged with your page for the past 180 days here. And then you could just call, you know, Facebook page uh, visitors 180 days, right? And just click on create audience. And that way you should be able to create three custom audiences. All right. And now we're going to be able to retarget these people. Let's go back over to the campaigns now. And we're just going to do the exact same thing. We are going to create uh, a new campaign. And this one is going to be called the retargeting campaign. It's very minimal. Like we're spending $2,000 a day on advertising and we're only spending $50 on retargeting, which is barely anything. It's such a small percentage. So click on leads, click on continue, manual leads campaign, click on continue. And we're going to create this campaign uh, from scratch. Uh, once again, if you just go back over to Google Doc, you should be able to uh, follow this as well. So of course, turn this on. And once again, campaign objective. Here, we are uh, trying to optimize once again for uh, conversions. Okay. Leads and uh, conversions. And this is going to be an auction. So retargeting uh, na uh, name, we can just write this uh, retargeting campaign targeting you know realtors or whatever you could write whatever you want it's right retargeting campaign campaign objective you know you could just spend like five bucks per day i'm just i'm just gonna go back here i'm just gonna write five fifty dollars per day and just click on next here once again select your pixel uh, i'm gonna first 
you know, retarget. So I'm just going to write retargeting. And conversion uh, location, it's going to be a website. Once again, we're going to be uh, collecting leads through our website. Maximum number of conversions once again. However, this time, we want to optimize for people that are booking a call with you. Right? So we want to, our conversion event that we're going for and optimizing for is schedule. That's the conversion event that we're optimizing for. So once again, with retargeting, these are people that have already opted in. And it can, there's, a, still, there's still going to be a lot of people that didn't opt in. However, this time around, we're trying to optimize people to uh, book a call with us. And you can turn that dynamic creative on. Once again, you know, keep following this structure. And usually you want to start the ad the next day or the following day. I'm just going to do tomorrow. And, you know, you can start that like, you know, 12 a.m. When the day is going to start. It's one thing I forgot to. I believe right start date uh, tomorrow at you know midnight and then for locations keep it countrywide you don't have to touch anything there now in terms of the advantage audience this is where your custom audiences come in don't touch the detail targeted don't touch the gender age there's no point of touching all of that we're just going to target people through our custom audience. So of course, you know, we had created website visitors. That would have been 90 days, by the way. And then you should also see your um, um, Instagram visitors, and you should also see Facebook page visitors. So you should have three custom audiences here. Okay. Add all of those three in. Leave recommended placements on. Don't add in anything to the detailed targeting. Add in website visitors. And then click next. And then here, what we're going to do is we are just going to pretty much just add in the same ads that you had added in previously. So what we like to do is we just like to run the best performing ad as our retargeting ad. Of course, you know, when you're first starting out, you're not going to have a best performing ad. But, uh, you know, once you do get the best performing ad, you can run that. But for now, you know, you can just run the same ad that we had set up for the cold traffic campaign. Of course, like the Instagram account, uh, do, do videos, of course, turn this off and turn this off as well. And you can select your videos, add in the same primary text, add in the same headlines, the one that you believe will perform the best. And then of course here, we are going to add in our uh, opt-in page link here. We're going to get the opt-in page link here. Now you guys might be wondering, should we send people to the application page or to the booking page? We like to always send people straight to the opt-in page. And the reason being is because you may get people going to your Facebook page and to your Instagram account organically. And you will also have in the future get pe people to go to your a funnel organically. Now, of course, those people have likely not opted in. So we're always trying to send all the traffic to the first page of the funnel. And the first page of the funnel is the opt-in page. So always trying to send all the traffic to this page here. So uh, just add in your primary text. I'm not going to do that again. And add in your headline, add in your description. Leave that to learn more. And of course, just go ahead and copy paste the URL uh, parameters. Now I'll be talking about high rows shortly, but for now, just add in the URL parameters. Cool. And just like that, you set up a retargeting campaign. So just to recap, your retargeting campaign is going to spend five bucks a day. And what we're doing is we're retargeting everyone that visited your funnel, your Instagram page, and your Facebook page, right? So people can either go to your Instagram page, Facebook page, or your funnel. Those are only the only the only three places where people can go. So we're, we're retargeting all those people and bringing them back to the first page, which is going to be the opt-in page. That's what we're doing. And eventually, you know, you can run your best performing ad as a retargeting ad. But just go ahead and click publish and you will have set up your retargeting campaign. I'm going to go ahead and, of course, uh, you know, delete these. I don't because I don't want to launch these random campaigns of a client's account for my agency. So I'm going to go ahead and delete these. OK, so now that we've set up the retargeting campaign, I want to get a little bit more advanced. Now, most people run the same ads from their cold traffic campaign here. This is completely fine. But if you want to take this one step further 
what you can do is introduce objections into your retargeting campaigns. Now, there's only a few objections that your prospect is going to have. One is going to be related to money. Second is time. I don't have much time to do this. It's going to take a lot of effort from me. Number three, this is too hard. I don't want to learn new skills. I don't want to learn this new stuff. Fourth is skepticism. I want to use something that actually works. There should be a proven track record that whatever this person is teaching, selling, uh, servicing, it has worked for other people in the past. So if you're able to do this, introduce objections that you handle in the retargeting campaign. Now, this is a bit more advanced. And of course, it, it is going to take a lot more effort and time. So if you do have that, you know, go ahead and get this set up. Now, let's get into the tracking. I've provided a link here that you can use to keep track of your ads. Now, the way you do this is you need to come in here every single day and add in the metrics for the previous day. So for example, if today it is, you know, January the 27th, I would add in the metrics for the 26th year. Does that make sense? If, if it's the 25th, I would fill in the data for the previous day. And I'm going to talk, I'm going to get deeper into tracking. But for now, the main metric that we're going to be tracking every single day is the cost per qualified booked call. The entire purpose of the marketing is to get this number as low as possible. We want this number to, over time, come down. And this is what we're trying to optimize for. Now, I'm going to quickly go into the ads manager and show you how to input these numbers into the tracking sheet. So once you go into the ads manager, of course, I've deleted the campaigns. But what you want to do is go to the columns here and go to customize columns. And you want to add in the CPMs, the CTRs, the CPC, leads in the cost per lead here. So what you want to do is come here and then search for these metrics and add them to this order. So for example, I would search for delivery. Of course, I already added in delivery, but I would add in the delivery to the top. Add in the budget, do the reach, impressions, amount spent, the CPM's cost per, how much did it cost for your ad to be shown to a thousand people? What was the click-through rate? Out of the thousand people, how many people clicked through? What was the cost per uh, click? What was the cost for each one click? And leads, how many leads did you get? Now, for accurate tracking, you always want to get the number of leads from your CRM. So I think I'm going to add this to the Google Doc here. Um, get the number of leads directly from your CRM. Or you can get it from ClickFunnels. How do you get it from ClickFunnels? Uh, go to ClickFunnels, you know, go to the stats, and you'll be able to track how many people opted in for the VSL page. Of course, we don't have a variation yet, but you'll be able to track, uh, you know, how many people opted in for the date. So of course, you know, let's just say, you know, I was tracking for yesterday on the 26th. I would just do the 26th year. I would go to apply filter. And then here, you know, I would have been able to see that, oh, you know, one person opted in. Right. So it, it does a number. It does a, it gives you a percentage on the unique opt-ins. So if 10 unique people, that means 10 different people opted in. I, I 10 different people saw the page. And out of the 10, one person opted in. And the uh, opt-in percentage would be 10%. So you want to get this number from here or the CRM and add it to your tracking sheet here. For the CPC, the click through read the CPM, we're going to get this directly from the ads manager, right? So CPM, cost per thousand impressions, click through rate, and the CPC. And these are really the main uh, numbers that we track, really. And then, of course, in the cost per qualified booked call, that number is uh, the the number of calls, uh, let me add that over here as well. Get the number of call bookings directly, you know, from CRM or uh, Calendly, because that's where people are booking from. You can also track the number of um, applications. You can also do that as well. I, I've just 
removed it just to keep things super simple. But you can also track the number of applications and then the qualified number, the number of qualified applications that came in. But here, the main uh, number that we're trying to, the main metric that we're looking at each day is a cost per qualified booked call. All right, so I just want to make sure this makes sense. CPM is how much money you spent on ads. This is your CPM. Click through rate, you know, how much is your cost per click? How many leads did you have generated? There's going to be a cost per lead. You can forget, uh, these are bad fits. Uh, this is usually marked in the CRM, but you can forget about this. So you can also delete this if you find this a bit confusing. Uh, but add in how many calls you scheduled and how many qualified calls you scheduled. Once again, the main key metric that we're trying to optimize for the call, the qualified calls schedule. We're trying to, that's the number that we're trying to optimize for. Let's come back. Let's talk about high rows. Now, this is, of course, me getting a bit advanced. So I'm just going to mark that here. Now, I'm not going to dive deep, deeper into high rows just because it is very advanced. But, you know, if you're spending more than like $5,000 per month on ads, you can buy high rows. So what it, what high rows is, it's a, it's a tracking software that allows you to track what links people are clicking on. You can see the entire customer journey. This was the first ad they saw. This is the second ad this person saw. This is the first link this person clicked on. The second link this person clicked on. This person came from Instagram. This person came from Facebook. You can track everything. But of course, you know, if the product is that good, it's going to be on the pricier end. So we only recommend it if you're spending more than like five to $10,000 per month on advertising. But the most accurate form of tracking will come from high rows. Keep in mind, this ads manager, this is always inaccurate. Like the, lead, the number of leads, your cost per lead, it's always going to be inaccurate here. So the true tracking usually comes from high rows. Now, of course, high rows is good, but we, we also have the UTM parameters that we can use to track everything. Right? So we're sort of tracking based on the UTM parameters. And then you can also use high rows if you like. And uh, we're also manually checking as well. Now, if you're spending less than five thousand dollars per month on ads, like I said, we've already set up the UTM parameters, so you'll be able to see, you know, what was the original ad that the person came in from. That's all we'll be able to see with the UTM parameters. We would be able to see uh, UTM parameters will tell you the original ad the lead came in from right so i will tell you the initial ad that the person came in from so once again you know we want to just track the number of leads applications are optional but the main thing is sales calls booking how many calls are you booking what's your cost per booking now when we're tracking ads forget about the organic don't ever count the organic I always count only leads that have come in from facebook or instagram ads that's why we track the UTM parameters. With the UTMs, we'll be able to know that, oh, you know, this person came from ads. This person didn't come from ads. Right? So we're going to be diving deeper into the tech side shortly. So you'll be able to see and, you know, see, you know, this person came from ads. This person didn't come from ads. So we'll be able to see all of that. Key metrics to track. Once again, cost per lead. That's the most, uh, that, that is one of the important metrics. But the most important one is your cost per call. And then, of course, more importantly, cost per qualified call. The cost per qualified call is you're manually going in and you're checking each booking whether this person is qualified or not qualified. So this has to be done with by a real human. We don't even get VAs to do this for us. We get a real person. I mean, VAs are real, real people. We get uh, a, a more qualified team member to manually check each application and check whether this person was qualified or not qualified. So this is something uh, very important because then you know which ads to keep on and which ads to turn off, right? So if you're getting qualified people coming in, you want to that's the ad that you want to continue running. That's the ad that you want to duplicate and scale up. Keynotes, tracking number of leads. So you always want to uh, cross reference uh, reference leads based on what ClickFunnels says and what um, your CRM says. So that's where you want to get the number of leads from. The CRM has the real data. 
right? So the numbers can always be skewed on click funnels. The numbers can always be wrong. The number is always going to be wrong in ads manager. So I wouldn't trust what the ads manager tells you. And you always want to cross reference how many bookings actually came in from Calendly and from your CRM. And you can also always double check Slack as well for the notifications. Don't worry, we're going to be setting up all of the tech and the post ad setup shortly. I know this was a lot of information. So just to recap, use high rows if you're spending more than 5 to 10K per month on ads. You will get the most accurate form of tracking through high rows. We highly recommend it. The only downside is it's on the price you end. Number two, if you're not using high rows, you're, all, you're already going to have the UTM parameter set up. Now with the UTM parameters, you'll be able to track the first initial ad that person came from. Right, so it's a good way to track as well. We can see the first click, like where they originally came from. So that's good. What are we looking for? We're really looking at the metric cost per call, cost per qualified call. That's the metric that we're looking at. Ideally, uh, you know, you know, you want to have this number below, you know, three hundred. Okay, you always want to have this number below three hundred. And uh, and when we're checking uh, data. It's very important that the tracking is accurate. Since all of the decisions we're making is based on data, you will make wrong decisions if the data itself is inaccurate. So we have a whole person that's designated to just inputting real data. That's how important uh, data is, accurate data. So I wanna keep putting emphasis on this. Always cross-reference how many leads did you really get? How many applications did you really get? How many bookings did you really get on how many of them came from paid ads? It's very important. And, uh, you know, if you're going to get someone to do this, or if you're going to do this yourself, spend some time here to you know set this up accurately. We'll be getting into the tech stuff shortly, but before that, let's talk about scaling ads. What we found, this is just based on our experience. The, the, Performance tend to drop if we just increase the budget on an existing campaign. But instead, what we do is we just duplicate the campaign, increase the ad budget. That's the first thing we do. Secondly, is we just duplicate a winning campaign and then we change the conversion that went to schedule. So if you remember, the conversion that went the event that we had set up was the leads. But in the retargeting campaign, we had done schedule. Just change it to schedule and you can scale up that way as well. And you can duplicate winning creatives and you can try new audiences. So you can try that. But most of the time, you know, you're, you're usually going to fall in this bucket. So I'm going to uh, specify here. Usually we'll fall into, you know, this bucket. Okay. I'm not going to go too much into scaling ads just because a very small percentage of the people watching this video are going to be at this stage. But this is just for your own general knowledge. If you are going to look looking to scale from $100 a day to maybe $500, all you got to do is just duplicate the winning ads. The game, what's the game? It's not, it's not about increasing ad spend. It's about being as efficient as possible with the ad spend. Think about it. You can spend $5,000 a month, $50 cost per call, the same thing as spending ten k per month at $100 cost per call. So... You want to be as efficient as possible. Your goal is to always, your goal, your goal is to, of course, you know, get a ROAS. But after that, get a low cost per qualified, qualified call uh, as possible. That's the entire goal. The entire goal is to just low, lower the cost per qualified call. All right, so if you're at 400, get the number down to 300. If that number is to, at 300, try to get the number down to 250. If you're able to get the number from 250 to 200, good. That's, that's the goal as you're scaling up. It's, it's being as uh, efficient as possible. That's the, that's the whole purpose and the game that we're playing with paid advertising. Of course, the goal is to get the ROAS. But we're going to be talking uh, more about the ROAS. Of course, the sales is going to be part of it and, and all of that good stuff. But uh, yeah, so uh, just to recap. Tracking, at most important. Spend some time there. Accurate tracking is very important. You're making decisions based on data. There's no decisions being based on emotions. 
and cross-reference the real numbers. Scaling, just duplicate the campaigns, the easiest way to do it. And uh, the goal, the whole game that we're playing is lower the uh, cost per qualified call. And once again, you're manually checking whether each call is qualified or not. You're having a, uh, you're not using automation, but instead there's like a person that's manually checking. Okay, you know, this application is qualified, this one's not. This one is, this one's not. That's why you have all these questions in the application. Okay, then now we are going to set up the automations. All right, so let's go ahead and set up the automations. Now, there's only three set of automations that you're going to need. Now, the core purpose, uh, the first tool that we're going to be using is Zapier. Now, a lot of you are likely already familiar with Zapier. But the purpose of Zapier is to automate tasks. Now, within Zapier, we're going to be using three main tools. So we're going to be sending all of the information to Slack. Slack is sort of a communication tool. You can compare this. It's very similar to Discord, if you're familiar with Discord. But the purpose... But the purpose of Slack is to get notifications each time you get a new lead, a new application, and a sales call booking. That's the whole purpose of Slack. The CRM is where you're going to be able to call, email, and text people. The purpose is to you know, keep all of your potential clients in one place. Now, which CRM do we use? We, are, uh, we use Close.io which for our sales team, but you can also use Go High Level. Now, in the early stages, when you're first starting out, you can use Go High Level, and that's sort of what we did. But we found that as your team starts growing and it starts getting bigger, you need something that's faster, easier, and more simple to use. We found clothes to be much faster. Sales team prefers it. Go high level can at times be a bit glitchy and a bit slow. So our sales team doesn't really like go high level for you know doing that sort of stuff. But uh, the only downside with clothes.io is that it tends to get pricier as you start bringing in more team members. Now, I am going to be showing you the automations of what it looks like if you're going to be connecting everything to close to IO, but the setup is going to be very similar regardless of any CRM software that you use. It's going to be a very similar setup to if you were to set it up with Koha level. And then we're also going to send all of the information to Google Sheets. So what I like to do is I like to keep a backup of all of the leads that I'm generating, the application, the sales calls booking. So. Uh, the reason why I do this is, you know, at times stuff can get deleted from the CRM. Uh, and especially if you're paying money for applications, leads, bookings, you want to make sure that you have a backup of all the people's information that you're collecting. Now, let's go ahead and let's set up the first zap. Now, the first zap that we're going to be setting up is what is called the uh, opt-ins zap. So the whole purpose of this is we want to get notified each time that we get a new lead that comes in. Now, in order to set this up, what I'm going to first quickly do here is I am going to open up a new sheet and you can follow along. And I'm going to name this a leads. And I'm going to do, uh, you know, applications. So we're going to be doing this with Zapier later on, but and bookings. So for the leads, you want to uh, write the date here, name, email, phone number. That's, that's really all we're collecting uh, as a lead. And then for the application, uh, you want to do the exact same thing, date, name, email, phone number. And then I believe we also have a set of questions that we were asking, which we can also do. And then for the call bookings, we're going to do the date. Booking, date booked, sales call scheduled for like what date was it scheduled for? And the same thing and the name, email, and phone number. So what we can do is, you know, we can keep a backup of all of these, of, of all of this information. That's the whole reason we have this. It's going to look nice and pretty here. First step, we are going to open up ClickFunnels. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to share this app with you in the google doc so you have access to this app but i'll still walk you through the exact setup so what i want to do is i want to i want to edit this app uh i was using the youtube uh free funnel for you i believe it was this one okay let me just make this a bit easier i'll just call this opt-in page final and then i'll know or i can just change the name uh 
funnel for YouTube video. Yeah. Okay, so I changed the name. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, refresh this. And I called it funnel for YouTube video. Funnel for YouTube video. There we go. And the the full the, uh, we're gonna be collecting leads off of the first step. So click continue. And I can try finding a new record. And I believe we tried testing this as well. So just continue with the selected record. And what we're going to do is we're going to send, first off, we're going to send this lead to Slack. And what you're going to do is you're going to create yourself a leads channel within Slack. And you can just write message text, you know, new lead from Facebook ad. This came in from a VSL funnel. Or, uh, I mean, you can delete this. You don't really need this. But what, you want, what we want to do is we want to notify ourselves within Slack. So I can find my name. I can do my email here. And then I can also add in the phone number. Okay. And then you can forget about the rest. Click continue. Skip the test. And like I said, I'm going to show you the setup for close.io. But if you don't have close.io, of course, the setup is going to be very similar to go high level. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to find the lead if it currently exists within the CRM. But if it can't find it, then we're going to go ahead and create this as a new lead within the CRM. I'm going to look for the lead based on the email. And if the lead does not exist, then I'm going to tell Close to create a brand new lead. And I'm going to add in the name, email, and phone number. Also, if the lead doesn't exist, I'm going to add in the UTMs. And then just like this, you'll be able to track which ad this person came in from. And I am going to include, uh, I think I forgot to include the, the cheat sheet for the CRM setup. Oh, yeah. Let me actually include this up top here because I should have told you guys to do this first. Automations. Yeah, let's get the automation set up here first. So before starting with, you know, Zapier, follow this cheat sheet here that I've included and get your close.io set up in this format. You just got to add in these lead statuses, add in these opportunity statuses and these custom fields, and then you'll be able to get it set up. That's pretty straightforward. But here you can search for the UTM campaign, right? Add in the UTM campaign. And then you'll know that, okay, you know, this person came from UT, uh, from Facebook ads. And then we're going to search for UTM content here as well. And then the UTM medium. And so on and so forth. And just do it for the last one as well. All right. Just like that, we've now added in this new lead within uh, close. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to get this from the idea I gotta go back and test this now just to show you guys so let's test this up oh, let's go back and let's retest step my coffee is done too now and then we're going to update the lead we're going to find the lead id from the last step since we already created the lead now and then what we want to do is we can update the lead Oh, actually, we don't even have to do this. This is uh, this is not necessary on the step, so I'm just gonna remove this. But yeah, so new lead came in from ClickFunnels. We we notified, we got notified within Slack. We added the new lead in within Close. So we first check whether it existed. If it didn't exist, only then we created it. And then we're gonna go ahead and have an active campaign account set up. So you should already have. I think I forgot to uh, add this in as well. Now, active campaign is used to send out emails, to put people on email drips. Got to add an active campaign. So this is used to put people on email, you know, drip sequences. 
So you want to add people on drip sequences when they're coming in. It's a bit more advanced, but the whole, the whole purpose here is add continue. And we just want to create or update the contact with an active campaign. And the whole purpose is we want to add them on a list. Add in the email address, name, and I can add in, you know, a tag, which is going to be like lead. And what and you want to select the correct list so let's just say for example i uh, did from my opt-ins here and then you'll have an automation set up with an active campaign to get uh this person on an email drip sequence but it's not needed at the moment so i'm gonna go ahead and just delete this because we can send uh folks manual emails so i'm just gonna go ahead and delete this right now just to uh keep things super simple but the whole purpose of that is to um put people on email drip sequences. And at last, we're going to go ahead and send this lead to a Google spreadsheet. We're going to select the Google spreadsheet that we just created. And what is this one called? Um, updates. Let's keep it new leads. Let's look for this spreadsheet. Uh, I can't find it. Oh, it might be a different account. Uh, change the account. Okay. Now I should be able to find the new leads. And I'm going to select the first, uh, sheet here. I'm going to send it to the leads worksheet and it should automatically just add this in. Yeah, I already did. So add in the date name, email, phone number. And then if I click continue and I test this uh, step, you're going to see that this new lead is now going to end up on the uh, spreadsheet, right? So you'll have a backup of each lead here. Now, just like this, you're sending the lead over to Slack. You're updating your CRM. So now you can call email text this person through the CRM. And you're also keeping a backup of this lead here in Google Sheets. Now you can also do the, take this one step further by adding each person on an email drip sequence. That's a bit more advanced. So we don't have to worry about that right now because we're already going to be doing that within the CRM, but that would sort of be the next step uh, to start converting these people into sales call bookings. So the next step is to set up our applications app. Now the whole purpose of setting up the applications app is to once again, send, you know, notify us that, Hey, a new application came in B to keep a backup of all the applications that we can also send this information straight to the CRM. The reason why we want to send this information straight to the CRM is so when they're going to call these people, you can directly take a look at their application. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to once again to be sharing this with you guys, but I'm just going to head back over to uh, make sure you publish uh, this app as well and turn it on. But I'm going to be heading back over to uh, Zapier here, and I'm going to be opening up the uh, applications uh, Zapier. Now, once you uh, open up the applications app, the first step is going to be a new submission that is going to come in through job form. So of course, select your account. Once you select your account, of course, you would have named your application something. I know I've named mine form just for this example. And we're going to click continue and you're going to test this. But before we test this, I'm going to first open up the application page and I'll just do a quick, uh, you know, test run on the application. So that way, you know, we can have a test sample that comes in. I'm going to click start. Just going to do a quick run in between this. And one. Oh yeah, I forgot to, you know, add in the options there. Our leads. Click yes. I'm going to add in the name here. I'm going to add in my email and then I'm going to add in a uh, phone number. Yeah. Click submit. And I should end up on the booking page with the Calendly. But let's go back over to job form and let's go back over to Zapier and let's test this trigger. Now it should show up here. I right, said, so there you go. I just showed up here. So continue with selected record. And once again, we're going to send this to a Slack channel and you can really send it to any Slack channel. 
you can you can send it to the you can create a separate Slack channel for this, or you can send it to the same leads channel. So for this new application, I'm just gonna remove all this stuff. But we want to send in the like name. Uh, let's do the email. I think I had also asked for the phone number. And then we can add in the answers to the questions that they gave us, right? So what I would do here is, are you a solo agent? How are you currently generating business? Current, you know, lead gen method. I can just write, put that there. um da, da, da. how many deals current deal volume i can add that here goals for a uh, number of deals i can add that next how many deals uh how many Current number of deals that they want to do you want to be doing okay and i think the last question that i believe we asked was uh finances right so just make sure you add in all of the answers to all the questions that we asked so once that is done now we're going to get a notification each time we get an application now once again we're going to send this lead over to our crm so when we're sending it over to the crm we want to find the lead based on the email that came in. So I'm, I'm telling, I'm essentially telling close to IO like, Hey, you know, find me this lead. If it currently exists in the CRM, if it doesn't exist, I want you to create this, uh, as a new lead. So I'm just gonna add in the name. So once again, guys, you guys have the, uh, instructions in, uh, the Google doc here. So the exact step-by-step -step process is, has been added into the Google doc. Go back over to job form and we're going to add in the email here. You can add in the email and then I'm going to also add in the phone number. And then I'm just going to keep working my way down. And I'm going to click continue. And then we also want to create a note. So if I just retest this, we also want to create a note within the CRM. And the note that we want to create is of the answer that we received from the application. So I'm just going to create a note from the lead ID, uh, ID. And I want to uh, just write like, you know, application answers right so i can just throw in all of the, the uh like the answers that we received you know the names uh i can write the email i can write the the phone number And then I can add, throw in all of the questions here, the remainder of the questions. Of course, I'm not going to do that right now, but uh, just throw in all of the uh, answers to the questions that we received from the application. So once we're done with that, just continue. So once again, it doesn't matter which CRM you're using. Uh, every CRM has a feature where you can add in notes, right? So you want to send this information directly to the CRM. And at last, we want to update a custom field within the CRM. So once again, we're going to select the ID, which came in from the original email. And what we want to do is if you've set up the CRM, you want to do a custom field that says that a questionnaire was uh, submitted. So submitted application. Yes. Right. So there should be a custom field. And if you create this custom field, we'll be able to see within the CRM that, hey, you know, this person submitted an application. So just get that added in. 
So once again, I'm going to skip the active campaign just because uh, it's a little bit more advanced. And I'm going to go ahead and delete the active campaign here. And at last, we want to add this uh, new application into our uh, you know, spreadsheet that we had just created. I'm going to click continue. I'm going to select the spreadsheet. I believe it's called like, what is it called? New leads. Yeah. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're just going to select the correct spreadsheet. So applications. And then I'm going to send in uh, all of the applications here. So name, I can once again, you know, search for the name. Email. I can add in the email here. And then I can also add in the uh, phone number. Yeah. So once I've added in the phone number, I need to add in a few more uh, fields here. So once I've added in the, the fields, I can continue. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to the spreadsheet. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in the questions here. So whatever questions we had in the application, I'm just going to go ahead and throw them in the Google spreadsheet. So for example, am I a, like, what am I? And then currently, how am currently generating business? And how many deals, deal volume per month. So once again, guys, we're doing this just so we can keep uh, a backup of all the uh, answers as well. How, how, are we, how are you currently, currently generating business? Deals are we doing per month? How many deals, uh, goals, right? How many goals? Well, like how many deals do you want to be doing? Which is your goal? What's stopping you right now? What's stopping you? And then uh, the last one here is uh, finances. Do they have the money? The money, money, money. Now let's go back over to the application. I'm going to just refresh these uh, refresh fields. And then I should see the rest pop up. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, what am I? I am a solo agent. How am I currently generating business? I am doing door knocking. I'm cold calling. All of that fun stuff. Current deal volume. How many deals am I in? Uh, doing per month. At the moment, uh, what are my goals? How many deals do I want to be doing per month? And then um, what's stopping me from getting there? And then the last one, I, I believe it was finances. So I'm just going to add in all of them for the finances. And just like that, if I click continue and attest this step, you'll see that all of these answers are going to pop up in the Google spreadsheet. There we go. Now we're keeping a backup of all the applications, the phone numbers, the emails, all the applications that came in and we can keep a backup. And then, you know, we can come in here every single day and then we can also market that. Oh, you know, this one's qualified. This one is, you know, not qualified. A lot of use cases here. Okay. This is a benefit here. So we can see all the leads and ending up here. We can see all the applications and we're going to do the exact same thing with the bookings app, which we're going to be looking at next. But just like that, once you've got this set up, we're going to click uh, publish and turn this on. Keep in mind, the only thing I didn't set up here was active campaign. And uh, that's only going to be set up for the leads zap, just because every new lead that comes in, we want to keep, we want to put them on an email drip sequence until they fill out an application. 
All right, so once that's turned on, we're going to go ahead and move on to the, the last one. So just make sure these are both turned on. And once again, I'm also going to include uh, a link to these so that you guys can download them directly into your Zapier account. But the last one that we're going to set up is the sales call uh, one. Now, the last app that we need to set up is a sales calls app. So once again, for the previous apps and for the sales calls app, I've included step by step instructions that you can take a look at. And I'll do a quick recap at the end as well, once I've uh, finished setting up the last app. But the last app that we're going to set up is called the, the Sales Calls app. So once again, you're also going to have the link to this exact same app that you can download directly into your account. Now, what we're going to do here is, of course, uh, we are not going to use OneSub, but instead we're going to use Calendly. All right. And the event that we're going to do is invitee created. We're going to continue, uh, just connect into your Calendly account. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to my account. Connect to Calendly. Hopefully the, oh yeah, there we go. It does show up. Okay. And I believe. user or, uh, let's see let's actually book a call so we can see whether it shows up or not uh let's see let's try it let's book a call first and let's test it out and then we'll um let's book a call here just so we can get a test event uh Schedule event. Okay. Yeah, so it did redirect us to the thank you page. Let's go back here and let's find a new record. And let's see if it shows up. Yeah, there you go. It showed up. And now what we're going to do is we're only going to, we're going to delete this. We don't really need this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to look for this lead within uh, Zapier. I mean, within uh, closed.io. So once again, if this lead doesn't, once again, what we're going to do is we're going to try to find the lead using its email. Using that email. But if we can't find the lead, then we're going to go ahead and create the lead. And the name is, of course, once again, going to come directly from Calendly. Let's go ahead and find the phone number. And that would have been to the answer. Where did the phone number answer go? Yeah, right here. And we are going to click continue. And of course, we're not collecting their Instagram. But of course, you know, you can always collect their Instagram and you can always collect the Facebook um profile username as well if you like and then one more thing that we're going to do is we're also going to add in a uh we're going to do that in the next step let's click continue once again the step-by-step -step instructions have been provided in the doc for you so click continue i'm going to retest this uh, step and then we, we're going to update the lead with a uh, custom field, which we'll do next. So continue. And we're going to go ahead and update the same lead. That lead ID, once again, is going to come from the previous step. So I'm just going to delete this. And it's going to come from the previous step. And, uh, you know, we can add in the company name if you like, not a big deal. But more importantly, we're just going to mark that, that a demo was booked. 
right? That's what we're going to mark it as, that a demo was booked. So we're just going to update a custom field and we're going to let the CRM know that a demo was booked. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore the, uh, so we're just going to, I'm just going to click continue here. Click continue. Let me just double check, make sure I, uh, everything was done correctly here. Uh, which one is this? Yeah, so we're going to remove the Instagram handle. And then, uh, da, da, da. Also going to remove the booking of Andy. I don't really need this when you're starting out. And I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, click continue. So let's, uh, retest this step. Now I'm going to delete this step because you don't really need this. If, if you really just have a team of one, or if you're just starting, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And you also don't need to create a opportunity. This is not necessary for you to do. But one last thing that we definitely want to do is we want, we want to send a channel message to Slack and to the same channel as well. You can send it to the same channel. But what we want to do is we want to update the information here. So new demo scheduled. And you can write, you know, this was a name, this was an email, and this was the phone number that came in. And the meeting is scheduled for, the meeting was scheduled for da, 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 event created uh end time hmm event i think it'll start yeah so start time scheduled event start time you can also send that information to know when is this call scheduled for so you, so you can get notified of course i'm not going to test this step i'm going to skip this test once again, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have to worry about active campaign just yet. So a little bit more advanced. Uh, you don't have to worry about go high level here as well. I'm going to skip this just because we have two CRMs actually connected with one another. It's a bit more advanced, but what we are going to do is we're going to send this new Calendly event over to a spreadsheet and the spreadsheet that we're sending it to is going to be the same one that we had, uh, created. So continue. And we're going to select the same spreadsheet. Uh, I think it's called the new leads. And then the worksheet here is the bookings one. And then the date booked event. Mm, when was it created? Scheduled event created. Yeah, so it was created on this date. And then the sales call is scheduled for. When is the sales call? A scheduled event start time is scheduled for this time. And then, you know, this is the name. This is the email. And this is the phone number. And just like that. To provide you a quick recap, I'm going to quickly test this first. And now it should show up uh, right here. So of course, ignore this for now because uh, I, I copy pasted one of my previous apps. But now you should be able to see that a new call was booked for this day, this name, this email, this phone number. Now, just like that. We're going to be able to send all this information straight to Google Sheets. Now, if I go now, if I do a quick recap here, what we're essentially doing with all these apps is we're sending all of the information to Slack. That's where you and your team can keep track of. Uh, that's where essentially you're going to get notified each time a new lead application or booking comes in. The applications app does the exact same thing. We get notified. We keep a backup on a Google spreadsheet and we also get notified. And once again, we do the same thing with the bookings here as well, right? So you have backups and you can always cross reference this with some of the data within the CRM. But these are some of the basic zaps that you need set up. Now, you will see uh, the exact links 
to these apps that you can download into your Zapier account. And I will do that for you guys. So you guys can directly download them and uh, you know import that into your CRM. But uh, otherwise, the step-by-step -step instructions have been provided here, but you, so, you sort of saw an overview on me sort of going through this process. All right, so now that you've got these apps set up, and before we get into the sales aspect, what we're gonna talk about is what to do when you have leads coming in, applications coming in, and bookings coming in. So that's what we're gonna talk about. First and foremost is, I had mentioned earlier on about the success of a VSL funnel, on how to make a VSL funnel work. Now, one of the ways that is very important to make the VSL funnel work is calling the leads that are coming in. And the first point that I have is speed to lead. Ideally, you want to call each lead within the first five minutes. And there's a lot of studies that you can find online that if you just do your own research on the importance and the increase in the conversion rate if you call the lead within the first minute or the five minutes. There's a huge bump in the conversions. So if Google is publishing all these studies, that means that means it's correct. So you want to try your best to call each lead within five minutes. So another point is you want to be aggressive for the first four to five days that a lead comes in. Now you also want to have the right priority order. Now, for example, everyone has limited amount of time each day. So you want to make sure that you're putting your time and energy towards things that are going to give you the highest output. So for example, you want to first prioritize the new people that are coming in and then also prioritize the applications that were submitted, but people didn't book a call. Keep in mind, people can fill out an application, right? People can fill out an application, but they may not book a call. So if they don't book a call, these are high quality people that you want to follow up with because it's, they took the time to fill out an application. 30 to 40% of your bookings should come from you calling the people that are opting in. Once again, so people that are opting in from the opt-in page, your 30 to 40% of the people of the sales calls that you have, more than about one third of the people that you book, it should come from you calling these people on the phone using the CRM. Another point, you want to double dial each lead that comes in. You don't want to just call each person once, but if someone doesn't pick up the phone, you want to call them again. That's called double dialing. Now, what if the pickup rate is low? Try using a different phone number. And the second solution to that is experiment calling during different times throughout the day. Now, second point. You want to send an email a day to your list. So for example, I didn't show you guys how to set up the active campaign just because it's a little bit more complicated, but you want to send each lead to a new list, to, to a list. And you want to send an email a day, sometimes twice a day, depending on the day, to that list. Now, we like to send two emails per day on the weekends. And on the weekdays, we like to send one email per day to the list. So for example, you're going to have like 100 people that are going to be coming through your opt-in page. You want to send all of these 100 people to one list. And then you're going to have all... <coughs> and then you're going to have 100 people in this email list. And what you want to do is you want to nurture this email list. So you, you want to send at least one email per day to this list. And this way you're going to be in their email inbox, in their mail inbox once a day. On the weekends... At times, you can send two emails per day, depending on the email. Now, what should you write about the? What should you write in the emails? Now, we follow a pretty streamlined process when we're thinking about the type of emails that we want to send. On Mondays, we want to send something valuable. So you can use Mondays to educate your prospects. So the question you want to ask yourself is like, if my client doesn't work with me, how can he or she still get the same result I'm promising to them on their own? That is a good question to ask yourself. So for example, if I'm helping real estate agents with, you know, lead generation, I'm going to think to myself on a Monday that what can they do on their own without buying my service where they're able to generate quality buyers and sellers on demand. So I'm going to think, I'm going to think, I'm going to think about that question in my mind and that will be my email for Monday. So an example would be, uh, you know, like a, 
free organic lead generation campaign or like this free strategy that you could send over to them. And then on a Tuesday, people buy into stories. So this is where you can sort of share a story about yourself, about your company, or you can also share a story about a customer. But we like to do that on Wednesdays. So on Wednesdays, if you have, uh, you know, existing clients, you can use a Wednesday to break down a client case study. So once again, you know, this stuff, once, is, once again, is going to come from a VSO. So if you spent a good amount of time in your VSO, you're just, you're just extracting that information from a VSO and you're sending it through an email on a Wednesday. Each Wednesday, you're sending one new client case study. Now, if you don't have a case studies, uh, you know, if you don't have case studies, you can replace uh, this with a valuable email, uh, you know, something educational. That's what you can replace it with, something educational. And then Thursdays, uh, this is where you, once again, this information is coming straight from the VSL. So if you spend a good amount of time on the VSL, a lot of this stuff is already going to be done for you. Thursday, talk shit about the competitors. Talk about the old ways, how the old ways don't work. Talk about the traditional ways. So if I'm marketing to real estate agents, what I'm going to tell them is don't run Facebook ads, you know, don't run YouTube ads. It's the old way. Um, why are you so door knocking, cold calling? Don't be running bus stop ads. Don't be doing, uh, don't, your business shouldn't be dependent on referrals. You should not be uh, dependent on word of mouth. So you can be talking shit about the competitors. Uh, competitor for us would be Zillow. These big companies like Realtor.com. I would be talking about the fact on how they take a 35% marketing fee from them, which is causing these realtors to barely break even. So I could talk about that. On, on Fridays, you can handle an objection that your prospect may have. Now, if you remember earlier, we talked about a few objections that your prospect could have. Time. They don't have the time to do this. It's, too, it's going to require too much effort. Money. They don't have the money. Um, the last one was uh, skepticism. They want to see other people that have done well with this. They don't want to be a test trial. Uh, so, we got, uh, so we've got so we got time, money, and uh, effort. There was one more that I think I had mentioned earlier. But if you just scroll up, You'll be able to see, you know, the different objections that uh, people have, right? And people don't want to do this, uh, do this themselves. It's going to requ require too much effort. So this is where you cover one objection. And then on Saturday, you can uh, send a call to action email requesting people on your list to book a call. And you can send them straight to an application. So Saturday, so it's sort of like you provide value on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then on Saturday, you're sort of pitching them to book a call with you. And then on a Monday, you're going to wake up with, uh, you know, some bookings that are going to come in over the weekend. Sunday, you can send whatever you like. So there's no uh, protocol there. Now, I found a hack to find emails. Uh, copywriting. So if, you're, if you're, you're probably reading this, then you're probably like, this is so much work, so much copywriting. Do I have to like sit down and write a new email each day? The answer is yes. You know, I've been doing that for a very long time. But of course, now I have someone else doing it for me. But for a very long time, I was doing this myself. So a way to, uh, a quick hack for you is uh, open up a brand new email account, subscribe to other people's email list. So find competitors, find other people in the space, maybe in other industries that have good copywriting, opt into their email list. And every single day, what you want to do is just open up your inbox and look at the emails that catch your attention. Look at the subject lines that catch your attention. That can be your subject line for the day. And you can take a look at their email copies. And um, and you can copy and you can take that. Hack. Uh, so what I was talking about is, uh, yeah, so have a separate email where you just opt into people's email list. And uh, you just and every single day, you just open up your inbox, whatever catches your attention. Take that template and just rock it into your uh, email for the day. That's what I like to do. That's I, I have this whole email where... Every single day at 9 a.m., it just starts getting bombarded at 10 a.m., boom, email after email after email. And it's just a whole big sample size that I just like to take emails from. Cool. And uh, just some of the best performing subject lines that I found, uh, you can copy these and use them as well. One last pointer, a text blast. So we do like to send a text blast usually once or twice a week. So if you have a list, once again, we're going to be collecting all these emails. 
uh, you can send everyone a uh, text as well. Uh, so the people that you want to, I do want to send a text to is people that filled in, uh, they opted in, but they didn't fill out an application. You also want to send a text blast to people that filled out an application, but they didn't book a call. And then you can also send a text, text blast to people that no showed on a sales call. Now the hack here is keep your text blast under 160 characters. It's going to save you money on text messages. Don't use emojis. Don't use Billy URLs. Okay. So just to recap, uh, call the people that are opting in within five minutes, ideally fast, better email blast, send an email blast to your list once a day or twice on the weekends. What we like to do is, um, we like to fill up our salespeople on Mondays and Tuesdays. And the way we do that is just blasting two emails per day on uh, weekends. And what should you write in your email? Uh, on Mondays, you know, provide value. Tuesdays, you know, people buy into stories, you know, talk about a story. Wednesdays, case study. Thursday, uh, you know, talk shit. Fridays, handle objections. Saturdays, Sundays, uh, you know, fill, uh, you can request them to book a call. And then I've also given you a hack to find emails if you're stressing out about the email copy. And at last, uh, send everyone a uh, text blast. All right, so you want to send a text blast to people that opted in. Did they fill out an application? You also want to send a text blast to people that filled out an application, but they did a book a call and no show. So once again, if you take a look at the funnel, we're trying to optimize and try to increase the efficiency, right? People can opt in, not book fill out an application people can fill out an application on book a call so we're filling in the leaks here with text messages email follow-up and by calling these people okay this is how you're going to get a high return with your facebook ads and your ig ads uh, everything needs to be unlocked so very long session today i spent my entire saturday at the office recording this training for you guys and uh of course you're going to get to see the sales section right away. But tomorrow I'm going to be covering the uh, sales section. And the sales stuff is it's what's helped us, you know, maintain a 25% closing rate after taking 4,000 sales calls. Okay, so I'm super excited to uh, cover the sales stuff tomorrow. And, uh, you know, this training is valuable, a lot of value for you guys. Now, one thing I forgot to mention and show to you before moving on to the sales part is the utm stuff on on how it's gonna work so i'm just gonna come back here and i want to go through this step again so for example uh you know utm what we're gonna do is i'm gonna add in the utm source here utm campaign utm medium and the utm uh, what's the last one uh content <coughs> what we're gonna do here is now we'll be able to see in, like where the lead is originally coming from. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the application. And I'm also gonna do this for um, bookings that's not really needed, right? Because they cannot even book a call unless they go through the application or go through the leads or do, through the opt-in page. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this. And the way we're gonna test this is we are going, just make sure your zaps are turned on and make sure you add in, oh yeah, we have to go back and change these apps. I just remembered. Okay. So we're going to go back and we're going to, what we're going to do here is I am going to make sure that I'm sending the UTMs to the Google spreadsheet. So here I'm going to edit this draft here. And I am going to make sure that the UTMs are populating. Refresh fields. Uh, UTM. Da, da, da. Oh, I messed up. UTM phone number. Oh, not the phone number. Is that the phone number that I put in? Probably. So let me just turn this off. And let's go to UTM source. 
let's go to the UTM campaign. And then let's go to the UTM uh, medium. To the UTM uh, content. <clears throat> Make sure we do this, so I can show you like how how the UTM stuff is gonna work. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the applications app here as well. Let's let it publish. It's published now. And I'm gonna go back and make those changes for the applications here as well. Let's edit this up and I'm going to go over to the Google spreadsheet and I'm going to make sure that these columns exist. Okay. So the columns exist and I am going to refresh these fields here that already shows up and I'm going to add in the UTM source and the UTM. So you're going to have to likely go to incognito and then opt into your funnel with the link that I'm going to show you. All right. So UTM medium. So I'll show you like a few examples. UTM content. And I'm going to then publish this. So once it's published, what we're going to do is we're going to go to incognito, go to a private browser. And what we're going to do is we are going to send these, we're going to, we're going to opt in with the correct URL. So for example, I'm going to copy this link, your main landing page link, and I'm going to open up a new incognito, incognito browser. And I'm not sure if it's going to show up on my recording here, but let me just try it with the regular browser. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt in with uh, like a link like this, for example, right? So what I'm going to do is. Uh, the way you want to do this is just paste this link at a question mark at the end. Question mark, UTM underscore source. You can write like Facebook. And then you put an and. And then you can write UTM underscore medium. You can write email blast. Let's just say email blast, for example. Right? You see those UTMs there? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to opt in. All right, so I'm going to opt in with a name. And I'm also going to change this phone number here. I'm going to opt in. I'm going to click apply now. And I'm going to fill out the application. And you will see that the UTMs now show up within Google Spreadsheet. And the, you can also send these UTMs to Slack. You can also send it to close and then you'll know that, okay, you know, this person came in from an email blast or Facebook or wherever. That's the whole purpose of this. Purpose of this is to know where each person is originally coming from. Now, if I go back over to my Google spreadsheet here. Did I select the correct, hold up. Let me double check this. Did I select the correct one? Hmm. Yeah, it's not showing up here yet. Let me try opening this link up in a separate browser. Let's open, let's opt in. And I'm going to 
put in my phone number here. Okay, so I'm gonna opt in. I'm gonna fill out an application as well. And then we can see the ATMs populate. Okay, let's go back over to yeah, there we go. So now it's showing up. So you can see that I just opted in. It just took a bit of time with Zapier. But now you can see that this one came through a Facebook ad. Ad angle one. This one came from an email blast. And it was a case study heavy. Right? So you can see the original source of the lead. And you can send this information to Slack. You can send this to CRM. And you can keep track of all this information now. So now I know that, for example, just ignore this one, for example. Now I know that, you know, this person that opted in came in from a Facebook ad, came from ad angle one, and uh, it came through open targeting, and this was the content within the ad, right? So now I know that, you know, this ad is the one that's performing and the other ads are not performing or whatever, whatever the case may be. Same thing with the application. I would know that, oh, this, you know, this application came through an email blast, right? It says email blast. So this is how you this is how you can use UTMs. You use these UTMs to keep track of the original lead source. Of course, Hyros does, does that as well, and it's it's much more better, more accurate tracking. But that's going to be a bit more expensive and um, more it's more complex to set up as well. But this is just for your uh, own general knowledge. So just before we get into the sales section, I wanted to quickly go over the zaps that we had created. So if you remember, we created the lead zap, the application zap, and we also had created the sales call zap. Now, if you remember, this is what it looks like when we're sending in all of the applications and the sales calls to the Slack channel. So I can see all of the applications that are coming in. I can see their answers. And I can also see that this person booked a sales call. Now, if I go over to the CRM, I can find the same information in the CRM as well. So for example, of course, in this example, we use close.io. You can send the same information to go high level as well. I can see the name. I can see the phone number. I can see the email. I can just come into the CRM, start calling, email, and texting these people. And I can more importantly, see the UTMs within the CRM. Now, if I'm looking at this lead and I'm thinking about calling this person or emailing or texting, I know that this person came in from a Facebook ad. This person came in from this campaign. So you can, uh, you know, this campaign was one of our VSL, uh, you know, campaign budget optimization campaigns. So I, I, I know which ad this person is coming from. I can also see who this demo was assigned for. Of course, once you have a sales team, you need to start assigning demos to different sales reps. I also know this person booked a sales call. I know this person filled out an application. And you can pretty much see the entire customer journey in the CRM. And if you remember, we're also creating a note within the CRM. So I can see the entire application in the CRM. So I don't have to you know, go back to Slack, take a look at Slack. But instead, I have all the information that I need within the CRM. And I mean, these are really all the tools that you need to run a successful business and to really scale up your agency. And you can see the same information in uh, this channel as well. That can go all the way back and you know, start seeing the applications that were, that were coming in from uh, years ago for, you know, for this offer. So this is, of course, one of our coaching offer. It's a high ticket offer that we sell to real estate agents. And, you know, you can see all of the applications that come in. Of course, I'm going to blur some stuff out here just for um, uh, confidentiality sake. But, you know, you can see, you know, the answers that, you know, come in when we were uh, actively promoting this offer. So let's talk about sales. Now, before I get into the sales section, I want to first build some credibility. Now, all of the training that I'm going to be giving you has come after we've taken over 4,000 sales calls with realtors. 
I want to let this sink in. We've taken over 4,000 sales calls with real estate agents. Now, this is not us selling a service or a product to consumers. Instead, us as salespeople selling to other salespeople. Keep in mind, realtors are salespeople. They're commissionally salespeople. So they understand that they're talking to another salesperson. So their whole life is already it revolved around sales. So selling to realtors is much harder than selling to a chiropractor or a dentist. Now, I'm not saying that selling to those people is much easier and it's going to take less energy and time and effort. It's going to take the same amount of energy. However, a lot of the sales stuff that is taught by other people, by you know these sales trainers, these big gurus, a lot of that stuff that doesn't seem to work with the realtors. And, and the reason being is because they usually sense that, you know, this person using the sales tactic with me. This person is using the sales strategy with me. They usually sense it. And that's because they use it themselves. They're salespeople. So selling to a business owner takes a different approach. That's why the first thing that you see on the screen here is B2C sales versus uh, B2B sales. Now, I want to make very clear that I'm not a sales trainer. I don't sell sales coaching. I've have I haven't taken a sales call for a very long time. However, I've reviewed hundreds of sales calls from for my team. I've built a very large sales team. I've managed a sales team. And when we first got started as a company, I had the role of marketing and sales. So I was the one that was actively selling to real estate agents. And back then, you know, we started with one sales script, but over the years and after taking over 4,000, you know, calls, we've sort of made the changes that were necessary to sort of arrive to this final sales script. And this final sales script is one that I'm going to be showing to you. So you can trust the training that's being provided to you. And you can also trust the, the script because it's the, that this one script has gone through hundreds of changes. We made small tweaks here and there. But this one sales script is one that we have now that we can we can bring in a new salesperson that's never had any sales training. And we could be like, hey, this is a sales training. Take this sales script and go sell for us. And that person they can produce. So let's let's dive into the first point, which is a B2B sales versus a B2C. Now, the main thing that I want to get get across here is a lot of the training that you're gonna find online, it, it usually works for B2C. And this is what we like to call guru sales. Right. This is where it's sort of like a huge, it's like a massive emotional journey that you're taking the prospect through. And this sort of approach involves, you know, creating internal pressure. That's what this process sort of involves. And you're leveraging emotions. And this this whole, you know, B2C sales is just dependent on emotions. That's what it is. So of course, you know, you can read this and dive deeper into this, but let's dive into uh, B2B, the logical path. On the other hand, you know, B2B sales demands a different approach, one that's rooted in logic and value propositions. So a lot of the selling that is done that we've that we've done to real estate agents has been based on logic, justifying the ROI, and in a very professional manner. So rather than you know evoking an, an emotional response, B2B sales is more so about you know talking about business needs and solving problems. B2B buyers, they want to see a clear return on investment. That's what B2B people want to see. B2B people want to see that if I pay this agency $5,000, what's the probability that I'm going to make a 10x return on that $5,000? That's what these business owners want to see. A lot of the selling is logic-based and less of emotions. And industries, you know, this is going to work for industries such as real estate, financial services, healthcare, chiropractors, either dentists, legal, tech, SaaS, software, and it's going to fall into the B2B category. So the sales script that I'm going to be providing may not, it's, I mean, we haven't tested it in B2C, but B2B, it works. Now let's talk about touch points and the energy that it takes to convert a cold customer into a paying customer. Now, on average, it takes eight touch points to make a sale. This involves various communication channels, such as text, DMs, phone calls, Zoom meetings, and they're, they're just a few to name. This gives importance to being present on all platforms and hitting the prospect from every angle. We will be diving deep into how you can be omnipresent and be seen everywhere. So 
a lot of people talk about I, I see a lot of gurus talking about one call closes or two call closes a lot of the time it doesn't work like that the actual truth is far from it the actual truth is that you take a sales call and there's sort of a sale that's done before the call which is you know sending over uh, which is nurturing the prospect you know they should be able to see content on instagram they should be able to see content on your funnels they should be able to see content on youtube that's going to do a lot of the nurturing that's already a lot of different touch points across a lot of different platforms and then once you do conduct the sales call does it then there's going to be various touch points after the sales call so at times you know you may have a one call close but most of the time you're gonna have a two three call close right you may collect a deposit on the first call and then you need to follow up on facebook messenger maybe you need to follow up on whatsapp maybe you need to follow up on text message maybe you need to send a loom video now i am getting a bit advanced but the stuff that i'm telling you is coming after having a massive sales team and selling millions in revenue online so you need to have a lot of different touch points and there's a lot of follow-up involved so if you have the idea that the deals are going to close are going to be one call closes i would get that idea out of your mind that that is not the reality you won't come across a single salesperson that will say yeah i close every deal on the first call it's it's not it's not there's no reality like that let's talk about the expectations uh based on our uh stats we found that on average, it takes about 21 days to close a lead from Facebook ads into a paying customer. Now, this is coming after we've sold over 1,000 realtors. So once again, most of the clients are going to come through follow-up, came from follow-up, and not, and not one call closes. So you need to set the expectations for yourself. You don't want to bang your head against the wall if you're not getting one call closes. Right? You don't want to lose motivation. So just set the right expectations with yourself. Let's talk about mindset. Sales is not meant to be easy. It's one of the big three departments in your business. In the sales process before a call, you have to work, work extremely hard to get the prospect ready for a sales call. This is where the nurturing comes into play. As a salesperson, your whole goal is to become an order taker. That's the whole purpose with sales. And you want the marketing to be so good. You want the marketing to be so good across all these different platforms that when someone comes on the call, they're already bought into the service. They understand your mission. They understand what you do. And they understand your offer. And they're, they're just, they just need someone to hold their hand through the buying process. You want to get your business to a point where, where you're just an order taker. That's why uh, I talked about marketing first before talking about sales so marketing comes first then sales and then the product that's why the product stuff and the service i'm going to be talking about that after the sales section that's why we talked about marketing first then sales then product so keep that in mind on a sales call you're not coaching or delivering a service you're guiding a prospect to make the best decision for themselves i'm sure you've heard this all the time but uh, i'll still bold it just just so you have an idea Oftentimes, even you as a salesperson, you will need to step up as a leader and empower the prospect. This will require you to get uncomfortable. This is part of the game. Now, sales will cause frustration and sales will also enlighten your, uh, enlighten your life with joy. Mark Cuban jokes about, saying, uh, about this by saying, you know, sales solves everything. And it's quite true. Have you ever seen, uh, you know, Mark Cuban talk? He always says, uh, you know, sales solves all problems. And it's sort of true. And you're going to experience it once you sort of, uh, you know, start growing as a company. You're going, to, you're going to start noticing that that is sort of true. Uh, let's continue. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff uh, you can read on your own time. I spent a lot of time running this for you. But um, once again, you know, they use logic and not emotions. Let's talk about the negotiation. We do what is called uh, looping. And I'm going to get into looping and what looping really is. A looping is a process in which you will negotiate pricing by either adding in incentives, increasing the time length of your service, bonuses, and also meeting at an agreeable price to allow the prospect to come and work with you. Oftentimes in the beginning, when you're starting out, you will be incentivized to loop a bit more than usual to get your first couple clients. After all, most of the money is made on the back end, so you won't have to worry as much initially. 
Your focus should be to get clients in the door and serve them at the highest level. Now, a study found, and I bolded this for you, a study found that 60% of prospects say no four times before saying a yes. Once again, 60% of prospects say no four times before saying yes. This is where looping comes into play. A lot of the folks teaching sales in the high ticket space are selling strategies which teach objection prevention and in reality, it, it will work for B2C, but it's not going to work in B2C. Now, I'm going to be diving deeper into what looping is as we get into the sales script. But looping does not mean that you're going to be discounting your services. It's sort of a logical way of increasing urgency for a prospect to take action immediately. One of the three objections is timing and it takes a prospect through this on the sales call. Now, I don't know if you remember, but if you've ever seen Apple's, um, uh, think of Apple's uh, presentations. So if you've ever seen uh, Apple's presentations when they're uh, doing a presentation for a brand new product reveal, you'll notice that if you, if you go back and you take a look at Steve Jobs uh, doing this, you'll notice that towards the end of the presentation, Steve Jobs always says, he always keeps the best stuff for the last. So for example, if you go to a magic show and you're watching a magician perform, they're going to save the best tricks for last. That's, the show tends to get better over time. It tends to get better as it goes on and on. The same thing sort of happens with Apple's presentation. Towards the end of the presentation that you know Steve Jobs has conducted, he'll say, but wait, there's one, uh, there's still more. Like there's still one more thing I need to cover. He thought that's what he said. He said something along those lines. But wait, like there's more. That's what he says in his presentation. And it, it's sort of like the show just gets better. The show must go on. That, that, that's sort of what it is. It's sort of like a magician. And the same thing sort of happens with negotiation and when you're selling uh, over Zoom. Once again, you know, Steve Jobs, he was selling for Apple. He was promoting Apple's new products. But here we sort of do this with uh, sales as well. So the way we loop is we keep throwing in these bonuses. We keep giving these new offers to the prospect. And that may mean you throw in bonuses. That may mean that you uh, discount their pricing. That may mean you extend the timeline that you work with the prospect. But you present these better offers. And eventually the prospect is going to say no after the fourth or fifth time. Now let's talk about status. Creating status before a sales call is essential. A lot of people tend to overlook this. You must portray the prospect that you are an authority figure in your particular space. This can be done by portraying success measures in your marketing, cards, clothing, locations, or wearing a nice watch on sales calls. Prospects pay very close attention to the small details such as Zoom, cover photo, your picture in the email signature, and Zoom, desktop, and the clothes you're wearing. Little things like getting a high quality video camera and mic play a big part. Now, don't make the mistake of thinking you need to spend a thousand bucks on a mic like the one that I have or spend another two, three thousand dollars on a 4K camera. Instead, what I'm saying is. If you're on a budget, have a clean white background behind you, have a decent webcam, you can get a nice 50 to 100 dollar webcam from you know, Best Buy and just have a decent mic, a Yeti mic works and be a professional. This whole game is about being a professional. You want to treat this as a sport. And you'll see that I sort of, you know, repeat that as I go into my sales training. You need to treat this as a sport. And so you need to become a professional. And part of being a professional is, you know, grooming yourself. That's part of status. Having a nice watch, you know, if you do have a nice watch. But other than that, just wear a nice, you know, white t-shirt, a white shirt. And you're going to be uh, good for the sales calls. You don't have to think about this too much. Uh, Zoom setup, I already sort of covered it. But, you know, once again, have a nice clean white background if you're on a budget. And uh, uh, yeah, we, actually, we had an instance where we had one salesperson that had double the clothes rate compared to the rest of the sales team. And we couldn't figure out what he was doing different. We reviewed his sales calls. He was doing the exact same thing as some of the other salespeople. But... The only other variable that was different was he just had a better setup. He was a lot more trustworthy. I, I mean, he also looked really good. He, he looked like a model. So that definitely helped. But the only difference between him and the other salespeople was he always he was always well-groomed, had a really good background. 
you wear good clothes and uh, of course this is one thing that you can't change you can't change your face but he was a really good looking guy but that really helped let's talk about health uh it's a fact that someone would rather do business with a physically fit individual this is a subconscious thought that happens and has been proven by psychology I don't really need to, I don't really need to touch too much on this but you don't have to become a bodybuilder you don't have to become this fitness influencer however you do want to take care of your health get a bit more on the leaner side and just look good it's a fact that's you know on a, from a psychological standpoint people would rather do business with someone that's physically fit it's a subconscious thought that this person has you know, discipline. Talk about the closing environment. You must eliminate any distractions in your environment. You should only be focused on one thing and that is helping out the prospect. Nothing else matters. Necess necessities like food and water should always be prepared beforehand. Desk must be clear. The best productivity hack is elimination. You should try to eliminate as many objects in your work area as possible. Remove the clutter, unnecessary things that are occupying your brain. I don't know if you've ever seen um, Sam Ovin's videos on this topic. Um, go to study for focus. But Sam Ovin's has a lot of good videos around focus on his YouTube channel. And one of the, I mean, this is where I sort of got this from, but he talks about the process of elimination. Now, of course, you can't see my entire office, but my office is very minimalistic. Alex Becker also... Uh, follows this as well but the less objects that you have around you the less decision fatigue you get now even if you're looking at something and something it, it can subconsciously occupy your brain with a thought and you're just trying to eliminate as much things as possible so you can clearly focus and um and make sure you have a white I, I mean a quiet place where you can you know think clear make sure you have water coffee in hand uh, make sure there's no outside noise and, and always make sure you have a pen and notepad ready to go to take notes and your phone must also be turned off and it's sort of like entering an arena and you cannot have your mind anywhere else uh, this is of course the basics but i'm sure you guys understand uh you know what needs to be done once again you just got to treat this as uh, a professional Let's talk about coffee. So why do most work offices provide coffee for free for their employees? There is an ROI attached to that coffee. Employees are more concentrated and at their peak state. If you're currently taking sales calls yourself, drink a cup of coffee every morning. It will get you sharp. Everyone I know that is a high performance individual utilizes caffeine as a performance tool. Just don't overdo it. I know I've seen some comments on my YouTube videos that I should get sponsored by Tim Hortons. But... I drink, you know, one to two cups of coffee a day. And I've always thought to myself, if five years from now, and I'm looking at two individuals, one is a coffee drinker, one is not the coffee drinker, who is more likely to be more productive and become more successful? I feel like the, the coffee person would definitely, because that coffee, the one that drinks coffee is taking less naps. They're more focused. They can work for longer hours. So... If you just think in the most simple terms possible, this person can get more stuff done, right? So you can get ahead just by drinking coffee. So I'm a big fan of coffee and I'm always going to be an advocate of coffee. Uh, let's talk about uh, decision makers. You should only pitch to decision makers. Your time is valuable. Each second spent pitching to a prospect that doesn't have the authority to give the credit card is a big waste of your time. Any call with a non-decision maker must be rescheduled. You must only pitch to people that have the ability to give you their credit card. You must only pitch to people that can give the green light to buy your service. Your time is valuable. Time is money. You don't want to waste your time with people that are not financially qualified or they don't have the ability to make a decision. Let's talk about reviewing your game film. Just like how athletes are recommended to go back and watch their uh, games as a salesperson once again you must treat this as a sport during your after hours after 4 or 5 p.m or when you're done taking your calls you want to go back you want to throw up the recording on your desktop and you want to start reviewing it now 
Is it painful to watch? Yes. Is it, can it be a bit cringe? Yes. Do you want to hear your own voice talking? No. But you need to sort of sit through this painful period so you can pick up on parts where you're messing up. A big objective of your ads and the ROAS that you're going to get is based on uh, the sales. Right? So if you can just double your close rate, you can bump up your close rate by 10%. That can make a huge difference than the return on advertising that you get. So reviewing game films is going to allow you to write down all of the objections that come up, all of the questions that come up. You can craft better answers to those questions. So the next time you're asked the same question, you have a better answer. And you also know how to handle objections. Also, you can take all of this information and you can then make a new VSO where you answer all of those objections and you overcome the objection, then you handle all of the questions beforehand. So you're decreasing the likelihood that the same questions are going to come up again. And you also have the ability to adjust your sales script. Let's talk about the 7-Eleven form. Uh, a study was published by Google that it takes seven hours worth of content, 11 touch points across four different platforms to turn a cold lead into a paying customer. Now, earlier I had mentioned that it was eight or something. I mean, that's what we found. But of course, if Google is publishing a, st uh, a study, I would go with Google's number. The question is, you need to ask yourself, am I meeting this criteria? Like, am I meeting this criteria? Like, this is coming from Google itself, right? So if Google is giving us this study and they're giving us the data points, you must meet this. If we're not meeting it, then something is wrong. Then you're not giving yourself the best possible chance. You always want to be at an advantage. So if Google is saying you got to have seven hours worth of content, you, most people didn't even have seven hours worth of content in the first place. They don't. Secondly, they don't get 11 different touch points. Now, what I mean by 11, 11 different touch points is... Uh, you know, one touch point can be on WhatsApp. Another touch point can be on, uh, you know, your uh, text. It can be on Facebook Messenger. It can be on uh, Instagram, like your reel pops up or, or on TikTok or on a YouTube video, whatever. You're going to have 11 different touch points and four different platforms. I already talked about the different platforms, right? So you need to be following up with prospects. And this is what it takes to turn a lead into a customer. And this, and this is only going to get worse because there's more and more noise on all of these different platforms. So you're going to be able to, so this is just going to get tougher over time. So you might as well try to meet this rule as soon as you can. All right. So let's talk about pre-sales calls. So there is a detailed process in place that must be followed before a sales call takes place. The purpose of the pre-sales call process is to A, remind the prospect to attend the call. B provide, B, provide homework to the prospect. Now, how should we remind the prospect to attend the sales call? We like to send an email confirmation immediately after the call is booked. We also follow up with a reminder 24 hours before the call. We also send a final reminder the morning of the call, possibly include, including a personal note or video to increase engagement. Now, this can uh, the way we do this is on email and text so email plus text so within calendly you can set up email reminder email reminders and we manually send out the text message so the text message is manual and the email is done uh, using calendly's email reminder If you like, you can also send a personal note or to increase video engagement. Uh, the key here is you want to make the reminders personalized. That's the key here. Uh, B, provide homework to the prospects. Why do we provide homework? A study by Google revealed that a potential customer needs once again seven hours with a specific brand before making a purchasing decision. So what we like to do is we like to tell the prospect to watch something watch one thing before the sales call to help them get closer to the seven hour rule. In the ideal world, a prospect consumes your content beforehand and comes on the call to make an order. The pre sales call process will determine how easy of a sales call is going to be with you. Imagine if someone understands what you do 
and how it's better, faster, cheaper than any other alternative in the marketplace. How easy of a close would it be for you? It's going to be much easier. So we spent a lot of time providing homework. And the key here is always just provide one thing. Only provide one video to watch. It gets worse if you provide a lot more than is needed. And we'll be talking about that to, on how to increase a show up rate. Let's talk about the text reminders. So these are uh, examples of text messages we send. So you send a personalized text message two to three uh, days prior to the call. And you're requesting your prospect to watch your VSL prior to the call. Hey, first name, this is, you know, Jazz from, you know, so-and-so company. I have you booked here for date slash time in regards to us potentially helping you with, uh, you know, whatever the desired outcome transformation that we have. Once again, this is coming from a headline. Please be sure to familiarize yourself with our process by reviewing our, your VSL video. Here's a link. And you can copy these text messages and uh, you can use them. Email reminder. So we'd like to once again send an email reminder 24 hours before the sales call. What we'd like to do is uh, we also require a written confirmation to hold your spot for upcoming appointment. If you haven't done so already, please reply with confirm to confirm your appointment. Be sure to check out this short video prior to the call starting in approximately whatever time. And then we also like to send this an hour before uh, the sales call. This is pretty straightforward. Everyone already does this, but just in case you're not doing it, email, text, 24 hours and one hour before uh, the sales call. Now, if you don't receive a respond response via text and email, then you do want to do a phone call reminder. Now, this does work out uh, very well. Now, let's talk about the show up rate. One of the biggest uh, problems in the online business industry is dealing with the low show up rates. Show up rates are drastically coming down year over year in the online business world. Trust with consumers is at an all time low and prospects are more skeptical than ever before. The reason why this is such a big problem is because there's so many moving variables that determine what your show up rate will be. However, if you're dealing with the below 65% show up rate, I would follow the following protocol. If your show up rate is, you know, below 65, I should, I would do these five things in order. So to begin, make sure people can only book two to 48 hours out. Uh, number two, so this can be, this can be changed, uh, change this within uh, Calendly. Right, it's a setting. Number two, make sure you're providing homework before the sales call. Give them, uh, you know, a bit of prep work before the call. It gets them invested, which means they're more likely to show up. If you notice people are not watching the video, uh, then provide an incentive if people don't watch the video. Right, so what I mean is give them something for. for in exchange for watching the video and checking like a friend so i bolded this because once again you want to personalize the message when you're reminding people of the sales call so we're 24 hours before and uh morning of the call hey like we're still on for today right that stuff doesn't work you know require a written confirmation via email before the call to hold their spot Mentioning how a no-show will prevent you from working with your prospect. Of course, you know, nicely, of course, mention that if they ghost you, it might it might mean that they cannot book again. If none of the stuff works above, double or trip or double or triple book sales call. What this means is you book two to three people at the same one hour slot. What this is gonna do is if one person no shows, the second or the third person is more likely to show up. So if two people so if two people aren't showing up, that's really bad. But you increase the probability that you will at the bare minimum speak to at least one person. Like out of two to three people, one person should at least show up. That's the case. And what happens if more than one person show show up at the same time? You can tell one of your prospects that you just had an emergency and you come up with a random excuse and they can uh, reschedule. Right. So if two people show up, what I would like to do, uh, what we like to do is we like to take the sales call with the more qualified individual. We take a look at the application. This person, person A seems more qualified than person B. All right, let's take an appointment with person A. What not to do? No free advice bait. 
calling it a free strategy so that you can attract freebie hunters. You want to you want serious folks, not tire kickers. So once again, uh, don't call your uh, don't call the sales call as like a free advice or like a free strategy session. Instead, instead say stuff like a demo. Um, growth session just don't use like a free strategy session right you don't want to seem like you're just giving away free advice that's just a quick tip for you now let's get into the actual uh sales script all right so let's cover the sales script once again this one script has generated millions of dollars in revenue let's start off with the introduction hey first name how are you doing today Great. Where are you calling from? Okay, great. Well, here's how these calls usually go. I like to keep my I like to keep these calls moving relatively quickly. First, I want to learn a little bit about you by asking you some questions. Then, if I think that there is a fit and I feel like I can help you, I'll show you some case studies and our process. I won't be making any promises during this call that are not put down in writing. I will simply show you what we have to offer. If you like it, then we can talk about some next steps. Then I say sure. As you saw, when initially joining the call. I record these for a point of reference and for training purposes. Is that okay with you? Okay, great. Once again, we are professionals. So we're going to zoom through the script. Qualification questions. Now, I, I want to briefly cover some stuff before I get into the actual questioning. When it comes to asking questions, think of yourself as a detective trying to uncover the truth, not a salesperson eager to jump in. Here's a lowdown on doing it right. Rule number one, listen more than you speak. This is when we're qualifying the prospect. When we're asking questions in the beginning, you are the doctor and you're having a patient that's coming in and you cannot prescribe a medication unless you figure out what the symptoms and what the issues are. Similarly, you can't prescribe a solution if you don't even know what the person is dealing with. So we're gonna, we need to, in the beginning, listen more than we speak. So hold your tongue. Resist any impulse to react to their answers. Your role here is to gather information, not to give advice or make judgments. One of the ma biggest mistakes that I see early salespeople make is they start becoming the prospect's friend during the questioning and they start giving advice. You're not going to do that. Embrace the silence. It might feel weird, but don't feel the, but don't feel the quiet moments with, hmm, okay, while they're talking. Silence can be golden, letting the prospect share more freely. So when someone is giving you an answer, but you haven't received a full answer, just shut up. And just listen let them gather their thoughts and tell you what they have to tell you pause before responding so after the finish you take a brief pause count to two silently and then this shows that you're processing their words not just waiting for your turn one of the biggest ways one of the biggest one of the fastest ways to break report with the prospect is they give you an answer and you just completely neglect whatever they told you and you just follow up with the next question in your sales script that's not what you're trying to do. You're actively trying to listen. So you need to be active when you're listening. How to acknowledge without leading. Simple acknowledgements. Stick to neutral responses like, got it. Okay, noted. Or even saying stuff like, cool. These are your safe words to signal you're listening without swaying away the conversation. File away their answers. Think of their responses as clues. Uh, you'll piece together later to present the perfect solution. Listen now, use later. You're going to you're going to use a very curious tone. You want to adopt a tone of genuine curiosity. It shows that you're interested in their situation and challenges, not just trying to make a sale. So once again, I'm sure you guys have heard this before. Three stages of qualification, where they're currently at, where do they want to go? What are some of the barriers that they currently have? Very simple. Okay. So let's start off with uh, the first, which is their current situation this is uh you know where they're currently at this is their current situation now that you sort of have in your mind how you're going to be talking how you're going to be listening and how you're going to be actively responding these are the questions that we're going to ask. So once again, you know, this is catered towards realtors. You can adjust the script for your niche. First, and the most important question on the call, 
So what motivated you to join me at this meeting today? What piqued your interest? How long have you been in real estate? What's the current process uh, look like to generate new business? You know, how did that go? Tell me more. How long have you been trying this stuff for? So once again, as you're asking these questions, you're just, you have a pen and a paper and you're just trying to write down as many notes as possible. You're, this is question asking, right? You're just trying to gather ammo, which you can then bring up later in the call. And if you don't mind me asking, you know, how much, uh, what you're trying to figure out here is like, you're trying to figure out how much money they're currently making. Now in real estate, I can sort of figure that out by, you know, looking at their market how many, and how many deals they're doing. And then I can do the quick math in their head. Sometimes you can't just straight up ask, okay, how much money are you making per month? Some people might find it a bit uncomfortable and you feel like your niche does. Get creative on how you can ask, how you can figure out how much money they make. So for example, in real estate, I know if there's a real estate agent in Vancouver, the average price of a home is like 1 million. So if one, if an agent is selling like one to two homes per month, I can do a rough math in my mind and figure out, okay, this person's making about six figures a year, right? So you got to figure out what that is in your niche. And then we're going to get into their uh, future uh, situation, right? This is their goals. Like, where do they want to get to? Right, so a lot of different ways to say this. Usually one sales training may say future situation. Another one will say goals, you know, where they want to get to. There's a lot of different ways you can uh, say this. So in the next six to 12 months, how much do you want to be doing per month? Where do you want to go? In your own honest opinion, what's holding you back from hitting this goal on your own? Okay, and how soon do you want to solve this problem? Try to figure out their urgency. What happens if you don't solve this problem in that time frame? Why is it so important to you right now? Why not last week? Why not next week? I'm trying to figure out their urgency levels. How urgent is this problem? And we also, we're asking this question so they can realize that they need help, that they cannot do this on their own. And once again, you know, what's the real motivation behind this goal? This is where you dig deeper on the question. This is where, I don't know if you guys have uh, ever heard of the five why rule, but if someone says, you know, what's your motivation? Uh, you know, my motivation is my family. Well, tell me more about that, right? If you are able to, you know, hit this goal of, you know, closing an additional three deals per month, what sort of an impact will this have on your family? Well, I'll be able to, um, you know, send my kids to a private college or whatever. Okay. Now, you know, if you were, uh, you know, able to send your kids to private college, how would that make you feel? Right? How would, well, how would that help you? What would that do for you? Right? So you're just trying to dig deeper and deeper and trying to get the, trying to get to the bottom, trying to get to the bottom layer. So you're not trying to take these service level answers. People are just going to say, oh, you know, I just want more clients. I want to make more money, blah, blah. Why do they want to make more money? Well, why do they want more, you know, time freedom? What's that going to do for them? What's going to change in their life, right? So what's the result that they're going to get by having more time freedom, right? So if you were able to hit this goal, what would that actually allow you to do, right? So once again, over here, we're just diving deeper. Like, if, you know, if you're able to make an extra like $300,000 per year, what would you be able to do? How's your life going to look different, right? What would your wife think about you, right? Uh, you know, what would you be able to do for your family? So stuff like that, you just dive a bit deeper. And then we're going to search for sudden surprises. Uh, this is where we sort of qualify for money. Now, if we just speak here from a hypothetical standpoint, if we can help you hit your goal of, you know, whatever their goal is, let's say six, five deals per month, would you be able and willing to invest, let's just say twelve to 14000 paid in full for 12 months, if, of course, you know, we can move the needle forward for you? Now, the reason why we ask this money qualifying question is because we don't want to, we don't want this to be a surprise towards the end when we're pushing for the close. We rather get the money objection out of the way in the beginning of the call. It's going to save you a lot of time and energy. And this is where you can also sort of get a sense whether this person can really invest into something like this. So for example, you're likely going to get asked, well, is this paid upfront? This is where you can follow up by asking, you know, assuming, you know, you guys do like what I show you, would that amount be something that you're willing and able to work with as an investment? So keep in mind, we're not using the word cost here. We're using the word investment. 
And if you look closely, we're using the words, are you willing and able to work with? So we're not telling you that you have to you know, do this. We're just saying that, are you able to do it? And are you willing if, of course, you know, we're able to show you how our process can work for you? That's a really good question. Typically, it is um, an annual fee paid for the year. Now, I'm not really asking you to make a decision right now because obviously you guys are still not clear on what we do. But if we did, what I'm asking is, A, is a cash there? And B, are you willing to invest it? This is, of course, you know, completely theoretical. Of course, we want to get the guard down. It will, of course, depend on us providing a valid solution. Now, once again, uh, you know, we're just lowering their guard. And what, what, you're, what you're really looking for here is, you know, sure, maybe. But if you just get a complete no, like there's, I, I just don't have 12K. I don't have any money to invest. You're able to disqualify those people. That's what you're looking for. Again, if we speak for uh, from a hypothetical standpoint, if we can help, we can actually solve a meaningful problem, prove to you that we can deliver results, prices so that you can get a strong return. I remove any variables in terms of downside risk. Would you be the person who ultimately gives a green light? I only ask just so I have a clear view of who is the person in charge of the decision making process. Really good question. So what we're getting from here is, uh, is this the person with the credit card? So if you, get, if, you if this raises any red flags such as, oh, I have a business partner, but my uh, he was supposed to be on the call, but uh, he's on a vacation right now. That that. It's going to raise a red flag and you will be aware that maybe this deal might not close on the first call. Once again, we're trying to optimize for one call closes. Not every demo, not every sales call is going to be a one call close. However, we're trying to get as many one call closes. So, if you know, if it's a team of two, team of three, team of five, whatever the case is, and you find out that, you know, this is, there are more people involved, then you know that you can set up a follow up or like you don't even have to get into the pitch what we do is we just ask to reschedule when the business partner comes back from the vacation or when the business partner is also going to be on the call uh this question is of course uh, we're not we're not looking for a straight yes but instead uh looking not lo instead looking for you know, complete hell no. So that's what we're looking for here. We're looking for people that are going to say hell no. There's no way I can put pay that much because we want to disqualify those people. That's what we're looking for. Otherwise, you, you're going to get maybes. Uh, they're going to be a little bit hesitant. That's what you're sort of looking for. And as they're going to be going through your presentation, they're going to have the price in the back of their mind. So then they can actually pay attention to the presentation. You'll notice that if the prospect doesn't know what the price is, the entire time throughout the presentation, they're just going to be thinking, okay, what is the price? It sounds good, but what's the price? So you can get that out of the way in the beginning. Right? So once again, to so recap, we now know that, you know, this is the person that's making the decision, right? There's no one else that's gone on a vacation. They don't have a business partner. They don't have a wife involved. They don't have someone else involved. They don't have their kids involved. And number two, you know, this person has some money, Right? And we also have a bunch of ammo that we can bring up later on in the call. And this is going to transition us now to selling. So before we were qualifying, now we're going to sort of get into the selling part of the sales pitch. So this is going to involve uh, case studies, going over the steps. So once again, a lot of the sales script is once again based on the VSL. Right? So if you, did the, if you spend good enough time on the VSL, your sales pitch is going to be super easy. It's going to be streamlined. Essentially, what your salespeople are doing is they're just reading off of the VSO. That's all what it is. It's like a live sales pitch. That's what we're doing with salespeople. Okay, so let's get into the a case study part. Uh, going over these steps needed and talking about your actual product or service. So what we usually like to do is, right when we're done with the qualifying questions, we get into the case studies. We get into the social proof. So, all right, uh, John, based on what you told me, what we do here is a perfect fit for you. Would you like me to show you how we can help? Okay, cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera off so I can start sharing my screen to walk you through some case studies and process. Then after, you know, you like everything that I've shown you, we would like to talk about the next steps and get you started. I'll lose to the point that they will get started. All right. Now, let's talk about case studies. For case studies, so you're going to begin sh uh, screen sharing to a pitch deck 
or you can also have a Google Doc that contains your case studies. You're, you're going to now run through your case studies from top to bottom. If you have too many case studies, just choose the five to 10 best ones that all sh share a different story. No one wants to be used as an experiment or be the first to use a product or service. So you must show that there have been other people that have achieved the desired transformation that, that we're now promising to the prospect. Each case study must cover the, your customer's situation before using the service and what happened after using the service and in, in which time frame that the result was achieved. So for example, I'm going to walk you through some case studies on how we would present it to our uh, prospects. So case study one. This is Andrew Fleming based in Newfoundland and Labrador. Prior to working with us, he was a traditional agent running bus stop ads and sending out mailers. This was before state. The pandemic hit and what he was doing wasn't working as well. So he wanted to focus more on social media. He then came across us and said, what the hell? Let me give these guys a shot. He really loves us right now and asked us, uh, asked us to work with them exclusively in his market. He's the only agent that we're working with in the entire province of Newfoundland, or Newfoundland and Labrador. As far as his results go, he did five deals with us in 120 days. And then you can show the, the you can show proof to back that up. And the proof can be a message that your client sent in via messenger, text, whatever. Just show undeniable proof. He commented that we are the best system that he used so far. We quoted that and posted it into our Facebook community. And he himself commented 100% under the post to verify that is true. So uh, uh, he, he made a comment in our Facebook private community and he said, oh, we're the best system that he used. So uh, we showed that screenshot, which is undeniable proof. No one can look at that comment and be like, that's bullshit. You can't, you can't fake it. Case study two. Now, when looking at Kaldeep, so this is Kaldeep. When looking at Kaldeep here, we can see that he's working out of a very competitive Vancouver market. He tried using many lead generation companies that didn't work on and thought and thought he would find better success just learning how to do it on his own. Luckily for him, he gave us a shot and we got him a listing and two buyer transactions closed in just 45 days of joining with a total of five deals done in four months. So far, we've confirmed 18 transactions that were closed directly from our efforts. So we covered the fact that objection there could be an objection that oh, i think i can do all of this stuff myself so we mentioned that that was a limiting belief that's an objection that he feels like he can do it on his own and we know that that's an objection that may come up later on in the sales call so we sort of covered it with uh the story of cold deep what did he do before uh he tried many lead generation companies and once again we're throwing rocks at the enemies uh, and we talked about the result that he achieved after working with us. So he closed like 18 deals with us. So he did really well with us. So uh, of course, you know, a really good case study. So we want to talk about the case study. Case study three, this is Maritza from Chicago. So keep in mind, you know, we work with, we work with realtors. So uh, I want to show case studies from all over the US and Canada. So this is Maritza from Chicago. She closed 10 deals within four months working with us, achieving a 42x return on her advertising dollars. She's an absolute rock star and does exactly what we tell her to do. She's an excellent implementer and action taker. So once again, we're alluding to the fact that we want people to take action, that if they do what we tell them to do, they will get the end result. That's what we're trying to show here. If someone says like, hey, man, you know, if you could just skip through all of this, you know, this would be good. I don't have to, you know, I don't have time to sit through these case studies. You need to simply respond, but you can simply respond back with, I hear what you're saying. I just have a couple more and I only show you this because there's certain things in these case studies that demonstrate clients that were exactly where you are right now that transformed into, into some place that you will likely really want to get to. Just bear with me here, John, and it's only going to take a little bit longer. You, mo you will get people that will tell you that, hey man, you know, can you just skip through this? So just give them a good reason and people are usually respectful. People are nice, so they will sit through the case studies but you want to get through the case studies and now so once again if you remember the vsl you know we have a big headline and then we have the case studies and then we sort of get start getting into the core concept and then the steps right so we're doing something very similar here this is how we get into the steps uh so once we go over the case studies we will now get into what is being sold to the prospect 
there is a very specific process to doing this and we want to craft it in such a way that it seems very detailed and process oriented. The prospect must feel that you've really paved the path to success for them and aren't just giving them a big box of things to do. We will be using a series of steps as our main ex explanation for the service that you are selling. We are simply showing the prospect what it looks like in a professional format and how to achieve success. So uh, these steps are coming directly from your VSL, right? So if you remember, we did step one, step two, step three. And I believe in the example that I provided, I talked about um, step one was running TikTok ads. And I believe step two was uh, AI text-based follow-up. That was the example that I provided. So for you, uh, let's just say that was the case, you know, right step one, you know, then I, I would pretty much talk about whatever I talked about in step one. So it would sort of be like, I'm talking shit about Facebook ads and talking about TikTok. Uh, so you can use, uh, once again, a pitch deck, or you can use, uh, you know, like a, like a graph or something. You can use a chart. Uh, you can, you, you can do whatever you want to showcase this. So first things first, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to do a market analysis and get a feel for what area, for what area is the best target market for you. This is where we will help you dive deep and help you dial in the segment of your market that you're going to target. We're only going to help you implement strategies that have already worked with some of our previous clients in your area. This ensures there is no trial and error and it works 10 out of 10 times. The benefit we're achieving here is so it's for you to narrow down into one area so you don't compete with other agents that can capture higher profits. Does that make sense? So key here is uh, we're, we're talking about what the big, you know, steps and then talk about the end outcome slash result of implementing that step. So for example, if I'm talking about TikTok ads, I'm not going to just say, you know, we're just going to run TikTok ads. This is what's going to happen. We're going to talk about the end outcome. So with TikTok ads, you know, you're going to have leads coming in within seven days. They're going to have high quality buyers and sellers ready to speak to you. So we're talking about the end result of it. What's in it for them? Step two, then we're going to help you guide you uh, to set up organic lead gen. This will be used as a supplement to the paid ads you will be running. The beauty of this, John, is so you can potentially start generating appointments within the first seven days without spending a single dollar on advertising. In fact, this is the exact strategy Julian Jackson used to get a listing under contract in his first week. So we're mentioning a case study. We're backing it up with proof. Uh, so if you remember, you're just taking the exact same steps from the VSL. The, the before, uh, you're talking about the old way, new way, old result, uh, new result, and you're uh, backing it up with proof. And then there's sort of uh, a secret attached to it. And you're also sh showing a social proof uh, in, the, in the form of case studies here. Okay, so once again, this is, these steps are coming directly from the VSL. This, uh, I'm going to pull this. This is coming directly from the VSL. All right. You know, uh, so Albert uh, put two deals under contract. It want to put closer first deal within 30 days. These strategies are proven to work in every market and our agents typically see 20 to 30 free leads each month with just these organic lead gen strategies. A lot of the uh, agents don't do organic lead gen, so they miss out on a ton of extra commission. Also, the leads are very profitable as you don't have to spend anything to get these customers and leads start to come in within 24 hours. So that means you could have leads coming up by the end of day today. Does that make sense? Uh, oh, one, one thing that I forgot to mention here is uh, you always want to introduce what is called trial closes. What I mean by trial closes is this is a concept that I got from another big name. And the way this works is do you see how it can work? Do you? Um, do you see how powerful 
and doesn't this do you agree every you know real estate agent agent needs i forgot to add this into the script here so what we want to do is as we're going through the presentation we want the prospect to be unknowingly giving us yeses so that as you get closer to the close the prospect has already given us so many yeses that towards the end the the last yes which is a yes that you're looking for which where which where they're going to give you money it just becomes natural so what i mean so as you're going through the steps if you say stuff like you know does that make sense john do you see how this can work for you do you see how this is this has helped you know john close five deals in four months do you see how powerful this is do you agree every real estate agent needs it isn't this so good this is isn't this such gold right so if they're saying yes yes and you know they're nodding their head uh, and the goal is you want to you want to get them to nod their head and say yes so many times 10 15 20 30 40 50 times that by the time they get to the close it just their head and in their mind it just it's just like a natural yes this is something that um, i've got from someone else um who has sold millions of dollars on a live stages and this is what works for him and um uh this is something that uh is gold that that's worked extremely well for us so throughout the presentation as you're going through the presentation your goal is that before you're you're trying um before you're trying to get a yes towards the end which is a close you want to get multiple yeses so many yeses where they're just nodding their head and they're agreeing with you that by the end of it the, the last yes which are the which are the ones that you're looking for just becomes a natural yes this is gonna help boost your conversion rate because people don't want to be people don't people don't like going against their word right so they they're essentially agreeing with you so i'm just gonna copy this and i'm gonna paste this everywhere and then you can use whatever is uh makes sense now step three uh, once your organic lead gen is running we're gonna get you set up on direct response marketing campaigns on facebook and instagram we recommend spending around 10 to 20 dollars per day and our agents usually see anywhere from 60 to 80 new leads per month. This will be a setup. This will be set up by you on your end. And it only needs to be done once, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to guide you through the process and we'll, you'll know exactly how much you will make back in return. Now, I won't lie to you. Uh, so just, just to recap something here. This is us selling a done with you service. Once again, this, is, this isn't us selling a done for you, but instead a done with you. So we eventually transition from done for you, done with you. So this is a script from that. Uh, so once again, we're going to set the expectations here. Now, I won't lie to you, uh, John, we are dealing with online leads. So you will be getting tire kickers, time wasters, and unresponsive leads. However, the best part of our system, John, is that these people are going to be filtered out. You will only be speaking to leads that reach out to you first. Does that make sense? Right? So this is where the AI stuff can't come in. Step four. The next step is to prep your sales conversion. Now, over the years, we have gone into our top performing agent CRMs and made a follow up process to book appointments with leads at ease. So you just have to follow our processes and book appointments. Alongside these scripts, you can attend our coaching calls, which take place once a week. We go inside of our some of our top producing agent CRM to see what they're doing to close deals. I know you're busy, John, and you may not attend that, but instead of watching Netflix at night, you know, you can watch these since they are recorded and make some money. Do you see how this how do you see how we're going to support you here? Right. So once again. So do you see how you just cannot fail with the system? Do you see how we make it so easy? and streamline so there's there's little room so i'm just giving you guys different variations so you guys can you know use any one of these but you want to once again get multiple close uh yeses so this is what we refer to as trial closes before you get to the end uh close that you're pushing for at the end now the next step here john is to uh it's is here it's closing and scaling you up 
So we can't go in and of course close the deal for you. Once again, we're setting the expectations, but we are going to get you pretty close to them in the next 90 to 120 days. We're providing you a proven solution that simply plug and play into your system. Does that make sense? And the way for them to say yes or no. So once again, uh, as we're going through this, you know, we're making a lot of big promises and we're backing it up with proof. We're taking the start from the VSL, but at the same time, we're also setting the expectations. Once your team starts growing, and once you have salespeople, your salespeople are incentivized to say whatever they can to get the deal done. When that happens, you need to introduce some measures so you're not bringing in clients with the wrong, where, where your salespeople are setting the wrong expectations. Where then once they come in, now your backend team is pissed off because the realtor is saying, oh, I'm gonna, I was going to get, you know, I was going to close an extra three deals up per month, but it's only, but it's already been in the three months and I haven't even closed a single deal. And that will piss off your backend team members. And you don't want the backend team member to go to your sales team and them to have a clash and fight. So uh, once you do have a sales team, you need to introduce measures so that the right expectations are being, sent, are being set with prospects so that they're not coming in with these unrealistic expectations. Once again, we under promise, over deliver. So I'm just going to write that here. Uh, I want to bold this as well under promise but over deliver all right now let's transition into the close so once we've gone through the steps this is when we transition in to the close so once you've cl clearly explained the product and the steps that you're taking the customer through it's time to transition into the close we are now getting into collecting the credit card and ideally onboarding the prospect as a client now, what I'm going to share is next is key. We're going to deliberately ask the prospect to make praises about our service. So if you remember earlier, we were already asking them to in sort of agree with us. We're going to once again ask them to tell us what they like and what they can see working for them. They are essentially finding reasons themselves as to why the product is perfect for them. This here is how you transition. So you tell me, uh, John. How do you see yourself implementing this in your business? Where do you see this process working for you? Like what, what, what exactly do you see working for you? At this stage, you know, your prospect will try to come up with responses as to why the product, product is going to work for them. Now, nine out of 10 times, once again, they're, they're the only one question that they have in their mind now is, okay, what is the exact investment that is required? Right? So you don't want to, you don't want to be the one that gets into the pricing. This is a very important. You can, you can fuck this up here. You don't want to be the one that's getting into the pricing. Instead, you want the prospect to ask you about the uh, pricing. So once again, you don't want to be the one where you're bringing up the pricing. But instead, you want to use phrases like, where do you want to go from here, John? Where do you want to go from here? Where do you want to go from here? They will either A, ask you a question, and then you can answer their questions about the product. You may say stuff like, oh, you know, how long do we get to work together for? Uh, you know, I didn't understand that one step. Um, uh, you know, can this work in my market? They're going to ask you a question about the product. But you're, what, the, what you're getting them to do is you, you're guiding them to ask you the question about what's the price. So most nine or 10 times, you know, they're going to ask you about the price here. And once they ask you about the price, this is when you start presenting the offer. Now, this is very important. However, if the prospect doesn't ask you for the price, they're going to likely ask any other questions they have in their mind. Answer those questions that guide the prospect to ask you for the price. Again, keep in mind, never bring up the pricing yourself. You're guiding the prospect to ask you for pricing, right? They, the prospect must ask you for the price. Presenting the offer. At this point in the sales process, the prospect, the prospect clearly understands the service and is requesting to know the exact investment required to get started. Now, before you present your offer, you must compare your pricing to other alternatives in the market that promise to deliver the same transformation you're promising. Why? Because a prospect is looking to get the best solution, the most amount of value for the cheapest price. You must present a clear case that clearly depic depicts the huge discrepancy in the value being delivered compared to the small price tag attached to it. So John, let me lay out some options for you. So for once again, you know, we're taking the stuff from the VSO. What are the different ways that they, that, um, that they can get a solution to the problem? So the first option for you, John, is you can test drive typical lead generation companies out there to buy leads, such as you can try Sync, Boomtown, Bo Leads, Zillow. 
uh these are just other companies that uh, that were our so-called competitors but you will need to pay anywhere from 700 to two thousand dollars per month for a minimum six month long contract without any ad spend to get the old school idx site while running some generic marketing campaigns they're also going to own your website if you're providing with one and seo so any traction you will have you get will be in their hands that's 10 to twenty-five thousand dollars per year without including ad spend that's option one for you john now, the second option for you john is if you were to hire a full-time marketing team for your business that's going to put you back around sixty thousand dollars for the year without any benefits such as medical dental plans free life insurance etc this could add up to seventy-five thousand dollars per year including employee benefits and john if you were to do this yourself you're going to spend 12 hours per day one year for one year to become proficient without any help and waste around two thousand dollars at the bare minimum to start off with now however john if we were to work together the investment is only whatever the price is like twelve thousand or like fourteen thousand paid in full so once again we're pushing for an upfront payment here that you don't shy off here have energy be certain with their voice when you're mentioning if we were to partner together the investment is going to be twelve thousand eight hundred paid in full for one year excluding ad spend so be confident when you're saying that the pricing is paid up front you need to be confident here the investment is only twelve thousand eight hundred paid in full for one year excluding ad spend here's what you're going to get john uh once again so we're going to talk about the benefits uh the end outcome that they're getting right so you're going to get 75 to 100 new leads per month, including organic. Just like how you found us with our marketing, we're going to be placing a very similar system for you with the VSL. Number two, you're going to get a conversation with serious people. The system will weed out the tire kickers and help you nurture leads into dream clients using the content portal. So this, so this is just stuff that we include into the product, but we're talking about the end outcome. Okay. Let's so really just talk about the service quickly. Now, the investment to get started is only... 12,800 paid in full for one year, excluding ad spend, whatever, whatever the amount is. Now, this is being said after they ask you for the pricing. Now, once you say the pricing, you let the pricing sit. Do not say a word unless they ask you a question. If they say that's a lot, do not reply. If they ask a question like, is that all up front? Respond with the confidence saying, yes, the pricing is paid in full. That's it. Again, we do not say a word. The key here is uh, to closing is to be comfortable in the silence, answer their questions with no more than one liner and put the ball back in their court. So, uh, you know, when they ask you the pricing, you know, you, you give them the different options that they have and, um, and you give them more pricing and then you let it sit. Sometimes the prospect might not save anything for 20 seconds, for 30, 40, 50 seconds. You just sit there. You wait. The process can get super awkward if no one's talking. I've sat on sales calls where the prospect has quite literally sat there for two minutes. They then proceeded by asking, you know, are you still there? And I just said, yep. We then collected the credit card immediately afterwards and onboarded the client. So this is key, guys. We've brought in uh, noob people that have never sold online. They've come in and we just give them the script and we tell them what to do. And when they follow the process, it just works. Okay, so once again, guys, this, this stuff is coming from the VSO. If you remember, this is coming straight from the VSO. All this stuff. Option one, option two, option three, right? Ideally, uh, I would remove the second option. I would just have three options. Option one, you can try these competitors. Option two, you can try to do this stuff yourself. Option three, you work with us. And here is why working with us is better, faster, cheaper, easier more simple and more predictable than all of the other options that's what you're talking about there and then we get into the negotiation this is where the closing is going to be done this is where the looping comes into play negotiation is a very big part of the sales process and a lot of the following is derived from straight line selling methodologies so the sales script that i'm showing you all of this stuff that i've got i bought this from other sales trainers gurus coaches and I've invested thousands of, thousands of dollars of my own money to get access to information like this. So 
this particular sales script is coming from straight lane selling and for straight lane selling is something that um uh, jordan belfer does so this stuff is sort of coming from him um and this is this is what we use so as mentioned previously 60 percent of the prospects have to say four no's before they finally say yes we're simply just trying to help the prospect out with our service and empowering them to make the best decision for themselves you will need to step up as a leader and oftentimes get uncomfortable yourself during this phase that being said your product or service will change your prospect's life for the better and you are 100 percent certain that the prospect needs to work with you to make this happen it is vital that you believe in yourself and the, and your product service if you want to win one clothing deals that's why it's so important that when you get case studies when you get testimonials you look at them every single day we even show we show uh testimonials case studies new wins to our sales team every single day because what sales people really need is conviction if they're not confident about what they're selling and they, and they feel like and they and they have this thought in the back of their mind that what i'm selling is does it really work like i don't even know if what i'm selling works like i know i'm gonna make a commission but what i'm selling does it really work they need that conviction they need to know that it works so at this stage of the sales process you must create multiple offers to keep in your back pocket these offers must clearly uh must be clearly described so that your sales team can refer to these proposed sales call offers you'll see a combination of incentive-based pricing to push the prospect to take action immediately and payments being spread out you can also ask for something in return to discount your pricing that give you a prospect a legitimate reason behind the discount if you do not give a reason for price discount you immediately break report so i'm going to be going through this uh with you do not fall for this you're going to instantly lose the sale you must provide a real reason behind the drop in price and if you do it right it's powerful here's what i mean once again if we think about a magician the show must go on the show must get better with time uh if we use um like vsls where where the, we're adding in bonuses towards the end if we think about a vsl we're throwing in bonuses at the end right uh but wait there's more and if we think about steve jobs presentation of when he promotes uh apple he uses stuff like oh wait there's more wait there's still more right so he keeps the best for last all right so i want you to um on your free time go to youtube look at apple's presentation when they're uh, revealing a new product and see how steve jobs promotes the new apple products and towards the end of the presentation you'll see oh wait there's more oh wait there's still more and this is when the crowd gets hyped everyone gets excited so he saves the best for last similarly we're going to do the exact same thing here so uh here are some examples of uh, offers so first we're pushing for upfront payment let's just say you get a no uh you know what we can split the payment up into two fair enough having to pay something in full is something that you know would have stopped a lot of agents from working with us now we do uh do upfront fees and so fee is the same whether you get results in one day or one year however we do offer payment plans for agents who would like to manage cash flow a little bit better what i can do is i can extend the credit to you for 30 days we can break the fee into two payments over 30 days we usually charge a 500 500 financing fee for this however i will ma ma message my manager right now for you to get that waived off if we can move forward with this right now so this was this would mean that you would need to pay six thousand dollars now and get started and the remainder 6,000 30 days from now as your last payment. What do you say? Can you work with that? So, one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they're looping is they don't provide a reason for each offer. Make sure you provide a reason. So, when you're gonna split the payment into two, the prospect in the back of their mind will think, like, why didn't you why didn't you give me this before? Like, why were you trying to get me to pay up front? That can break report. So you need to give them a reason. They can mention that, hey, uh, like, you know, I will need to message my manager right now to get uh, um, to get the $500 financing fee, which we do charge if we want to do a payment plan. But I can see if I can, let me see if I can wave that away for uh, wave that off for you. So it's sort of like, uh, it's sort of like uh, you're sort of playing hard to get in a way. So it's sort of like uh, you're, you're pulling back, pulling back, right? So it's sort of like, uh, you know, 
like of course you know I, I could do the two month payment plan but we do charge a fee for this but i will need to see if i can get it waived off for you and let's just say uh you get a no i totally understand a lot of our customers said the exact same thing here's what we do to shorten our sales cycle and streamline the buying process we offer incentive based pricing if you can make a commitment on this call we did the math and we found that time saved by going back and forth is worth at least three thousand dollars so instead of twelve thousand eight hundred, we can get you committed. If we can get you committed right now, what we can do is apply the incentive and get you started for nine thousand eight hundred. Again, here's what you're getting: X, Y, and Z. So instead of paying you know, twelve thousand eight hundred, if we can get you committed right now, what we can do is apply the incentive and get you started for nine thousand eight hundred. What do you say? So what we're doing here now is we're offering incentive-based pricing, right? So you can mention that. Um, you know, like we've done the math and we found that, you know, if we get off this call and then I'm going to have to follow up with you and then we're going to have to jump on another call, we're going to jump on another Zoom. We found that all this time is, you know, worth a dollar amount and that dollar amount is, you know, $3,000. I want to save you time. I want to save myself time. So what I'll do is I'll just apply a discount and I can get you in for today. So you're providing a reason, right? So keep in mind, you're providing a reason. This is your reason. Right? So this is uh, your reason. Make sure you provide a reason when you're uh, looping. Okay, otherwise uh, you're going to fuck it up. Now let's just say you get a no. You can split the incentive-based pricing into two payments. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to go chat with the manager and see if I'm can, I can offer you better terms. The bottom line here, John, is I can see this is something you want to utilize and the cash flow seems to be the only thing holding you back. So manager, and then you you know you can mute mute yourself for a few seconds, and then like oh, you know, my manager just got back to me, and I'm able to extend you credit for sixty days by breaking the incentive into two payments. This would mean that you pay me half right now and half uh, thirty days from now. This is I'm telling you, this is the best payment plan that I can offer. What do you say? Can you work with them? So as you see, like we're offering better payment plans. Now what you can do is you know if you drop the incentive and you drop down to three payments. You can start throwing in bonuses. Start throwing in bonuses. Uh, and to make this work, these bonuses actually need to be valuable. Okay? So this is not going to work if the bonuses don't even mean anything. So the bonuses need to be good. What are some examples? One example could be uh, you'll get priority onboarding. Like John, you know, usually we onboard our customers a week after they become our customer. However, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can find an opening for uh, tomorrow to get you onboarded tomorrow. So this, will, this would be our uh, VIP priority onboarding. You, could, you can attach a name to it, right? So you will get priority onboarding and you can start getting leads within 24 hours, John. You will get your first appointment next week. So you can start talking about the benefit of this. What's the benefit? Uh, what's the benefit here? So the benefit here is that they're gonna start getting leads within. They're gonna start getting leads within. Uh, leads within. Uh, you know, twenty four hours, and appointment within at uh, seven days. Right. So they're gonna start getting conversations. That's the end. That's the benefit of that, and the outcome. Is the end outcome of that? Sorry, I'm just getting uh, some messages here. And what are, what is another example of a bonus? Another example could be, um, one on one personal growth session with the founder. So you can do this in your early stages. So when we first started. Of course, you have more time, right? Your time isn't worth as much. And when your time isn't worth as much, and you're also in the VSO that they watched beforehand, you can offer these one-on-one -on -one personal growth sessions with the founder, right? So you can um, uh, get direct access to the founder uh, for one hour, right? And this one hour is valued at attach a price to it two thousand dollars 
Like if you were to book a one-on-one -on -one consulting session with the founder, you would need to pay two thousand dollars. I don't go with my. That's how much my time is worth, and this is this is valuable. Uh, what you can also do here now is uh, we can see if if there is any other bonuses that we can uh, throw in. So let me let's so let's think of uh, other bonuses. Uh, so when we're thinking about bonuses, what I like to do is okay, how can we make the offer better than the core offer? That's a question that I like to ask myself. Um, if you have some sort of additional training, training that is sold separately, uh, see if you can uh, throw that in here. Right. Another thing is uh, if you're, if there is a done with you component. You can increase, uh, you can change the done with you component to done for you. So for example, we used to uh, provide video training for our client to set up organic lead generation campaigns on the Facebook marketplace. I can then say like, hey, you know what, John? I uh, usually we would uh, just provide a video for you to do this, but we'll just go ahead and do it for you. If you can make a decision on the call today. And I want to throw in this bonus for you. And this is, you know, valued at X, Y, and Z. And of course, if you want to take this one step further, you can, uh, this is the easiest one. You can increase the time length of uh, working with you. All right, so you just saw uh, anchoring. So you can say that, hey, instead of um, uh, working, working together for, you know, six months, I can, I can throw in an extra, I can throw in an extra month for you. We only allow this for two clients per month. I, I can see you're a killer. I can see you're going to crush with this. So I need your commitment here. I want to make this work for you. So if I can, you know, if I can get this approved by my manager, do you see um, us working together? Right? So you can mention that, hey, uh, you know, we can, that, that our, our, manager only allows us to provide this sort of an offer to two clients per month you can mention that one spot's already been taken but what, what you can do is you can see that if your manager agrees and this gets approved and you know, do you see us working together so you can increase the time length of working with you right so that's a big bonus and you can also throw in that this is you know this is valued at this is valued at x y and z so you're add, attaching a dollar amount to it so you need to think about bonuses. And in the beginning, um, when you're just starting out, if you, a very simple, a simple one that we did was uh, you get my personal phone number, right? You get my uh, personal phone number. Now, I don't recommend you do this, but if you're like just starting out and you're struggling to get your first few clients, throw in your personal phone number. Uh, most of the time, 90% of the clients will not abuse you and they will not disturb you at random times but of course there will be the one or two clients who uh you know abuse a channel like that but you can do that in the beginning and it's a damn good offer so just throwing in some bonuses there and then something else that you can do is discounting the pricing further i always like to discount the pricing at the end and i'll tell you why i like to discount the pricing at the end For discounting the pricing, you need to provide a reason as to why you're discounting the pricing. So to make this work, you need to provide a reason as to why you're discounting the pricing. And I'll tell you what we used to do. It's worked like a charm. Uh, what we did is uh, we would mention that we have something called, we have something called 
uh, brokerage level pricing. Now, what this brokerage level pricing is, is of course, if we were to sell this service to one agent, we're going to charge like 10K, for example. But if we brought in like, uh, if one client had a team of other agents that were also going to use the service, and maybe we had a team of five agents that came in or a team of 15 agents came in, then, you know, of course, we were going to discount the pricing for each individual agent. Now, we do have something called uh, brokerage level pricing. Now, this is usually only um, reserved for teams of more than five plus, you know, real estate agents. Now, John, um, you know, I see that you're really motivated and you want to make this work. Now, John, although I cannot guarantee you'll get brokerage level pricing since you're going to be one account one account uh i'm going to check in with my manager to see if i can get you brokerage level pricing now i would need to get a five hundred dollar deposit to showcase uh, your seriousness. Now, usually, uh, now we charge, now the investment is, you know, of course, whatever the price is that you sell, let's just say 9,800. However, uh, I can knock off another you know three thousand dollars which is our brokerage level pricing if you can put five hundred dollars down i can check in to see if i can get this done for you right so what you're saying is Hey, John, you know, we do have something called brokerage level pricing, which is more reserved for big teams that are coming in. However, let me see if I can slide you in, in into the back from the back door and I can get you this brokerage level pricing. Now, I cannot guarantee that, you know, you will get this, but I will need to show my manager that you're serious about this. So I'm going to have to get a $5 deposit and let me see if I can. Uh, so let me. You can use this. I like this line. Let me see if you can, if we can slide you in, you into the back door here however you know this will need to close this will need to to close on the call as we don't advertise as we're not allowed to we're not allowed to offer this furthermore you will need to keep this pricing confidential so this one works. This stuff works. So you're, so you're asking for something in exchange to give them something. So you ask them that, hey, you got to keep this pricing confidential. You have to close today. We have to get the deal done today. And you have to put a $5 deposit in. And let me see if I can get you, uh, you know, this uh, brokerage level pricing, which is more so reserved for teams of five plus real estate agents. Now, so as you see, we're discounting the pricing. So you can discount the pricing. And of course, you know, you can split that, you can split, split up the new payment that the new pricing into two months, three months, whatever you want to do, but you're asking for something, you're giving them a reason, but you're also asking for something in exchange, right? So it makes it very believable. The key here is that you got to provide a good reason. So the bonuses were great and you're throwing in uh, urgency. You have to close today. Okay. So you can only offer this on the call. You just want to call that we're not allowed to offer this. I saw, so I can only do this on the call. Yeah. So I can only do this on the call for you right now. The offer needs to be so good. So when we're thinking about these bonuses, that even 
uh, when we're discounting the pricing, you have to think about some good offers. Most of the time, whenever I see an offer, it's just shit. There's, there's nothing good about the offer, right? Personal phone number, that's valuable, right? Anything that, that you're mentioning that the client needs to do on their end and you, you're saying that you'll do it for them is a bonus. Extending the time length of the program or the service or whatever, uh, you can throw that as a, as a bonus as well. If there's other stuff that you have, that may be additional services, you can throw them as bonuses. Make sure you attach a dollar value to that bonus. And we're talking about the end benefit that the person is getting, right? Uh, so this stuff, this stuff is good. Okay, so this is how you negotiate. So you'll see that at times you'll get people buying into the sixth, seventh, or the eighth offer. Okay, so this, <laughs> this training just just this part alone is worth thousands of dollars that i just gave to you now this stuff can work on the vsl as well you could throw this stuff in the vsl and um uh, you throw this into the sales call as well so you want to have like a bunch of these different uh, uh bonuses that, that you know your sales people can offer and keep in their back pocket your sales people need leverage um yeah and then we're now gonna move into uh, collecting payment. All right, let's talk about collecting payment. And the, the way we collect payment is we have jaw form, which is connected to Stripe, but we collect the credit card information and the details on jaw form. And the best part about this is you don't have to give your salespeople or anyone else direct access to Stripe. A lot of the stuff on Stripe can be confidential. So uh, we just found this way to be the best. So what we do is we've created this doc that we provide to our sales team. And it has a bunch of different payment links. And all what they do is they just come in here. Let's just say they need to collect 1,833 from a customer. They'll open this link up. And they'll be able to go ahead and collect the information. And once they click submit, the payment then goes through. And if the payment doesn't go through or if the payment fails, the form doesn't submit. And the, the salesperson on the call can figure out what the problem is. So what we do here is... Um, you are one of your team members. Um, I actually got a VA to do this for me. We just created a bunch of payment links for every possible install, first installment that we can collect on the sales call. And we've also included uh, links to finance and fund the program for the client. And I'm going to be talking about funding a little bit later. So what you want to do is uh, just open up a job form. And I'll show you what the setup looks like within job form. So what we do is... Uh, let me click here and we, you can create this job form on your own side, but this is what it looks like from the inside. So we just create a payment method and we just add in the price. You can select the currency and we make it required. Make sure you make it required. Otherwise the form uh, will not submit without the information that's required. And I believe you can also add in tax here as well. Yeah, you can also add in tax if there is tax required. So for example, we're a Canadian based company. So when we're collecting payments from other customers within Canada, we are required to collect tax. So we're able to do that. And it can be 15%, the tax can be 5%, whatever the case is. Um, so that's what it looks like. Um, yep, that's pretty much what it looks like pretty straightforward. And then we also ask for the customer's address. Make sure you always ask for the customer's address because this is used for tax purposes. And you always wanna have as much information as possible on the customer. Uh, so you can never go wrong by just asking for more information than that is needed. And then also get the customer's email. And you can just look at the settings that I have set up. You can pause the video and get something uh, very similar to this setup. If you don't want to create all these payment links, just create one simple $500 deposit link, collect the $500 on the call, and then you can bill the remainder on Stripe. The beauty is that once you collect payment through this job form, the credit card gets saved on Stripe. So if, the, if you have a card saved on file, you can charge the customer however much you want on the back end by logging into Stripe. So this is how we set up job form. Okay, I think I've also included some screen, screenshots that you can also take a look at. Now let's talk about charging future client payments. 
since clients at times may want to change the date that they would like to get charged on their card we don't like to create subscriptions within stripe instead we manually charge the client on stripe since the client's credit card it's saved on stripe you can charge as you wish now let's just say we get a customer on a payment plan let's just say we sold something for 12k into four different payments so 3k on the call 3k after 30 days 3k after 60 days and 3k after 90 days what we do is if a card declines for a few future installment we'll try to first charge the full amount if the card fails we'll divide the payment into two if the card still fails we'll divide the payment into three and if the payment doesn't go through then we'll reach out via email and if we don't get a response within 24 hours or 48 hours whatever the case is you can send a text send them a facebook message what do whatever you got to do to get into contact if the client is ghosting or declining to pay uh, for a non-valid reason, then you can pull the contract angle. You can mention that you're going to, um, um, you can mention that, hey, you know, we can work out a payment plan if needed. And you can mention that there's a contractual obligation for the, for the, client, uh, for the client to make sure that they get their payment in. It's a con that's why you sign contracts so uh, we've never really ever had issues with payments because a big part about collecting installments is your, your customer service being dialed down and number two you're providing the service as it was promised on the sales call and that the service actually works so if, if the customer service is good and your service works you're never going to really have issues with client payments. So we've never really ever had issues with uh, clients not paying. Now let's talk about the contract. It is vital that you sign, start signing contracts with each client. A big mistake that we made early on in our career was we would trust our client's word for payments and promises. In the early stages, you know, you may sort of get bullied by the client to not sign a contract, but you want to treat this business as a sport become a professional becoming a professional means you know you want you want everything to be put in writing you cannot trust the other person we learned this the hard way so don't expect the client to make a payment if there's no legal obligation so someone's word is just not enough and now we use this tool it's called panda doc and we've been using this for years now but uh I've included a template that we use for our contract. You could take this template and you could pull and you could paste it into any contract tool there is out there. Uh, we use PandaDoc. I know DocuSign is a popular one. So you can really use any one of those tools. And uh, you can copy and paste this contract that we've been using with our clients. Make sure, now I'm not saying this contract works. I'm going to give a disclaimer. You can use this contract as you wish. However, it is recommended that you take this contract, get it checked out by a lawyer, make the necessary changes that are needed, and then uh, you can use the contract. Okay. So you will need to make changes to the terms of service and whatever we have in the contract, but um, always get it checked over by a lawyer. Another tip for you uh for contracts and all this sort of stuff is when you're closing a client ideally uh of course make sure every make sure each call is recorded make sure each sales call is recorded and there's a copy saved in a file this can be on google drive or somewhere on your computer if possible, ideally, you want to sign the contract. You want the client to sign the contract on the call. This isn't needed, but ideally, get the client to sign the contract on the call right after the payment goes through. So another thing, make sure that you collect the payment first. Make sure you collect the payment first before uh, bringing up any contract stuff let me repeat that make sure you collect the payment first from the client before you ever 
even talk about contracts or any of that nature. And then ideally, you run through, you go through the terms of the contract and the client signs on the call. Now, this is, of course, ideal, but you will have a lot of customers that say like, hey, you know, send me the contract. I'm going to take a look at the terms and um, I'll get this signed. But you do want to let them know that, hey, if the client doesn't sign the contract on the call, require the client to sign the contract before the onboarding call. So make sure that the, uh, the client signed the contract before the onboarding call. Otherwise, you cannot get them onboarded. The onboarding call is the first step to providing the service. The service cannot be offered or fulfilled upon if the contract has not been signed. Because a non if the contract is not signed, technically the customer is still not quote unquote a customer. The customer is only a customer if the payment comes through and number two, the contract is signed. Treat this as a pro. Now let's talk about funding and promotion and this sort of stuff. So uh, if you can finance a program uh, or your service for the client, you can skyrocket your income. Now there are, you need to be a little bit careful here. So I'm going to talk about the pros and cons here. So in our case, we upped our just revenue by 25% just by bringing in funding. Here's how, here's how it works. So you partner with a financing company. There's a lot of different financing companies, so I'm not giving you the exact one. I want you to do your own research. However, you work with a third-party financier that can cover the cost of the service for the client. The way this works is that the client pays this third-party company on a monthly basis. Their payment is split up into 12 or to 24 months. The, the finance company pays you upfront for the entire service cost. That's the way it works. So for example, if you sell something for 10K and the, the customer funds the pro, uh, the customer gets financing for the program, the customer is going to pay the 10K over the span of 12 to 24 months to the financing company, usually with interest, but you get paid upfront. But there is one company that we work with where the client pays no interest. So it's a win-win for them. And we get paid up front. But of course, the, the finance company takes a small percentage from us. So this is a win-win for all of them. Uh, so you'll get a pay. Uh, usually, you, we, you will have to pay a fee to the financier, the media payment, and the increased client accessibility. To, but it, it is worthwhile. It's a win-win for everyone. For the client, the client gets to pay over the span of 12 to 24 months, like they're paying a couple hundred bucks a month. You get paid up front and the finance company makes their chunk of change that they're looking to make. So it's a win-win for all of them. So start looking for a third-party funding partner. Don't ask me which funding partner we use because they're not taking any more clients. Uh, so there's a variety of options available, especially if you're in the Canada and the US region. Now let's talk about promotions. Now, this is just a bonus section that I've included in. Now, every one or two months, you can run what is called a promotion. The sole purpose of this promotion is to get the most out of the prospects that you have in the pipeline and on your list. You've made money for, uh, for these leads. I mean, you've paid money. So what I mean here, so what I mean here is that you've paid money to get these leads. Therefore, it makes sense as a business owner to squeeze as much juice out as possible. So if you're paying Facebook, you're paying Instagram to uh, generate all the leads that you have in the pipeline, so you want to make you want to make sure they get the most out of the people that you have on your list. So what we like to do is, you know, we like to run a few promos. These are just some examples of promos that you can run. You can mention that prices are going up next month, and you can run it for the last seven days. This works really well. For the last seven days, you can say like seven days remaining, prices are going up next month. Six days remaining, pricing pricing is going up. Five, four, three days remaining, last twenty four hours remaining before before pricing goes up. Anyone that you have on the fence, anyone that you have in the pipeline will take advantage of this promo. And this way you can also find out uh, who's serious or not uh, when they're looking to buy. Another one is uh, discounted pricing for X amount of days. So usually we like to run this usually at the end of the month. So you can mention that, hey, you know, we're discounting the price uh, for X amount. Now, this is something that I learned uh, from someone else. Uh, it's, 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 like, it's like a psychological thing. If 
the discount is in the, the four digit range. For example, $1,500. Mention the dollar, mention the dollar amount as a discount. However, if the discount is in the two to three digit range, mention the percentage. For example, if the discount is like 500 bucks or $700, just mention like, oh, it's 40% off, 50% off. But if the discount is like $1,500 or $2,000, don't mention the percentage, but mention the amount. From a psychological standpoint, people will, people will respond to this better than the percentage. But over here, this sounds better. Okay. Like, the, like for example, like if you're giving like a 20 to 30% discount, and the discount ends up being like 1500 bucks. A discount of 1500 sounds much larger than 15 to 20%. You get what I mean? So uh, this is just a, a good big hack for you to think about. Uh, another one is holiday promos. What we like to do is um, if there's like a special holiday that's coming up, for example, Black Friday, Christmas, New Year's, Valentine's Day, uh, there's a whole bunch of holidays that come up. You can use them as a reason to run a promo. This works really well as well. Now, how do you promote these? You can send an email once a day for the last week of the month to your list. You, or if you have salespeople, send a personalized text message about the promo for the people that are on the fence. Anyone that you have deposits for, you can send them as well. Record a personalized video for the prospect. Ideally, uh, Salespeople do this. However, you can also record a generic promo from the you know, founder angle. And of course, you know, if you're active on TikTok, you're active on Instagram, Facebook, you can make a post. You can also make daily stories leading up to the promo right so this is going to bump up your revenues by a large percentage so this is a huge bonus uh for you so just try to implement this as soon as possible and also start looking into funding this was something that we ignored for a very long time but as soon as we installed this into our company we made a huge difference in terms of revenue now be careful here with funding this doesn't mean that you just bring every customer on. So I'm going to write a disclaimer here quickly. Do not offer this to everyone. Offer this to the right customers only. So once again, oops. So once again, do not offer this to everyone. Offer this to the right customers only. Now, what I mean by that is just offer this only to the right fits. You, you don't want to bring in the wrong people that only just come in for the pricing. So be careful with this. The funding partner is also not going to like if they're not getting paid on time. So if you're finding this for the, if you're bringing in wrong people and the funding partner is now not getting paid, it will destroy your relationship with the funding partner as well. And if they're and if they have boosted your revenues by 10, 20, 30%, you don't want to lose a partner like that. So you want to maintain that relationship. So in order to maintain that relationship, give them the right customers as well. So win-win for everyone. So use it carefully. Now we're gonna move on to uh, fulfillment. So in this section, I'm gonna be covering the fulfillment strictly for real estate agents. And I'm only doing this because I've actually done it before. So I'm just sharing with you what's worked for me. Now, if you're not in the real estate niche, you can still go through this training and see if you can cater this for your niche. You will still be able to pick up on a few things that you can maybe apply into your industry. A lot of the processes are very similar, regardless of the niche that you're in. Let's talk about the basics. Um, Facebook ads for clients. When you're running ads for clients, Facebook business manager is your go-to tool. It's, it's 
It's designed for managing multiple clients all in one spot. So we already covered this stuff in the advertising section, but for those of you that maybe skipped that section, you're going to be running ads in the Facebook Business Manager. And the Facebook pages and your ad accounts are all going to be there without, and you don't want to confuse them between one another. So uh, like the Facebook Business Manager, is sort of like a hub for all of your marketing and advertising needs on Facebook. It's where you can handle everything for one dashboard. Let's talk about some of the key features. Uh, you want to separate the personal and the business. It keeps your personal Facebook profile separate from your work activity. So once again, I'm just talking about uh, the benefit of using Business Manager compared to your own personal ad account. So I can sort of skip this stuff. It's already covered this in the advertising section. But the key here is you're going to be using the Facebook Business Manager to be running ads for multiple clients. And it's so, so it's sort of like a vital tool for marketers and for agencies. Now, what does the service look like for a real estate agent? So this is sort of like a bird's eye view. If you're going to be doing fulfillment for a real estate agent. What you're going to be doing for the real estate agent is you're going to be generating home buyers and sellers through Facebook ads. And once you get the home buyer or seller, you then send this lead, this name in one phone number to the realtor. The realtor then follows up with this lead. And there's a lot of different tools and features we can use to follow up with people. And the, the realtor is trying to convert this one lead into an appointment that can be a phone appointment. That can also be an in-person appointment. Now that lead became a client for the realtor. Now the realtor will, will then work with that client to help their, help them buy their dream home or sell their home. And if the client does that, and we sell their home, then they'll generate like a five, 10, 15, $20,000 commission, depending on the price point for the home. So in the mo most simple terms possible, we're simply just helping our clients generate leads online. So the process is, you know, generate home buyers and sellers, you run Facebook ads, you send the, per the lead to the realtor and the realtor works with the home buyer or seller, and then uh, you get paid. Let's talk about go high level. Go high level is a tool for keeping track of all of your sales stuff. It's made for marketing folks and all of, and it's all about making sure no lead gets forgotten. When someone shows interest, go high level, in other words, a CRM, write down that it's a crm uh customer you know relationship management tool so you can you know do some further research on customer relationship management tools but it allows uh the realtor to send text messages emails and even voicemails automatically this is super important because you want you want them to talk to people while they're interested and doing and doing that fast can make a big difference so why it matters? It's tough for a real estate agent to get back to every interested person super quick. This tool does that for the real estate agent. If you wait too long, people might lose interest and Go High Level helps the realtor follow up fast. What we do here is we set up so Facebook ads and the Go High Level for every client. Like messages, emails, so they don't have to start from scratch. So wrapping it up. We use a Facebook business manager to keep all of the ad stuff organized. And then we use a go high level to make sure that the realtor is talking to the home buyers and sellers as fast as humanly possible. It's all about making things super smooth and, and not letting any chances slip through the cracks. So as I'm getting into the fulfillment, I want to make very clear to you that this is the most basic and the fundamental, and this is sort of like the the foundation of fulfilling for your client. This is a bare minimum that is required from your end. Now we've offered a lot more services on top of, you know, the sort of foundation that we had, but this is a bare minimum you should be doing for your client. Let's talk about the setup. So I'm going to be showing you examples as I'm going to be going through this, but I just want to make it very clear that use this as a foundation. A lot, of, a lot of other people will be offering the exact same service, but you need to make your service better by adding on additional stuff that you can do. You need to be asking yourself the question, what else can I offer to my client for the exact same price? Um, there was this one thing, I believe it was Hermosi that said that. If you were to charge $100,000 for your service, what would you offer to your client? 
think about that and offer that in your current pricing. So even if you're charging 5K, 3,000, think about the question that if I were to charge 100K for my offer, what would I offer to my client? Think about that. And then you can start coming up with ideas to put in your package. Um, let's talk about Facebook ads, ads overview. You're going to be running a list of home ads. I'll give you an example of what that is. A list of home, uh, homes is a lead magnet that is used in exchange to get a name, email, and phone number. The list of homes being advertised below the median home price in your area. So this is fulfillment for a real estate agent. I want to make a setup for realtors. I just want to make it very clear. I'm going to bold that, make it very clear that this is for real estate agents. Now, what I mean by a list of homes is, let's just say you live in Vancouver. The average price of a home is one million. Now, if you advertise a million dollar home on Facebook or Instagram, will that grab people's attention? Will that get people to submit their information? Likely not, because it's not really a good offer. They already, they've already seen other million dollar homes. But what if you ran an ad and you provided a list of homes under 700,000? Now people are, now it's a better offer. Why is it a better offer? It's a better offer because it's a cheaper price point and someone's probably thinking to themselves like, wait, there's $700,000 homes in Vancouver. I want to see them because 1 million, is, 1 million is the average and 700,000 is quite below the average. So people, it's a much better offer. People want to see these cheaper homes. I started running a list of homes and later on, I'll show you what these ads look like. Uh, biggest biggest uh, misconception. So I wanted to quickly talk about marketing versus sales. So what most people don't get is that the marketing argument is different from the sales argument. <coughs> this information alone is worth $10,000 if you can take this and apply it correctly. You market what is going to get someone to take action. You market what is going to get someone to take action. It has to be bodacious and something no one else in the market is claiming. That's why we advertise a list of homes below the median price. You may only have a few of these homes available. The key is to get the leads information. Why are we running this ad? We're running this ad just so we can get the person's name, email, and phone number. It's not like we're giving a bait and all these people are catching onto the bait and once we get them then we can sell them what they want from there then the sales process starts and then you can work with that client to help them find their dream home so what we did was we offered that home for seven hundred thousand, and we got the person's information and now we're working with them but it's likely that they, they're probably not going to like the seven hundred thousand home but they may like the nine hundred thousand dollar the million dollar home and that's how we make the sale so you got to do whatever you got to do to grab a cold lead's attention and get them and get them to give us their name, email, and phone number. The offer needs to be extravagant. This is why we use a list of homes as our primary offer. The secret is the offer. The best offer is the list of homes under medium price. Now, before I start showing you the ads and how exactly to set up this ad for a realtor, how do you know this stuff works that I'm teaching you? These are uh, all of my personal clients that I've worked with uh, in the past few years. And these are just some of the results that they've achieved following this process that I'm going to be showing you shortly. This client got 14 deals in 12 months, Julian, seven days, so on and so forth. You guys get the point. The stuff that I'm going to be, the stuff that I'm going to be showing you works. And I, I don't want you guys to have a doubt or any question in the back of your mind whether this stuff works or not. So these are all from my uh, personal clients. So now we'll get into uh, setting up the ads for realtors. So before we set up the ad, just like how we needed a Facebook page for ourselves, we also ne we need a Facebook page for the realtor. So if the realtor doesn't have a Facebook page, you can refer to this article on, on how to create a Facebook page. But most realtors by now should already have a Facebook page. Keep in mind, we're now setting up an ad for the client on the client's behalf. Facebook ad account. Uh, you can refer to this article if you want more information reg regarding ad accounts. But ideally, you want to have, uh, you know, now this now this depends. I, I think I forgot to add this into this article. Uh, 
There's two ways to do this. Use your own ad account if you're collecting ad spend dollars from your clients. This means your uh this means you have your own credit card on the ad account or use the client's ad account. This is what you want to be doing. You don't want to use your own credit card and there's going to be too many issues. Um, not recommended. But you want to get access to the client's ad account. All right, so this whole... There's this whole different material on this, but um, you want to get access to the client side account or you want to get the client side account in your business manager and you want to use that. You, essentially, the whole point here is you want to have your clients. Clients credit card. Paying for ads to Facebook, that's the whole point here. I'm not going to cover this just because there's so many tutorials on YouTube to figure this stuff out, but you don't want to be like, for example, if your client's going to pay $500 to Facebook, don't collect the 500 yourself and to put your credit card on Facebook and then pay on their behalf. Instead, get the client to put their credit card onto the ad account. And then the payment is getting picked up directly from your client's credit card. Now we'll get into now setting up the ad for a client. Okay, let's take a look at what the ads are going to look like for your real estate client. Now, to begin, what I'm going to do is I logged into one of my client's ad account, and we're going to first take a look at how we set up the ad. And then I'll walk you through setting up the ad myself. So the campaign name, you could just write, you could just write homes list. Category is going to be housing category, since this is a real estate related ad. Countries, just to country that you're running the ad in buying type auction capping objective lead generation we don't do any a b test advantage campaign budget you want to turn this on and this is where you set the daily budget in terms of the ad set this is once again if you remember setting up our agency ads you are going to run open targeting so we're not going to do any detailed targeting and you can just name it whatever you want write the page Dynamic creative, you can keep this off. So I'm gonna show you how to set it up. Budget, you know, you can start it the next day, not a big deal, audience. Only thing you gotta do here is just pick the area that you're gonna run the ad in. And the minimum that you can do is uh, uh, 15. So that's the lowest you can do. You cannot go more than, uh, you cannot go lower than 15. Age, you could just leave it 18 to 65 plus. It's not really a big deal. We're going to let Facebook optimize the ad on its own. Placement, just run automatic placements. We do advantage placements. And optimization ad delivery, just do leads. Now, in terms of the ad itself, the only difference with the ads, you can see that we have three different ads. The ad copy is the same. Headline is the same. The only difference is just the images. So we're just split testing different images. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Partnership ad, you can keep this turned off. We're going to select the client's Facebook page. We're also going to select the client Instagram account. And we are going to add in a single image. And this is the exact ad copy that we're going to run. The only thing we're going to change here, so if I go over to the Google Doc here, is the ad copy is whatever is highlighted in red is what needs to be changed. So here I would add in the city. So for example, attention Vancouver home buyers, Vancouver move in ready homes under blah, blah, blah. Get access to some of the best deals on homes in Vancouver priced under whatever the median price is underneath the median price. We're going to run the same ad for every agent, run the same headline, same description. You can see what I have set up in the ad. And when we're picking the image, make sure that the images look something very similar to this. Dark blue sky, dark green grass, front facing picture of a home. These sort of ads tend to pop out. So if we, so if I take a look at the ad itself, you can see that the rest are turned off because those weren't performing, but the one that is on 
you can see that uh, this is a much better image than you know some of the other ads that we're running for this client right so just make sure that the ad uh, looks good I'll scroll down so you can just copy whatever you see on the screen from a destination the, the key difference here between these ads and the one that we're running for the agency is in the agency ads we're sending the traffic over to a landing page so to our funnel that's where people that's where we collect their name in one phone number for these clients we're not going to do that for these clients we're just going to use a lead form that was that is built in on facebook so the tracking is going to be done properly here because we're not leaving the platform of facebook and people are just opting it on facebook so they're not leaving facebook so if i click on this lead form just copy whatever you see here home slice under 250 we're always going to do more volume intro uh no need to add an image here i would always remove the greeting we have it for this client but uh, i don't need to add in friction for questions always add in the name in one phone number for custom questions we had sort of, uh, I believe this client had requested us to ask this question. For this reason, we added this custom question in. But you really just need to ask for the name, email, and phone number on your client's behalf. Privacy policy, you can find this privacy policy on your agent's website, or you can find it on their brokerage website. Completion, this is a final this is sort of the thank you page uh, if we compare to the BSL photo. This is the headline, this is the description, call to action, call business, call to action, Call now to book a showing with the phone number. So now this client will start getting incoming phone calls from people that are opting into his ad. So this is a beauty. This stuff works. Okay. Just like you've set up and just like that, you've you know sort of sort of set up the ad. Then what you do is in terms of running the ad. What you do is, I forgot to rate this here. Instructions to run ads. So run the ad for three to four days for 10 to 20 bucks a day. Then cut the losers. What I mean is uh, we're going to run three different images. And whichever ad is performing, you can keep that one running and turn the rest off. That's all you got to do. So just run it for three to four days. Find the winner. Clearly, this one has been the winner. And you can see that this ad has 39 comments. So this ad has been doing quite well for this uh, agent. Now, let me show you how I would set it up in real time. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click create. We're gonna do uh, leads, and we're gonna click net continue. Let's go manual leads campaign. And what we're gonna do is uh, categories housing. I'll just go new leads campaign. You can really just call it whatever you want. Not a big deal. Uh, leads objective it is going to be leads a b test that's where you add in the budget you can do 20 bucks a day or 10 let's do 10 a day for our client and just click next instant forms so this is where uh instead we're going to be collecting our leads information so just select your client's facebook page uh there's a whole bunch here but just select your client's facebook page and don't have to worry about this don't have to worry about this you can start the ad the next day on midnight and then no custom audiences because this is not a retargeting ad uh, location this is gonna be we're not gonna be running the ad in vancouver we're gonna be running this in their city so for example if my client is in vancouver i can run an ad in vancouver And the lowest you can do is 15 mile radius. So you're going to have to do 15 mile radius. No need to touch the age. No need to touch the gender. No need to do detailed targeting. 
with open targeting and just leave this at advantage placements. All right. And then you click next. Let me see if I can find this client. Uh, I forget what page it was. Whatever. Let's go next. And here, make sure this is turned off. Collect, connect your client's Instagram account as well. This is not a partnership ad. And all you got to do is just add one image, add the primary text. Right? This is a text. Make sure you change this so that I would write like, uh, you know, Vancouver. And I should see under 900,000. I'm not sure you guys what it would look like, but you guys have already seen what the ad looks like. And I would just change whatever needs to be changed here. All right. And then the headline. Just copy and paste this. And just to learn more. And then you can select uh, that the, the lead form. You need to create the lead form. And you don't have to worry about the tracking. Because since this is an instant form, you can, you can have this stuff turned off. But that's pretty much how you set up the ad. And, the only, and then all you got to do is just have one image for this. And then you can duplicate this. And then you would just have a different image. So what I would do is just write image 2 here. For this one, I would just write image one. And then I would duplicate this one more time. And then all I got right here is just image three, right? So you're going to have a new leads campaign, open targeting. We're just going to be split testing images. Everything else stays the exact same. That is how easy it is to get these ads set up. Now let's move on to the CRM. So once you get the ad set up for your client, we need to then connect uh, the CRM. So CRM we're going to be using here is Koha Level. If you remember, for our agency, we were using Close.io. So for a client, I uh, no need to do that. We're just going to use Koha Level. So for your agency CRM, go. Uh, this is how you set up the agency. So the way Koha Level is set up is you have settings for the entire company account. And then within Go High Level, you have your client accounts. So these are the settings that you need for your own agency. So once you, if you don't have a Go High Level account, you can go ahead and sign up. But these are the settings that you need for your own agency, for your own agency client. Now, the important thing here is just make sure you go into your uh, account. And all this stuff is just going to be set up under the settings portion here. So I've just gone ahead and you can go ahead and uh, do all the necessary changes here. Cool. Important thing here is load in the CRM snapshot, which will then be used for your client's account. So I'm going to be talking further about the client snapshot, but get this imported into your Go High Level account. So just open up a new tab, copy and paste the link in there, copy this, open up a new tab. And then if you click enter, you'll be able to uh, import this into your Go High Level account. And then once you're able to import it, just go ahead and get this uh, imported. Okay, just go ahead and get this um, snapshot imported. So one, so by now, just to recap, you should have your your you should have your agency Go High Level account set up, and you should also have the snapshot imported into your account. Okay, and now we're now going to then set up a account for your client and connect the Facebook ads with the client. And then we can then give our client access to the sub account. So this is your main account and then your client accounts are going to be the sub accounts. Okay. So a lot of people get this confused. You have your main Goa level account and then each client is going to have their own sub account. So we'll be talking about how to uh, get, create a client sub account. Okay. So once you've got your Facebook ads set up for your client, we need to now create a sub account within the actual go high level itself so let's go over to go high level and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a sub account a sub account is going to be for a client each client will have their own designated sub account now since you would have by now imported the snapshot just go over to your imported snapshot and you'll see the snapshot that you just imported here and i believe it's called like dia program snapshot it's called something like that 
um, or it might say like DIA final snapshot. Okay. So what you got to do is let's just say, I believe it's called, uh, yeah, DIA program snapshot new or something. Select the sub account, uh, the snapshot, then select add account manually. And you're just going to add in your client's information here. Once again, you need to add in your client's information here, add in their name, email, uh, their, their name, email address, their name, uh, business name, all that sort of stuff and click save. And by like that, you'll be able to create your client, a sub account. Now, once again, I've included in-depth instructions on how to uh, create a sub account for your client. Now, once you do create a sub account for your client, you should be able to go into their sub account. So you'll be able to, uh, let me first go back to the agency view. You should be here somewhere on the screen. And then if you click here, you'll be able to switch to their sub account. So I'm just going to go to one of our client sub account. And once you log in, you should see a screen, something like this. Now, an important step here is we need to give our client access to the sub account. The way you do that is you go to my staff and you will create a employee and they're going to add in their information. And then you're going to add in their email and give them a password. Okay. So once again, add in their email and give them a password. And then they'll be able to log into Guaha level and be able to log into this account. Okay. So once again, we have our main agency account and the sub account is going to be for one client. And once we create the sub account, we need, this is, we need to give our client access to the sub account. And the way you do that is by make, adding them as an employee. All right. So for example, this is our client and we've added in their information here. Okay. So once you've done that, there's a, uh, there's a few other things that we need to do before we uh, launch the ads. Okay. So I'm going to go back over to the, uh, sub account and I'm just going to follow the instructions that we have over here. So in, under integrations, we need to connect their ad account and the selective right Facebook page. So this come to settings. I'm going to go over to integrations and I'm going to select my client's Facebook page. And I'm also going to select. Uh, and I believe you could also connect their uh, Instagram as well. Okay. Secondly, if you remember, we had made a lead form within the ad. So if I go to this client's lead form, you can see that, uh, you know, we had set up this lead form here. Sorry if my, my screen is like lagging right now. There's a lot of CPU that's being used right now. But if you remember, this is a lead form. So once you've connected the Facebook page, you should see the lead form popping up here, right? So you should be able to connect a lead form, right? So you want to be able to match the lead form and update it. So for example, uh, you know, we'll be able to connect the lead form and just like by connecting the lead form, make sure you match the custom fields here, full name, email, phone number. And then now the lead form is now connected with the CRM. So every time, so each time someone gives us their name, email, and phone number on this lead form, let's say people submit this, their, their information, they're going to end up on the thank you page. Then it's going to end up on the CRM. Okay. Third thing that we need to do here is we need to go over to, um, let's go over to the automations. It's been so long since I've done this for a client. So it's a little bit, it's like another refresher for myself because we have uh, team members doing this for clients, but I need to go into the buyer lead initial nurture sequence. And we need to make sure that the settings are set up like this. Make sure the user has been added in, make sure the next campaign has been selected, make sure this is stop on response and just make sure that your settings look very similar to this. Go back over to the doc. We need to make sure we add in the custom values under settings. So once again, let's go to settings. This is like another refresher for me as well as I'm working through this. Go through the custom values and make sure that there are values that exist here. So for example, what brokerage does your client work for? Add it in and update it. Uh, 
What's the CTA? What's the value of the home? 900,000. Make sure you add it in. The location that we're running the ad, make sure that has been added in. The phone number of your client, make sure that has been added in. Okay. Get the sub done. Add users. We, we've already done that. So what we want to do here is go back to the automations, the campaign level, and make sure that you've added in the user for all of these campaigns. And the way you do that is just click on each campaign, go to ca campaign configuration, and make sure that a user has been added in for each campaign. This way we're making sure that the campaigns are working. And then you're launch, you're ready to now launch your campaigns. So once you know you've created the ad, you've created a sub account for your client, you've given access to your client to that sub account, and you've made all the necessary setting changes within that sub account, you're then ready to launch the campaign. All right. Launch checklist. So make sure your client downloads the app so that they're able to go on their phone and see all of the leads that are coming in on their phone app. And they can call, text, email directly from the app on their phone. So this is a link if they're using an Apple device. And this is a link if they're using a Android. Once again, if you remember, within the ad, we should have the campaign. Lead format. Lead from campaign. Open audience. We're not doing any fancy targeting. And then we should have picture one, picture two, picture three. That This is, this is what the structure should look like within the ads manager. Now, what's going to happen once you launch the campaign? So after your campaign goes live, it's crucial to enter the optimization phase immediately. Here's how you do it effectively. So we're going to be split testing the ads. So start by comparing different images in your ads. Give it about three to four days. Then check which versions are performing the best. Your goal is to identify the high performers that cut out the ones that aren't pulling their weight. So the cost per lead is a main uh, primary... Uh, the, this metric is a primary indicator of success. So ideal benchmark. So aim for a CPL of $5 or less for outstanding performance. And a CPL and a cost per lead under $10 is acceptable. But anything above that signals a need for immediate adjustment. So for example, when we're looking at a campaign, I'm just going to go in and delete this campaign for this client. So for example, this, uh, this client is right now getting a cost per lead of $12. So, so the reason why he's getting a cost per lead of $12 is because he added in the one additional question and there's also a greeting, which we had told him to uh, remove, but, uh, you know, he wanted to get high quote unquote, higher quality leads, which is fine. Um, but he's getting a good return on the ads and we know he's getting good return because he's closed a lot of deals from people that are come from the ads. So we've left it on, but ideally you want this number to be ideally under 10. That's what you're looking for. This number should be under 10. Uh, 12 is a, a bit out of KPI. So we should, we could definitely make some improvements here to help him get a better CPL, but uh, he's closing deals. So he's making money. He's getting a huge, massive return on his ad spend. So once again, if your client is closing deals, like your client's getting these big commission checks and he's getting clients, he or she is getting clients, you don't want to uh, mess with the ads too much. And the reason why we haven't messed with these ads is because, of course, you can see that this one ad has, you know, 39 comments, right? So this ad is performing. All the CPL is high. The first metric you always want to look at is a ROAS. If the client is getting a ROAS, return on ad spend. If the client is putting $500 back, making back $5,000 in commissions, you want to leave the ad on. And then we can start looking at the CPL. So usually we'll run the ad for three to four days. You know, after three to four days, we'll turn off the images that are not performing. All right. Now let's talk about getting support. This is more so getting support for high level. So since high level is a CRM on its own, it's going to require a whole different set of skill sets. Here are some resources that you can view to get some help with Go High Level. You can uh, visit their support resources here. I've included a link. Now, it is recommended that you learn Go High Level as it is a foundation to succeed with their agency. Now, it's recommended to bookmark these links below. So what do I mean? 
uh, live daily Q and A help. So if you want a live, if you if you want live help over Zoom five days a week, then you can register on this link here and you can start getting uh, help. If you want to hop in a one-to-one -one call with Go High Levels team to get a demo, you can register here. I also recommend you join their Facebook group. You'll meet other agency owners, and at the same time, you'll be able to talk with one another and see what questions are being answered. You'll be able to find the latest updates that are coming to Go High Level. And it's a like-minded community that you can join and engage with. And you will learn a lot. So just go ahead, open these links, bookmark them. And this way, whenever you need help, cool, jump on a quick call with Go High Level's team and you can get your questions answered fast. What I would really do is um the way I sort of learn how to use Go High Level, because it can be a bit confusing. It's so it's pretty overwhelming, which is you know the case that a lot of people feel when they look at go high level so the the key here is just hop on just hop on their on their live calls and just get help live and you'll be able to uh, learn that way that's really the fastest way to learn their software let's talk about post setup so what what happens next so once the advertisements are live and the crm system is set up the focus shifts to a critical phase converting leads into appointments it's a straightforward formula leads turn into appointments which then evolves into clients leading to closed deals and commissions for your client felt like that rhymed a bit <laughs> but leads turn into appointments which then evolves into clients leading to closed deals and commissions for your client <laughs> i don't know why that sounds funny and cool Okay, so uh, this is about empowering your client. So your task is to equip your client with the necessary tools and strategies to maximize their conversion rate. This involves training them on effective communication techniques and providing a concise call script. Your client will be at the forefront of this process, engaging leads through calls and texts. So once your client starts getting leads, once the same process that you would follow uh, yourself as an agency owner, you want to call these people right away. You want to text these people. We're going to be using automation for that. And we want to be emailing these people. And we want to engage with these people as fast as possible. So I've provided you with a script, which is a tried and tested script designed to book appointments via text. So you can book appointments to text or phone call. We found those to be the most effective. Let's cover text first. And then we'll cover calling these people. It has been refined through numerous iterations and has proven effective across various markets. We've battle tested this script across a lot of different markets, so it's proven to work. Adhering closely to the script will significantly increase your appointment booking rate. Key principles. Only ask one question at a time. So keep in mind, I'm talking about text messages here. So when you're going to be teaching your client on, on how to text these people, or if you're going to be texting on behalf of your client in the beginning, Make sure you're asking one question at a time. So for example, you know, for the guys that are watching this video, you know, if you're, you know, texting a girl, you're not going to be sending these massive paragraphs or you're going to be just double texting and sending these multiple messages. That way, that's the easiest way to get ghosted, uh, you know, by a girl. Similarly, uh, you want to just ask one short question at a time. Right, so you want to ask one question at a time, and this keeps the uh, conversation engaged. Uh, it makes responding very easy, and it doesn't overwhelm the lead. High engagement, low effort. The aim is to make it as easy as possible for the lead to reply. So we don't want to ask them these like multiple questions in one, and we also don't want to ask these like super complicated questions where they got to type up a whole paragraph to respond. We want to we want to get simple yes or no sort of answers back. We want to make it easy for the client. Speed to lead, a uh, quick follow-up is critical. The faster you respond to a client, the higher your chances of converting them into an appointment. Consider delegating this task to an assistant or a team member once you've confirmed the effectiveness of your approach. The script and approach are not just about making contact. They're about making meaningful connections that move the needle from interest to action. By following this guide and ensuring prompt engaging communication, you're setting the stage for a successful conversion process that benefits your client and their bottom line. So I've gone ahead and provided you with some examples.
All right, so now let's take a look at the script that you're going to use or give to your client when we're text messaging these people. Now, the lead is likely going to respond with initially, yes, sure, because you have automation. Now, keep in mind that when we when the lead comes in from a Facebook ad, it's going to end up in this campaign here, and we're automatically going to start sending out text messages right so one of and the lead will then respond to one of these text messages with either a yes or a sure once that happens this is when you start taking over the conversation the automation stop and this is where you know a real life human comes in okay great so i just need you to answer a few questions so i can send you the right homes where is your preferred location blah blah vancouver Awesome. How many bedrooms, bathrooms are you looking for? I'm looking for three bedrooms, whatever. I'm looking for that. All right. Are you a first time home buyer or do you need to sell a home first? We're looking for about the bro, it's looking for some Instagram. Let's just say that they're also looking to sell the home. Okay, cool. And by the way, if you don't mind me asking, are you also pre-approved or are you willing to seek pre-approval? Uh yes or no, I am pre-approved. Awesome. Are you available for a quick call at this time on this date? And just like that, you will book. An appointment. Now let's dive deeper into um, examples of conversations. So you can go through these conversations on your own time as well, but I've included screenshots for you to look at. You can see this is us. That's the lead. Lead responds with, I'm looking for uh, a home in Vaughn or Richmond Hill. How many bathrooms, bedrooms? Looking for three bedroom, three bath. What's your preferred budget? Maximum 1.2 million. Are you your first time home buyer? No, I am going to keep and buy the other ads a second. Looking for, they're looking to buy a second home. By the, uh, by the way, if you don't mind me asking, are you already pre-approved? Are you willing to seek pre-approval? No, but I will be approved easily. Are you available for a quick call at 4 o'clock p.m. tomorrow? I don't know my schedule yet, but you can try around 2 p.m. Just like that, you've booked an appointment. So this is what the conversation should look like for your client. Okay, so let's continue on with the examples. I saw an example two was messed up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in again. Let's take a look at these examples. Let's, we'll take a look at one or maybe two more. Hi, Camney, I was doing some research for some clients. I came across a beautiful property that made me think of you. Are you still in the market for a home or have your needs changed? Yes, I'm still looking for something nice. Okay, great. I just need you to answer a few questions so I can send you the right homes. Where is your preferred location? I'm looking for Sir or Langley. Awesome. How many bedrooms, bathrooms? Uh, this person said just average size. Great. How much is your preferred budget? Around 350. Are you a first time home buyer or do you need to sell a home first? I'm a first time home buyer. So if we look closely, you'll notice that we're asking one question at a time. The client doesn't need to, the lead doesn't need to send us a paragraph to answer the question. They, they just need to send a few words. We're making it very easy for them. They're speed to lead. I don't know why they were having a conversation at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> but clearly the speed to lead because this text came at 401. Client responded at 401. And the lead responded at 402. So there's speed to lead there. Good example. And we're asking, uh, we're asking super short que questions as well. So very good example to look at. Such a weird conversation to have at four o'clock in the morning. I'm assuming that either the, it's weird that the, the realtor was awake at that time and and, uh, and this lead was awake at this time as well. So the lead was likely going to work. So you can read the rest of the conversation and you also have the rest of these examples here to look at on the Google Doc because you're going to have access to this. Now let's go to the call script. Like I said, if you remember, the two ways that our clients can book a call or book an appointment is A, text message, and B, phone calls. That's where the majority of the bookings are going to come from. Now for the call script, this is a script you're going to provide to your client. This is a call script your client will use to call the leads coming in from Facebook ads. You should also study this call script so you're able to better coach your clients. It's in your best interest that your clients book as many leads into appointments as possible. So now I'm going to act as an agent. And I'm going to assume that I've been running my own ads and there's leads coming in and I'm calling these people to book myself an in-person or over Zoom appointment. 
Hey, hey, I'm looking for a John. Oh, hi, John. My name is Jazz. I'm calling from EXP Realty. How are you? I'm just responding to your inquiry on the list of homes in Vancouver. Just wanted to check in with you and get the scent over. It's from my understanding that you're currently looking to move. Is that correct? And they might say something along the lines of, um, I don't remember. You know, that's fine. We do have your contact information here. And it's from my understanding you're looking to purchase a home. Is that correct? They might say, you know, okay. You know, is there a specific area in Vancouver that you're looking at? Well, yeah, you know, that area is very nice. And John, where do you, when do you plan on moving? Okay, great. You know, where do you currently live right now? Oh, you know, that location is very nice. Now, now, what's the reason you're looking to move from, you know, this location to this location? Okay, got it. Well, as you know, the homes on this list, on the, on the list, on the list we offer. Well, as you know, the homes on the, oh, I wrote that twice there. Well, as you know, the homes on the list we offer are about, you know, $800,000 in the area. Is that price range? Is that the price range you wanted to be in? Super. Right. Let's just say they say it's out of budget. You know, I don't think you'll be able to get a home in the price range. However, I can take a closer look for you. In fact, I'll put together a list of available homes in that area for you. If you're available tomorrow or later this evening, I can run you through some together and I can get a better idea of what exactly it is that you're looking for. How does that sound? Now, say we found a home in, you know, Vancouver in the price range or uh, in whatever. Are you planning on financing or paying cash? Whatever. So I'm not going to go through this entire script just because this video that I'm making is not for real estate specific related fulfillment. However, you can take the script, give it to your client, or you know, also use it to study the script yourself. Let's go keep going down. Now, of course, you know, I don't want this to turn into a, a real estate only uh, video, but you can use a script. Now, let's, you, this is optional. You can also do the lead follow-up. You can also do the follow-up for your client for the first five to 10 clients. In this, you will be calling or texting their leads. What this will allow you to do is gain, is gain, is gain an understanding of how the system works, book some appointments with an agent, and gain confidence in the process. Another thing, um, when we're talking about bonus sale, I just wanted to add this in, but when we were servicing real estate agents, we always thought to thought to ourselves, how can we be different in the competition? What are our competition saying? Okay, we need to do the exact opposite. What are my competition not saying? Right? Because once again, if we scroll all the way to the top of when we first started this video, I had mentioned that we know what to say based on what the competitors are not saying. And we know what not to say based on what they are saying. So always keep that in mind. You want to escape competition. Never want to be, you're going to turn into a commodity. So one thing that we did was we um, offered Google reviews, right? So we told our client to the, hey, you know, make this post on your Facebook page and you'll start getting some Google reviews. So we always try to find these, you know, cool organic lead generation methods that my clients can use to get more uh, results and make more money. Now, let's talk about the fun stuff. Client retention. All right, so let's talk about client retention. Let's break down some client retention. Now, it might seem straightforward. You deliver what you promise or your clients will stick with you, right? Well, it's not that simple. Here's why success alone doesn't always keep clients. Number eight, a point eight, shiny object syndrome. Sometimes clients spot something new, a different company or fresh method. Even if things are good with you, they might get curious and want to try it out. B, inflated numbers. Clients might not always be upfront about their business numbers. They might exaggerate it a bit to avoid looking bad. It's normal. Some things they just want to keep private. C. Say you got your client a good ROI. That's great. But some clients will always want more. They've seen success and now they're aiming even higher. D, beyond the ROI. Even with good returns, if your customer service isn't up to par, isn't up to scratch, isn't up to par, that in itself can be a deal breaker. Clients value how they've, they're treated as much as the end result. So for this reason, so for these reasons that I just listed above, you must think of how you can build your service in a way where if you pull the plugs, your client is essentially screwed. Now, it took myself a very long time to understand this concept. So I want you to pay close attention to this right now. I want you to 
if there's, if there's one thing they're going to take away from this video training is this one sentence. You must build your service in a way where if you pull the plugs, your client is fucked. Let me say that one more time. You must build your service in a way that if you pull the plugs, your client is essentially screwed. Now, this may sound a bit harsh, but I'm, I'm using words which is going to help you understand what I'm really trying to say here. Let's, let's, let me give you an example. Let's just take website services, for example. It's a classic offer, but some agencies maintain ownership of the site. So if the client decides to leave, they will lose their website, which is a critical part of their business. So people, so clients are more likely to stick around, even if they drop other services. The idea is to create a scenario where your service becomes a core part of the client's business success. It's about offering something so valuable that leaving would cause them a significant setback. I'm going to give you some more examples as I'm going through this. But, the, uh, but just to recap what I just talked about is always understand that just because you get quote unquote success for your client, that doesn't mean that your client is going to stick around. Okay. Just because you got success for your client doesn't mean your client is going to stick around. You must build your service in a way. If you pull the plugs, your client is, is essentially screwed. I got this, uh, you know, from a coach that's doing, you know, 20, 30 million dollars in the real estate space. Right. They're doing 20, 30 million dollars per year in the real estate space. And I've, I've I've been connected to this one individual. And this is the one thing he said over and over again. And at first I was like, what does he mean by that? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't even sound ethical. Like, it sounds so harsh when I hear him say it. But when you think about it, it just makes so much sense. Like, what if, like, I'm going to be diving into further examples. But this is, this is why I bolded this. You must think about this. Now, let me give you an example of licensing. Licensing is a powerful strategy in client retention, similar to how musicians license their music. When artists create and license their music, they retain their rights and continue earning as long as it's used. You can apply a similar approach with your clients. Keep asking yourself, how can my client's entire business be dependent on my services? What happens to their business if they stop working with me? These are the questions you need to be asking yourself. If you find that their business would struggle significantly without your services, you've unlocked a major opportunity for client retention. Let's take a look at some examples in terms of the word licensing. Let's just say your face. This is an example, hypothetical example. This is to help you understand what I mean by licensing. Let's just say your face is in your client's ads. You've created the videos within the Facebook ad. If the ads are performing and the client is getting an ROI, would the client be forced to work with and to stay with you? Of course. This is a perfect example of you being able to pull the plugs if the client leaves. They know losing you means redoing their marketing materials, which is a hassle they would rather avoid. So let me repeat that. You've created the video. You own the video. So if the client leaves, they cannot use a video anymore. It's licensed. So you've now the client is pretty much screwed if they're getting an ROI. Another example. You provide a software. Software is sticky. This means that once you get a client on software that is necessary for the client to operate, you have the client for life. However, the hard part is getting someone to either use a software or leave their existing software for a new one. I'm going to give you an example. I was at the bar uh, barber the other day. And while I was at the barber, the barber asked me to use this phone app called The Cut to book myself an appointment, and I can also pay through the app. Now, this barber that's using this app called The Cut, he's an independent barber, so he's not working at this barber shop. He's cutting from home. So now this barber, I asked him, like, how long have you been using this app for? He said years. So his whole business, the way, the way he gets clients and the way people pay him and the way people book appointments with him is through this one app. Now his whole business is sort of being run on this one app because a, all of his client base is on the app. Other people can find barbers on this one app. Now the whole business is dependent on that because if, if the, if the app, if he removes the app, people have to now like maybe text him or message him to book an appointment or uh, he needs to he needs to find a completely different app. And now and then, then at the same time, he needs to tell every customer that, Hey, by the way, you know, I'm not using the cut anymore. I'm using this other app. Please book an appointment through that app. It's a big hassle. So this whole business is now dependent on the cut. Now, for as long as he's a barber, he's going to continue using this app forever. Ask yourself the question, 
Is there a software I can provide where my client's entire business is dependent on this one software? It may be hard initially for my client to get on this software, but once I do, it will all be worth it. Now, here's some examples of this in use. Own your client's website. Or number two, own your client's domain. These are some examples that I've seen other people do. Own the funnel used in the ads. Lose Facebook pixel data if the client leaves. You own the Facebook pixel. So if the client says they want to leave, you can let them know that, hey, you know, your Facebook pixel is going to be gone. <coughs> Software is stripped away if the client leaves. If you built an AI, if you built a custom AI chapter for the client, maybe you built a FAQ, client only questions, it will then get stripped away if the client leaves. Majority of the eight figure agencies exist because they have at least one component in the business where they have the power to pull the plugs on their client. This fear forces clients to stick around. There's so many of these, uh, you know, website providing companies to real estate agents where they provide other services, but they don't have any retention on the other services, but other than, than the website, just because people don't want to lose their website. Now let's talk about your fulfillment of your client's client. That may sound a bit confusing. So let me break it down. Now this may sound confusing. So let me elaborate. Say you created a content portal on the behalf of your client that your client's clients, your client's clients can get access to. We did this with the real estate agent where we created a course on their behalf that home buyers and sellers, our clients, clients can get access to. This was so valuable that a better result for our client. This course can help your clients achieve more success, making your service invaluable. Expert positioning by providing these resources, your client is seen as a leader and expert in their field. See unique selling point offering something unique that competitors don't that your competitors don't have can set your client apart essentially we created a course on their behalf on, on the behalf of our client personalized to their services and offered it to each one of their clients it massively helped convert uh re leads so once again if the client leaves they lose access to this course how can you do that you own the course you own the rights to the course you've recorded the video so no one else has permission to use your stuff this is a perfect example of pulling the plug. So what we did is, this is us. This is my real estate client. My real estate client has buyers and sellers that they work with. What we did was we're like, hey, realtor, we're going to create this course for you. And we're going to act like we're your team members. And we're going to talk about your services. We're going to talk about why you're the go-to agent in Vancouver. We're going to talk about all the people that you've helped get into the dream home. We're going to, uh, you know, put you on a pedestal. And we're going to, uh, you know, just keep talking about how good you are, and how you're the best agent. Uh, X, Y, and Z, and then we're going to give this to your clients. And this massively helped my client get more success. So now the client doesn't want to leave because we own the videos. That's, that's an example for you. If you're missing out. Ever heard of losing your spot in line? It's a powerful move I've seen other agencies pull off with great success, although I haven't used it myself. It works like magic. So here's the gist. You tell your clients that you only work with a limited number of clients in each area, or you have a cap on the number of clients you take each year. This makes your service exclusive. So if a client decides to leave, they can't come back. They lose their exclusive spot to someone else, maybe even to one of their competitors. Now I've seen a dentist do this. So this dentist who runs a special club, so they're this dentist who's, who's running a mastermind for other dentists, charging $50,000 per year to be their uh, He's charging 50000 each year to each dentist to be part of this mastermind. There's a strict limit that only 50 dentists are allowed to be in this special club, this exclusive mastermind. This alone is bringing in $2.5 million per year. If a dentist leaves this mastermind, they're out forever. So they can never come back to this club again. Their spot gets filled by another dentist who is wanting to get in. This creates this great sense of fear missing out. Clients will think twice before leaving because they know that they can't just come back whenever they want. So that is a big uh, golden tip for you. Let's talk about the community. Communities are powerful because people naturally want to connect with others who are on the same journey. That's why places like Facebook groups are so popular. They offer a space for like-minded individuals to meet, share stories, and support one another. But here is where you can take it one step further. Build a community with your successful clients. This isn't something you can buy. It's an incredible value and grow. It's more valuable with each success story shared within the community. 
The real game changer comes when the successful clients start coaching and mentoring your newer clients. This, done, this does wonders for trust. Imagine a new client seeing first time that someone just like them achieved incredible results. So it's not just inspiring, it's also proof. They start to believe that, you know, if this person can do it, so can I. This mindset drastically improves how long clients stick with you. They see the community not just as a group of people, but as a place where real success is happening. And they want to be a part of it. Welcoming. So your, the initial touch points uh, your new customer has with your company will make or break your company. I've seen companies with have mediocre service, but retain clients because their customer service is just that good. Therefore, you need to ask yourself the question each day. How can we welcome our clients like no one has ever welcomed them before? It's going to allow you to come up with ideas. So here's some ideas to, you know, get your brain sort of, you know, rolling. Send a welcome gift. It's how about shipping a thoughtful, thoughtful gift to their house? Maybe a useful book, not just a company branded item like a t-shirt. Personalized welcome video. Have your client success team create a personalized video greeting. It's a warm and a friendly touch. A welcome post in the community group. If you have a community platform like school or Facebook group, make a welcome post celebrating their new arrival. Let's talk about customer service. Let's talk about something everyone knows is crucial, yet not everyone gets it right. Customer service. So you might think, you know, I know this already, but stick with me here for one minute. There are two golden rules when it comes to servicing clients. Respond fast. When clients reach out, they're not just looking for answers. They're looking for quick answers. The speed at which you reply can make or break trust in you. Make it personal. Ever felt, uh, ever felt like you got lost in the crowd? That's exactly what we don't want our clients to feel. Each client should feel like that they're the only ones that you're working with. Imagine, you know, immediate attention to their needs isn't just appreciated. It's expected. So ask yourself the question, how quick and personalized is my customer service? Remember, it's not just about answering questions quickly. It's about fulfilling promises with the same urgency. So if you promise to launch ads by Friday, make sure that they're up and running by Thursday night. That's the deal with customer service. Customer service is actually so important. I mean, think about whenever you're ordering takeout food. You know, there, there may have been a restaurant or a pizza place or... You know, some place where you used to get food and one time the customer service was just not good that you have since not been to the same place, right? So that's some important uh, services. Testimonials. So this is something that we, I haven't really seen too many people talk about, but in the simplest terms, you must shower your service or interactions with customers with testimonials. Think about it. If the service doesn't work for the customer, they're not doubting the service. They're, they may perceive hurdles problems or issues of slight setback that just need a bit of tweaking you never want to be put in a position where you've where you're backed against the wall and you're getting pinned for a service that doesn't quote unquote work so somewhere somewhere around your service product whatever introduce testimonials and introduce stuff where you know you're showing that you know this has worked for other customers so whenever you're able to do that once again when, when you you sell the client before they come on board and once they're your client the selling doesn't stop you need to keep them believing that the system works and it should work okay, if you're providing a service whatever you're selling they should uh you know it should work okay but guys 100 and i believe 50 pages for you guys very you know i've never done something like this before and I spent a lot of time, you know, first writing this doc and recording the videos. So uh, thank you for watching. For those of you that stuck around, thank you. And you will also get access to this doc. And anything that I've shown in this video will be provided to you. Um, and this is my gift to you for, you know, I'm getting very close to 10,000 subs. So thank you. And I hope you found this valuable. And if there's anything that I missed or anything that you're still confused about, let me know in the comment section below and I can create a follow-up video on anything that I could have missed. Or if there's a topic that you want me to dive deeper into, I can also create some follow-up videos on that. But if you like this style and you want me to create uh, similar videos to this on any topic, I can dive deep. 
Now, the thing with YouTube is we're sort of forced to create videos that are very top of funnel, that are very broad, just because, you know, as a YouTuber, you're incentivized to get more views. But what that does is it sort of takes away the opportunity where you can't really dive deeper into some parts. For example, this entire video, this is only for a select few of you that watch or sub to my channel. So for that select few, if you want more of these, I can create more of these videos. But I mean, as a YouTuber, I'm sort of incentivized to create very broad videos to get the most amount of views. But I, I enjoy making this sort of content. This is the sort of content that, uh, you know, I got value from when I was first starting out. And so I'm taking this, uh, you know, inspiration from um, a fellow YouTuber named Dan Butts. So big thank you to him for, you know, sort of giving, giving me inspiration. And whenever I'm looking back at my career and I'm looking back at what's really helped me, his channel was, uh, his videos were what I really resonated with, you know, showing every click, showing every button. And that's sort of what I've tried to do in this video. Now, some parts were very advanced. Other stuff were other stuff was not as advanced, <coughs> but whatever is being taught in this training or has been taught in this training is something that I've used in real life. So I haven't I didn't include anything that I personally haven't done. So I know this stuff works. I know this stuff works for other people, and uh, I'm I, I can guarantee you that if you implement at least five to ten percent of what was being taught, it's going to make a significant difference in the income that you're you're looking to earn or you're, or you're currently earning with your business so thank you for watching and i will see you guys in another similar training like this